This is a world where animals are nobler than humans. Some people spend billions to cure mice. They actually spend billions to treat mice. Someone got bitten by a pig, but shamelessly flaunts it on live broadcast to everyone. There are even those who deliver puppies for a husky. They even demand that pregnant women give up their delivery room to a husky. All because global animals suffered extinction 10,000 years ago, resulting in the skyrocketing value of existing animals. Even an artificially made mechanical ant can be sold for over 10,000. A sheep is even more priceless. And the one most affected by this is me, the zoo director. There isn't a single animal in the park. Even I have to dress up as a big black bear every day to please the audience. Yet business is becoming more and more unsatisfactory, just when I thought about transferring the zoo. Suddenly, a voice congratulated the host for passing the test, activating the divine level zoo system. Acquiring the Chinese national treasure, the giant panda. Just then, a mocking laughter came from behind, Sue buddy, are you ready to transfer the zoo and run away? I turned around to see a middle-aged man walking in from the zoo entrance, followed by a short-haired, black-suited professional woman. The source is none other than my competitor, the boss of Sunny Day Zoo, Qin Dupeng. Qing Tian Zoo is one of the top parks here, with over a dozen mechanical animals. There's even the treasure of the park, Era, as the main attraction, attracting countless visitors. He wants this park from me in order to expand the zoo. This has been going on for quite some time. At this moment, I said to manager Qin with a gloomy expression, wondering why he came to see me. Brother, I have good news for you. You were planning to transfer the park, and coincidentally, I plan to expand with a mechanical marine aquarium. Why not transfer it to manager Qin? After all, all animals have been extinct for over 10,000 years. Now only machine models can be created, like fish. I wonder how much manager Qin is willing to pay. Qin Dalong extended three fingers and waved them in front of me. I gave a cold laugh and turned to leave. At this moment, the female lawyer Xiao Ling hurried over and stood in front of me. Although manager Qin's offer is lower than market price, it can help you in your urgent situation. Mr. Sue, please consider it. Sorry, I don't plan to sell the zoo. I have other matters to attend to. I'll take my leave. Su Chen, let me tell you, if you don't sell the zoo, you'll watch it rot in your hands. You really don't know what's good for you. With just five types of mechanical animals, you still call it a zoo. I can't afford the expenses. Let's see what you do in a few days. I ignored him and headed straight to the zoo's living quarters, walking hurriedly into the office. I sat down on the chair. Looking at the system panel in front of me, I quickly pressed the summon button behind the giant panda. I heard a sound like a goat bleeding above my head, then I felt a furry giant creature sitting directly on me. The giant panda stared at me with big eyes, curiously, opened its mouth, and pulled on my collar with force. Looking at the torn clothes, my expression changed, you are a national treasure, can't afford to offend you, right? Silently, I pulled up the clothes, held the giant panda and sat quietly on the ground, saying, from now on, you shall be called Dubai. Dubai, are you hungry? I'll go out now to buy you some bamboo, saying this, I got up and walked out the door. However, shortly after I left, the competent female lawyer who came during the day walked in from the door, ready to discuss transferring the park with me again. Xiao Ling looked around and saw a few lonely mechanical animals in the courtyard, shaking her head slightly. She really couldn't understand. Everyone else is introducing mechanical animals that don't require manual control. What is this young man insisting on? Soon, Xiao Ling arrived at the location of the office, swaying her hips as she walked step by step. Standing at the door, I could hear the sound of snoring coming from inside. She muttered, not very old, but quite the snorer, then Xiao Ling pushed the door open. The moment I pushed the door open, I couldn't help but exclaim. There, on the ground, sat a fierce and monstrous creature. After calming down a bit, Xiao Lin opened the door again. Scared the baby to death, this might be a broken mechanical animal, otherwise, how could a mechanical animal snore for no reason? At this moment, Big White extended its paw, rubbed its blurry eyes, wiped its mouth, and Drool slowly crawled up from the ground. Looking at the woman standing at the door, a question involuntarily flashed through his mind. Big White smacked its lips twice, shook its big head, and walked towards the door step by step. Xiao Lin, standing at the office door, listened to the busy tone coming from the phone, couldn't help but mutter quietly, why isn't this guy answering the phone? Suddenly feeling a furry paw on his shoulder, Xiao Lin shuddered and slowly turned his head. The broken mechanical animal from earlier was now grinning stupidly at him, drool dripping onto his clothes. What is this thing? Is someone controlling it? Why are the mechanical animal's paws so soft? At this moment, I walked in carrying a pile of fresh bamboo shoots, and from a distance, I heard a mournful cry. Quick, go away, don't hurt me. I quickly took a few steps back, 
watching the scene in front of me, my eyes wide open in shock. In a bizarre posture, Big White pressed on the female lawyer named Selin who had arrived today, opening its mouth wide and continuously pulling at her clothes. Bro, stop it, I'll scream and drop the bamboo shoots in my arms. I quickly ran over, hugged Dubai, and lifted him off the female lawyer. Xiao Lin cried as he got up from the ground, quickly running out of Dubai's sight. Are you a panda? Everyone else has run away, but you're lingering here. What's your plan? I grabbed Dubai by the ear and led him step by step towards the goat enclosure. We definitely won't have time to clean up tonight. We'll have to let this guy stay here for the night and buy bamboo tomorrow. Ding. The host can use funds to build the park, a sudden voice from the system echoed in my mind. It's so advanced, yet it doesn't require hiring people to build it. The park can be built seamlessly. How much does it cost to build a panda enclosure? The host's zoo has limited space, so only the simplest panda enclosure can be built, with a cost of 7 million. Will the host proceed with the construction? I made up my mind, 7 million is 7 million. After all, I can't use this money myself, so I'll use it to build the park and feed the animals. As soon as the voice fell, white smoke rose visibly from the goat pen in front of me. After a long time, looking at the exquisite panda enclosure in front of me, I was stunned in place. The next day, a reporter Shuihaoyu walked in with a few people. Several people turned a corner at a crossroads and suddenly came across a venue they had never seen before. Looking at the sign hanging at the entrance of the panda garden, Shuihaoyu looked puzzled. What is this, a bear or a cat? I've never heard of it before. A gasp came from behind, prompting Shuihaoyu to look up at the entire panda garden. Quick, let's go in and take a look. There was a strange animal sitting on a large wooden swing, happily nibbling on a large bamboo shoot held in its paws. How is this possible? How can there be an animal in this zoo that can simulate eating? Shuihaoyu stood in front of the garden, watching the creature inside munching on bamboo shoots non-stop, his mind momentarily feeling deprived of oxygen, as if experiencing a lack of oxygen. This is a new type of animal, and furthermore, it's a species that their program team has never seen before. With a plump body, a cute and innocent face, fluffy fur, and a round belly. Shuihaoyu felt like his inner fangirl was about to burst out. Where's the camera? Hurry and start filming. He shouted at the cameraman beside him as soon as he reacted. This is definitely a new type of creature, it's unbelievable. To think that such a creature with this form existed in ancient times. Dubai sat on the swing, squinting his eyes, holding a large bamboo shoot in his arms. Swinging contentedly. Sensing a few people approaching, Dubai couldn't help but turn his head to look, a dark pipe extending into his territory. Anyone daring to steal my bamboo, immediately alert, Dubai cautiously jumped down from the swing. Look, this guy is coming over, so lifelike. This is definitely the most realistic robotic animal I've ever seen. Yes, how was this achieved? How much did it cost? Once filmed, it will definitely cause more of a sensation than the animals at the Sky Zoo. Hey, look, he's coming over. He even snarls. With a bang, Dubai pounced from beside the stream, grabbing the dark camera lens with his paws and turning it around. At this moment, Shuihaoyu and the others were all dumbfounded, encountering this situation for the first time. Could it be controlled by someone? However, the scene that followed completely overturned their worldview. This adorable guy in front of them actually grabbed the camera lens with its big mouth, gnawing on it continuously. In no time, it smashed the lens to pieces and casually tossed it into the pool. Shua Hao Yu and the others looked at each other. Did the facial expression of this panda just now seem like disdain? Why do I feel like this guy doesn't seem like a robotic animal? Who are you, and how did you get in? Suddenly, a young man holding a few bamboo shoots walked over from a distance. Are you the owner of the Blue Sky Zoo? Is there something wrong? The zoo is open today as usual. Have you bought tickets? I always feel that these guys in front of me are a bit strange, but I'll still give the bamboo shoots in my arms to Dubai first. After the panda park was built, Dubai inside really became a big shot, he didn't even sleep, sitting on the swing all night. Seeing me come in, Dubai quickly crawled up from the ground and rushed towards me with a swift movement. I never expected that Dubai would rush up and tightly hug his own leg, with a fierce expression. My clothes were torn open again. May I ask, where exactly were these robotic animals imported from? Who told you these are robotic animals, I couldn't help but ask, as I grabbed Dubai's ear and pushed it off my body. Dubai snarled. With an angry expression on his face, he forcefully pounced forward, tightly grabbing Shuihaoyu's thigh. His sharp claws skillfully reached up, hooked onto the belt, and gave it a strong tug. The belt snapped, and Dubai carried the pants in his mouth as he swaggered away, lazily lying down next to the swing on the grass, squinting and looking at the person in the distance wearing bright red shorts. Extending his claws, he angrily tossed the spoils aside, 
as if he didn't bother to tear off those red shorts for himself, feeling very angry inside. At this moment, Shuehaoyu didn't even care if his pants were on, his mind filled with the words the young man just said, wondering if this creature in front of him is real. Although it's hard to believe in my mind, the actions of the creature in front of me just now are definitely beyond what a robotic animal could achieve. Even though technology is advanced, it's impossible to anthropomorphize to this extent, even the disdainful expression on the face is remarkably lifelike. Sorry, I'll go find you a pair of pants. Shuehaoyu looked at Dubai lying on the ground sunbathing, his legs trembling. The world's first resurrected animal is about to appear, this will definitely cause a global sensation. Looking at the few people in front of me who have become somewhat dazed, do you have something to say? The cameraman said blankly, we're here to persuade you to sell the zoo. Shuehaoyu quickly slapped him aside, that's not it. I'm a reporter from the Journey program. You're the owner of Blue Sky Zoo, right? I wonder if we can do a program on the giant pandas. I nodded slowly in agreement. At this moment, several people turned around excitedly and were about to run outside, preparing to bring all the camera equipment over. I quickly stopped him, you're not wearing pants. Bring me ten pairs, we'll be observing up close later. Let this guy talk enough. After the program's report, news of real animals quickly spread across the internet. Meanwhile, on the other side of the sunny day zoo, the office door was pushed open abruptly, and a ticket seller rushed in. Boss, something bad has happened. What's causing all this panic? Are there too many people? No, boss. All the people in our zoo have left. The ticket seller's face turned red as he said, many people have bought tickets and then returned them all. What's going on? The animals are acting up. Chin Delon nearly slipped off his chair upon hearing this. I don't know. They've all run over to the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo across the street. Boss, you haven't seen it. The entrance of Blue Sky Zoo is already swarmed with our zoo's visitors. Let's go out and take a look. Sheen Dalon jumped up from his chair. He hurriedly rushed out. Just as he walked out of the zoo entrance, across the street, he could hear continuous cheers and shouts coming from the other side. Sheen Dalon scratched his somewhat balding head, feeling puzzled. Could it be that they weren't allowed to operate and had to publicly sell off all those robotic animals? With doubt in his mind, Sheen Dalon started weaving through the crowd, circling around the entrance. Finally, he reached the front row. In front, there was a circular area enclosed by a fence, with a black and white fluffy animal sitting on the ground, staring with big innocent eyes at everyone. What kind of animal is this? Sheen Dalon immediately felt something was off as he looked at this robotic creature. This furry creature could easily charm one to death. It definitely had a lethal appeal to young girls and children. Where did this guy come from? With a glance, Sheen Dalon noticed Chue Hao recording on the side, his face becoming more embarrassed. No, we can't let this guy pull in more people. Otherwise, how can we do business in the future? Chin Dalon sneered, knowing that with a little effort, he could instantly paralyze this animal. Thinking of this, he looked at the unique animal in front of him and reached out to touch its head. He continued to stroke down from the head to the chest, reaching Big White's chest, and then patted it. With its head held high and eyes glaring, watching the continuous touching, it silently extended its claws through the gap in the fence. In the blink of an eye, only Big White inside the fence, with sharp claws, suddenly thrust out, accompanied by a piercing sound. Then, a triangular piece of cloth resembling a flag was seen hanging on the guy's head, and he quickly ran back with a swift step. So impressive, it even managed to pull down someone's pants, causing a deafening laughter to erupt from the crowd. Sheen Dalong, as the person involved, was already dumbfounded, realizing that this guy in front of him was not a robotic animal at all. Having run the zoo for such a long time, he paid attention to the latest news about animals worldwide daily, yet he had never heard of such an intelligent robotic animal. Could it be true? Without much consideration, Chin Dalong waved off the caterpillar and quickly pushed through the crowd to run towards his own zoo. Returning to the zoo, Chin Dalong breathed a sigh of relief, gritted his teeth fiercely, since you won't let me live, don't expect an easy time either. With that, he took out his phone and made a call. After a busy day, I sat on the bed at night, and at this moment, the system's voice congratulated the host. The system was shocked, the task has been completed. Do you want to claim the golden python? I looked at the system panel in surprise, clicked to claim, and then placed the golden python in the zoo. Back on the bed, I closed my eyes and quickly entered dreamland. Under the moonlight, three dark figures moved cautiously along the wall, crouching, towards the back of the blue sky zoo. It's about time, getting ready to go in. Just to be safe, don't speak after going in, communicate through gestures. Whether we succeed or not depends on this. The three of them pulled up their masks, nodded at each other, and began to climb over the wall. After landing, Wang Xiaoyong quickly lay on the grass, 
waved to his two brothers on the side, and made a gesture. The two brothers following behind instantly became confused. What does this mean? Wang Xiong turned his head to look at both sides, seeing the two of them still dazed, couldn't help but growl softly, how can we still cooperate like this? You've even forgotten the gestures I taught you, think outside the box. Can you crawl forward on both sides of me, when you see the garden ahead, the target is inside that garden? The three of them began to crawl towards the panda enclosure, gently opened the gate, and Wang Xiaoyang sneaked in. Following the moonlight, you can see a black and white fur bear lying quietly on the ground. It seems it hasn't started. Wang Xiaoyang couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. They were afraid of this robotic animal before they arrived. If it's still in operation, the voltage inside is quite strong. If it malfunctions, it might be dangerous. Now it seems that the boss of this blue sky zoo is also poor. They cut off the power to all the robotic animals at night. That's fine. It'll be much simpler to break this guy later. He gestured to the two brothers again and then they moved forward together. The three of them slowly moved step by step along the grass. Suddenly being tapped, Wang Xiaoyang couldn't help but stop and look back, wondering what it meant. The three of them looked at each other for a while but couldn't figure out what was going on. Wang Xiaoyang couldn't help but whisper, can you be a bit more in sync? Are you trying to make memes out of this? Wang Xiaoyang shivered and teary-eyed said, something bit my leg. Wang Xiaoyang arched his body, quietly stepped back, approached Wang Xiaoyang, and slowly reached out to touch. It's strange to be bitten by something. Endure a bit and learn from your big brother. If it were him, he wouldn't make a sound. At this moment, Wang Xiaoyang felt a slippery and cold sensation. Shower, why are there scales on your pants? Suddenly his finger hurt, followed by a faint sound. What kind of thing is this? Help! Help! Someone help! There's a murder! Su Chen was sleeping soundly in the office when he suddenly heard cries coming from the zoo. He quickly jumped out of bed and ran outside. What's going on? He was the only one in the zoo. How could there be cries for help? Has someone broken in? Full of doubt, Su Chen followed the sound to its source. Panda enclosure? The sound was coming from the panda enclosure. Dubai? Roar! Dubai responded from inside, and Su Chen couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. As long as the giant panda was okay, but, could someone have infiltrated? Pushing open the door to the panda enclosure, before his feet even touched the ground, Su Chen rubbed his eyes in disbelief at the scene before him. In the moonlight, three pale bodies were neatly kneeling on the ground, while, the body of a golden python was tightly coiled around them. The giant panda was sitting in front of the three people, nibbling on bamboo shoots, occasionally looking up to scrutinize them. Dubai? Sensing the eerie atmosphere, Su Chen cautiously called out. Clap! 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 Dubai suddenly got up from the ground, extended its paw and patted the heads of the three people, making a crisp sound. Help! Please make these two go away! Wang Xiaoyang trembled as he knelt on the ground, a large snake head resting on his shoulder. He could feel the cold, creepy scales moving against his skin. What kind of situation was this? If he had known, he wouldn't have come even if he was paid a million. These two in front of him were not ordinary mechanical animals. They were like demons. Especially the bear in front of him, who, with a few swipes, made his ballet costume disappear. Who are you people? Su Chen sat next to Dubai, gently patting its head, and looked at the three people in front of him. We, we just got lost. Roar. Dubai rushed out again, pounced on Wang Xiaoyang as if crazy, and opened its mouth wide. Ah ah ah, please make it stop, please make it stop, we, we were hired to destroy a mechanical animal here by someone else, please, make it stop. Looking at the bear's sharp teeth in front of him, Wang Xiaoyang felt like he was about to wet himself, and he quickly begged for mercy. He would rather be taken away, at least there would be no danger to his life. This blue sky zoo, whether it was the owner or the two incredibly realistic mechanical animals, was simply terrifyingly eerie. Come back. Roar. Su Chen shouted, and Dubai reluctantly backed off. Sitting on the ground, nibbling on bamboo shoots, its dark circle stared fixedly at the three people in front of it. It was so hateful. Why were so many people eyeing its bamboo shoots? The more Dubai thought about it, the angrier it became, its teeth grinding. Destroying mechanical animals? Su Chen pondered for a moment, his face gradually darkening. He hadn't offended anyone recently, but... At the thought of this, Su Chen shuddered. Luckily, Dubai and the others were vigilant, or else if these three people had succeeded, the consequences would have been unimaginable. With that in mind, Su Chen's gaze at the three people became increasingly grim. Dubai, take care of them. Patting Dubai's head, Su Chen turned and left the panda enclosure. It was too late to call the police in the middle of the night, so he would send these three people away in the morning. System, can you install a security system for the zoo? 
Installing a security system will cost 10 million, would the host like to proceed? Install it. Su Chen gritted his teeth. There would definitely be more animals in the future, and incidents like this might become more frequent. 10 million was 10 million, but once the zoo was successfully operating, it would definitely pay off. And, what was most precious in the zoo? Of course, the animals. Their safety must not be compromised. After making up his mind, Su Chen once again entered dreamland. Tomorrow we will be able to operate normally, so we must be prepared. The next morning, after a night of torment, a few guys were already mentally broken. After being taken away by the public security department, Su Chen swept away the fallen leaves at the door, sat at the ticket window, and prepared to open for business. Uncle! Suddenly, the little guy in a princess dress stood in front of the ticket window, waving his hands at Su Chen. Today the baby is here to listen to the sheep again. Ha ha! Su Chen couldn't help but smile at the cute little guy in front of him. Hello, give me two tickets. There are no sheep calls today, but there are new animals. Su Chen smiled and handed over two tickets, looking out at the street. It was still early in the morning, so there shouldn't be too many people yet. Come, I'll accompany you over, little one, and introduce you to the new animal. Leading the lively little guy, they slowly walked towards the panda exhibit. Although there was only one giant panda, it was enough to keep this little one entertained for a long time. After all, Dubai was not a mechanical animal, he had a high level of intelligence, so it was easy to entertain a child. Boss Su, the zoo has changed a lot. Gao Yu looked around, doting on her daughter, hesitated and said, Can I entrust the baby to you for a few hours? I, no problem. No problem. Su Chen waved his hand casually. You go ahead if you have something to do, the little one will be with me, you can rest assured. Thank you so much. Gao Yu could tell that something was off with her daughter's mother today, but Su Chen didn't ask further. This little guy in front of him was his regular fan, coming almost every week. Baby, behave for uncle, mom will be back soon. Su Chen straightened the little one's clothes, waved goodbye, and walked out with a smile. Oh, what is this? Uncle? The baby leaned against the panda exhibit, looking at Dubai lying inside, couldn't help but curiously ask, why does it look cuter than the baby? Ha ha ha. Su Chen opened the door to the panda exhibit, carrying the little one inside step by step. After a night of hard work, Dubai finally fell into a deep sleep in the early morning. Sensing someone approaching the enclosure, he turned his head slightly, not bothering to open his eyes. It must be that guy, the boss, coming empty-handed as usual, without any manners. Giggle, so soft. Uncle, what animal is this? It feels so comfortable to touch. Hmm. Feeling a pair of small hands rubbing his head, Dubai slowly opened his eyes. Dubai. Su Chen saw it wake up and was afraid it would go crazy and pull the little girl's clothes. Meh. Meh. Unexpectedly, Dubai immediately got up, sat on the ground, and hugged the little girl, looking up at Su Chen warily. This little girl is mine. Don't try to take her from me. What's going on? Aren't you open today? Yeah, we came all this way, heard there's a bear here that we've never seen before, has anyone seen it? I saw it at the entrance that day, so I brought my child to see it again today. A group of people stood at the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo, discussing loudly. And all the discussions were about the cute panda that appeared the day before. Boss Su didn't open yesterday, said there was an emergency? Wasn't today supposed to be open? Shui Hao Yu also stood at the entrance, staring at the time on his phone, frowning. Did he oversleep? He hadn't seen the giant panda all day, and he couldn't even sleep at night. Although he had been suspended from the radio station, Shui Hao Yu was not discouraged at all and he was even somewhat pleased. After seeing real animals, Shui Hao Yu felt he had found his future career. The world was ignorant, not believing in the existence of real animals, so he would report it himself. If the TV station didn't work, he would turn to newspapers, and if newspapers didn't work, he would turn to the internet. Sooner or later, these people will understand that all the animals in the entire Blue Sky Zoo are real. Shui Hao Yu felt that behind Su Chen, there was such a powerful research team, yet they remained so low-key, living in seclusion on the outskirts of Hang City. There must be a big plan behind it, and this Blue Sky Zoo is just an excuse. Bang. Sizzle. 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 Shui Hao Yu reached out and patted the old broken gate, his face suddenly changing as he stepped back. The front gate was constantly flashing with a deep blue electric arc. The security system is so strong? Seeing this, Shui Hao Yu felt that his guess was definitely not wrong. There might be a world-class research group supporting the Blue Sky Zoo behind the scenes. Everyone, don't move around. There is an automatic defense program here, and Boss Su should be here soon. Click. Su Chen opened the gate and looked at the crowded crowd in front of him, momentarily stunned. He looked down at the time. 
It was only 10 o'clock in the morning. Why are there so many people today? The boss is out. Hurry up and buy tickets. Don't push. I was here first. Quick, sue boss, buy the tickets and let us in to see Dubai. A group of parents crowded around the ticket window, holding money in their hands, afraid of being snatched by others. Everyone saw the situation that day. If you want to be in the front row, you have to stand in position early. It would be difficult to squeeze in later. Don't push, take it easy, one by one. Su Chen tore the tickets and let each visitor in. Boss Su. Shui Hao Yu stood on the side, smiling and greeting him, then took a step inside. Bang. A transparent metal plate directly blocked him. Buy a ticket. Su Chen pursed his lips, looking at him askance. The defense system produced by the system was indeed well deserved. No one could enter without a ticket. Ah 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 ah. Shui Hao Yu quickly took out money. At this time, the group of visitors who had just entered gathered outside the panda enclosure, constantly exclaiming, I have to hurry up and secure a spot. Muttering to himself, Shui Hao Yu jogged all the way, afraid of missing a good spot. Excuse me, I'm a staff member. Pushing a few children aside, Shui Hao Yu finally could see the situation inside the park. However, when he saw the scene inside the park, Shui Hao Yu quickly picked up his camera and started shooting frantically. It was unbelievable. There was actually a little girl in the panda enclosure, riding on Dubai's back, waving her hands and cheering non-stop. Dad, I wanna go in too. Sob sob sob. I wanna go in too. It looks so fun, I wanna go too. I'm so envious, can our child go in? A group of parents surrounded Shui Hao Yu, asking questions one after another. Well, I want to go in too? Please wait, only children can go in. Suddenly, everyone turned around and saw that Su Boss had already come up behind them. Can the boss really go in? Don't worry, our kids are well behaved, they won't cause any trouble. Exactly, our girl is very timid, she just wants to go in and touch. The boss is so generous, no zoo has ever allowed children to play up close. Hee hee, it's okay, the kids will be fine inside. Suchin smiled, opened the door behind him, and opened the gate to the panda enclosure. After a few days of observation, there was no need to worry about damage inside the panda enclosure. That day, Dubai pulled down the swing, and the next day it was as good as new. Produced by the system, it was indeed extraordinary, able to repair itself automatically. Hiss, hiss, hiss. As a group of children just walked in, a golden yellow python as thick as an arm slowly crawled out from the grass beside them. The snake's head was raised high, its curious eyes staring at the children in front of it. What is this? Everyone looked at the golden yellow python, all frozen in place. It was clear that it was a snake, but completely golden yellow, something they had never seen before. Moreover, no matter how everyone looks at it, the snake in front of them feels real. Xiao Jin, come here. Su Chen stood in the garden, beckoning Xiao Jin over and picking it up. Who wants to touch it? A little boy who was a bit afraid in front of him smiled, and Su Chen wrapped the snake's head around his arm. Uncle, can I touch this? This one? A little boy with big eyes pursed his lips, cautiously took a step forward, and reached out to touch the body of the golden python. Ah ah ah. It's so cool. Panicked, he quickly withdrew his hand, his face turning red with excitement. This. This. A new animal, and it's a snake? Shui Hao Yu widened his eyes, looking at the golden python wrapped around Su Chen, his whole body trembling slightly. It turns out that the boss Su went to pick up a new animal yesterday since the door wasn't open. However, according to records, aren't snakes cold-blooded animals? Why does this one in front of them look a bit different? Hee <laughs> hee, let me introduce everyone. Su Chen shook the golden python and said loudly to everyone outside the garden, this is a golden python, an extremely rare mutant python, but it has a very gentle temperament and can be kept as a pet. Come on, Xiao Jin, say hello to everyone. Hiss, hiss, hiss. The golden python seemed a bit shy, after spitting out a few snake signals, it slowly crawled down from Su Chen's arm. Boss Su. Suddenly, an elderly man with glasses standing outside the garden spoke, I am a biology professor at Qingdu University, specializing in the study of extinct animals. You, the animals in this garden don't seem to be mechanical animals, right? With these words, everyone turned to look at the old man. What does that mean? If they're not mechanical animals, then what are these two creatures here? Hee <laughs> hee, of course they are real animals. Just as everyone was waiting for Su Chen to answer, a child's voice came from behind. The baby was riding on the back of a giant panda, followed by a group of children looking enviously. They seemed to enjoy this feeling. The baby touched the panda's big ears and said playfully, Uncle told the baby that this is a giant panda, and it seems to have another name, Iron Eating Beast. It's a real animal. Come on, Dubai, say hello to them. Roar. 
The Bai raised his head and howled at everyone in front of him, giving a glance to the golden python on the ground. With a group of children, he rushed to the distant grassland to start celebrating. He he he, can the baby let me touch the Bai? Yes, baby, I have lollipops here, for you, let the Bai hug me, okay? Watching the children playing and laughing beside the giant panda, everyone stared at Su Chen intently. Iron eating beast? What is that? Although they say children speak without restraint, but the performance of the giant panda just now was not something an intelligent animal could do. Including the golden python now, using its body to surround all the children, protecting them from running around. Can all this be done by those clumsy mechanical animals? But if they are real animals, this news is really shocking. Iron eating beast? The old man pondered for a moment, then looked up in disbelief at the creature rolling on the ground. This, there is indeed such a creature in mythological stories, it is the mount of the great god Chiyu. Could it be that such a creature really existed on earth in the past? What? An animal from mythological stories? The mount of the great god Chiyu? Although you are a professor, but. Everyone looked at the creature lying on the ground, letting the children rub its belly non-stop, and for a moment, they couldn't believe it. Could this be the mount of the great god Chiyu? Acting cute? Hee <laughs> hee, that's right. Su Chen pondered for a moment, then smiled and said, The old man is right. The giant panda is indeed known as the iron-eating beast, and it is indeed the mount of the great god Chiyu. However, this animal has very high environmental requirements for survival. Even before it became extinct, the number of giant pandas has always been very scarce. Everyone. Su Chen spread out his hands and said loudly to everyone, The animals in the blue sky zoo are all real, so please take good care of them. In the near future, more real animals will appear, including various fierce wild beasts. The Blue Sky Zoo will create a completely balanced natural environment. Sooner or later, all extinct animals will appear in the Blue Sky Zoo. Stay tuned! As soon as he finished speaking, the crowd gathered outside the panda enclosure erupted. Each of them looked incredulously at the creature they had been playing with, realizing it was a real animal. After being extinct for such a long time, real animals actually appeared in this small zoo. This. This, I, I must go back immediately. The biological research professor, with an excited expression, muttered a few words and turned to leave. This news was too shocking. Animal resurrection, the technological discovery held by the organization behind the Blue Sky Zoo, was definitely a groundbreaking find. No one believed that there was a connection between animal resurrection and Su Chen. Countless people around the world were researching this topic, and biologists from every country considered reviving ancient animals through genetic technology as their lifelong goal. Even global financial institutions were investing heavily in research on animal resurrection. Once this technology was mastered, the ability to resurrect animals would bring endless wealth. Whether for human consumption, the environment, or entertainment, the appearance of animals would cause a huge change in the world. All right, Su Chen waved his hand watching the group of playful children, unable to suppress a smile. The shock value he gained today was quite substantial. And, starting from tomorrow, everyone in Hang City would probably know that there were real animals in the Blue Sky Zoo. It wouldn't be long before various researchers and even government officials would come. This was different from the TV program broadcast. Especially with so many children actually touching the giant panda, the spread of this news would undoubtedly be fast. In the hospital corridor, Gao Yu squatted on the ground, silently sobbing. Why? Since this year began, the baby's body had undergone some unfavorable changes. Until today when the hospital called. She had a bad feeling and entrusted the baby to the owner of the Blue Sky Zoo. She could tell that this young man was kind and compassionate. Neuromotor Elemental Disease After consultations at multiple hospitals, her daughter's condition was finally confirmed. It turned out to be the most deadly disease in society today. Muscles throughout the body began to atrophy, starting from the hands to the legs, until she was paralyzed in bed. Why, my baby is so young, why? Why on earth? Gao Yu leaned against the wall and stood up step by step. She couldn't collapse. The little one was still so young. Although there was no treatment, even if the baby ended up paralyzed in bed, even if she had to sell everything, she would definitely keep her daughter by her side. The little one's favorite thing was animals. She must have had a great time at the Blue Sky Zoo today. Thinking of this, Gao Yu wiped away her tears and walked out of the hospital. It had been a long time. The little one must have missed her. She hurriedly took a taxi to the Blue Sky Zoo and walked quickly inside. From a distance, she heard her daughter's laughter coming from a new area in the park. Oh 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 oh, Dubai, hurry up. As she approached, she saw her little one running around on the grass, accompanied by numerous other children. 
A black and white animal is chasing them from behind. Be careful. Suddenly, Gao Yu exclaimed. The little one was running too fast, stumbled, and was about to fall to the ground. Hiss, hiss, hiss. A golden python suddenly sprang out from the bushes beside them, instantly wrapping around the baby's body. Giggle, giggle. It was clear that with the python's body underneath, the little one was not hurt at all. He even climbed up again, holding onto the snake's neck and ran forward with a smile. What? What's going on? Gao Yu had never seen her daughter so happy. Although the two animals in front of her looked big and fierce, it was obvious that they were protecting all the little ones. Even when the snake caught a child, it just nudged them with its head, showing no intention of harm. Blue Sky Zoo. What's happening? Who? 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 Su Chin sent off the last group of little ones, panting as he lay on the grass. Beside him, Dubai was also lying on the ground, tongue hanging out of his mouth, looking exhausted. This won't do. Su Chen turned over, resting on the golden python, muttering to himself. With less than 200 visitors today, he was already exhausted. If there were more people tomorrow, he wouldn't be able to handle it alone. And there were too few animals, relying only on Dubai and Xiao Jin, they would eventually be worn out. But looking at this guy, he seemed to enjoy playing with the kids. Sometimes he looked like a dead dog, and other times he played even more happily than the children. Thinking about this, Su Chen quickly checked the system panel. He should have accumulated nearly 10,000 points of shock value today. He must exchange for the monkey fragments as soon as possible, and successfully resurrect the monkey tonight. This way, there would be more types of animals to play with tomorrow. And there was another important problem. Dubai was fine, he could just eat bamboo shoots, but the golden python couldn't. It was a carnivorous animal, although there were synthetic meats available on the market, they were only made of a type of fungal fiber, although it tasted like meat, it lacked energy. It couldn't replenish the golden python's energy at all. At this rate, the golden python would starve to death. System, is there no animal food available in the store? Host, all items in the store are available, but they are randomly refreshed. Host can obtain meat in the fragment task for consumption. Except for the current animal fragments that can be carried out, the rest of the living creatures in the fragment tasks cannot be taken out. The system prompt sounded in his mind, and Su Chen frowned. In other words, in the animal fragment task, although he could encounter other animals, like the giant toad last time, he couldn't take them out. But if he killed them to get meat, then, he could take it out? But, he was supposed to save the animals, killing them would go against his original intention, right? Host, this is the law of nature. If Blue Sky Zoo develops in the future, it will eventually have to follow the laws of nature, survival of the fittest. Otherwise, animals will still go extinct. Right. Su Chen pondered. The system was right, everything in nature followed a balance. If one species became too numerous, it would inevitably lead to the extinction of another or even multiple species. Only by maintaining a relatively balanced stage could sustainable development be achieved. Although there were no animals in this world right now, the environment was well protected. Jungles, mountains, streams, countless. Blue Sky Zoo would definitely become a large scenic tourist area one day, encompassing all the animals. After much thought, Su Chen immersed himself in the system panel. Divine Level Zoo System. Host, Su Chen Power, 6, Short and Weak, Speed, 8, Late Stage Laziness, Mental Power, 13, Sharp Mind, Current Zoo Area is 2000 Square Meters, Current Animals, 1 Giant Panda, 1 Golden Python. Shock Value, 10,200 Animal Fragments, None. After saving up Shock Value for a few days, there is enough to exchange for Monkey Fragments. Not sure if the first refresh will bring out the animal language function. Su Chen took a deep breath and quickly used 10,000 shock value to exchange for monkey fragments. As expected, the items on the store page instantly refreshed. Animal Fragment Exchange Store, Tyrannosaurus Rex Fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Mammoth Fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Forest Python Fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Hippopotamus Fragment, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Crocodile Fragment, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Honey Badger Fragment, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Magpie Fragment, requires 10,000 shock value for exchange. Animal Language Function, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Special Ability, will not refresh the store after exchange. Wow, it really refreshed. Su Chen exclaimed excitedly. The animal language function is likely intentionally released by the system. However, it requires a whopping 100,000 shock value, which is a bit challenging. Forget it, cross the bridge when you come to it. 
I must gather enough shock value to exchange for the animal language function. With the animal language function, whether managing animals in the zoo or completing fragment tasks, it will be invaluable help. Phew. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen turned to look at the monkey fragments just exchanged. Checking the time, the sky was gradually darkening. Since the security system was installed in the zoo, Su Chen no longer had to worry about the safety of Dubai and the others at night. I wonder what this task will be about. Su Chen pondered and pulled out a suitcase from under the bed. These were survival tools purchased online. Whether it was climbing shoes or a sharp wilderness knife, everything was there, and the boss even included a set of outdoor fire tools. Looking at the two sticks hanging together, Su Chen couldn't help but shake his head. Is this really a fire tool for the wilderness, using friction to start a fire? Changing into a durable climbing suit, Su Chen began to pack all the equipment into the various small pockets on the clothes. Not sure if the system allows backpacks, otherwise, Su Chen even wanted to bring a tent. Dealing with monkeys this time, and, where there are monkeys, there must be mountains. Swish. Tucking the dagger into his pants leg, Su Chen checked everything and, seeing no omissions, instructed the system to start the monkey fragment task. Ding, start the monkey fragment task. Countdown. 10. 9. 8. Hum. Suddenly, everything blurred before Su Chen's eyes, feeling like falling from a great height. He sat up abruptly, looking around in confusion. The sun was high in the sky. And. Hiss. Looking down, he found himself sitting on a high branch, dozens of meters above the ground. This is too much of a pitfall. Muttering, Su Chen carefully hugged the branch and began to move towards the main trunk. The surroundings were silent, with no sign of monkeys. Looking at the dozen meter tree trunk, Su Chen spread his arms tightly around it. At this moment, he could only slowly climb down, otherwise, staying in the tree was too dangerous. The top priority was to find the trace of the monkey. I wonder what dangers I will encounter this time. Pondering, Su Chen hugged the big tree and started to descend slowly. Bang! Suddenly, something heavy hit his head, causing Su Chen to freeze. Looking up, bang bang bang, fruits the size of oranges rained down. Ha ha, is this tonight's live broadcast? Looking for monkeys in the live broadcast? But, what kind of family is this? Can they play this big? Wow, the scenery here is truly breathtaking, like a paradise on earth. And it's still daytime, are we in another hemisphere? Enough talking, we've been waiting for two days, the streamer is finally live, so excited. Be careful. Here comes a group of monkeys. The top streamer is online. All the brothers are gathering to watch the story between the streamer and the monkeys. Stay tuned. Su Chen had just clumsily climbed down from the tree when the system started the live broadcast. However, the name for tonight had been changed to Monkey Fragment Mission. Han Dong had been waiting backstage for two days, and despite trying to contact the guy through the reserved contact information in the live room, he couldn't reach him. He had to sit in front of the computer every day. But luckily, two days later, the guy finally went live. I've reported to the supervisor, I must perform well tonight. After a moment of contemplation, Han Dong entered the live room. Wow, so many people? Looking at the constantly jumping numbers on the screen, he couldn't help but exclaim. If he remembered correctly, there were less than 10,000 viewers on the first night, but now on the second live stream, it had jumped straight to 30,000 viewers. These were all real-time data, no falsification at all. And it seemed like the number of viewers would continue to increase. Bang. 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 Su Chen clung tightly to the big tree with his hands and feet, keeping his head down as the monkeys above kept throwing fruits at him. In just a short while, Su Chen had several big bumps on his forehead. I better get down quickly. Luckily, it's just fruits. If they were stones, I'd probably be lying on the ground by now. Braving the rain of fruits, Su Chen used both his hands and feet to quickly climb down the tree. Squeak. Squeak. Squeak! A group of monkeys sat on the tree branches, staring with wide eyes at the person below, scratching their heads continuously. Such big monkeys? How come I've never seen them before? And, they don't even have fur? As the monkeys watched Su Chen land, they all jumped up and moved to a thicker tree on the opposite side. Bang! 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 The rain of fruits came down again. Is this never-ending? I'm here to save you guys. Su Chen picked up a few fruits from the ground and threw them back up. Squeak! One monkey couldn't dodge in time and got hit in the face by the fruit Su Chen threw, making its eyes look crossed as it sat on the tree branch in a daze. Roar! Suddenly, a roar came from the nearby mountain forest. Squeak! 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 The group of monkeys heard it and rushed towards the roar. What's going on? Su Chen picked up a few hard fruits from the ground and cautiously followed. The roar just now didn't sound very clear. Could it be that a fierce beast was approaching? Thinking about this, Su Chen couldn't help but quicken his pace. 
All the monkeys were in the trees, so it might be difficult to rescue them. Squeak. Su Chin heard a series of virgin monkey calls and quickly darted out from behind the big tree in front of him. Ah. Uh, seeing a group of monkeys holding fruits similar to walnuts in their hands, Su Chen abruptly stopped in his tracks. Squeak. Squeak. A giant monkey, with fur all over its body resembling burning flames, was twice the size of the other monkeys. It held a fruit similar to a small watermelon in its hands, squinting at Su Chun with an unfriendly expression. The monkey king? Ah, uh, it's all a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Looking at the group of monkeys in front of him, Su Chen felt a chill down his spine. Did he take the wrong medicine? Did he offend them? Why did they have such a big watermelon? If it hit his head, would he survive? Squeak. Suddenly, the monkey king in front of him snarled, raising the watermelon like fruit in its hands high. Damn it! Su Chen roared, grabbed a hard fruit in his hand, and hurled it out. Bang! Bang! Two consecutive dull thuds. A fruit hit the monkey king directly on the head, causing its eyes to roll up and it fell to the ground holding a watermelon high in the air. With a sudden gasp, the monkey king's eyes blazed as it stood up. How dare someone do this in front of so many concubines? Where is the monkey king's dignity? How will the female monkeys look at me in the future? The monkey king's chest heaved as it clenched its fists and snatched the weapon from the monkey beside it. With a fierce look, it threw it directly at Su Chen. So fierce? Su Chen exclaimed, quickly dodging and throwing the last two fruits in his hand. This monkey is getting clever. Another scream was heard. Su Chen couldn't help but smirk, thinking that the monkey king was really unlucky. As he was about to bend down to pick up the fruits, the monkey king suddenly rose unsteadily, its face turning even redder. It was really angry. Give me a break. Standing up straight, the monkey king pointed at the annoying guy in front of it and roared. What the heck? Su Chen looked up and saw all the monkeys raising their weapons as if they had planned it, howling and throwing them. Countless fruits hit Su Chen's head, making him feel dizzy as he saw the monkeys about to charge at him. Without hesitation, he turned and started running away. What kind of mission was this? It was too much. Not only was there no progress, but now he had become enemies with the monkeys. How could he save himself now? Su Chen looked back at the monkeys chasing him, his face showing how unpleasant the situation was. How could he, a grown man, be unable to deal with a group of monkeys? How could he continue being the zookeeper if this got out? Suddenly, another loud scream was heard behind him. Su Chen turned to see the monkey king, who had gone mad, chasing him with a football-sized rock. This is too much. Bang! A gunshot rang out in the distance, causing both Su Chen and the monkeys to freeze in place. A monkey fell from a tree, covered in blood with its belly blown open by a bullet. Poachers? Is this the mission? Su Chen's mind went blank at that moment. When he realized what was happening, he quickly darted into the nearby bushes. The monkeys looked at the dead body on the ground and started fleeing in madness. What should he do? Su Chen hid in the bushes, pulling out the dagger tied to his leg, sweating profusely. He never expected the mission to be so dangerous. These were poachers. On the former earth, countless endangered animals died at the hands of these people. They had no humanity, cruelly killing and selling animals, even providing many illegal zoo animals. For a little profit, they didn't care how rare the animals were. Even if there was only one left, as long as it brought enough profit, they would not hesitate to raise their knives. Stay calm, Su Chen, you must stay calm. After a moment of contemplation, Su Chen slowly moved behind a tree in the bushes. Hopefully, these people were not after the monkeys. But if they were, he might still have a chance. The dead monkeys were worthless, the poachers would surely capture them alive. After all, whether sold to a circus or served on a plate, the monkeys had to be alive. Su Chen had heard that in a fancy restaurant abroad, they served live monkey brains for consumption. The despicable person. Squeak. Suddenly, a group of gibbons in the distance let out a panicked howl. Su Chen's heart skipped a beat. It seemed like they were really chasing after the gibbons. Carefully crawling out of the bushes, Su Chen bent down and slowly felt his way towards the direction of the sound. Ha ha ha. From afar, a rough laughter could be heard. Su Chen hid behind a tree, took a deep breath, crawled on the ground, and peeked out. In front of him was a tall figure wearing a green camouflage suit, with deep eye sockets and a high nose bridge, looking like a Russian. And, in the hands of this strong man was a large net, with several gibbons struggling inside. Among them was the gibbon king that had been chasing Su Chen earlier. Squeak. The gibbon king was not only panicked at this moment, but also angry. It gnashed its teeth and bit the net. Bang. Seeing this, the Russian strongman stomped heavily on the gibbon king's body with his heavy leather boots, crushing it. Squeak. 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 A piercing scream rang out. 
Su Chin couldn't help but clench his fists, furrow his brows, and watch the scene in front of him. How could he save these gibbons? The poacher had a gun, while he only had a dagger. The power difference was too great. Moreover, poachers never acted alone, there must be at least three of them in a group. There were probably two more people around who hadn't shown themselves. Who? Taking a deep breath, Su Chen quietly lay on the ground, watching the strong man in front of him torturing the gibbons in the net, with two gibbon corpses beside him. Ah, I'm so angry, where is this? I want to kill this Russian guy now. The gibbons are so pitiful, beasts. Although I know this might be a scripted show, but, I can't help it, I just want to go up and kill these guys now. How did the gibbons provoke them? They are not human, actually targeting such weak animals. Don't be impulsive, host, this is not a rehearsed show at all, although I don't know how the host managed it, but, host, keep it up, you must save the gibbons. Yes, last time saving the golden python was thrilling enough, didn't expect this time to be even more difficult. My palms are sweating, my heart feels like it's going to jump out. On the barrage, everyone watched the brutal scene of torturing the gibbons and angrily cursed. Bang! Beast! Han Dong slammed the table, his face turning red as he roared. It was too infuriating, he was itching with hatred. Such lifelike animals in this world are so precious, yet this Russian in the video was so cruel. No, I have to get this show on the front page. Gritting his teeth, Han Dong immediately pinned Su Chen's live broadcast to the banner on the front page. Save the gibbons. Host, keep it up. Although knowing this was a live broadcast, and it might be a fake show, but even if it's fake, seeing this situation, any normal person with compassion would rush forward to subdue the Russian poacher and save the gibbons. This kind of extinction method is more helpless than the disaster that happened before. Is there a sense of accomplishment in torturing a living being like this? Anyone else? Han Dong looked at the live broadcast screen and saw two more Russians coming in, his eyes widening. Who? 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 Su Chen lay panting next to a big tree, watching the two Russians who had brought back more gibbons, gasping for breath. Indeed, it was a team of three poachers. And, judging by the skillful appearance of the three, it seemed like they had been here to poach before. Ha! Huh? Suddenly, the first Russian strong man opened his backpack, took out a tent, and started setting it up on the spot. Are they staying overnight here? Then, are the captured gibbons not enough? Su Chen muttered softly. If that's the case, then when night falls, he will have a chance to rescue all the macaques. Watching the strong man slowly set up all three tents, Su Chen also lay motionless on the ground, quietly waiting for the sun to set. In the deep night of the jungle, the temperature was very low, Su Chen's lips had turned purple, but, even so, he lay on the ground without moving. Finally, after waiting for over five hours, the three poachers in front of him tied all the nets together, bundling the macaque group inside, and then slowly crawled into the tent with a sigh. Hiss. 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 Due to the temperature, Su Chen's body had already stiffened, lying on the ground shaking all over, trying to warm up his body. After waiting for another half an hour, when the three poachers were all fast asleep, he would be able to go and rescue all the macaques. Phew! He touched his cheek, feeling that it was no longer so cold, Su Chen carefully began to crawl forward. Squeak! The macaque king, after a day of torment, stared with lifeless eyes, staring blankly at the dim jungle in the distance. The former monkey king was taken away like this, never to return. It couldn't understand why these people would come to capture them every once in a while. Suddenly, a dark figure was slowly crawling towards them from a distance on the ground. The macaque king's eyes lit up, sitting up from the ground, tightly gripping the net, watching the slow approach of the dark figure. Was this the person who played with them during the day? Was he here to rescue them? Shu, Su Chen slowly stood up from the ground, pointing his index finger at the macaque king in front of him, signaling it not to make a sound. Before coming over, Su Chen was extremely worried, after all, macaques were wild animals. Although intelligent, it might be difficult for them to completely obey his commands. However, fortunately, the macaque king seemed to understand Su Chen's gestures, not only did it not make a sound, but it also suppressed the restless low growls of the nearby monkey group. Good. Su Chen gave it a thumbs up. He turned to look at the three tents beside him, where loud snores could be heard. Obviously, they had fallen into a deep sleep. Squeak. Slowly pulling out a dagger from his pants leg, Su Chen stepped towards the net. Listen, walk in that direction later. He pointed to himself, then to the distant jungle, wiping the blood off the macaque king's forehead, whispering. Suddenly, the macaque king grabbed Su Chen's hand, staring with a pair of intelligent eyes, nodding solemnly. Creak. The sound of the dagger rubbing against the net was unusually harsh in the silent night. This won't work. Su Chen looked down, stopped cutting the net. No wonder each of these macaques had blood at the corners of their mouths. It turned out that the nets used by these poachers were mixed with metal strands. 
These were nets made entirely of rope and metal. Although the dagger could cut through the metal, the sound would be loud, possibly waking up the poachers. Phew! Su Chen gritted his teeth and took off his climbing jacket. Instantly, a bone-chilling cold wind swept in. Su Chen couldn't help but shiver all over. Wrapping the jacket around the net, Su Chen carefully resumed cutting. Meanwhile, in the live broadcast room, the number of viewers had risen to 50,000. Everyone was staring at the screen, their hearts clenched. At this moment, Su Chen's eyes were incredibly calm and focused. Everyone held their breath, their hearts pounding. Damn, it must succeed, these monkeys are too pitiful. Yeah, the streamer's lips have turned purple from the cold. What kind of live broadcast is this? It's like I've got sand in my eyes. Come on, streamer, come on. The monkeys are obedient too, they know the streamer is saving them. They are really intelligent. I can't do it anymore. Where is this anchor from? This live broadcast program is really amazing. This is definitely not pre-rehearsed. How could it be so touching? It's so thrilling, anchor, go for it. The barrage was constantly cheering for Su Chen. In this moment, the hearts of tens of thousands of people in the live broadcast room were all focused on Su Chen. Whether they could successfully rescue the macaque group depended on this moment. Bang! A slight and muffled sound rang out, and Su Chen couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief as he finally cut the net. He waved to the macaque king and slowly lifted the net, allowing the group of macaques to successfully climb out. Watching the macaques one by one successfully climb out, Su Chen led the group of monkeys step by step towards the net. Zila! Suddenly, there was a sound of a tent zipper being opened behind him. Not good. Run. Su Chen didn't care about much, not even picking up the clothes that fell on the ground. He waved to the macaques and quickly ran into the jungle. Bang. A gunshot. G. A macaque paused, slowly lowered its head to look at the blood hole in its chest, kept waving its hands, and fell to the ground. Go. Su Chen roared and quickly rushed forward, crouching. These three poachers must have known that someone had saved the macaques. Once caught up, with the ferocity of these people, he probably wouldn't survive. G. Suddenly, the tall macaque king in front stopped, waved to Su Chen, and quickly disappeared into a nearby ravine. Let's go for it. It was clear that this guy was showing him the way. Su Chen didn't hesitate and quickly followed. Bang. 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 The gunshots continued, and Su Chen could feel a swift cold wind passing by his ear. It was a bullet. It almost hit him. For a moment, Su Chen's face turned pale, and large beads of cold sweat dripped down his cheeks. The poachers had gone mad, they didn't care about his life at all, they wanted to shoot him directly. G. 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 Suddenly, several macaques following beside him howled, and Su Chen looked puzzled. He saw several macaques deliberately exposing their position, then shouting loudly, leading the poachers away, buying time for him. Damn it! Su Chen's eyes turned red, gritted his teeth, and charged forward. At this moment, it was not just about rescuing the macaque group, he had to teach these poachers a profound lesson. G. The macaque king stood in front of a cave, pointing inside and roaring at Su Chen to go in. Go! Su Chen gritted his teeth and quickly bent over to enter. The cave was very dark, he couldn't see his hand in front of his face, so he could only feel his way along the rock wall. G. The macaque king at the front suddenly stopped, pulled Su Chen to turn in a diagonal direction, leading to a narrow side passage. G. G. After a few howls, the macaque king turned and ran outside the cave again. Is it asking me to hide here? What about them? Su Chen's face changed, and he quickly got up. He came to save the macaques, but now it seemed like the macaques were saving him. And, once the mission failed, he could imagine that this group of macaques would have no way out. Who? He exhaled a breath, bent over and felt the wall, and walked towards the cave entrance again. Kong. Suddenly, there was a gunshot at the cave entrance, and a group of macaques rushed in. They hadn't escaped yet, and a poacher had caught up. Go inside. Su Chen growled lowly, driving the macaques into the cave, and he lurked in the deep pit along the wall again. Ka cha. Ka cha. Ka cha. The heavy boots made crisp sounds on the ground. Su Chen patted the monkey king's head gently, stroking its fur. He could feel the monkey king trembling non-stop. It seemed to sense Su Chen's intentions, and gradually the monkey king's trembling body slowed down. A beam of flashlight shone from the entrance of the cave. Su Chen quickly hugged the monkey king and stepped back. A dark hunting rifle appeared in front of him. Watching the heavy boots pass by, Su Chen gritted his teeth, pulled out a dagger from his calf, and slowly arched his body. Squeak! Suddenly, the monkey king let out a low growl, leaping up from the ground and grabbing the head of the villain in front of him. Seeing this, Su Chen also got up from the ground and pounced on the villain. Ah! Hashtag dollar at percent. Su Chen snatched the hunting rifle from the strong man's hand, 
pressing the dagger against his neck. Although they couldn't understand each other's language, the Russian man was startled by the cold tip of the dagger. Monkey King, come down. The Monkey King, who was pulling the strong man's hair, reluctantly climbed down. Puff. Su Chen narrowed his eyes and stabbed the strong man's thigh, causing a gush of blood. Ah, ah, ah. The man howled in pain. Su Chen picked up the flashlight, looked at the fierce-looking Russian man, slowly squatted down, and stripped off all his clothes. Humph. Go. Glancing at the poacher lying on the ground wailing, Su Chen felt no pity. He even thought he was being too kind. After killing so many monkeys, just stabbing you once is letting you off too easily. However, there were still two poachers outside the cave, and Su Chen already had a hunting rifle. Today, he must teach these poachers a lesson so they never dare to come back and poach again. Squeak. The monkey king stood in front of Su Chen, sniffed deeply, and immediately pointed in a direction. Bang. A sudden gunshot rang out in the distance, and Su Chen quickly followed. From afar, he could see another poacher aiming a rifle at the monkeys fleeing in the trees. Bang! The gunshot sounded, and the poacher fell to the ground, clutching his thigh and wailing. Su Chen walked over slowly. The monkey king picked up the fallen rifle and threw it aside. Squeak! With a call, the monkeys in the trees rushed down and began tearing at the poacher's clothes on the ground. After a few minutes, the poacher was stripped clean. Percent dollar hashtag at percent. He kept muttering something, but Su Chen couldn't understand a word. He raised the rifle and walked over to him. Bang! A shot knocked the poacher unconscious. There was one poacher left. Once he dealt with this poacher, his mission to rescue the monkeys would be complete. Although some monkeys had died, if Su Chen hadn't appeared, the entire monkey group would have been in danger today. They would either be enslaved for life or end up as food on the table. Either way, the outcome would be extremely tragic. Percent dollar at hashtag percent. Suddenly, a reprimanding voice came from behind. Su Chen turned around abruptly to see the last poacher aiming a gun at him. Damn, what kind of plot is this? The host must be careful. It's so heart-wrenching. I think all these poachers should be killed. They're despicable. I see it now. This live broadcast isn't staged, it's real. The gun just now was definitely not fake. But what is the host's identity? Forget about the identity, the poachers must die. The whole family should die. Exactly, aren't monkeys' lives too? How can humans decide the life and death of animals at will? What will happen to the host? Will he be shot? Do not do it. A group of people watched the confrontation between the two sides, their hearts hanging high. It was really nerve-wracking. However, when everyone saw Su Chen decisively injure two poachers, the tension in their chests finally eased. They must not escape. Everyone kept shouting in their hearts. Suddenly, the king of the macaques in the picture moved silently to one side. Then a shadow flashed by. Bang! The gunshot rang out. Everyone involuntarily clasped their hands tightly together, eyes wide open. They watched as a puff of white smoke rose from the tree behind Su Chen, and couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. It didn't hit, thank goodness. Squeak! 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 And a group of macaques bared their teeth, crazily rushing forward, instantly knocking down the poacher. Ah! The screams rang out, the macaques seemed to have gone mad, their sharp claws constantly tearing open the poacher's clothes, leaving behind bloody marks. That's enough! Su Chen coldly shouted, stepping towards the last poacher. Bang! Another shot hit his calf, Su Chen squinted slightly, collecting all the items. These three poachers could not stay here, they must face the punishment they deserved. After a while, Su Chen walked at the front, with a group of macaques dragging the three poachers in the net, heading out of the jungle. No poaching! Looking at the blood-red sign planted at the edge of the jungle, Su Chen silently threw the three hunting rifles on the ground. Dragging the net, he threw the three poachers in front of the sign, completely naked. It was about to dawn, with the sign no poaching hanging here, there would definitely be patrollers in the morning. Wait for the punishment of the law. With a low growl, Su Chen led the group of macaques back into the jungle. Up to now, there were less than 20 macaques left in the group. Just three poachers had caused the death of more than 10 macaques in one night. Although Su Chen did not kill the three poachers, he had shattered all their lower legs. It would probably be impossible for them to stand up in the future, let alone poach again. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully completing the macaque fragment task. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully resurrecting the macaque group, gaining plus one mental power. Returning to the beginning, the live broadcast is interrupted. The scene in front of him changed. Su Chen gasped as he sat up from the bed, large beads of sweat dripping down. Looking back now, tonight was really extremely dangerous. The extinction of animals is not only due to ecological factors, but also largely because of humans. It seems that in the future, 
I will have to deal with poachers a lot if I want to revive animals myself. Su Chin pondered, looking at the group of macaques in front of him, unable to help but smile. Although it was very dangerous, but it was all worth it. This was a group of macaques, after reproduction, their numbers would definitely increase in the future. Let's go! Waving his hand, Su Chen led the group of macaques out of the door, heading towards the panda enclosure. The funds in the system were not enough to build a monkey enclosure now, so these monkeys could only be temporarily placed in the panda enclosure. However, tonight not only saved the macaque population, but also in the poacher's tent, Su Chen even found the body of a sick deer. It could be used to feed the golden python. Oh whoa! Dubai hung on the swing, watching Su Chen leading a group of monkeys towards it, couldn't help but howl, and fell off the swing. After hastily getting up, Dubai patted the golden python lying on the ground. Quick! Someone wants to take over the territory. So hateful. Oh whoa! Su Chen looked at Dubai, who was lying on the ground with a fierce look, wanting to take a step forward. Unexpectedly, Dubai roared directly, rushing towards the group of macaques behind him. Squeak! The monkey king was not to be outdone, instantly exploding. The situation that followed completely exceeded Su Chen's control. A panda was fighting with a group of macaques. What's going on? Su Chen hurried over to stop the chaos in the panda enclosure. What's the situation? Do these two species have some kind of grudge? Why are they fighting as soon as they meet? Stop fighting! Su Chen shouted, and the macaque king froze in place, while the panda continued to attack. Bang! 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 The panda slapped the macaque king's buttocks hard, then sat on top of him triumphantly. Humph! Dare to come and steal my territory, now you know who's boss. Squeak! The macaque king furrowed his brow tightly, tried to struggle to get up, but this guy on top of him was just too heavy, he couldn't even catch his breath. Dubai! Get up! Su Chen frowned and gestured for Dubai to come over. Roar! Unexpectedly, Dubai turned his head away, looking cold and aloof. Really needs to be taught a lesson. Su Chen muttered, walking over step by step. He picked up two bamboo shoots from the ground, ready to leave. Sure enough, bah, his leg was tightly grabbed. Seeing Dubai pretending to be pitiful, Su Chen was furious. This guy was definitely doing it on purpose. Squeak, roar. Suddenly, the macaque king behind them leaped onto Dubai's head, pounding his fists on the panda's head. Dubai roared, rolled over, and once again pinned the macaque king down. Slap, grabbing a tuft of monkey hair, he yanked it off. The macaque king cried out in pain. Woo woo woo, a deep sobbing sound was heard. Can you believe it? A panda made a monkey cry? Su Chen rolled his eyes and picked up Dubai again. It seemed that these two couldn't be together, they were just arch enemies. Should he build a separate monkey enclosure? But, the funds in the system were only 1 million left, not enough to build a monkey enclosure. Moreover, these were a group of monkeys that could climb trees, with the current condition of the remaining enclosures, they couldn't be contained. Ding, as the zoo director, how can you not even manage the animals? System task, advise the two fighting animals, reward, several macaque toys. Oh, there's a task? Su Chen listened to the task announced by the system, looking at the two animals still entangled, a slight smile appeared on his face. Wait a minute. His expression changed, and Su Chen quickly checked the system panel. After coming back and leading the monkey group, he had completely ignored how much shock value the system had given him. Is it enough? There were a whopping 110,000 shock values on the panel which meant he could finally exchange for the animal language function? Then, it would be much easier to manage in the future. Host, do you want to use the animal language function? Yes. Su Chen felt a buzz in his head, followed by a noisy sound in his ears. Ah, 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 how dare you touch my butt? Next time you come here, just wait, I'll beat you to death. It was Dubai and the macaque king entangled together. However, these two seemed to be just fighting, using their claws more than anything, without shedding a drop of blood except for the macaque losing a tuft of hair. Seeing this, Su Chen nodded approvingly. It seemed that the animals resurrected by the system were sensible, they wouldn't easily harm others. Whether it was the humans coming in or their companions, they wouldn't use excessive force. However, it was not a solution for these two to keep fighting like this. Stop! Su Chen coldly shouted, stepping in between the two and pulling their ears to separate them. You wait. You look at me again? Smack! Smack! Su Chen gave each of them a smack on the head, and the two animals immediately quieted down. Afterwards, give the monkey here, and here to you, got it? Pointing to the swing in the center, Su Chen picked up Dubai's head and said coldly, the monkey will stay with you for a few days, until the monkey park is built. Then it will leave, no fighting allowed. If you dare fight again, bamboo shoots will be halved. Ow. Oh, I won't fight anymore. 
Dubai drooped his head, looking aggrieved, and whimpered softly. And you? Su Chen turned to look at the monkey. Squeak. Yes, yes. The monkey king nodded continuously. The animal language function is really useful. The sounds these two make are transformed into a language Su Chen can understand, even though their tones are different. Dubai's voice is a bit rough, while the monkey's voice sounds more like a young boy. Su Chen, can I still hang on the swing in the future? Suddenly, a lowly voice came from behind. Su Chen paused, turned around in disbelief to see the golden python slithering up to Dubai. What the heck? The golden python is a girl? Female? And it transformed into a lowly voice? Ow. Dubai wrapped his arms around the golden python and coiled around her neck, blaring angrily at the monkey king, then happily sat on the swing. Watching the panda and the golden python being affectionate, Su Chen pinched his brow. This guy definitely has issues. Not only does he steal people's clothes, but he seems to have a thing for females. Hiss. Thinking this, Su Chen's expression became even more strange, it seems he'll have to keep Dubai away from female visitors in the future. In case he tries to steal their clothes, this. Ding, host task completed, monkey group toys distribution begins. These are the toys? Looking at the neatly arranged row of children's tricycles in front of him, Su Chen widened his eyes. He didn't expect the system to be so unorthodox. Ha Chu. He sneezed, looked at the time, it was already 6 o'clock in the morning. Su Chen glanced at the harmonious scene between the two sides, then turned and walked towards the office. There were still a few hours before opening time, he needed to get a good sleep. However, it seems a bit overwhelming to manage the entire zoo alone, if necessary, he might have to hire two people. At the very least, he needed to hire a ticket seller. Ow. Oh. Shortly after Su Chen left, another animal roar came from the panda enclosure. Squeak. The Bai watched a group of monkeys riding tricycles, his big eyes rolling, he roared and pulled one monkey off the tricycle, dragging the tricycle towards the exit of the panda enclosure. Xi'an capital. Guanshan town. Oldly, where are you going so early? The old man sitting at the door sunbathing, watching the elderly man coming out of the courtyard with a bicycle, smiled and asked. Old Chin Ah. Oldly pushed the old bicycle, looked up at the old man at the door, and greeted him. Xiao Xiao, call Grandpa Chin. Sitting on the back seat of the bicycle was a boy of about six years old, but he seemed a bit dull. He just glanced at Grandpa Chin, then quickly lowered his head, trembling, his face turning pale, constantly picking at his fingers. It was clear that the boy seemed very nervous. Ah, this child. Oldly looked down at the child, sighed deeply. Let's go, be careful on the road. Old Sheen waved to him, and kindly advised, or you can wait a bit, let the child drive you there. It's still far from Hangcheng. No need. Oldly got on the bicycle, instructed his grandson behind him, Xiao Xiao, hold on to grandpa, sit tight. Let's go. Nodding slightly, he pedaled the bicycle and turned out of the village alley. Ah, what a pitiful child. How could such a good child get depression? Grandpa Qin shook his head helplessly and sighed. Xiao Xiao, are you cold? Would you like to go to the zoo to see the animals today? Didn't you always like watching animals on TV? Grandpa, today I'll take you to see animals and then we can eat something delicious, okay? Oldly pedaled his bicycle with effort, sweat starting to trickle down his forehead. Along the way, Oldly kept talking non-stop to his grandson behind him, but the little boy sitting behind him still kept his head down, not saying a word. Ever since his son and daughter-in-law died in a car accident, he had been raising his grandson alone. Although he received a pension every month, the expensive medical bills for his grandson's depression made it hard for Oldly to breathe, and he had to watch over the child constantly. The child, suffering from depression, couldn't attend school normally and had to stay at home all day. Moreover, the child didn't speak a word all day, which made Oldly even more heartbroken. He was afraid that when he wasn't looking, the child might do something extreme to harm himself. At just six years old, how would they face the days ahead? However, in a chance encounter, Oldly discovered that his grandson was standing in front of the TV watching the mechanical animals inside, and his eyes gradually lit up. Do, do, dog. The child, who hadn't smiled in a long time, actually grinned, although the smile was somewhat terrifying and chilling, but even so, it brought tears of joy to Oldly's eyes. Finally, he saw a glimmer of hope. From that moment on, in addition to setting aside some money for the child's medical expenses, Oldly lived frugally, collecting vegetable leaves and such every day so that he could take the child to the zoo once a week. Recently, he heard that the Qin Tian Zoo in Hangcheng had acquired a new batch of fierce animals, so he decided to take the child on a two-hour bike ride to Hangcheng. As long as the child could smile today, everything would be worth it. If his grandson could smile, then one day, the depression would surely be cured. Watching his life inch closer to its end, having experienced the pain of burying his own son, the only thing the old man couldn't let go of now was his grandson.
Once he passed away, what would become of this child, even if he were sent to an orphanage? How would his life unfold? This question weighed on him like a mountain, leaving him breathless all day. Arriving on the outskirts of Hangcheng, Old Lee parked his bicycle to the side and stood on the ground, holding the child. Following the map he had checked in advance, they slowly made their way to the Qin Tian Zoo. However, upon reaching the entrance of the zoo and seeing the closed gates of the Qin Tian Zoo, Old Lee's hands trembled slightly as he held the coins. It was closed. He had brought his grandson on a two-hour bike ride, and he had already promised the child. This place. Old Lee turned to his grandson following behind him, and smiled slightly at the boy with his dull eyes. Don't worry, it'll probably open soon. Grandpa will take you to buy some candy first, okay? Walking to the nearby vendor, Old Lee pointed to the Qin Tian Zoo and asked, Hello, can I ask why the Qin Tian Zoo isn't open today? You mean that zoo? The female boss looked at the two of them and said with a bitter smile, I heard the owner got into trouble and was arrested. Oh, I don't know if the zoo will reopen. If it doesn't, my business will probably suffer. I should have gone to the other side. Arrested? Old Lee's expression froze, his lips twitching slightly. Should he take his grandson back, or ride another four hours to the zoo in Xianchang? Old Lee was in a dilemma. Are you looking for a zoo? There's another one across the street that's been quite popular lately. Many people go there every day. Hengqing only has these two zoos, but the one across the street is quite small, and they probably don't have many animal species. The female boss looked at the old man in front of her struggling, then glanced at the somewhat abnormal little boy following behind. She sympathetically said, there are indeed many people recently, you can take the child with you. Thank you. Old Lee quickly hugged the child and crossed the traffic lights to arrive at the entrance of the zoo across the street. Looking at the dilapidated gate, Old Lee hesitated. If the entrance was already in such a state, what kind of animals would be inside? Today, it was not easy to bring the little one out. What if inside? Xiao Xiao, shall we go to this one? Squatting in front of his grandson, Old Lee tugged at his clothes collar and smiled. Xiao Xiao looked at the entrance and then lowered his head, looking pale. Well, let's go to this one. Going to Xianqing might be a bit too much. Old Lee made up his mind and led the little one towards the ticket booth. Sitting at the ticket booth was a fair-faced young man who was busy playing with his phone. Young man, does a six-year-old child need a ticket? Ah? Su Chen looked up at the grandfather and grandson in front of him and quickly smiled, children under six do not need a ticket. Your grandson just needs one ticket, then give me one. After hearing this, Old Lee felt that this place was good. He only needed one adult ticket. The money saved could be used to buy some good food for the little one in the evening. La 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 la. Just as they were about to enter, a little girl sat on a black and white bear, making faces at a group of monkeys riding tricycles behind her. A group of children ran past Old Lee in a hurry. This. Watching the chasing children, Old Lee stood still in amazement. Wasn't this a zoo? Why did it feel more like an amusement park? Xiao Xiao, shall grandpa take you to see the animals? Looking back at his grandson, he saw the little one looking at the monkeys riding tricycles, his eyes gradually clearing. I. I want to go. What did you say? Just as Old Lee was about to lead the little one forward, a voice he hadn't heard in a long time suddenly came from behind. Do you want to play with those, children? Old Lee's voice trembled slightly, something he had never experienced before. The little one had never been in such a situation before, this. Squeak. Suddenly, a macaque riding a big red tricycle braked in front of Old Lee. It jumped off the tricycle and pulled the little one to run forward. Hey, Xiao Xiao. Old Lee was surprised and tried to catch up. Sir, no need to chase, everything is fine. The children will be safe. Suddenly, the ticket seller stood behind him, smiling and said, I am Su Chen, the director of Blue Sky Zoo. Is that little boy your grandson? Is it really okay? Old Lee looked at the young man's warm smile and then at the chasing children, feeling a bit relieved. But, my grandson is a bit different, he suffers from severe depression, so. Look, isn't the little one playing happily? Following the man's gaze, Old Lee's breathing began to quicken. Xiao Xiao. His grandson was smiling. Yes, riding on the tricycle, with a few monkeys pushing from behind, it had been two years since Old Lee had seen the little one smile so happily. His eyes also regained their brightness. Okay. Okay. Old Lee wiped away his tears and walked towards his grandson on the grass. Giggle giggle giggle. The sunlight shone on Xiao Zhao's face, his neat teeth gleaming brightly. Old Lee stood aside, tears streaming down his face. The doctor had advised that children with depression should smile more. As long as the smile was opened up, the disease might not even require medication and would slowly recover. Unexpectedly, in this zoo, Xiao Zhao actually smiled. And he smiled so happily. Thank God. Thank God. Mr. Li's heart sank for a moment. 
he reached out to support the rockery beside him and slowly sat down. Oh, what's your name? Baby rode on big white, like a queen, followed by numerous children, step by step to Xiao Zhao's side, reaching out and smiling, do you want to touch big white? It's very obedient. I, I'm Xiao Zhao, can I touch it? It's okay, big white is obedient, let him touch you. The baby reached out his hand, patted Big White's head, leaned down to its ear, and whispered softly. Roar! Big White glanced at the baby on its back and obediently lay down on the ground. So soft! Xiao Zhao reached out and touched Big White's head, suddenly exclaimed, It looks different from the one on TV. He he, Big White is a real animal, so are these monkeys. Do you want to come up and chase the monkeys? Looking at the sweet smile of the little girl in front of him, Xiao Zhao nodded heavily. Oh oh oh! Big White, chase them. Hurry up. Look, that monkey in front is teasing you. Go Big White. Go. The two little ones sat on the back of the giant panda, chasing the monkeys on the grass. The other children followed along, laughing loudly. Phew. Mr. Lee watched his grandson's appearance and breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you. Thank you. With tears in his eyes, he bowed to the young man beside him. Thank you so much for the zoo. I never thought that my grandson could play like this with other children one day. I'm really grateful. You don't have to be like this, old man. Su Chen smiled and helped the old man up, slowly saying, you can bring the little one here every week, free admission. There are fewer animals in the zoo now, but soon there will be more animals. With the animal language function, Su Chen's commands to these guys could be better executed. And more and more people come every day. However, so far, those studying biology have not come, which worries Su Chen. If the government intervenes forcibly, or if he has to donate the animals to the country, what should he do? Although the animal protection law has been abolished for many years, but if the government intervenes forcibly, then hiss, hiss, hiss. The golden python crawled out of the grass nearby. Su Chen bent down and picked it up, gently stroking its head. Um, Director Su, Mr. Li looked at the sturdy creature in front of him, somewhat fearful. The animals in your zoo don't look like robotic animals. Hee <laughs> hee, that's right, the animals in Blue Sky Zoo are all real, don't you believe it, touch it. Ah, uh, looking at the somewhat fierce snake head in front of him, Mr. Lee involuntarily took two steps back. All real? No wonder. When the little one got sick, Mr. Lee searched countless information in the library. In the ancient times, there were successful cases of treating depression through animal therapy, but now it has become a luxury. Even Xiao Zhao's attending physician said that if the animals have not become extinct, children like Xiao Zhao, who is only six years old, have a very high chance of recovering from depression. Unfortunately, all the animals have become extinct. No wonder the little one could smile and even communicate with other children the first time he came. This can only be achieved by real animals. Director Su, I have an awkward request, I don't know if you can agree. Oh, Su Chen turned to look at the old man, smiling and waving his hand. Go ahead. It's like this. There are many children like my grandson in the hospital, all under 10 years old, looking very pitiful. Can I share Xiao Zhao's situation here with them? If they could come here too, it would definitely be a great help for their condition. The old man hesitated a bit. After all, they were all patients with depression, and not everyone would have such a drastic change like Xiao Zhao did the first time. This place is a zoo, so when the time comes, he he, old man, it's okay. Let them come. You can even have the hospital contact me here, and all the children with depression can come here for free. Su Chen pondered for a moment, smiling. He couldn't forget his original intention. Whether the zoo makes money or not doesn't matter, as long as it can make people accept the idea of animal revival and gradually form the concept that animals are friends of humans, that is his ultimate goal. And if he could cure these children with depression, the impact would be explosive. By then, he would not only gain shock value, but also be able to exchange for more animal fragments. Ha ha ha. Dubai, I love you so much. Hey, don't lick me, he he, don't lick me. Gao Yu hurriedly walked in from the entrance of the zoo, and from afar, she could see the baby in the arms of the giant panda. Just off work, she looked at her daughter with a bright smile, and all her fatigue disappeared. She had already taken a leave from the kindergarten. According to the people in the hospital, the little one's condition was likely to start deteriorating gradually. Even her hands would slowly lose sensation. At night, Gaoyu stayed by her side, watching the muscles on her arms twitch uncontrollably, and she cried silently countless times. Once the symptoms of muscle tremors appeared in ALS, the condition would deteriorate rapidly. Thinking about the little one lying in bed all the time in the future, with a pale face, connected to numerous devices, 
ventilator, feeding tube, catheter. Gao Yu's heart felt like it was being pricked by needles. She's only five years old, would she have to live like this forever? Does living even have any meaning? Mom! Mom! The baby looked at Gao Yu standing in the distance, jumped down from Dubai's body, and threw herself into her arms with open hands. Today, Dubai is very happy with the baby, and the baby even fed Dubai bamboo shoots. So obedient. Gao Yu rubbed the baby's nose and lifted her up. Come, say goodbye to Uncle Su Chen. Is it time already? Can the baby come again tomorrow? The little girl heard that they were leaving and pouted, looking disappointed. Not tomorrow, we have to go to the hospital tomorrow, did you forget? Okay then. The baby pouted, wrinkled her brows, and nodded. Dubai. She waved her hand at Dubai. You have to be good. The baby will come to see you the day after tomorrow. Goodbye, Uncle Su Chen. The baby is going home. Hee <laughs> hee, goodbye little one. Su Chen stood aside, waved to the little one, and only closed the door after they left the zoo. Lately, this little one always came early and left late. Sometimes Su Chen even had dinner with her. And the little one had become the exclusive queen of Dubai. No one could ride Dubai without the baby's command. Looking at the messy zoo, Su Chen covered his forehead and said softly, System, start cleaning the park. Ding, park cleaning started, consuming 300 shock value in total. A white smoke swept through the entire park, instantly making it spotless. Su Chen looked at the system panel in his mind, and after a few days of accumulation, he could soon exchange for magpie fragments. However, Su Chen couldn't help but feel envious of the millions of shock value for the dinosaur fragments above. On the former Earth, these creatures were already extinct. Except for some fossils, no one had seen a real dinosaur. Su Chen didn't expect that the system could refresh extinct animals like Tyrannosaurus rex and forest python. That means, if he had enough shock value, in the future, it will be possible to build a dinosaur island for people to visit. The huge Tsanglong. Tyrannosaurus rex. Pterosaur. Just thinking about it makes Su Chen excited. However, at the moment, he feels like a beginner in the game, only able to proceed steadily, step by step accumulating shock value, completing tasks to enhance his strength. Reviving the golden python and the group of macaques almost cost him his life. It's not hard to imagine, if the revived creature is a Tyrannosaurus rex, how difficult it would be. Phew. The road ahead is long and arduous. With a sigh, Su Chen herded all the creatures into the panda enclosure. Crunch. 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 Dubai couldn't wait to pick up the bamboo shoots on the ground, struck a heroic pose, and started gnawing on them. Meanwhile, a group of macaques also took out fruits from the basket in the panda enclosure to eat. Only the golden python lay alone at Su Chen's feet, staring at him with innocent eyes. Ah! Uh, Su Chen scratched his head awkwardly as he looked at it. The body of a spotted deer had been eaten up, and it would probably take two more days to complete the fragment task. Headache! There is no carnivorous animal in the whole world, and this is just the golden python. If more fierce beasts are revived in the future, carnivores will definitely be a big problem. Even if he carries out tasks every day, he can barely afford to keep a golden python, let alone a group of tigers. It's simply not realistic. It seems that after the next refresh, I hope some ordinary poultry that can be raised will appear, otherwise, I will be exhausted just raising animals in the future. After pondering for a moment, Su Chen nodded with a smile at the harmonious group of creatures and headed towards the office. Another busy day has ended. It's time for him to rest. Howl. What is this thing? Is it delicious? Shortly after Su Chen left, Dubai dropped the bamboo shoots and pounced on the basket, biting into a golden fruit with a sour expression. It was so sour that it made his teeth ache. He couldn't enjoy it at all. What is this rubbish, so sour? Can this be eaten? With a disdainful look at the monkey in front of him, Dubai silently carried the bamboo shoots to a corner of the rockery. He couldn't let those damn monkeys see the bamboo shoots, or they would definitely come to snatch them. This delicious thing can only belong to him. Chin Du. Rehabilitation Hospital Children's Mental Illness Department. What? Are you serious? Professor Zhou Jun looked at Old Lee in disbelief, his face flushed. There are real animals in this zoo? And not just one? Yes. Old Lee hugged his grandson and smiled slightly. Yes, look at Xiaoja's condition, has it improved a lot? Yes, indeed, it has improved a lot. She is no longer timid, and her eyes have started to regain some vitality. I believe she will recover soon. Professor Joe frowned and asked in a deep voice, I was just about to ask you, it hasn't been even a week since you last came for a checkup, what happened to the little one? Her condition has improved so quickly. It's because she played in this zoo for a day. It's no wonder Professor Joe was surprised. After all, animals have been extinct for many years, and now you're telling me that animals have been revived. 
Moreover, a child with severe depression improved so much after playing with animals for just one day? It's hard to believe. However, Xiao Xiao has indeed improved a lot, and that cannot be faked. Oldly, in that case, I will take two children to this zoo tomorrow to try it out. If it really works, our hospital will definitely revise the treatment plan. This could save countless lives. After some contemplation, Professor Zhou looked at Old Li with a determined gaze. Hello, audience friends. A female journalist in neat office attire stood at the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo, facing the camera and said, We are from the Love Project program. Today we will enter the world of special children, who, due to various family factors or congenital reasons, have developed autism at a young age. They cannot go to kindergarten, spend their days locked in their rooms, and sometimes won't speak a word all day. Their hearts are completely closed off, refusing to communicate with others. As she spoke, the female journalist's eyes filled with tears, her voice choked with emotion. Do you all remember the little girl Dodo from the last episode? Unfortunately, on this Monday night, while her family was asleep, Dodo jumped from the top floor. Phew. Today, we have arrived at this zoo. It is said that the creatures in this zoo can help children with autism open the doors to their closed hearts, even helping them recover. The Chindu Children's Mental Health Center has signed a long-term contract with Blue Sky Zoo to help these special children regain their health and live a normal life like other kids as soon as possible. I am the ambassador of Love Dongyu, and today, I will take you into Blue Sky Zoo to explore whether animals truly have an unparalleled effect on autism. Dongyu invites you to enter Blue Sky Zoo. Their program Love Project is a live broadcast program that explores human suffering and helps those in need. Recently, Dongyu and others have been continuously reporting on children with autism. These are a group of unfortunate children who seem to be in prison every day, unable to see the clear blue sky outside, unable to play with other kids in kindergarten, unable to. In the cases they filmed, several children even showed signs of self-harm. However, when they returned to the Chindu Children's Mental Health Center, they heard the entire hospital discussing this blue sky zoo. Almost all the children with autism they had reported on before were different now, although still a bit reserved, you could see a glimmer of childlike spirit in their eyes. With doubts in their hearts, Dong Yu and the program team arrived at Blue Sky Zoo. They wanted to find out whether the claims were exaggerated or if the zoo truly had an irreplaceable role in helping children recover their mental health, perhaps even replacing expensive medications. Blue Sky Zoo? Is it real or fake? Could it be a gimmick thrown out by the hospital? Maybe nowadays hospitals don't tell the truth at all. But those children have indeed changed quite a bit. If it's fake, I will definitely sue this zoo for using the treatment of autism as a gimmick, it's despicable. True, the robotic animals are as stiff as wood, how could they possibly help children with autism? I remain skeptical. I hope the government takes action to eliminate this collusion phenomenon. Viewers watching the program left comments on the message board, mostly expressing criticism. After all, those who have been following the recent episodes are families with children, who are familiar with places like zoos, or have at least taken their children there. Everyone has an idea of what the robotic animals look like. Can those stiff, wooden-like animals really help children with autism? Almost everyone who heard about it shook their heads in disbelief. How could that be possible? Alright, we will soon find out what's inside. Dong Yu walked quickly to the entrance of the zoo and turned to the camera equipment beside her, saying, Our love project is a program that dares to speak the truth. If this zoo is being deceitful, then... We will directly inform the relevant authorities, shut it down, and even hold the director accountable. Why? Suddenly, a sweet-looking little girl walked by, puffing her cheeks and said angrily, Uncle Suchin's zoo is so good, why are you closing it? You are bad people. We don't welcome you here. Dongyua looked at the little one next to her, wearing a princess dress with two cute ponytails, and smiled as she squatted down. Little girl, how do you know this zoo is so good? Humph. Of course, the baby is here every day and every animal inside is the baby's friend, very obedient. You are not allowed to speak ill of Uncle Suchin. Be careful, I'll let Dubai scare you. The baby frowned, clenched her little fists, looked at the people in front of her, and quickly ran into the park with her small backpack. She couldn't let them destroy the zoo, she must stop them. Dubai, something bad is happening, bad people are coming. Dubai? Dongyua smiled slightly, stood up from the ground, and followed towards the entrance of the zoo. Roar roar roar. Woo la 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 la. Hurry, hurry. Just as they reached the ticket entrance of the zoo, cheers could be heard from inside. Dong Yue paused. This seemed different from the zoo she had visited before. Could this zoo really have something different? With doubts in her mind, Dong Yue approached the ticket window. Inside sat a woman around 30 years old. Hello, help us buy some tickets. Gao Yue looked up at the journalist in front of her, furrowing her brows slightly. Why would a journalist come? 
In order to take better care of her baby, Gaoyue had resigned a few days ago, planning to come to the zoo every day to play with her daughter, but she didn't expect that Suchin's zoo happened to be short of a ticket seller. Gaoyue volunteered to take on the role. This way, she could not only accompany her daughter but also earn some extra money. You are. Oh, we are from the Love Project Program Group. We heard that the zoo has a collaboration with the hospital to help cure children with depression, so we came. Bang. Suddenly, the door behind the ticket booth was pushed open violently. Mom, don't sell them tickets, they are bad people. They were just outside saying they want to close Uncle Suchin's zoo. To buy, scare them, drive them away. Oh whoa. From the passage next to the ticket window, a black and white fierce beast suddenly leaped out, baring its teeth and staring fiercely at Dong Yue and the others. And the little girl from earlier was sitting on the back of this bear-like fierce beast, pouting, clenching her fists, and glaring at them. What's going on? Can the robotic animals in this zoo be ridden by people? Baby, you can't do this. Gaoyue handed the tickets to the people in front of her, furrowing her brows and scolding softly. But, mom, they are bad people, the zoo is so good, Dubai even helps Grandpa Zhou with his illness. Humph, speaking ill of others, be careful of your nose growing longer. Dubai, ignore them, let's go. Patting Dubai on the head, the baby, like a queen, glared at Dongwei and the others, then turned and ran back into the zoo. That. The animal just now. Dong Yue looked at the back of the creature, her mouth slightly open, involuntarily murmuring, it doesn't look like a robotic animal at all. Hee hee, you can go in and take a look, but, do not approach the animals in the park rashly, they have no ill intentions towards children, but if they are not familiar adults, they may be a bit wary. Gao Yue smiled, turned and walked into the ticket booth. Also, Blue Sky Zoo is indeed helping Professor Zhou treat children with depression, there are many children here today, you can find out more. However, I hope that before knowing the truth, do not jump to conclusions. Just before entering, Gao Yue's voice came through again. This. Dong Yue's face turned slightly red, took a deep breath, and walked in slowly with her colleagues. The moment I walked through the door. On the grass not far away, a group of parents were chatting non-stop. And. Inside the entire zoo, groups of children were chasing after a few monkeys with bright red fur. Leading the pack was the little girl who had just been riding a fierce beast. Oh 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 oh, everyone follow me, we must not let the monkey king escape today. Whoever catches the monkey king, Big White will let them take a ride. The baby raised her hand and shouted, pulling up her skirt and running ahead. A group of children followed behind, also yelling as they charged forward. Hee hee, that's great. Is that your child? She recovered so quickly, she's only been here twice and she's already chasing monkeys with them. Yes, we are so grateful to Blue Sky Zoo, and to Director Su Chen. If it weren't for him, our child wouldn't know when things would improve. Two middle-aged women sat on a stone bench by the grass, watching the playful children with satisfaction. Hello? Oh, isn't this reporter Don Yue? A middle-aged woman stood up quickly, smiling and saying, You interviewed my child at the hospital last time, our child's name is Meng Meng. Oh, I remember now, your child is the little girl who must be tied to the bed at night. Don Yue quickly spoke. Yes. The middle-aged woman sighed and waved to someone in the distance. Meng Meng. Come, come play with mom. Soon, a little girl in a pink tracksuit, sweating profusely, ran over with a smile. However, upon seeing Dong Yue and the others, she looked slightly shy. Is this Meng Meng? Dong Yue widened her eyes, looking at the well-behaved little girl in front of her, momentarily stunned. If she remembered correctly, this little girl suffered from severe depression, needing constant supervision during the day and even being tied up with ropes at night, showing signs of self-harm. It's only been a week. How could there be such a rapid change? Reporter Dong Yue, are you here to interview Blue Sky Zoo? Meng Meng's mother rubbed the little one's head, smiling and saying, Our child is not the fastest to recover, the fastest children have all been tested, and their mental health assessments are completely normal. Thanks to director Su Chen. Yes. The woman next to her echoed, Look how happy the children are with the animals, but, this is also because director Su Chen is willing to make the effort. After all, they are just children, while these are real animals. If anything happens, how could we afford it? If Director Su Chen didn't see our plight, how could he be willing to let all the animals accompany the children outside to play? Real animals? Dong Yue felt a bit confused at this point. Are all these real animals? Squeak. Suddenly, a macaque let out a cry, stepped on a nearby camera, scratched its head with its paw, stuck out its tongue at the children in the distance, made a face, then turned and ran off again. Arg, the monkey king is mocking us with a face. Everyone charge, Sister Bao, hurry and ride Big White. Catch up to the Monkey King, I also want to make a face to scare him. La la la. Mom, I'm going to play with Sister Bao. 
Meng Meng watched the children running past her, leaving a word behind, then smiled and chased after them. Watching this scene, Dong Yue was completely convinced. The animals in this zoo are not only real, but, for children who have never seen animals before, all of this is absolutely irresistibly attractive. What could be more attractive than small animals? So that's how it is, I see now. Dong Yue exclaimed, then. How does this zoo cooperate with the hospital in terms of fees? After all, these are real animals, the tickets should not be cheap, but the effect is so good, it has even surpassed the effect of medication. Ah, Meg Meng's mother sighed. What? Is it very expensive? If it's really expensive, our love project is willing to help everyone. He <laughs> he, no, winter reporter. Mommy Meng and the woman next to her glanced at each other, both feeling a bit embarrassed as they said, this is also a place of unease in our hearts. Director Su Chen not only doesn't charge a penny, but also prepares lunch for the children, allowing them to dine with the animals. You know our situation at home. Ever since the child got sick, I have to watch over him every day. Daddy Meng not only has to support the entire family's expenses on his own, but also has to pay expensive medical bills. Woo woo. At this point, Mommy Meng couldn't help but cry, covering her face. We are really grateful to Blue Sky Zoo. If it weren't for Director Su Chen, our family would really have no way to survive. Not only did it save us the cost of tickets, but the child's condition is also getting better and better. I heard that there will be more animals appearing in the future. Director Su Chen is truly our family's savior. Yes, our situation is similar. If it weren't for Blue Sky Zoo being able to treat my child's illness, our whole family would probably not be able to make it. The middle-aged woman beside them also wiped her tears, gratefully saying, we try to help out as much as we can every day, bringing some food for these animals. It's all cheap stuff, but it makes us feel a little better. Winter raised her head, blinking back tears, trying hard to keep them from falling. In the hospital, there were countless families in situations like theirs. Winter couldn't imagine what kind of person this director Su Chen was, willing to make such a big sacrifice. So, is director Su Chen here today? Why haven't we seen him? After hesitating for a moment, Winter looked around the entire zoo and couldn't help but ask, You mean director Su? We haven't seen him today. Maybe he has something important to attend to. Not here? Then, let's go ahead with this episode today. Winter touched up her makeup, standing on the lawn of Blue Sky Zoo, with children playing and frolicking behind her. This zoo was so unique, and director Su Chen was such a selfless person. This zoo couldn't remain unknown. Winter decided that this month's program would focus on this zoo. The whole country must know about this zoo. This is a person who takes responsibility for society, and... There are countless children with depression all over the country, and this place is their hope, where they can regain their lives? As for where the director went, Winter believed that one day she would meet him. When that time comes, she must conduct a good interview. She was extremely curious about this extraordinary man. And, there must be an extraordinary team behind this person, they must be brought to light, good people should be recognized by society. After making up her mind, Winter smiled at the camera. Hello, viewers. We are now at a place called Blue Sky Zoo on the outskirts of Hangchang in Chindu. Now let me introduce to you, on the African savanna. Ah, Su Chen was currently running for his life, being chased by a group of tall ostriches. What a mistake. Cursing, Su Chen sped up, looking at the endless yellow grassland ahead, and suddenly dashed towards a low bush on the side. He had thought that accumulating enough shock value to exchange for magpie fragments would be enough. But ever since the children with depression from the hospital came, the shock value he obtained had skyrocketed. In just a few days, Su Chen had accumulated 100,000 shock value. And, just because of a mistake, he ended up exchanging for honey badger fragments. He never expected that the mission site would be on the African savanna. And the most fatal thing was, he had been in this savanna for a whole day already, not to mention honey badgers, he hadn't even seen a trace of them. Fortunately, this time I came prepared with a backpack on my back. However, I don't know how I managed to provoke this group of ostriches behind me. They just keep chasing me relentlessly, and I've already run for over 10 kilometers. Who? 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 Su Chen sat quietly behind the bushes, listening to the thunderous sound of the ostriches stomping on the ground, his body tense. Ready at any moment, once discovered, he would have to start running away again immediately. Ostriches used to be able to be raised by humans in the past, but... The ones in front of him were obviously wild ostriches, aggressive in nature, ready to charge at Su Chen at any moment. Although he had the ability to communicate with animals, he couldn't communicate with them at all. Ha! Huh? They laughed? Suddenly, a chaotic sound of footsteps came from the group of ostriches in front, running frantically towards the distance. 
Su Chin patted his chest, breathing a sigh of relief. Finally safe, the African savanna is too dangerous. With a sigh, Su Chen reached behind to take out a bottle of water. But, after fumbling for a while, damn, did I lose my backpack? The backpack was actually lost, and he had run for over 10 kilometers, where could he find it? No, I must find it. After pondering for a moment, Su Chen looked up at the scorching sun overhead, realizing it was almost noon. Before it got dark, he should be able to find the backpack, after all, he was the only one on the entire savanna, and animals shouldn't have taken the backpack away. Inside it was a tent, and the nighttime temperature in the African savanna was quite low. There were no traces of honey badgers yet, and he might have to stay here for a few days. Fortunately, he had already hired a ticket seller at the zoo, and the parents of those children with depression would also help him close the zoo. It shouldn't matter if I stay for a few days. Su Chin picked up a stick from the ground, wiped the sweat off his forehead, and walked step by step towards the direction he had just run from. Ha, ah, it's the first time I've seen the anchor so helpless. How unlucky can one be? But, what kind of birds were those that just passed by? They were so big? I don't know, I've never seen them before, but, this place seems to be the African savanna, the textbooks say there are many large animals here, I hope the anchor doesn't encounter any danger like the last two times? I've been watching the anchor run for a long time, I feel like my belly has shrunk, it's really a good show. Ah, isn't the title of this one about finding the fragments of this thing called honey badger? Does anyone know what kind of animal this is? I've never heard of it, I work in the library, I just checked for a long time, there is no information about this animal at all. With the word honey in its name, do you think it's very cute? Watching the barrage on the live screen in front of him, Su Chen couldn't help but burst into laughter. Cute? This was definitely the first time he had heard someone say honey badgers were cute, right? This was a honey badger, also known as Flathead Brother. Ahem. Su Chen said as he walked, facing the live screen, the honey badger used to be a rather fierce animal, about 90 centimeters in size, not very big. But, this guy has a unique personality, combative and fierce. Before it became extinct, it had a resounding title of Flathead Brother. Su Chen looked up at the vast African savanna, smiling as he continued, the honey badger possesses all the qualities of a warrior, resolute, brave, decisive. Most importantly, this guy, apart from sleeping, spends the rest of his time either fighting or on his way to a fight. It can be said that on the entire African savanna, there is no creature that the honey badger dares not fight. Even if it encounters a lion, the honey badger won't back down, it will just go for it. This guy is named after his love for honey. The honey badger has rough fur that makes it impervious to be stings, hence the name. However, it is precisely because of the honey badger's nature that, until the animal is extinct, the honey badger can be said to be the only creature that fights itself into an endangered species. Let's talk about. Oh no, my bag. Su Chen recalled the habits of the honey badger in his mind, preparing to educate everyone, but he glanced ahead and shouted loudly. There was a gray white creature dragging his backpack and running into the distance. Stop, my bag. Su Chen shouted angrily, throwing the stick in his hand. Clang. After it fell to the ground, the animal hiding behind the backpack emerged. Giggling. No way. Su Chen's face turned pale as he slowly began to retreat. Just talking about the honey badger earlier, and now this guy dragging his backpack? What to do? Um, um, don't be impulsive. Please don't get excited. Su Chen looked at the honey badger with its tail raised high and a gloomy look in its eyes quickly raised his hands and tried to calm it down. Brother Ping, Ping, this is my backpack, you can take it if you like. Oh my god, giggling, you troublemaker, tired of living? With a roar, the honey badger dropped the backpack, its face dark, and quickly rushed forward. Su Chen turned and ran, not daring to stop for a moment. This guy is very ferocious, and not afraid of pain at all. When it gets aggressive, it even bites itself. His small stature is no match for the honey badger. The people in the live broadcast room watched Su Chen fleeing in a panic, laughing out loud. Is this the honey badger? The extremely ferocious animal the host just talked about? It looks average, with such a small size, how powerful can it be? But the host's expression today is very vivid, give him a chicken leg after the broadcast. Why does this animal seem quite powerful? Normally, when facing a larger creature, one should retreat first, right? How come it charged without hesitation? Who knows, I've never heard of this creature before. But this live broadcast room is really interesting. The content is always different. Is the host in another dimension? How else could there be an animal we've never seen before? Alright, stop discussing. Start sending gifts quickly. I bet a pack of spicy sticks that the host is about to get beaten up. I bet two packs of spicy sticks. 
A group of carefree viewers, watching Su Chen running in distress on the live broadcast screen, began placing bets. Ah ha ha ha. Han Dong sat in the office, tearing open a pack of spicy sticks, watching the ferocious creature on the screen, unable to help but burst into laughter. He couldn't believe that such a small creature could be so ferocious. It's impossible. Everyone knows that in nature, size determines everything. Perhaps the host is deliberately exaggerating for the sake of the show. Thinking of this, looking at the barrage of jokes on the screen, Han Dong also tapped on the keyboard. I am the mastermind behind the scenes, host, if this guy is really as ferocious as you say, daring to fight a lion, I'll do a headstand and wash my hair later. Satisfied with the message he sent, Han Dong nodded. Mixing with these viewers all day, he had become extremely familiar with them. As soon as this statement was made, a group of people immediately started liking it. Who? 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 After running for a while, Su Chen bent over, panting heavily as he watched the honey badger return. Fortunately, its interest in the backpack was greater than in him. Otherwise, if this guy caught up with him, the outcome could have been very tragic. It's no wonder that the fragment exchange required a shocking value of 100,000. The difficulty of this task is too high. Not to mention that there is no resurrection task now. Even if there is no task, I can't bring this guy back, I can't even get close, what should I do? Thinking of this, Su Chen continued to slowly move forward. In any case, I have to follow this guy from a distance and find a way to complete the task, otherwise, not only will I lose 100,000 shock points this time, but also, I won't be able to do fragment tasks for a full 10 days. It's a big loss. Roar. Suddenly, a roar came from a distance. Flathead raised his head abruptly, propped up his head and looked around. Fed up with this? Which guy is howling in broad daylight? Squinting at the guy who had just escaped in the distance, Flathead sneered disdainfully. Daring to come back? After dealing with this stupid lion, I'll teach you a lesson. Roar! A golden-haired male lion walked majestically from the side, moving neither fast nor slow, as if patrolling the territory. However, the moment it emerged from the bushes and saw the grey-white creature staring at itself, its movements froze. How did I encounter this guy? This is just too unlucky? Unable to help but shake his butt, the three newly healed blood marks on it seemed to be throbbing again. Gaga! Flathead dropped his backpack, roared twice, looking fierce, without saying a word, he charged straight at the lion. Roar! The lion roared angrily. Although he had fought with this guy several times, but, he was the lion king of the entire grassland, in charge of a group of lionesses. His status had already been somewhat damaged from the last injury, this time. He must avenge his previous humiliation. The lion shook his mane, opened his mouth wide, and charged forward. Gaga! Flathead, not showing any weakness, like lightning, rolled on the spot and appeared behind the lion in an instant. Snap! He bit hard, and blood gushed out. The lion couldn't help but roar, quickly turning his body, but, the guy behind him was so agile that he couldn't see his figure at all. The sharp claws left continuous blood marks on his butt. Seeing the honey badger's fur bristling, the lion quickly took two steps back, staring fiercely at the little guy in front of him, snorting heavily. Gaga! Flathead licked the blood at the corner of his mouth, looking at the lion in front of him with an eager expression. Roar! With a roar, the lion turned and ran, disappearing quickly into the bushes in the distance. Oh my god! Su Chen squatted on the ground, watching the honey badger that had driven away the lion in a few rounds, his mouth twitched slightly. This guy in front of him seemed even more ferocious than those honey badgers before. How can this task be completed? The lion was scared away, wouldn't he be seeking death if he went up there? Gaga! Suddenly, Flathead frowned and roared twice. What? Su Chen listened carefully to these two sentences. Not exciting at all, no, I'll find someone else to fight. Seeing Flathead in front of him drop his backpack and glare at Su Chen fiercely, the implication was clear, dare to take. I'll come back and kill you later. Su Chen took a deep breath, looked at the backpack on the ground, and followed the honey badger's figure slowly walking towards the distance. It's unbelievable that there's still a sense of not being satisfied with a fight. No, I can't let this guy continue, if something goes wrong, this task will be over. Gaga! Just as Flathead emerged from the bushes and stood in front of a small lake, howling at the water surface, Su Chen was suddenly stunned. Splash! Suddenly, a fierce giant mouth burst out of the water, sharp teeth aiming at the honey badger. Gaga! Flathead looked at the emerging giant, wagged his tail and took two steps back. Growling and showing his teeth, he raised his head, his eyes gleaming with excitement. Bang! The crocodile swung its tail, fiercely slamming the ground, opening its huge mouth, and step by step walked out of the river. It's this guy again. Provoking time and time again, today it can't be allowed to escape again no matter what. Roar! A roar! 
The crocodile moved its four short legs, bringing a gust of wind, and quickly rushed up. Gaga. Although the honey badger is more reckless, it is exceptionally smart, and understands that it is not a match for this crocodile head-on. Moreover, the purpose of coming today is to stretch its legs, even if the crocodile stands here to bite it, it probably won't be able to bite it off. Swish. The honey badger shifted to the left front, narrowly avoiding the attack. Gaga. However, the crocodile suddenly swung its tail, like a steel whip with its menacing dorsal fin, instantly whipping it away. Letting out a cry, the honey badger struggled to get up from the ground. It stared angrily at the crocodile in front of it. Ha, huh, you think you're tough, huh? Haven't seen each other for a few days, and it still remembers this move? Gaga. Roaring twice, the honey badger with its eyes red rushed up. Really fierce. Su Chen crouched beside the bushes, watching the honey badger, which was several times larger than himself, battling the crocodile, deeply feeling the Guinness World Records evaluation of this guy on earth, which was absolutely correct. The most courageous animal in the world. Isn't that just the most reckless animal? You won't know if you can win until you fight. Gaga. Suddenly, the honey badger in front let out a cry, and Su Chen looked up to see that the crocodile had bitten the honey badger's waist, constantly shaking its menacing jaws. The honey badger's fur was rough, and the crocodile couldn't sink its teeth in with just one bite, so it wanted to tear the honey badger apart with the force of its shaking. Hiss. Su Chen took a sharp breath. He sighed inwardly. He was unarmed, and with this size, wouldn't he just be serving himself on a platter? However, if this honey badger were to get itself killed like this, what would he do? A shocking value of a hundred thousand. It would be too much of a loss to just let it float away like this. Let's go. Seeing the crocodile shaking its tail, with the honey badger struggling in its mouth, even at this moment, this guy still looked fierce, constantly snarling, and fiercely clawing at the hard crocodile skin. However, with just its small paws, it was wishful thinking to try to scratch the crocodile's skin. Not good, the crocodile seems to want to drag this guy into the water and drown it. Su Chen frowned, slowly got up from the ground, and rushed forward. My mom asked me why I was kneeling in front of the keyboard watching the live stream. I told my mom and now she's kneeling next to me too. Can someone tell me this isn't real? The streamer is telling the truth, now I believe this guy is really fierce, not only scaring away lions, but also not satisfied, daring to pick a fight with crocodiles. I'm amazed, Zhao Ritian is tougher than the leader of our kindergarten. Just now I remember the big shot said, can surpass lions, he washes his hair upside down? Where is he? Streamer, be careful, this is a crocodile, according to the information, this guy is almost invincible, no one can match it. The honey badger is too reckless, now it's getting itself killed. Go streamer. Countless viewers in the live stream room have been confused since the honey badger's battle with the lion began. Although Su Chen's introduction was authoritative, no one had seen or heard of such an animal before. How could there be such an animal in nature that fights itself to the brink of extinction? No one would believe it if it were said. However, when they saw the honey badger drive away the lion and then go provoke the crocodile, everyone believed that this guy was truly ruthless, simply a warmonger. Who? Watching as he got closer and closer to the crocodile, Su Chen took a deep breath. Due to nervousness, a drop of sweat slowly slid down his forehead and fell on his cheek. Go! Roaring in his heart, Su Chen instantly accelerated, lifting the crocodile's tail from the ground with both hands, using the power of twisting his waist to swing the crocodile round and round. Fortunately, the crocodile in front of him was not too big in size. If it had been a huge crocodile, Su Chen doubted he could have swung it out. The crocodile! Suddenly thrown out, the crocodile climbed up from the ground looking bewildered, with the honey badger in its mouth falling off. With widened eyes and a dark expression, it stared at the human standing in front of it. G-A-G-A. -G -A. Su Chen watched as the honey badger, which had stood up instantly after falling to the ground, howled and charged towards the crocodile again, its mouth twitching. You're really ruthless. After finally rescuing it, it actually didn't think about running away quickly and dared to go back. Acting quickly, Su Chen rushed up in a big step dragging the honey badger back by its tail. Crack! 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 The crocodile pounced towards him, its jaws snapping menacingly. Hurry, let's go! Su Chen shouted angrily, dragging the honey badger's body and quickly retreating. G-A-G-A! -A. Kid, you wait! G-A-G-A! -A. Put me down! I won't let you off today! Put me down! The honey badger being dragged behind even raised its head, taunting the crocodile that was about to chase them. Su Chen turned around and directly picked it up, grabbed the backpack on the ground, and ran towards a distance without caring for his life. Roar! G-A-G-A! -G -A. Useless, come on! Are you a man or not? Stop shouting, I'll give it face today, I'll teach it a lesson another day. 
Su Chen had no choice but to communicate with the honey badger in beast language while it was in his arms. Gaga, -ga. no, today I must teach it a lesson. You're really stubborn. Teach it a lesson another day. Look, it's scared and running back. No need to chase it. Su Chen sat on the ground, watching the crocodile retreat, and couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Finally escaped. Indeed, it was a mission worth a hundred thousand. It was too difficult. However, the honey badger in front of him had really tough fur, even after being bitten by the crocodile, it didn't even have a scratch. It seemed reasonable that this guy could be so tough. Gaga, -ga. what are you looking at? What's wrong? Want a fight? Suddenly, the honey badger in front of him turned its head and stared at Su Chen, sitting on the ground, scrutinizing and growling. Su Chen stared at the honey badger in front of him, suddenly a bad feeling arose in his heart. Would this guy dare to take the animals back to the zoo? Wouldn't there be chaos when they got back? This guy is too fierce. Can't distinguish between good and bad, like a mad dog, bites whoever it catches. Forgive me for laughing, it's really funny, look at the broadcaster's aggrieved look. Broadcaster, I saved you. Honey badger, oh, then let's fight, thank you thank you. Ahahaha, my heart aches for the broadcaster. But to be honest, can the broadcaster communicate with animals? How come it seems like the honey badger can understand what the broadcaster is saying? A group of viewers watched the two guys sitting face to face, constantly exchanging words, and couldn't help but burst into laughter. Especially Su Chen's face with a look of grievance. It was truly amusing. As the sky was about to darken, and the system did not indicate that the mission was completed, which made Su Chen feel frustrated. A mission worth a hundred thousand shot points was too difficult. Sigh. Su Chen sighed and quietly took out his backpack and set up a tent. Bro, light it over there. Nudging the honey badger beside him, Su Chen began to set up the tent in place. Luckily, he was well prepared this time, or on this vast grassland, even if he wasn't killed by animals, he might freeze to death. After setting up the tent, Su Chen made a fire in front of him and took out a small frying pan. The skilled person put some oil and started putting the prepared synthetic meat on the pan. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. The smell of meat wafted over, and the honey badger, lying on the ground, instantly jumped up, wiggling its butt to get to Su Chen. Crunch! It took a bite of the meat in the pan. Pa! After chewing a few bites, it spat it out on the ground. Glaring at Su Chen with angry eyes, the expression on its face was furious. What is this? Even rotten meat tastes better than this. Damn! Can't you eat properly? Su Chen was truly at a loss. The synthetic meat he had just cooked, not even a bite taken, was actually spat out by this guy. Although it smelled delicious, the taste of synthetic meat was indeed mediocre. But does it have to be so picky? If you don't eat it, I still have to eat it. Su Chen gave it a fierce look, seeing its fur bristling up again, quickly put on a smile and said, just kidding, just kidding. I'll make another one. Calm down. Watching it lying down again, closing its eyes, Su Chen sighed. This guy's temper is really too big. It seems that in the future, in the zoo, this guy will have to drink chrysanthemum tea every day to calm down. And, with the honey badger's habits, it can only be kept locked up in the zoo, otherwise, it would be impossible for this guy to compete with the others in the zoo. Especially the golden python, among the honey badger's prey, it really likes to eat snake-like creatures. The more Su Chen thought about it, the more he got a headache. If he had known, he shouldn't have exchanged for the honey badger fragments first. Now, giving up the mission is not an option but completing the mission is also not easy. After eating a few bites, Su Chen crawled into the tent, looking back at the honey badger curled up and asleep, Su Chen looked up into the distance, his hand holding the tent zipper froze. In the distance, pairs of eerie green eyes were rapidly approaching them. Damn! Su Chen cursed under his breath. He almost forgot, this is the African savanna, teeming with wild beasts, probably attracted by the smell of the synthetic meat he had just cooked. But, green eyes, what kind of animal could it be? He. He, he, a series of low growls sounded. Su Chen quickly took out a dagger from the tent, looking solemnly at the group of creatures gradually surrounding them. Through the flickering flames, it could be seen that these were a group of African wild dogs. Their fur was mottled and messy, with two large, round ears standing upright on their heads, looking very conspicuous. However, judging from the appearance of these guys, they were probably not friendly characters. Oh no! Su Chen looked at the dozen or so African wild dogs surrounding him, his hair standing on end. African wild dogs were also an endangered species on the former earth, and the most difficult thing about these animals was that they hunted in a coordinated team, often several or even a dozen of them hunting together, slowly wearing down their prey until it died. He was alone now, with only a dagger as a weapon. 
Even with the honey badger, he probably wouldn't be a match for the African wild dogs in front of him. He, he, the leader of the pack, a tall wild dog, was the head of this group of African wild dogs. The wild dog leader let out a low growl, as if giving the order to attack, and the many wild dogs cautiously surrounded the tent. Sticking out their tongues, drops of foul-smelling saliva dripped down. Roar. Just then, a roar came from beside Su Chen's tent. The honey badger, with its small eyes glaring, slowly walked up to Su Chen, baring its teeth at the wild dog leader in front of it. The wild dog leader stared at the honey badger for a long time, with its eyes constantly changing. After a long time, howl. The wild dog leader howled, turned around, and led the pack away into the distance. Su Chen patted his chest, breathing heavily. It was really too thrilling. He understood, it's not that this group of African wild dogs couldn't defeat the honey badger, it's just, the rough fur and body structure of the honey badger would cause them a lot of trouble once they started fighting. And, the honey badger is one of the few animals that can be bitten on the back of the neck and still turn to attack. It's precisely because of this that many predators are unwilling to confront honey badgers. However, after the sneak attack by the African wild dogs, Suchin dared not sleep, sitting inside the tent, quietly waiting for daylight. By now, he had figured it out. The mission of the honey badger fragments this time was not to save this guy from some kind of creature. It was to save him from himself. This guy is just too aggressive. I hope tomorrow goes more smoothly. He sighed, looking at the sky that was about to brighten. Suchin dozed off for a while, got up and prepared to pack up the tent. Ha! Huh? After coming out of the tent, he looked around but didn't see any trace of Baldi. Su Chen's face changed, without much thought, he hurried back to the tent to grab a knife and rushed outside. Is he going to fight again? Gaga. Ga. After running out for a few minutes, he could already hear the angry roar of the honey badger coming from behind the bushes in the distance. Oh no! What kind of animal is he getting into a fight with this early in the morning? Su Chen had just rushed out of the bushes and saw a tall, wrist-thick king cobra in front of him, which made him freeze in place. He involuntarily began to slowly back away. It was actually a king cobra, and its venom sac contained two types of toxins. Not only did it have the neurotoxin common to venomous snakes, but it also had a cardiac toxin that could cause the cardiovascular system to collapse. If bitten, without antivenom within half an hour, one would die directly. Where could he find King Cobra antivenom in the African savanna now? Moreover, on the former Earth, King Cobra venom was quite valuable, even earning the nickname Liquid Gold. This venom even had miraculous effects in treating cancer. Unfortunately, this mission was about honey badger fragments, so there was no way he could bring back this king cobra. And, the honey badger was a master at hunting snakes. Its body naturally contained antivenom, capable of breaking down any powerful toxin within two hours, so it would wake up unharmed after a nap. Gaga! Ga. A roar came from in front, and Su Chen quickly looked up. The honey badger had started a direct assault, not dodging or avoiding at all. It bit the king cobra's body without regard for the snake's bite on its own body tear. It extended its claws and tore open the king cobra's scales. Hiss. The king cobra let out a painful hiss, turning to escape. However, it fell right into the honey badger's trap, as it pounced and bit the snake's head with sharp teeth. Crack. The sound of bones shattering rang out. The king cobra's body curled up in pain, gradually stretching out, clearly lifeless. Gaga. -ga. Su Chen quickly ran up. The honey badger looked up at him with misty eyes, pointed to the body on the ground, then collapsed. And at this moment, the people watching in front of the live screen, who had been holding their breath during the thrilling battle just now, dared not even exhale. It wasn't until Baldi lay stiff on the ground that the entire live broadcast room erupted. It's over, Baldi successfully got himself killed. The snake seems to have studied at school, the King Cobra, one of the most poisonous snakes before extinction. Heartbroken, waited all night, didn't expect this result. Now I understand why animals like honey badgers are endangered. Too reckless, at least take a look dare to approach a venomous snake? Frustrated, the anchor is probably very sad, after all, this was the honey badger fragment mission, now what to do with flathead brother dead? Looking at the honey badger lying on the ground, Su Chin pinched his brow, carefully dragged its body aside, glanced at the barrage, and explained with a smile, don't worry, flathead brother won't die. Look carefully at this guy, breathing well, just fainted. This guy has the most powerful anti-venom in his body, even if a basin of snake venom enters his body, nothing will happen. Everyone can understand it this way. Flathead brother drank some snake venom, got a bit high, just needs a nap. Like when you get drunk, he'll be fine in two hours at most. With these words, everyone stared at the honey badger on the ground, seeing its chest rising and falling with each breath. They breathed a sigh of relief. Although Flathead brother was extremely fierce in a fight, 
The viewers in the live room all like this guy. After all, with animals extinct for so long, much of the information has been lost to history. Seeing this unique creature for the first time, they couldn't help but marvel at the wonders of nature. However, it's already extinct. Thinking of this, the viewers in the live room shook their heads in disappointment. Many expressed in the subtitles how great it would be if animals were not extinct. Seeing this, Su Chen smiled slightly, zoomed in with the camera, gave himself a close-up, took a deep breath. He made a decision. He would expose the Blue Sky Zoo in the live room. Those who could watch the live stream were selected by the system, interested in animals, and animal lovers. Hello everyone. After several live streams, the anchor has not introduced himself. The anchor's name is Su Chen, from Qin Du Hang City. Currently running a zoo in Hang City, named Blue Sky Zoo. If you want to get up close with real animals, you can come to Blue Sky Zoo, whether it's the Golden Python from last time, or the group of macaques, or even Flathead Brother. Blue Sky Zoo has real animals for everyone to observe, even touch, and play with. After Su Chen finished speaking, the entire live room seemed to freeze, the screen cleared instantly, not a single barrage. However, a few seconds later, boom, the live barrage on the screen instantly flooded, densely packed, even the image was not visible. IF asterisk CK. I've heard of this zoo, it seems like it was recently reported on TV, saying that the team behind the zoo director successfully revived animals, didn't expect it to be true. Yeah, I've seen the reports too, heard that they even cured several children with depression, didn't expect it to be the anchor. Oh my god. I'm guilty, I'm from Chin Du, I didn't even know this news. Ah ah ah. If what the anchor said is true, then, can I really go play with snakes? Brother upstairs, are you out of the hospital? Seems like your wife's last attack wasn't strong enough. Enough talk, I'm booking tickets right away, whether what the anchor said is true or not, just for the sake of the anchor's live room, I'll go show my support. Hee <laughs> hee, welcome everyone, but currently the Blue Sky Zoo has a relatively small variety of animals, but, I believe everyone will leave satisfied. Su Chen smiled slightly, once again aimed the camera at the honey badger on the ground. GAA. A long murmur sounded. Flathead brother licked his lips, slowly opened his eyes. GAA GAA. Ah, why is the snake venom so strong today? Feeling a bit dizzy. Stretching his claws towards Su Chen, he then fell down again, quickly falling into a deep sleep. Su Chen. After a long time, the sun gradually rose, and the temperature began to rise. Su Chen sat on the ground, looking enviously at the bald-headed brother in front of him who was devouring meat. Is this real meat? After so many years in this world, I haven't eaten meat yet. Next time, I must refresh and cultivate animals that can be raised. I, Su Chen, also want to eat meat. Ding, congratulations to the host for completing the Honey Badger Fragment mission. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully resurrecting the Honey Badger, Strength Plus 2. Ding, system returning, live broadcast closed. Countdown. Roar. Watching the cheetah chasing behind him, Su Chen dragged the honey badger with a fearless look, quietly waiting for the system to return. It was really exhausting. In just one day, following the bald-headed brother, he dug out African wild beehives. If Su Chen hadn't reacted quickly and jumped into the pond, he would probably have been stung to death by now. This was just the appetizer. Provoking a pack of hyenas, almost got his butt kicked. Chasing after a rhinoceros, ran 20 kilometers in total. Climbing trees to get bird nests, Su Chen almost got his eyes pecked out. Finally, luckily encountered a cheetah, this guy was about to show off his power. However, after so many life and death escapes, Su Chen finally managed to control this guy. At least they could communicate normally now. If he brought it back to the zoo, it would definitely cause chaos. Su Chen didn't want to keep these animals locked up in cages, he wanted to let them roam freely. Restricting the freedom of animals, what's the difference between that and killing them? completely losing their nature. Hopefully, the system will introduce a skill to control animals in the future, so even if resurrecting a large predator, Su Chen wouldn't be afraid. After all, human strength is limited, and if he really accumulates enough fragments of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, then, without the help of the system, who could be a match for a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Roar! A figure flashed by quickly, the cheetah looked at the empty ground in confusion, looking around. What's going on? Where are the two guys I was chasing? Ah ha! Finally back. Holding the honey badger, Su Chen slowly opened his eyes. He saw a group of people staring at him as if he were a fool. This. Looking around, there were several service windows in front of him, and inside were young ladies in uniforms. Ding dong, please go to window 3 for bank deposit transactions. It's actually a bank? System, what's going on? Why are we not at the zoo? 
Roaring at the system in his mind, Su Chen quickly opened his backpack and stuffed the honey badger inside. Gaga! Gaga! Stop making noise, hurry up and get in! Su Chen smiled at the people nearby, quickly closed his backpack, stood up from his seat, and walked out. This was a bank, he must not let the bald-headed brother come out, if something happened, it would be over. Kong! Just as he reached the bank entrance, several masked men rushed in. Su Chen was puzzled. How come people were wearing masks to deposit money in broad daylight, is this performance art? Before he could react, one of the men pushed Su Chen inside, and then closed the bank door. Revealing a handgun from his sleeve, he fired a shot at the ceiling, instantly attracting everyone's attention. Bang! Another accomplice punched the security guard sitting at the door, knocking him to the ground. Don't move, this is a robbery. Anyone moves, they're dead. Everyone, get down on the ground, hands on your head, quickly. Kong. 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 Several gunshots in succession. Ah ah ah. Help. Don't kill me, I'm kneeling. I'm kneeling. Oh my god. The entire bank was filled with screams, but everyone quickly crouched down, holding their heads. Kong. Whoosh. A huge shotgun blasted the glass of the bank counter, shattering it. The two people following hurriedly took out a sack from their backpacks and climbed into the bank counter. Where's the money? It's. It's. Bang. A bank employee, a young lady, was pulled out violently from under the counter, her face pale. Found it. It's here. Suddenly, the robber at the adjacent counter opened the safe below and waved frantically. Oh my god. Su Chen was squatting next to the robber guarding the hostage. Ding. System task. Use the honey badger to stop the robbers from harming the hostages, robbing the money, and let the world know that animals also play a huge role. Task completion reward, zoo funding of 50 million. Task failure penalty, honey badger retracted, unable to use fragment task function for half a month. Task description, fear? Non-existent. In the eyes of Baldi, there is no fear, a few robbers are nothing. Oh my god, system, are you overestimating Baldi's abilities a bit? These are bank robbers, armed with guns. One shot and Baldi would have to repent in front of the Buddha. Stop the robbers? Phew. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen controlled himself to calm down quickly. He discreetly looked around. There were a total of four robbers in the bank, one guarding the people depositing money, one watching over the bank employees, and two frantically stuffing money inside. It had been about a minute since they entered. It was likely that these robbers would leave in no more than three minutes. However, they were too spread out. Once he made a move, the people nearby could easily shoot. Bibbo. 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 Suddenly, a police siren sounded outside the bank. Several officers quickly opened the car doors, aiming their guns inside the bank, about to speak. Stop. A gunshot rang out, and the robber guarding the hostage pulled Su Chen up, fired a shot towards the door, then pressed the gun against Su Chen's head. He coldly shouted, back off, back off, or I'll shoot one of them first. All right, stop pretending. There are only three patrol officers outside. Let's break out. We can't wait any longer. We'll be surrounded soon. We can't run anymore. Back off. The robber holding Su Chen called out and slowly moved towards the door, keeping Su Chen in front of him, only showing his head. Bang. A shot shattered the windshield of the patrol car. The four robbers stood back to back, moving step by step towards a van in the distance. Gore. Gore. Suddenly, a roar came from the backpack in front of him, and it kept wriggling. Rip. Then, a dark and sharp claw extended followed by a white furry head poking out. Baldi looked around, also feeling puzzled. What's going on? And, the robber standing behind Su Chen at this moment hesitated, locked eyes with Baldi, instinctively reached out his hand, and slapped him on the head. Smack! A crisp sound rang out. The other robbers, who were slowly moving, heard an angry roar. Gore gore! The entire backpack exploded, and a black shadow quickly leaped out, pouncing on the head of one of the robbers. Crack! Sharp teeth pierced down. Ah, 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 my eyes. The robber who had just covered his eyes raised his gun. Seeing this, Su Chen grabbed the robber's arm, pulled him forward, and raised his knee. With a bang, the robber fell flat on the ground. Baldi, go. Roaring, Su Chen, pale-faced, picked up the gun from the ground and aimed at the remaining three robbers. This is bad. It's bad. Director Liu frowned at the staff member rushing in and coldly rebuked. What's going on? Can't you see we're in a meeting? No. Director. The Qin Du Riverside branch. The branch was robbed, a large number of hostages were taken, and our patrol comrades are in a standoff. Thump! Director Liu almost fell off his chair upon hearing this. A bank robbery? In Qin Du? What are you still standing there for? Quickly notify everyone to gather, rush to support the branch along the coast, and make sure the hostages are safe. 
Realizing the situation, he looked at the stunned crowd in front of him and shouted hoarsely. If there were casualties, as the head of security for the entire city, he would definitely be held accountable. Damn it! Where did these audacious robbers come from? Who do they think they are, daring to rob a bank in this day and age? With a curse, Director Lu stormed out of his office with a dark expression. The situation needed to be resolved quickly, or if the media got wind of it, Sheen City would truly become infamous. Thinking this, Director Lu wiped the sweat off his forehead, grabbed his gun, and quickly rushed out of the security office. Along the way, with an uneasy heart, Director Lu sat restlessly in the back seat of the car. Faster, go faster, he growled at the driver in front. We're already going at 130, we can't go any faster, Director. The driver shuddered all over and quickly steadied his nerves. Please, let nothing go wrong. Director Lu whispered, took a deep breath, and looked out the window. Nothing must go wrong. At the bank entrance. Gore. The honey badger roared, its fur bristling, and pounced fiercely. Snap. It bit into the leg of one of the robbers. Ah. A scream rang out as the robber looked down at the person at his feet and raised his gun. Stop. In the nick of time, Su Chen growled low and pounced from the ground. A gunshot. Su Chen watched in shock as a stone next to his paw was pierced. Gore. I'm fed up. With a roar, the honey badger raised its tail high like a gray white lightning bolt and charged forward. Bang. Su Chen took a punch to the face, his head spinning, then felt a dark gun barrel against his temple. Huff. Huff. Die. The robber beneath him roared, then pulled the trigger. It's over. The zoo hasn't even been established yet, and he's done for. Su Chen felt a sense of regret. His mind went blank as he watched the robber about to pull the trigger. Images of Dubai, Xiaojin, and the smiling faces of the children flashed through his mind. I've broken my promise. The animals haven't all been resurrected yet. Stop. A gunshot rang out, and Su Chen fell to the ground. Is this what it feels like to be shot? Why doesn't it hurt at all? Bang. Suddenly, a dark paw slapped his forehead. Gore. What are you looking at? One of them escaped, hurry and chase after him. With disdain in its eyes, the honey badger jumped down from Su Chen's body and swiftly pursued the fleeing robber on the van. Huff! Su Chen took a deep breath, sat up abruptly, and saw that the robber who had just aimed a gun at him still had a hand holding the gun, but it had been severed from the wrist and lay quietly on the ground. Did Flathead do this? Bit off the robber's hand? Well done! All of this happened in the blink of an eye, catching everyone inside the bank off guard, even the patrol officers stationed at the entrance. When they finally reacted, they rushed forward in a frenzy. Young man, are you okay? Did you get hurt? You're a hero. Thank you so much, you're amazing. Wah, you scared me, but, young man, you are truly the pride of our city. A group of people surrounded Su Chen, helping him up and inquiring about his injuries. As for the two robbers on the ground, they had already lost their fighting spirit. One was blinded by the honey badger, the other had his wrist bitten off, and both had passed out. Stop. 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 Suddenly, a few gunshots rang out from the van in the distance. Everyone just realized that there was a robber just now. However, when they looked over, they saw the strange creature from earlier, currently gnashing its teeth and biting the collar of the last robber's neck, dragging him out step by step. Slowly, it came to Su Chen's side. Bang! The robber was thrown on the ground, and the bald-headed brother sat on the robber's head, staring at Su Chen with his head cocked, blinking his eyes continuously. After a while, without getting a response, the bald-headed brother pursed his lips and instantly became angry. Gaga! What's the meaning? At least praise me a bit. Ah! Uh. Su Chen's expression froze upon hearing this, looking at the angry bald-headed brother, he quickly whispered, Brother, I surrender. You're amazing. They are all scum. After hearing this, the bald-headed brother's mouth slightly curved up, casually waving his paw. The meaning was self-evident. Basic operation, basic operation. Are you a demon? Su Chen looked at the triumphant guy in front of him and couldn't help but think that something was increasingly wrong. After these animals were resurrected, how did their intelligence become so high, it was too abnormal. These were three armed robbers, and they were resolved just like that. Beep, beep, beep. Suddenly, a rapid alarm bell sounded in the distance, followed by a group of well-equipped soldiers carrying submachine guns surrounding the entire bank entrance. A bald middle-aged man holding a megaphone jumped out of the car with a pale face. What's going on? Where are the patrol officers? How can there be so many people gathered here? Aren't they afraid of death? Disperse quickly. After clearing his throat, Director Lu took a deep breath and shouted loudly through the megaphone, to the robbers inside, you are surrounded, resistance is futile, release the hostages as soon as possible and seek leniency. Help! Help! 
Suddenly, a man wearing a mask jumped up from the ground in the distance, and in the moment of everyone's astonishment, he rushed to Director Liu. Help, I surrender. Don't let that monster bite me. Gaga. -ga. Suddenly, a gray-white furry creature sprang out from the crowd and pounced on the robber from behind, knocking him to the ground. Its sharp claws and teeth waved incessantly, causing the robber's eyes to roll back and faint. What's going on? This is a robber? Then what is this thing? Director Liu looked at the scene in front of him and was also stunned for a moment. Come, please have a seat. A security officer girl placed a cup of tea in front of Su Chen, blinked her eyes and looked at the creature in the young man's hand, then walked away step by step. Su Chen patted the honey badger's head and hugged it to his chest. He was already used to the girl's gaze. After three hours at the security bureau, the whole place had gone crazy. Not only did the patrolling officers sneak in to take a look at the bald-headed brother, but even the clerks upstairs did the same. In three hours, Su Chen had been served over 30 cups of water. And each time, a different girl came. Even the auntie in the kitchen, who rarely came out, curiously approached Su Chen today and asked if the creature in his arms liked tofu. It was terrifying. Fortunately, the bald-headed brother was extremely satisfied with today's battle. Otherwise, if the security bureau went crazy, who would be his opponent? Snort. The bald-headed brother in his arms glanced at the girl who was gradually walking away, pouted, and snorted. Scum, not even an opponent. Su Chen. Uncle Su Chen. Suddenly, two exclamations came from the entrance. Su Chen looked up and quickly stood up, holding the honey badger. Miss Gaoyu, thank you for your trouble. Gaoyu widened her eyes, looking at the young man in front of her, speechless for a long time. You really dealt with the bank robbers. Gaoyu couldn't help but be surprised. This kind of thing, how could an ordinary person encounter it? Even TV dramas dare not portray it like this anymore. Not to mention single-handedly dealing with three armed robbers. It all seemed like a fantasy. Um, Su Chen scratched his head awkwardly, smiled bitterly, and said, I guess so. Did you bring my ID card? I can't leave without it. Thank you for the trouble. Ha, huh? Uncle Su Chen. Suddenly, the baby standing on the side stared with big eyes, blinked, and looked at the animal in Su Chen's arms. Is that a new animal in your arms? Can I hold it? No. After hearing Su Chen's words, he quickly took a step back, his face serious, and said, This is a honey badger, very ferocious, it will bite people. Baby, stay away from this guy in the future. Oomph, you're lying. The baby pouted, stared at the honey badger, and said angrily, How can such a well-behaved little animal be ferocious? Although it looks a bit ugly, it looks gentle. Ga ga. Suddenly, the flat-headed guy in Su Chen's arms howled twice, struggling to jump out of Su Chen's arms. Oh no! Su Chen exclaimed, quickly trying to pull the honey badger back. This guy doesn't care if you're a child or an adult, when it gets angry, it doesn't spare anyone. Woo hoo! The baby looked at the guy behind him, turned around and squatted down. He gently touched the honey badger's head. Uncle Su Chen, it seems very obedient. Ga ga! Dare to touch me, you're dead. The honey badger immediately became angry, its fur gradually standing up. Oh no! Seeing the honey badger's tail slowly starting to rise, Su Chen bypassed Gao Yu and quickly came to the baby's side. This guy is about to lose it. But, the next second, Su Chen couldn't believe his eyes as he watched the honey badger gradually lower its tail and flatten its fur. It squinted its eyes, stuck out its tongue like a puppy, and kept licking a lollipop in the baby's hand. Hee hee, it's delicious, right? Big White also likes this, Monkey King loves it too. Hee hee, another one who loves it. The baby looked at the honey badger in front of him, directly stuffed the lollipop into its mouth, clapped his hands and said, Uncle Su Chen, look. It's very obedient. Su Chen. What the heck, is it that simple? Just a lollipop and it's settled? You're the honey badger, can't you have some principles? Where's your dominance? Ga ga. The honey badger, with a milk and honey lollipop in its mouth, slightly smirked, looking at the little guy in front of it and shouted in satisfaction. Good, good. If anyone bullies you in the future, tell me. I'll beat them up. It's really delicious, even better than honey. Su Chen looked at the honey badger that kept rubbing against the baby's legs, couldn't help but shake his head. This little girl is naturally charming. In the entire zoo, all the animals, regardless of species, like the baby. Even Big White only allows the baby to ride on it, and no one else can even think about it. Now there's another flat-headed guy, in the future in the zoo, the little guy can completely walk around as he pleases. Hello, Mr. Su Chen. At this time, a bald middle-aged man hurriedly walked down from the second floor, it was Director Liu who held the loudspeaker during the day. He warmly shook hands with Su Chen, his eyes constantly glancing at the honey badger below. He never expected that everything today was actually accomplished by this little guy below. 
The actions were not only accurate but also very effective. After investigating the surveillance footage, it was discovered that this animal called the honey badger, in less than two seconds, made two robbers lose their ability to act. This was even more impressive than their most elite patrol officers. However, the news of the animal's revival has recently been discussed at the higher levels, how to deal with it, how to negotiate with the young man in front of them, this was not something a mere director like him could know. But, the message vaguely revealed from above indicated that the team behind the young man was extraordinary, and the country would spare no effort to keep him in China. In short, the people familiar with director Liu above only said one sentence, be sure to build good relationships, don't the police dogs want it? With just this sentence, director Liu was instantly stunned. This is a kind of animal that could fight alongside them in the ancient past, and there was already a complete system in place. This is a medal for bravery. Mr. Su Chen, please keep it. And there is also a cash reward of 100,000 yuan. Today, we are really grateful to you. If it weren't for your help, the consequences would be unimaginable. Can we leave now? Su Chen took the shiny medal in his hand, accepted the check, and asked with a frown. Yes. Yes. But, let's keep in touch in the future. Director Lu shook hands with Su Chen again and said a meaningful sentence. Su Chen, feeling confused, left the public security bureau with Gao Yu and her daughter. He always felt that Director Lu had something more to say. However, wow, this time we have a starting capital of 50 million for the zoo, so, we can build a new venue again. And, the biggest gain from this live broadcast is the shock value. It gained a full 80,000 in one go. After a few more days of operation, he could exchange for new animal fragments. When he returned, it was already evening, and Su Chen, who had been busy for two full days and experienced a bank robbery, fell asleep as soon as he lay down on the bed. And, Mom, where should we put the honey badger? The baby stared with big eyes, leading the honey badger around the zoo, and finally stood in front of the panda enclosure. Um, Gao Yu pondered for a moment. It seemed that Su Chen had just said that the honey badger couldn't be placed with the pandas, it had to be kept alone. Thinking of this, Gao Yu looked around and her gaze stopped at Su Chen's office. This guy should be fine in the office, right? Baby, let's go, just hand it over to Uncle Su Chen, you can take it over. Oh, okay. Goodbye, Dubai, see you tomorrow. Waving to Dubai, who was lying on the ground inside, the little one led the honey badger to Su Chen's office. Gao Yu checked the entire park before leading the baby out of the Blue Sky Zoo. Su Chen had told her that the security facilities at the entire Blue Sky Zoo were very advanced. Even if the doors were not locked at night, there was no need to worry about animals escaping or someone sneaking in. Therefore, Gao Yu gently closed the zoo gate and went home with the baby. However, shortly after they left, an important meeting was taking place in the panda enclosure. The initiator of the meeting, Dubai the panda. At this moment, Dubai was holding bamboo shoots, sitting on the grass, leaning against the swing pole behind him. In front of him, the monkey king led the monkeys, each holding an apple. The golden python coiled on the swing, swinging back and forth. Roar! Dubai suddenly threw the bamboo shoots on the ground, his chest heaving, looking very angry. The guy who came in today actually took his little princess. Can he tolerate this? Ah, can he? The baby kisses it every night when she goes back, but she didn't come in tonight. Dubai felt a deep sense of crisis. He must give this newcomer a good lesson today. Let it understand who is in charge in this zoo. Glancing at the monkey king in front of him, Dubai patted his belly, feeling much calmer. Wasn't this dead monkey the same way when it came in? It's only been a few days, and it's already been obediently tamed by itself? Moreover, this guy today is so small and so ugly. Whoosh. 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 Dubai surveyed all the monkeys, then turned around silently, went to the side of the rockery, and opened his secret base. Holding a lollipop, he stepped in front of the monkeys. Squeak. The monkey king looked at the pile of lollipops in front of him, then looked back at the monkeys, each with eyes shining. This thing is very sweet, incredibly delicious. I didn't expect this stingy guy in front of me to secretly hide so many lollipops. And, he's willing to take them out. Squeak. After a discussion with a group of macaques, the monkey king collected the lollipops and distributed them. Au, Not bad. Dubai howled in satisfaction. He bit open a lollipop, put it in his mouth, then picked up the golden python next to him, wrapped it around himself, and walked confidently towards the panda park. Tonight, he will definitely take down that guy. The monkey king followed suit, peeled open a lollipop and put it in his mouth, following behind, bouncing out. A group of animals arrived at the office door. The golden python sensibly climbed up the wall and peeked inside. In the dark room, a little guy emitting a warm red light was lying on a mat behind the door. Hiss. 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 
Dubai spat out a snake letter behind him, and the golden python slowly retreated back into the panda park. Fighting and killing is too boring. Oh, it's been days since I last ate. Swinging on the swing will be better. Getting dizzy will make me forget about hunger. Watching the departing golden python, Dubai frowned. He looked back at the monkey group, nodded slowly. Ayu. He roared. Bang. Taking a few steps back, he suddenly slammed open the door in front of him. What's going on? Quack. Su Chen and the honey badger woke up at the same time, looking confusedly towards the door. They saw a huge panda head standing at the door, staring coldly inside. Pa. Dubai chewed up the lollipop in his mouth, spat out the plastic stick. Roar. Come at me. His figure flashed to the side. Su Chen saw pairs of reddish-brown eyes, pupils shrinking, about to speak. Bang. 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 Apples rained down like bullets. Clang. Crash. The whole room instantly turned into a mess. After a while, seeing the sticky blanket covered in apple juice, Su Chen couldn't help but shout, Dubai. Ayu. Dubai's figure flashed outside again, his face slightly changed when he saw Su Chen's furious look, but thinking of the princess, he gritted his teeth fiercely. Quack. What's going on? Suddenly, a roar, a black shadow dashed out of the room. Bang. The door was slammed shut heavily. Outside came a series of roars. Su Chen stared blankly at the door, quickly got up from the bed. Oh no. How did these guys start fighting? And, damn it, can you guys beat Big Head? Dubai is a coward. With his strong physique, he's totally a wimp. Those monkeys are just fence sitters, following whoever is stronger. And this team wants to challenge the honey badger? Where did they get the courage? Without thinking much, Su Chen quickly pushed open the door and ran outside. Au, au, au. Dubai was holding his head, lying on the ground, wailing nonstop. Big Head was standing in front of Dubai, fiercely patting its head with his claws. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Run, can't beat him. Seeing this situation, the Monkey King had already led the monkey group and ran away. Too scary. They were defeated by the giant panda in one round. This was too hasty. The Monkey King looked back at the pitiful Dubai and couldn't help but think, enough. Su Chen quickly ran over and picked up Big Head. However, unexpectedly, this guy wasn't done yet. He directly bit Dubai's ear. Ayu. Stop, stop, okay? All right, all right. Su Chen persuaded kindly, finally making Big Head let go of Dubai's ear. Bang! Dubai pounced out, rubbed his head, and roared with a grimace. Wait, if you dare, come in. I'll kill you. Then he quickly ran into the panda park, closing the gate. China, the highest animal research institute. In the conference room on the fifth floor, a group of elderly people with white hair sat around a long conference table. A news report was playing on the large screen in front. Giggles. Ah, Dubai, keep it up. Xiao Jin, you're so cool. Children's laughter could be heard. However, the conference room was silent, and all the elderly people were frowning and watching the animals appearing on the screen through their reading glasses. Soon, the screen ended. Phew. A sigh was heard. The thin elderly man at the head of the table adjusted his thick glasses and slowly turned to look at everyone below. Ahem. He coughed, and his old voice rang out. The lowest among us are professors in the field of biology. The three animals that appeared in the Blue Sky Zoo have been confirmed to be real after thorough investigation, and most importantly, the creature named the giant panda did indeed exist. It's not just a mythical beast. According to the records in Sichuan, fossils of this creature have indeed been unearthed, but they were all destroyed during the second natural disaster. However, the resurrection of animals, the impact on human society, we should all be clear about it. After researching for thousands of years and using various methods, what we created were all violent, bizarre monsters, with even their flesh containing strong chemical substances, making them unusable. Today, a new team has developed animal resurrection technology. This is a groundbreaking achievement. We have called you all here today to announce. The old man paused here, took a deep breath. He had been looking forward to this day for a long time, and he never expected it to come in his lifetime. The animal protection law has been revised and will come into effect soon, and the Department of Animal Protection will be established again starting today. Clap, clap, clap. Everyone stood up and applauded, their eyes slightly red, with tears in them. However, the team behind the Blue Sky Zoo is very secretive, and they are not willing to disclose their technology. We cannot force them, but the Department of Animal Protection will negotiate with the Blue Sky Zoo. Once they successfully develop animals that can be raised, we hope to provide them to society. Well said. Director Shang Wan, a white-haired woman in the second row spoke firmly, the resurrection of animals has unparalleled benefits in the real society. 
It not only includes meat for consumption, but also has a significant impact on various aspects of human life such as medicine, recreation, and transportation. However, I propose that, apart from edible animals that can be raised, if any other animals are found to be killed or harmed, the perpetrators should be charged with murder. We have been without them for too long, and we cannot repeat the mistakes of the past. Yes. Shang Guanyin nodded, scanned the room, and said slowly, yes, this has been included in the latest animal protection law, and I believe that after such a long period without animals in China, everyone will surely be grateful. The director of the Blue Sky Zoo said something very good. Animals are friends of humans. Apart from animals raised for consumption, any animals that are hunted must be severely punished. Shall we contact the Blue Sky Zoo for now? Not for now, wait until the Blue Sky Zoo has ordinary edible animals available, then we will contact them. Shang Guanyun pondered for a moment and said again, according to the director of the Blue Sky Zoo, their team is developing different animals, including carnivorous animals, which require meat. I speculate that their team must be working hard to develop edible animals for raising. After all, as the number of creatures in the zoo increases, the need for meat will also increase. Let me reiterate, we can only show goodwill, we must not force our way in, and the Qin Capital Government Department has already begun preparing to contact the Blue Sky Zoo. As long as they have more than 10 species of animals, they will be allocated a piece of land below the Li Mountain scenic area for the animals to live. So far, no one has contacted Su Chen, but the entire Huaxia has long been closely watching the Blue Sky Zoo. Even after many days of discussion, that animal protection department was established again, and even the animal protection law was revised and put back into effect. Everyone is quietly watching the Blue Sky Zoo, wondering when the number of animals will increase. Once the number of animals increases, it means that the technology of the team behind him has begun to mature. Then, the world of animal resurrection is about to come. Blue Sky Zoo. On the grass in front of the panda enclosure. Roar. Roar. Woo. The bai was lying on a stone bench, whimpering constantly. In the nearby zoo, a group of macaques carried cloth bags and occasionally looked up at the pitiful dubai. They hurriedly lowered their heads and began to search for trash on the ground. The park director had given a strict order that if anyone couldn't find 20 pieces of trash, they wouldn't have any fruit to eat for a week starting today. Isn't this asking for trouble? The Monkey King quickly picked up a piece of paper scrap, looked at the trash in the cloth bag, and a few more pieces would be enough. However, Dubai the panda was truly pitiful. Smack. Smack. Suchin held a slipper and kept patting Dubai's butt. Can you still fight? Are you going to fight or not? Roar. I won't fight. I won't fight. Dubai covered his butt and lay on the ground, tears welling up as he looked back at Su Chen. Am I not your little darling anymore? You. Su Chen looked at this guy's pitiful appearance and couldn't help but sneer. This guy is a real actor. Are these plastic slippers okay? Do you have no sense of shame with your thick fur? However, it was time to teach Dubai a lesson. This was simply unreasonable. The entire office had not been cleaned up yet today. And. The office was not within the system's cleaning range, which meant only Su Chen could clean it. If it weren't for the system being able to repair the damage to the panda enclosure, Su Chen would really go crazy. This guy had a big battle with the honey badger, not only making a mess of the panda enclosure, but also the entire zoo. The grass was all dug up. All right, stop pretending, go back quickly. Su Chen put on his slippers and said impatiently, Roar! With a shiver, Dubai instantly jumped up from the ground and ran quickly towards the baby standing in the distance. The baby was feeling bitter. In the morning, Blue Sky Zoo. Dubai rubbed his butt, glanced sideways at the group of monkeys not far away, and sneered at them. He slowly got up from the ground, went to the water pool, lowered his head to drink, then walked out of the panda enclosure with a cool stride. Humph! A group of untrustworthy monkeys. But where was that damn ugly guy? After looking around, not seeing the honey badger's figure, Dubai cautiously walked towards the entrance of the zoo. Bang! 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 He gently pushed open the ticket office door, sneaking a glance inside. Roar! Why haven't you opened the door yet? We're starving, where are the bamboo shoots? Click. Suddenly, a bright light flashed outside the ticket window, and Dubai stared with wide eyes, looking up. He saw a group of people in black uniforms standing outside the window, looking at him maliciously. Is that the giant panda? So cute. Director Lu stood outside the window and waved to the guy inside. Mayor Wang, this is the Blue Sky Zoo, but it seems we've come a bit too early. No problem. Beside him, a middle-aged man in a suit and leather shoes smiled and waved his hand, staring intently at the giant panda in the ticket office. Truly a real animal, so spiritual. You can see from his eyes that this guy is a bit shy now. Hey! 
He pressed his face against the window and waved at the giant panda. The big guy inside took a brisk step forward, stood upright, rested his head on the table, and curiously looked at them. Then he stretched out his paw. What does this mean? Mayor Wang looked at the paw in front of him, paused for a moment, and then smiled. Look, is this guy asking us for food? Xiao Lu, didn't you bring some snacks in your car? Bring them to see if this guy wants to eat. Ah, Director Lu quickly ran back to the car and took out a bag of snacks bought for his daughter. This big guy doesn't eat this. Just as everyone was about to open the snacks and offer them, a voice of a little girl came from behind. Looking back, they saw a middle-aged woman leading a cute little girl slowly walking over. You need to buy tickets. The baby smiled at everyone, showing two small tiger teeth, looking very cute. To buy. Shouted from inside, and at the moment the door opened, a chubby figure rushed out, rubbing his furry head against the baby's clothes. Quick, take a picture, animals and humans can actually coexist peacefully to this extent. Mayor Wang's assistant next to him quickly called the cameraman to capture the scene. This kind of footage is simply too rare. From ancient times, such precious images that can be preserved have long been placed in the animal museum, and, not to mention the giant panda in front of them, no one has ever seen it before. Gao Yu, come. Su Chin rubbed his eyes, yawning as he came to the door, greeted Gao Yu, and then frowned at the group of people behind him. Director Lu? Oh, Su Chin. Director Lu quickly put the snacks on the ground and walked over to Su Chen with a smile. This is Mayor Wang of Chindu, who specially took a day off today to visit our zoo. Su Chen, this is a great honor. After the introduction, Director Lu whispered to Su Chen, Oh, hello. Come in, Gao Yu will give them the tickets. After everyone bought the tickets, they sat down at a stone table on the grass with Su Chen. Young man, thank you to your team behind you. Mayor Wang held Su Chen's hands and said emotionally, the government is very concerned about the development of Blue Sky Zoo. Do you know how many species of animals we have in the zoo now? Just four for now. Well, if we have more animal species in the future, won't this place be a bit small? Speaking of this, Su Chen felt a headache coming on. The 50 million funds rewarded by the system were originally intended to build another venue, but it was unexpectedly rejected by the system directly. The space was too small. It was simply not suitable for building another venue. Moreover, the venues that could be chosen all had large areas, even the smallest monkey park was larger than the current zoo. However, if they wanted to expand the zoo, although there was land nearby, Suchin simply did not have that much money. There was no way to expand. It was precisely for this reason that Su Chen's accumulated shock value had not been used. With just these animals now, once the number of visitors to Blue Sky Zoo exceeded 500, it would be a bit crowded. If there were more animals, then, the space would really not be enough. Yes. Su Chen pondered with a headache. Hee hee, take a look at this contract. Mayor Wang glanced at his assistant standing beside him, and the assistant placed the pre-prepared contract on the table. Ha! Huh? Su Chen opened it and glanced at it, his eyes lit up. It was a land lease contract, and, the strangest thing was, there was no specification of the area. What does this mean? I only represent the Chindu government in signing this contract with you. As you know, Chindu was once a region with many animals in ancient times, but, ah, this land is at the foot of Lishan, adjacent to the Lishan scenic area, with nearby rivers and grasslands. It can be said that all the natural conditions needed for animal survival are there. Mayor Wang said with a sharp gaze, and, after unanimous government discussion, it has been decided to lease this land to you for free, and, without any restrictions on the area. To give an example, if you have 10 types of animals, the farm size will be built for you, if you have 50 types, a small grassland will be given to you. If you have countless animals, the entire Lishan scenic area will be allocated to you as a habitat for animals. However, the Chindu government has only one condition. The Blue Sky Zoo cannot move out of Chindu, no matter how large your scale becomes in the future, the government will fully support you. One Lishan is not enough, we also have the Qinling Mountains. As long as there are enough animals, that place will definitely be sufficient. After finishing speaking, Mayor Wang took a deep breath and looked at the young man in front of him. Although this was the best condition they could offer, but, similarly, if countless animals really appeared in the Lishan scenic area, it would drive the economy of the entire Chindu, not only solving the employment problems of countless people, but even, Chindu would become the capital of animals in the whole of Huaxia, and even in the world. Even though the hope was very slim, but, Every time he thought of this scene, Mayor Wang's body would involuntarily tremble. However, once the Blue Sky Zoo now shows signs of wanting to move out, I'm afraid that other provinces and cities in Huaxia will compete to have it. They might even offer more generous terms than them. I see. Su Chen looked at the contract on the table, 
bent down to pick up the golden python lying under the stone table, and said with a smile, the blue sky zoo can stay in Chindu, but, will the government interfere with how the blue sky zoo is operated? You can rest assured on this point, the government will absolutely not interfere, all departments will cooperate. At that time, once the blue sky zoo is built in Lishan, then, the government will add public transportation and subway lines directly to it, and even help promote the blue sky zoo for free, definitely creating the largest wildlife zoo in Huaxia, and even in the world. Listening to the strong assurance of Mayor Wang in front of him, Su Chen picked up the pen and slowly signed on the contract. After seeing off Mayor Wang and the others, Su Chen sat in the office, lost in thought. This is definitely a win-win situation. But at the same time, there is also a problem. He can revive an unlimited number of animals, as long as he completes the task, even the dinosaurs can be resurrected. It is definitely not realistic to release these animals in the Lishan scenic area. After all, you can't let super fierce beasts like dinosaurs live with ordinary animals in the same park, they would be eaten clean in less than two days. And in the future, there will be marine life, and building an oceanarium will also require a lot of land. However, if the government is really willing to free up countless land at that time, then, Su Chen will not disappoint them either. Phew! He let out a sigh. There are currently two urgent tasks, to quickly gather ten types of animals, then start building a new zoo, and also immediately refresh the animals that can be raised, otherwise the honey badger and golden python might starve to death. After pondering for a moment, Su Chen brought up the system panel and began to investigate. Divine level zoo system. Host, Su Chen strength, 9, weak and powerless, speed, 8, late stage laziness, mental power, 14, developed mind, shock value, 133343. Current zoo area is 2000 square meters, current animals, 4. After several resurrection tasks, Su Chen's physical fitness has also improved slightly, especially the honey badger task, which gave a one-time strength bonus of 2 points. Su Chen tried it out when he came back, and the stone stool that he couldn't lift before, he can now lift it. This is only the fourth mission. What about after 100 times, 1000 times? My own physical fitness. Hiss. It's going to be terrifying. The shock value has already reached 130,000. The reason why Su Chen agreed to the government is also because of the speed of obtaining shock value. In the current size of the Blue Sky Zoo, it would take about a week to accumulate 100,000 shock values without live broadcasting. And the shock value required for exchanging animal fragments in the future will also increase. The speed is really too slow. If there could be a large venue, with a surge in the number of visitors, the speed of obtaining shock values would increase, and the speed of reviving animals would also increase. This is what Su Chen really urgently needs. To revive all animals as soon as possible, and then slowly start building a dinosaur park, and even the new orange epic animal fragments that were refreshed this time, when they were refreshed, Su Chen's mind went blank, instantly confused. Animal Fragment Mall, Godzilla Fragment, Epic Fragment, Collect 10 pieces to activate the task, exchangeable for 1 billion shock values. Terror Bird Fragment, requires 1 million shock values to exchange. Bengal White Tiger Fragment, requires 200,000 shock values to exchange. Asian Elephant Fragment, requires 100,000 shock values to exchange. Siberian Husky, requires 50,000 shock values to exchange, cautious. Tabby Cat Fragment, requires 10,000 shock values to exchange. What shocked Su Chen the most was the Godzilla fragment that was refreshed, although the exchange price was astronomical, but, in other words, in the entire animal fragment mall, you can really exchange for all living beings, even including monster-like fragments. But that's all for later, the most urgent thing is to increase the number of animals as soon as possible. With determination, Su Chen first exchanged for the tabby cat fragment, then the mall refreshed, and among the newly appeared fragments, all animals required 100,000 shock values to exchange. Considering prioritizing herbivorous animals for now, Su Chen exchanged for the Asian elephant fragment that was refreshed again. This is a gentle animal, and also the first large animal to appear in the Blue Sky Zoo. It will definitely be liked by many children. There are many activities that can be done with elephants. After exchanging the two fragments, the fragments that were refreshed again required at least 50,000 shock values to exchange. Su Chen closed the system panel, walked out of the office, and started welcoming today's visitors. Roar! Just as he walked out of the office door, he saw Dubai running wildly in the zoo, with Flathead Gu chasing behind him with slightly green eyes. Quack! Don't run! However, Flathead Gu, who hadn't eaten meat for a few days, had greatly reduced stamina, and his pursuit speed had also significantly decreased. Roar! Come on! Dubai occasionally looked back, howling at the guy chasing behind him. After a few days of observation, Dubai had already confirmed. 
The guy behind him had greatly reduced physical fitness and was definitely no longer his opponent. Today, I, Dubai, will reclaim my territory. Quack. Flathead Go looked at the giant panda squatting in front, sticking out its tongue and spitting water, his anger rising. Ah 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 ah, it's really infuriating. Using all his strength, Flathead GE's speed increased dramatically. Roar. Seeing this, Dubai let out a strange cry, got up in one roll, and rushed forward again. These two guys. Su Chen muttered, following Flathead Go and chasing after him. Roar. Hurriedly chasing to the back of the panda enclosure. In the distance, Dubai had already stopped, with a group of macaques behind him. He coldly watched the honey badger catching up. Dubai roared fiercely, shaking his chubby head and rushed towards the honey badger. Bang. The two animals collided. The honey badger, who hadn't eaten for days, was clearly no longer a match for Dubai. It was slapped away with one paw. Roar 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 roar. Dubai lifted his bare paw and stepped on the head of the honey badger, tilting his head and making a strange cry. Do you submit? Who's the boss from now on? Dare to fight me again? He roared angrily at the honey badger. Finally, the opportunity came, and he successfully regained his position. No more looking for the little princess in the future, got it? The honey badger was pressed to the ground, silent, staring coldly at Dubai with small eyes. Smack! Dubai slapped again and growled fiercely, What? Not satisfied? Come on! Gah! Suddenly, the honey badger underneath burst out, directly biting Dubai's round tail on the buttocks. Ow! It hurts so much, help! Dubai, in pain, lay on the ground and began to roll incessantly. Dubai! The voice of the baby came from afar, and Dubai sat up abruptly, looking at the little girl walking towards him. Woo woo woo! Pointing at the honey badger under him, Dubai complained, this guy hit me. He he! Su Chen walked over and sneered, quietly taking off his slippers. You too, come here. Grabbing Dubai's ear, he began to walk towards the grassy stone bench. It was really despicable, they had to quickly gather enough animals, expand the area, separate these two guys, otherwise, would they ever have a good day? This place? In the middle of the night, the moonlight stretched Su Chen's figure. Su Chen chose the task of the tabby cat fragments first. However, he didn't expect the task execution location to be in the city, but, looking at the buildings around, they seemed to be ancient houses. On both sides were those old tiled houses, with a small courtyard in front of the door. By the moonlight, one could see various vegetables planted in the courtyard. It's been several days, the anchor finally started the broadcast, but this place. Sigh, why does it look like those old brick houses from before? I remember I have photos at home, my grandfather's uncle's mother-in-law's aunt's grandfather used to live in this kind of house, but it's even older than ancient times. By the way, anchor, where did you find this place? It's so charming, a rural courtyard, growing vegetables in front of the door, it's simply an ideal life. That's right, I heard that families like this used to keep two cats and a dog, TSK TSK TSK, those days. So envious. Well, forget about cats, even if there's a mouse in front of me now, I'd wanna cuddle it in bed. Hey upstairs, the librarian reminds you, they say mice go wherever there's a hole, be careful. Ah, ha, ha, he's a guy, going into that hole? Soon, the barrage in the live broadcast room became more and more off-topic. Su Chen smiled and glanced at it, then walked towards the village. Woof! 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 Suddenly, a black vicious dog jumped out from the door in the distance, barking wildly at Su Chen. Phew, scared me! Su Chen smiled at the black dog and quietly crouched down. Ow! The black dog tucked its tail and quickly retreated. Friends, when encountering animals like dogs, as long as you do what I did just now, pretend to crouch down and pick up a stone, it will scare them away, but... This is only a chance, don't try it easily. Su Chen kindly explained. However, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, blatant showing off, isn't it? I just crouched down, and my robotic dog at home crashed directly, it seems really effective. I have a lot of stones, but where's the dog? Where's the dog? The group of people all laughed and criticized Su Chen. In today's society, animals have long been extinct, where would there still be dogs? Ah, uh, alright, our task today is to find the tabby cat which is a cat with black and gray stripes and a white belly. The tabby cat, in ancient times, was the most common type of cat in China. Su Chen awkwardly smiled and began to introduce today's fragment task. The calico cat is lively by nature and easy to raise, with strong mouse-catching abilities, but this type of cat is very sensitive to changes in its environment. If the owner changes, it can cause psychological harm to the cat. Adult calico cats are not very fond of playing with humans, but they are loyal to their owners and are a very good breed to raise. As Su Chen walked and introduced, he quickly arrived at the center of the village. Not far away, a group of elderly people were sitting around, chatting. 
Elders, Su Chen walked over quickly, smiled at the group of elderly people, and asked, Does anyone here have a cat? Young man, do you need something? A white-shirt old man holding a fan raised his head and asked strangely, Um, I want to buy a calico cat. I don't know if there are any in our village. There has been a rat infestation at home recently. Su Chen thought for a moment and quickly made up a reason. After completing the task given by Ping Tu, Su Chen also understood that not every fragment task was a rescue mission, and, this time, the calico cat probably wasn't a rescue mission either. After all, in the past society, this type of cat was quite common. And the task location was a village, not a place with a large number of stray cats. I see. The old man frowned. Mrs. Ma's house has many cats, right? Young man, you should go there and take a look. Sitting on the other side, an old lady smiled and said, But Mrs. Ma has a bad temper. She probably won't sell you a cat. There are very few cat owners in our village, let alone calico cats. Nowadays, young people prefer Persian cats and such. We old folks don't understand these things. Why don't you go to Mrs. Ma's house? I heard that Mrs. Ma always brings back stray cats from outside. Be careful they might be sick. I haven't seen her go out for several days. But she's a pitiful person. After her husband passed away, her children don't come back, leaving only an old lady at home. It's a pity. Alright, stop talking. The initial old man scolded, then turned to Su Chen and said, Young man, Mrs. Ma's house is at the other end of the village. Just keep going straight, and you'll see a wooden basin at the door, that's her house. But if she does have the cat you want, then, give her more money. Mrs. Ma is lonely and poor, those cats are her only companions. Okay, no problem. Su Chen nodded after hearing this. According to what the villagers said, it seemed that Mrs. Ma had adopted many cats, and, her living conditions were not very good. Thinking of this, Su Chen waved to the villagers and walked forward in the moonlight. After about a five-minute walk, Su Chen arrived at the end of the village. Not far away, a dark yard stood alone in the open space, with a greenish wooden basin placed next to the stone pillar at the door. Approaching the wooden basin, Su Chen looked inside. There were some stale bread crumbs inside, already sour. This should be for feeding the cats. Turning to look at the old wooden door, the black paint had peeled off, and the iron chain hanging on it was rusty. Creak. Su Chen gently pushed the door, which was not locked, and it opened directly. What he saw next made Su Chen's heart ache. The yard was filled with all kinds of garbage. Various household waste was piled up in the yard. Plastic bottles, foam, old iron. In short, all kinds of ancient waste that could be seen in the past were visible in the old lady's yard. Only a small path was left in the middle for people to walk through. A strong foul smell hit Su Chen's nose, making him furrow his brows involuntarily. Meow. 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 As soon as he entered the yard, the sound of cats meowing continuously came from the piles of garbage on both sides. Skinny and unkempt cats slowly stood up, staring at Su Chen with big curious eyes. Cough. Cough. At this moment, a violent coughing sound came from inside the house. Village chief, is it the village chief? This trash of mine. Can I clean it up in a few days? I. Bang. Suddenly, a falling sound came from inside the house, Su Chen's expression changed, and he quickly ran in. Meow. 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 After hearing the sound, the group of cats standing on the trash, faster than Su Chen, rushed into the house. Su Chen quickly walked into the house, the ground was that kind of soil. And there was an old lady with white hair and a stooped figure lying on the ground, struggling to get up. The cat standing beside her was biting the old lady's clothes, trying to pull her up. But, the strength was too small, and they couldn't lift the old lady at all. Su Chen quickly rushed up, helped the old lady to sit up, and then turned on the light in the house. You are. Mrs. Ma sat on the old wooden chair, looking at the young man in front of her, frowning and asking, What? What are you here for? Old lady. Su Chen gently drove away the group of cats surrounding the ground, and said with a smile, I came here to find a tabby cat, I don't know. What are you looking for a cat for? I only have stray cats here, you can't take care of them. Mrs. Ma's face changed after hearing this, and her tone began to turn cold. She brought back stray cats that no one wanted, many of them were already disabled from torture. How could a young person like him possibly take care of these cats? It's impossible, he must be sent by the village chief. You are sent by the village chief, right? I will deal with these cats as soon as possible. You don't need to pressure me anymore. The old lady won't live long, by then. These cats. Mrs. Ma seemed to remember something, couldn't help but wipe away her tears. People, when they get old and sick, they are like these cats, no one cares anymore. Young man, go, I will take care of these cats, and won't cause trouble to anyone anymore. Old lady, it's not like that. 
I'm willing to take all these cats, you are so old, taking care of these cats. Go, Mrs. Ma waved her hand, leaning on the wall with a wooden stick, and slowly walked into the house step by step. Phew. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen looked at the old lady inside, gritted his teeth, and slowly backed out. He arrived at the village entrance and hailed a taxi directly. Driver, go to the largest supermarket. Shortly after Su Chen left, in the dimly lit house, a low sobbing sound could be heard. Mrs. Ma sat on the edge of the bed, holding a photo in her hand, her wrinkled hand gently stroking the photo. Alas, I'm afraid it won't be long before I come to accompany you. In our lives, we have suffered a lot, in the end. I never expected that we would be taken care of by these cats in our old age. But, I wonder, after I die, will these cats have a good place to go? Meow. A small gray-black pattern cat slowly climbed up from the bed, its eyes full of spirituality looking at the old lady on the bed, then took a brisk step and jumped off the bed. Meow. After calling out in the courtyard, all the stray cats came out. Under the moonlight, a group of cats started running towards the street. Mrs. Ma cried for a while, put down the photo, lay down on the bed, and softly sang, Mimi little flower cat, Mimi little flower cat, come eat, eat quickly. Xiao Chang'er, Xiao Chang'er. You take a bite, it takes a bite too. Good boy, Xiao Chang'er is a good boy. Click, click. Suddenly, a noisy sound came from outside the house, Mrs. Ma leaned on the edge of the bed, slowly sat up and glanced outside. She saw the young man from earlier, wearing white gloves, continuously moving things from outside the door. Cough, cough. Coughing, Mrs. Ma walked out again and stood in the yard, watching the busy young man in front of her. She couldn't help but ask, young man, why have you come back again, what is this? He he. Su Chen grinned and held a brand new bedsheet, saying with a smile, old lady, I bought some things, and there are. Quite a lot of cat food outside. Wait a moment, I'll tidy up the yard for you. Let's make a good nest for these cats, so it will be convenient for you to feed them later. Since the old lady in front of him was unwilling to send the cats away, Su Chen had no choice. But looking at the living environment of the old lady, Su Chen felt heartbroken. He couldn't imagine how such a poor old lady was able to feed so many stray cats. Even her own life was somewhat difficult, and the scrap and garbage in the yard must be the main source of her livelihood. In desperation, Su Chen sold all the items in his backpack in the city and exchanged them for these daily necessities to bring over. Even if this mission failed, he had to do what he could for this old lady and these homeless stray cats. Sobbing, I'm in tears. I never thought there would really be such people, living so difficultly on their own, yet still taking care of so many stray cats. The cats are pitiful, the old lady is pitiful too. It's despicable, didn't you hear just now? The old lady has children, how could her children treat her like this? Yes, her own mother is living like this, yet they don't even spare a glance, it's simply inhumane. Damn, if this were now, these people would have been in jail long ago. The host did a great job, even though they didn't find the tabby cat. Helping this old lady today, in my opinion, is even more touching than saving the tabby cat. I'm willing to support this old lady, host please leave contact information. A group of live stream viewers were deeply shocked since Su Chen entered this yard. Such things are almost unseen in their current society, they never thought that in ancient times, there were really such pitiful old people. Meow. Suddenly, there was an urgent cat cry from outside the yard. Bang! Then a small tabby cat flew in from the gate, hitting the wall heavily and then lying on the ground whimpering, asking for death. A scolding voice came, followed by a burly man with a grim face rushing in, followed by a woman dressed in bright colors. Let me tell you. The woman started scolding Mrs. Ma as soon as she entered. If these cats dare to come to our house again, I'll smash them all. Look at the scratches on my clothes, these clothes cost 1000 yuan, they are precious. Why does this old lady keep these stray cats all day? Don't say we won't take you in, even if you die, I won't agree to take you in with these cats. Enough! The middle-aged man coldly shouted. Then he turned to Mrs. Ma in front of him, his face cold, and said, Mom, don't let these cats come to me again in the future. I'm busy all day, I don't have time to deal with your affairs. It's annoying, look at how you've made a mess of this yard. Don't you still have some retirement money every month? You have to pick up these stray cats. Alright, let's go back. With that, the middle-aged man pulled the woman next to him and was about to leave. Stop. Suddenly, a roar came from inside the house, and Su Chen walked out with an unpleasant expression, looking coldly at the two people in front of him. He walked quickly over, gently picked up the tabby cat on the ground. Meow. The little tabby cat in his arms slowly opened its eyes, looking at Su Chen with big watery eyes, its expression pained. Who? Su Chen took a deep breath, gently placed the kitten on a mat aside. He strode up to the man, his eyes glaring. Are you the old lady's son? 
Who are you? Who let you in? The middle-aged man looked at the young man in front of him with bloodshot eyes, and his momentum froze for a moment. I'm just a passerby. But, every animal is a living creature. Don't you feel guilty inside for doing this? The old man lives here alone. Open your eyes and see what kind of life is in the whole yard. Su Chin said, pulling the man into the house and pointing to the blackened steamed buns and pickles on the table, saying, when you were young, would she feed you these things? Ha! Huh? Speak up, why did this group of cats come to call you? If the old man didn't miss you, would these cats come to call you? Even cats have a sense of gratitude. What about you? The middle-aged man stared blankly at the half-eaten steamed bun on the table, which had some green mold spots on it, and even the pickles on the table were shriveled, obviously eaten for many days. The whole house was very messy, with old tables and chairs. There were scratch marks on the walls left by human hands. Impossible. The middle-aged man muttered, then his face turned red and he shouted angrily, Am I supposed to ignore it? She keeps so many stray cats all day, how can I manage it? A retirement pension of 1,500 yuan a month, all given to the cats, how can I manage it? Smack! Suchin couldn't help but slap him, pointing at the group of skinny cats and scolding, Take a good look, what are these cats eating in the wooden basin at the door? If the old man had money, would it be like this? Would the old man pick up this trash? Can the garbage in the yard be picked up like this in a day? Stop talking. Stop talking. Mrs. Ma's figure flashed, and Su Chen hurriedly rushed up to help her sit on a chair at the door. Old lady. No. Suddenly, the middle-aged man behind them took a big step forward and stood in front of Mrs. Ma, his eyes bloodshot as he asked, Where is your retirement pension? How could it end up like this? And why do you keep so many cats? If you didn't keep so many cats, then, wouldn't I have taken you in earlier? Mom. Mrs. Ma raised her head, tremblingly took out a tattered passbook from her arms, held her son's hand, and said with deep meaning, Mom still remembers when you were weak and sickly as a child, not enjoying your meals, and finally your dad brought back a kitten. Every meal, the kitten would take a bite, and then you would take a bite. In order to make you eat more, Mom fed the kitten more and more, and in the end, you got better, but the kitten died from being overfed by Mom. Ah, Mrs. Ma took a deep breath, looking at the yard full of stray cats and said, you grew up thanks to that kitten, but, mom always feels indebted to that cat, getting old. Mom's mind is not very clear, every night when she closes her eyes, she sees the kitten eating. Mom doesn't need the retirement pension, she knows you have children to raise, and you're busy with work, so mom picks up things all day to get by. This is the money mom has saved by selling things over the years, and today I'm giving it to you. From now on, don't come back. The old lady handed the passbook to her son, tremblingly stood up, and walked step by step into the house. Meow. The stray cats in the yard jumped to the door, their fur standing on end, growling at Guan Chang. How? How could this be? How could this be? Guan Chang slowly opened the passbook. There was nearly 10,000 yuan saved in the passbook. And the deposit records. March 14th, deposit 121. 4 yuan. March 16th, deposit 54. 1 yuan. March 25th, deposit 19. 8 yuan. March 29th, deposit 77. 6 yuan. The largest deposit did not exceed 150 yuan, just a few tens of yuan. The old lady managed to save up to 10,000 yuan. This, Guan Chang seemed to remember something, suddenly turned his head, and stared fiercely at the woman behind him. Is it you who took my mother's retirement money and bought this clothing? You haven't been working recently, where did you get the money to buy a 1,000 yuan outfit? Speak up. The woman's face changed slightly, broke free suddenly, took a deep breath and said, yes, it was me. Does the old lady really need this much money? What's wrong with me buying a piece of clothing? Who doesn't have a 1000 yuan outfit? I'm out all day. Asterisk smack. Asterisk a hard slap directly knocked the woman unconscious, as she covered her face in disbelief, looking at the man in front of her. Guan Chen, how dare you hit me? How dare you hit me? Let's get a divorce. You go live with these broken cats and your mother. Get out. We're getting a divorce tomorrow. Guan Chen roared, then quickly stormed into the house. Asterisk thud. Asterisk he knelt directly in front of the old lady. Asterisk smack. 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 Asterisk he raised his hands and slapped himself hard. Mom, I was wrong, mom. I'll take you away today, these cats. I'll take care of them for you. I won't let you live alone again. Mom, sob. I didn't know, mom. I'm a beast. I really didn't know your life was like this. I was wrong, mom. I was wrong. Get up. Go after your wife, mom can manage on her own. In the future, don't come back, you can manage on your own. 
The old lady reached out and touched his cheek, slowly saying, as I get older, I can't live without these cats. As long as you have this intention, it's enough. Mom, I'll divorce her tomorrow, I'll leave tomorrow. I've thought about it. You've raised me all my life, it's my fault for not being filial. Sob. Guanching lay in front of the old lady, crying bitterly. Asterisk sigh. Asterisk watching this scene, Sikhan slowly retreated from the house, went to the mat in the yard, and picked up the severely injured calico cat. He glanced back, then walked step by step towards the yard gate. Asterisk meow. Asterisk the calico cat struggled to lift its eyelids, looked at the young man in front of it, and let out a soft meow. Blood began to seep from its mouth. It looked longingly at the old lady and her son inside the house, Sikhan could even see a faint smile on the calico cat's face. In the future, the old lady would be able to live well. That's great. Its chest continued to rise and fall, then its head drooped slowly. Hold on a little longer. Sikhan gently stroked the calico cat's head, let out a roar, and ran quickly out of the village with it. I'm so angry. How can there be such a beastly person? I didn't expect the old lady took in these stray cats for this reason, it's really. Please don't let anything happen to the calico cat, if I had a cat. I would definitely take good care of it, like family. The calico cat's wish has been fulfilled, but please don't die, I beg you, please don't die. This is the relationship between animals and humans, it's really. I, a grown man, am now crying uncontrollably. Who can deny it, this live broadcast is just. The viewers in the live stream room, watching the calico cat struggling for its life, couldn't help but feel their hearts ache. They all kept cheering for the calico cat. The cat's eyes just now deeply pierced everyone's hearts. Asterisk sob. Asterisk Kondong sat at his desk, tears filling his eyes, unable to hold back his sobs. It had been two years since he left home, and due to the long distance, he hadn't been back in all that time. His mother was getting older, and he didn't know how she was doing now. Asterisk sob. Asterisk he took out his phone and dialed his supervisor directly, choking up as he said, I need to take a leave tomorrow, I wanna go home. Asterisk sob. Asterisk good. I didn't expect to hear sobbing from the other side as well. Then the supervisor's slightly hoarse voice responded, Let's go together tomorrow, sob. I should go home too. Please be safe. Su Chin pondered for a moment, holding the little calico cat in his arms, and quickly ran out of the village. Ding, calico cat fragment mission completed. Ding, returning, live broadcast interrupted. Revive the calico cat successfully, speed plus one. Just then, a system prompt sounded in his mind, and Su Chen's vision blurred. When he opened his eyes again, he was standing at the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo. Meow. The little calico cat in his arms made a painful sound. Oh my god, it's almost dawn now, there probably won't be any cars available. Su Chen looked at the time, furrowed his brows, and muttered to himself. He never expected the system to send him back. What should he do now? In the real world, with animals extinct for so many years, there was no longer a veterinary industry. How should the severely injured calico cat be treated? He didn't know either. I can only go to the hospital. With a low shout, Su Chen rushed into the zoo. Dubai. He kicked open the gate of the panda enclosure, grabbed Dubai by the ear, and pulled it up. Hurry, it's urgent, let's go. Dragging a bewildered Dubai, he quickly rushed outside. Put it on, quickly, we're running out of time. Tying the rope around Dubai's forehead, Su Chen sat on the tricycle and shouted urgently, Bamboo shoots are enough. Oh whoa. You should have said that earlier, hold on tight. Upon hearing the words bamboo shoots are enough, Dubai shivered all over and quickly dragged the tricycle towards the street. Squeak. 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 The Monkey King, hearing the commotion, also woke up and, seeing Su Chen's urgent appearance, quickly called the monkey group and followed them out of the zoo. As the monkey group bounced out of the zoo, the golden python also crawled out from the gate following the scent. Gaga. The honey badger rubbed its belly, looked coldly at the animals running out, and muttered to itself. They must be going to find food. Damn it. Why didn't they call me? Do they want to get beaten up? The honey badger also chased after them. 5 o'clock in the morning. The street was quiet, with few pedestrians. The street cleaner had already swept the entire street spotless. A tricycle with colorful flags was speeding down the street. Darling. I've been dancing at the bar all night, I'm so tired. In a BMW, the female companion in the passenger seat said with sleepy eyes. Hang in there, we won't stay up late anymore, I'm exhausted, there are few people on the street, I'm already driving fast enough, just hold on a little longer, we'll be home soon. The young man driving the car also yawned, feeling a bit tired. Oh whoa. Suddenly, a roar came from behind. The female companion in the passenger seat was instantly awake. Is it thundering? What's going on? I, I saw a ghost. 
The young man stared blankly at a black and white bear pulling a human-powered tricycle from the side. And, there was a row of windmills spinning behind the tricycle, making a whoosh-whoosh sound. What is this thing? I have no idea. I've never seen anything like it. The young man muttered. Then he stepped on the gas pedal and caught up. How strange. What exactly is this tricycle being pulled by? It's so cool. Hey, buddy, what is this thing? Suchin kept stroking the calico cat's fur, urging Dubai to go faster. Suddenly, a car rushed up from the side, slowed down and drove parallel to Dubai. The car window rolled down, and a man looked at Dubai in surprise and asked, Dubai, go faster. Su Chen glanced at him, urged Dubai again to go faster. The fate of the little calico cat was unknown at the moment, he didn't have time to deal with these people. Dubai looked at the small car beside him, grinned and roared with his fangs showing. SSS. The young man's face changed, and he quickly stepped on the brake. It was too scary, how could this guy seem so real? Watching the tricycle speed away, the young man sat in the car, sweating profusely and murmuring to himself. Racing all the way to the hospital entrance, a group of people had followed behind. Even many taxis ready to drop off passengers were following Su Chen's tricycle, wanting to see what was going on. It's no wonder everyone was so surprised. It's been so many years, and we've never seen this kind of situation on the street. Not to mention, the animal pulling the cart in front kept making faces at the people on the side. Phew! Su Chen jumped off the tricycle in one stride, holding the little calico cat and rushed into the emergency building. Roar! Dubai watched Su Chen run into the building and quickly crawled out of the rope, shouting, Where's my bamboo shoot? Oh my god, after pulling such a long distance, you're not going to trick me, are you? Roar! Su Chen, don't run, bamboo shoot! My bamboo shoot! A panting giant panda rushed into the emergency building with a serious expression on its face. Slurp! Dr. Hua finished the porridge in the bowl, took a breath, and sat on the diagnostic chair. After cleaning up the trash on the table, he prepared to start the day's work. He was a resident doctor in the emergency surgery department of Hangcheng People's Hospital. Every day, he would arrive an hour early, finish breakfast, and then prepare for work before notifying the reception desk outside to bring in the patients. Xiao Lu, you can bring in the patients now. Xiao Lu? After calling for a while without a response, Dar. Hua furrowed his brow. That little girl must be playing with her phone again. Complaining, he slowly got up from his chair and looked outside the department. The entire corridor was empty, not a single patient in sight. What's going on? Dr. Hua was puzzled. Every morning, before finishing breakfast, there would already be a long line outside, but today, not a single person. Even the duty nurses and security guards who maintained order were nowhere to be seen. Clatter. Clatter. Suddenly, a hurried footsteps came from the other end of the corridor, followed by a young man running frantically. Behind him were numerous people, including patients and nurses. What's? What's going on? Dr. Hua asked with a trembling voice. Was this a medical disturbance? Why bring so many people? Are you a doctor? Ah, I'm a doctor. Then hurry up. It's an emergency. Please see the patient quickly. Su Chen dragged the doctor inside and hurried towards the room. No, you have to wait in line, no cutting. Dr. Hua, relieved to hear it was for medical treatment, then frowned and said, Everyone has a number, do you have one? Before the young man could speak, the patients around him shouted, No one has a number, he's the first one, please see him quickly, it's urgent. Yes, I tore up my number, please see him first. Time is of the essence, we can't delay, this is a serious matter. Then come in. Dr. Hua looked strangely at the young man in front of him and furrowed his brow. It didn't seem like this young man was sick. What seems to be the problem? Sitting in his chair, Dr. Hua, wearing glasses, asked with a pen in hand, Doctor, can you treat this illness? Suddenly, the young man placed a black and white calico cat on the table and earnestly said, This is an injured calico cat, can you please see if you can treat it? Dr. Hua looked at the cat on the table and was instantly confused. What does this mean? Treat this guy? No, I don't have that expertise. But wait, what did this young man just say? Is this little cat in front of me a real animal? Oh my god, a real animal? Dr. Hua stood up from the chair with a swoosh and reached out to touch the body of the little calico cat behind him. It was plump and its fur was very soft. Meow. Hiss. Hearing the sounds, Dr. Hua's face turned red, and his whole body began to tremble. Was this really a living animal? There had been rumors circulating recently about animal resurrection, and even the major hospital in Chindu had partnered with the local zoo for treating depression. For a medical professional like him, this was like opening a new door. Many precious medicines and materials could only be extracted from animals. I. 
I haven't studied veterinary medicine, let me take a look first. Dr. Hua picked up the stethoscope and placed it on the chest of the calico cat, listening carefully and frowning, there seems to be a slight internal bleeding, but we are not familiar with its internal structure, and we don't know if the medications used for humans can be used on it, this. Then is there no other way? Su Chen quickly asked. They had finally managed to bring this little guy back. They couldn't afford any mishaps. This was probably the only cat in the whole world. Its value was immeasurable. Wait, I'll contact the professors from the internal medicine department. Don't bother, let me take a look. Just as Dr. Hua was about to pick up the phone, a group of elderly doctors in white coats rushed in from outside. You must be Director Su, right? Professor Zhou from Chindu has already called us, but, although we are experts in surgery, we have never treated animals before, everything is unknown, but we will do our best to treat it, rest assured. The leading elderly man with white hair and a youthful face said calmly, then bent down to carefully observe the small creature lying on the table that they had never seen before. There is indeed internal bleeding, but, we don't know if the organs are damaged, we must examine it as soon as possible. Someone come. The elderly man shouted outside. Bring in a few nurses, quickly take the patient for an MRI scan, we must have results within 20 minutes. Several nurses rushed in from outside, gently placing the little creature on the table onto a stretcher, then quickly rushing out. Make way, make way, quickly make way. If the organs are damaged, is there any chance of saving it? Su Chen asked the professor anxiously. We don't know for now, if the organs are damaged. Surgery would be the only option, but... The biggest challenge now is that none of us have experience in animal surgery, we have no idea about the internal conditions, and even blood transfusion is a problem. Su Chen took a deep breath. Now they could only leave it to fate. They couldn't afford any mishaps with the little guy. It can't be, such a cute little creature, it's the only cat left in the world. Doctor, you must save this little guy. Yes. The patient standing outside the door quickly spoke up. Everyone, don't worry, I share the same feelings as you all. I understand the value of this animal. In any case, I will do my best to treat this little guy. Everyone, please sit down, don't crowd at the door, the results will be out soon. With all of us professors here, we will definitely come up with a solution. The elderly man pressed his hands together and spoke with a solemn tone. He could understand the emotions of the crowd, he too was deeply attracted when he first saw the little creature. The extinction of animals for over thousands of years was unimaginable. Not only had human life been affected, even the medical industry had regressed countless times. Many precious medicines had disappeared, and many diseases that could have been cured in the past were now untreatable due to the lack of medicines extracted from animals. Roar! Suddenly, a howl came from the corridor. Su Chen's expression changed. Oh no! They had been so focused on the calico cat that they had forgotten about the polar bear. This guy wouldn't dare to cause trouble in the hospital. Dubai! Su Chen hurriedly ran out of the consultation room and ran downstairs following the sound. From a distance, he saw a group of people gathered in a circle in the registration hall on the first floor, shouting something inside. Boss, give me another one to try. I'll buy ten, this guy is so fun, just make as many as it can eat, I'll buy them all. You don't need to buy, I'll pay, I know this guy, to buy from Blue Sky Zoo, my son loves it, but why is it here at the hospital today? He squeezed through the crowd and walked in. He saw to buy lying comfortably on the ground with a big bowl in front of him filled with hot fried pancakes. And, the vendor standing aside was smiling and making fried pancakes. Roar! Why are there no bamboo shoots? Dubai took a few bites and couldn't help but frown. Although the taste was good, but, without his favorite bamboo shoots, it was a disappointment. Dubai! Su Chen grabbed its ear and lifted it up, smiled apologetically at the people nearby, and quickly rushed upstairs. Hey, isn't this director Su Chen? Why are you at the hospital today? Hee <laughs> hee, there's an animal sick, coming here to take a look. Ah, an animal is sick? Which little one is sick, is it serious? Do you need to contact someone familiar? My brother-in-law is the hospital director, I'll ask him for you, this is not a small matter, those little ones are all treasures, how can they get sick? The man just now quickly picked up the phone to make a call. At this time, the people standing aside suddenly realized, this is the director of Blue Sky Zoo. So this is the giant panda, no wonder it looked familiar just now? It's more interesting than what was reported in the news. I thought the news was fake, but it turns out to be true, I must go to the zoo to see it. It's a big deal if the animals are sick, let's quickly make way and let director Su Chen go up. The crowd quickly stepped aside, making way for a several people wide passage. Thank you everyone, come visit Blue Sky Zoo when you have time. Su Chen smiled, dragging Dubai quickly upstairs. 
I didn't expect that an animal was actually sick. This is the hope of our Hangcheng. I'll also contact some acquaintances. Yes, we must not let anything happen. My father-in-law's friend seems to be a biology professor at Qingdu University. I'll ask. I'll make a call too. See if any friends know how to treat animals. After Su Chen left, the group of people took out their phones one after another, looking for anyone relevant inside. For a moment, everyone started to take action. The news of the small animals in Blue Sky Zoo getting sick quickly spread throughout the Hangqing Circle. In just half an hour, people who heard the news, whether journalists or government officials, all rushed to Hangcheng Hospital. The entire hospital lobby was already crowded with people. Everyone was inquiring about which animal was sick. Audience friends. Winter Moon, from the Love Project program, quickly arrived at Hangcheng People's Hospital after receiving the news. Standing in front of the camera, Winter Moon looked solemn. Our program team has already contacted the hospital management. This time, the critically ill animal from Blue Sky Zoo is a new species developed by Director Su Chen's team called the Leopard Cat. This species is recorded in our ordinary books. Although in ancient times, this leopard cat was a common animal, but for us now, its value is immeasurable. This is the first time in Blue Sky Zoo's history that a widely feedable pet has appeared. It's a pet that if we can breed on a large scale, we can bring home and stay with all the time. At this point, Winter Moon paused, took a deep breath, and said, Here, I hope everyone can take action, we need the leopard cat, our society needs animals. If this animal is unfortunately not successfully treated, Director Su Chen has already said that for a long time, there may not be any more cats appearing. For the little calico cat, for the first pet that ordinary people can raise, let's cheer for it together. Little calico cat, go for it. Squeak, 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 honk, hiss, hiss, hiss. Just as the winter month was being reported, a group of animals rushed in from the hospital entrance. The monkey king, smelling the scent, quickly jumped onto the second floor by grabbing the railing on the ceiling. Flathead brother roared and dashed around in the crowd, also chasing up. The golden python crawled past the feet of the winter month, swiftly climbing up the pillar on the side. These are. The animals from Blue Sky Zoo have also come. They heard that their companion was seriously injured and actually rushed over on their own. Winter month said with tears in his eyes. Everyone in the hall looked up at the animals rushing to the second floor, momentarily speechless. Is this what a society with animals is like? It turns out that animals also have so much love. Second floor of the hospital. Professor Bai, the test results are out. This little guy has internal bleeding. Fortunately the organs are not injured, but this blood must be drained as soon as possible, otherwise. Is the internal structure clear? Let's discuss, should we use surgery or medication for treatment? Professor Bai looked at the people in the office, speaking with a serious tone. For humans, whether it's surgery or medication control, it can be done for chest bleeding. But this is a small animal. There is no precedent for this kind of treatment. Not to mention whether the medication is effective for animals, and no one knows how much medication will be effective. If surgery fails and leads to the death of this animal, then no one can bear that responsibility. The only cat in the world, without full assurance, who dares to proceed with treatment. All right. Suddenly, Su Chen, who was sitting in the corner, shouted loudly and stood up excitedly. With a serious expression, he said to everyone, I have a way. Please prepare an operating room as soon as possible, I will personally perform the surgery. With these words, everyone widened their eyes, looking at the young man in front of them. Don't rush, let's discuss it again, this matter is not trivial, Director Su Chen, please don't act impulsively, Professor Bai quickly advised. They all thought that Su Chen must be so anxious that if they didn't act decisively and start treatment soon, the little cat might not hold on. That's why they were preparing to do it themselves. The problem is, you are the director of a zoo. Do you treat illnesses? Don't worry, I am confident, this little cat belongs to Blue Sky Zoo, I will take full responsibility for it, thank you all. Su Chen looked at the newly refreshed junior veterinarian function in the mall, and spoke calmly. Everyone evacuate, make the best operating room available. Let the nurses from group 2 go in, they have the best professional skills. We will watch from the observation room, this is the first animal surgery, our hospital is fortunate to participate, after the animal is revived. We will strive to establish a veterinary department as soon as possible. Professor Bai stood at the door of the operating room, quickly assigning tasks. And in the corridor in the distance, it was already crowded with people. In front of the crowd, there were animals from Blue Sky Zoo lying down. Su Chen, wearing protective clothing, came to the door of the operating room with a serious expression. He took a deep breath as he looked at the little calico cat lying on the operating table. Flathead brother, keep an eye on them, don't cause trouble. 
After instructing the honey badger, Su Chen turned and walked into the operating room. Bang! The heavy door of the operating room was closed, and a red light above lit up. The entire corridor fell silent, everyone clasped their hands tightly together, staring intently at the door of the operating room. Millions of success! This thought flashed through everyone's mind. Dong Yue stood at the entrance of the operating room, facing the camera and said, Audience friends, Director Su Chun has now entered the operating room, and the world's first animal surgery is about to begin. You can tell that all the animals in the Blue Sky Zoo are also very nervous. Whether they can save their new companion, let's wait together and pray together. Hoping that the little lynx cat can make it through. We have lost too much as humans, and we can no longer allow any kind of animal to leave us. Let's go. Inside the operating room, the nurse leader of Team 2 standing on the side was already sweating on her forehead. This was a surgery without anesthesia. It was impossible to control the dosage of anesthesia, and the patient was an animal, unable to communicate. Everything showed the difficulty of this surgery. Begin. Su Chen muttered, slowly picking up the sharp scalpel on the side. Be good, don't move. He said softly to the little lynx cat lying on the operating table. Meow. I. I'll be good. Fortunately, the little lynx cat responded softly at this moment. Su Chen felt somewhat relieved, slowly bringing out the scalpel, and the sharp blade cut through the fur of the little lynx cat, blood gushing out. Impressive. Professor Bai, who was monitoring in the control room, looked at Su Chen's calm demeanor and couldn't help but praise, indeed, the zoo director is so in sync with the animals. The little guy didn't even flinch, and the wound is small, the bleeding is not much, this surgery should be successful. Although they had no experience in operating on animals, everyone present was a surgical expert who had performed countless surgeries in their lifetime. Seeing the situation before them, they all involuntarily nodded. It was so stable. And this special patient was so cooperative, not making a sound even without anesthesia. Success! Suddenly, a doctor behind them shouted. Everyone steadied their minds and looked over, seeing Su Chen using a tube to drain the accumulated blood from the little lynx cat's body, ready to start suturing the wound. Great, great. Thank you, thank you so much. It's a success. The first lynx cat has been saved in our hospital. Yes, Professor Bai, our Hangcheng People's Hospital is also gaining fame. A group of surgical professors excitedly embraced each other. This surgery was even more thrilling than if they had done it themselves. Blue Sky Zoo already had so many animals, and there might be more in the future. The drugs produced in the animals' bodies would be a great boon for all doctors. Traditional Chinese medicine, which had long been neglected, could be revived. All of this was because of the young man in front of them. He brought hope to the entire society, animals. Bang! The red light above the operating room went out and turned green. Everyone anxiously looked towards the door. Creak. The door of the operating room slowly opened. Su Chen walked out holding the little lynx cat and bowed deeply to the crowd waiting outside. Thank you everyone, the surgery was successful. The little lynx cat will probably be able to meet everyone in a while. The entire corridor erupted in excitement. Ah, it's a success, I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Witnessing the resurrection of an animal, I'm so excited. Oh my, I was so focused on cheering for the little guy that I forgot about my pancake stall downstairs. The apron-clad stall owner exclaimed, then hurriedly rushed downstairs, eliciting laughter from the crowd. Audience friends, thank you for witnessing the resurrection of the little lynx cat with us, thank you. Thanks to those who hold a grateful heart, thanks to the entire Hangcheng People's Hospital, thanks to Director Su Chen. This program ends here. I am Dong Yue, I believe that in the near future, every family in our Haicheng city will have a cute pet. Animals are friends of humans. See you in the next episode. After Dong Yue finished speaking, she closed the microphone and took a deep breath. Watching Su Chen, who had already walked out of the hospital door, she couldn't help but walk quickly towards him. Principal Su Chen. Hmm. Su Chen turned around and nodded slightly at her. Do you know what animal will come back after the little lynx and calico cat? Can you give us a hint? Su Chen touched the little creature in his arms and smiled, saying, It's a very large creature, as big as a house. You'll find out when the time comes. Dubai. He patted the head of the panda walking beside him and nudged the small tricycle in front of him. Roar. Liar, where are my bamboo shoots? Do you want me to pull the cart back? Dubai's eyes widened in anger as he stared at Suchin. Plus ten lollipops. Suchin leaned in and whispered softly. Hmm. Dubai shivered all over, looking disdainful, and turned his head away. Ten lollipops to bribe me? Do you think I'm stupid? Ping too. It's up to you. Su Chen shook his head speechlessly and nodded towards the honey badger. Gaga! Smack! After Ping Tu heard, 
He reached out his paw and smacked Dubai's but fiercely, roaring fiercely. Dubai lowered his head, silently walked to the small tricycle, and got in. Xiao Jin, come up. You too. Su Chen waved to call the honey badger and the golden python up, then he sat down himself. You guys go back on your own. Instructing the monkey king, Su Chen patted Dubai's but then said with a smile, I'll buy you ten bamboo shoots when we get back, okay? Hurry up. Your little princess will be here soon. Roar. Dubai howled and quickly rushed out with the tricycle. Meow. 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 He eat Dubai, look how cute it is, you've gained weight. Holding the calico cat in her arms, the baby leaned against the panda, laughing and saying. Roar. Click. Dubai, speechless, shouted and angrily bit a bamboo shoot to vent his frustration. What can I do? I haven't eaten meat either. I've always been a vegetarian. I still gain weight. My genes are too good. There's nothing I can do. Uncle Suchin, the little one can run today. The injury is healed. Watching the baby playing on the grass, Suchin went over and rubbed her head. Hmm, do you want to bring it back and cuddle with it at night? Really? The baby widened her eyes and asked, Can I really bring the calico cat back? Uncle Suchin, are you telling the truth? It's true, but don't press on it at night. Suchin looked at the calico cat peeking out and said with a smile. No, no, the baby is very well behaved at night. She definitely won't press on it. Right, calico cat? Woohoo! Tonight the baby can bring the little one back. Watching the excited baby jumping around on the grass, Suchin sincerely felt happy. This little girl is naturally the closest friend of animals. All the animals in the zoo naturally get along with her. Roar! Can I come with you? Dubai dropped the bamboo shoot from his mouth and looked up at Suchin with a pitiful expression. What do you think? Suchin glanced at him and gave him a knowing look. Baby! Suddenly, a cry from Gao Yu came from afar, and Suchin quickly turned to look. He saw the baby lying stiff on the ground, the calico cat in her arms licking her face continuously. Hurrying over, he saw the baby's pale face, with beads of sweat the size of beans on her forehead. What's wrong? Is she sick? Suchin picked up the little one, reached out to touch the forehead, and asked with concern, Baby, baby, how are you feeling? Where does it hurt? But the little one frowned, looking in pain, clearly having passed out. What's going on? Gaoyue took the child, holding and comforting her gently. Baby, has a strange illness. Host, please exchange for the Australian little rabbit fragment before the baby dies and complete the task. Reward for this task, nature's heart, able to bond with all her bivorous animals. No punishment for failing the task. The exchange for the Australian little rabbit fragment requires a total of 2 million shot points, double. Host, are you deciding to exchange? Once decided, the Australian little rabbit fragment will definitely refresh next time, but, if not exchanged, this creature will never be able to revive in this lifetime. Please consider carefully. Australian little rabbit fragment? Su Chen took a deep breath and gritted his teeth. Isn't it just 2 million shock points? He still has the Asian elephant fragment now, exchanged two types of biological fragments in the hospital, namely, gorilla parrot fragment, Alaskan malamute fragment. After completing all these fragment tasks, he should also be able to earn a good amount of shock points. By then, moving the zoo, increasing visitors, the speed of acquisition will also accelerate, surely enough to accumulate 2 million shock points. System, decide to exchange for the Australian little rabbit fragment, Su Chen said in a deep voice. No matter what the cost, he will definitely cure the little girl. That night, after Su Chen had everything settled, he then started the Asian elephant fragment task. If this task is completed, there will be six kinds of animals in the zoo only four more to move out. However, the Qin capital government has already designated the area in advance. Perhaps construction can start early. After all, the system can be set up overnight, and everything must be kept secret. Ding, start the Asian elephant fragment task. The live broadcast will begin. Buzz. The scene in front of him changed. Su Chen took a deep breath and opened his eyes again. Phew. After seeing the scene in front of him clearly, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. This time it was still normal, he was standing on the edge of a small river. Surrounding him were dense tropical jungles, with a lush grassland in the distance. Slowly taking out a crossbow from his backpack, Su Chen carefully strapped it behind him. This was not easy to buy in a wilderness survival store. With animals extinct for such a long time in the world, the weapons used to defend against wild beasts had gradually declined. Su Chen was well aware of this. This Asian elephant task would definitely involve interacting with humans. After all, elephants are at the top of the food chain, due to their size, they don't have obvious natural enemies, and elephants live in herds, once under attack, the resistance would be fierce. 
In the ancient past on Earth, although there were instances of lion prides or tigers attacking elephants, it was usually the older elephants in the group that were targeted. And, in the ancient past, humans were the biggest enemies of elephants. Due to the existence of ivory, humans hunted elephant herds recklessly. Some governments even established official hunting teams to suppress the price of ivory in the black market. For a time, almost the entire elephant population was wiped out. Even though many countries had banned the trade of ivory products, there were still many who took risks. The most famous example was a country on earth that had recently bestowed the title of elephant king on a majestic elephant, but within a month, the elephant king's body was found in the wild, with its two thick tusks gruesomely pulled out while still alive. This showed how cruel the hunters were, paying no heed to government decrees. Phew. Exhaling a breath, Su Chin drew out his dagger and walked towards the source of the river. In the tropical rainforest, following the river would surely lead to finding the elephant herd, as elephants are creatures that cannot do without water. Splash. Suddenly, a splash of water erupted from the water, followed by a silvery white large fish leaping out. Damn, scared me. Su Chen's tense nerves relaxed, and he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. His current location should be near the tropical jungle of Huaxia. Although it is not as dangerous as the tropical jungles along the Amazon coast, there are definitely many jungle creatures living there. Among them are fierce beasts, poisonous insects, and the like. So, one must be extremely careful. Anchor, where have we arrived? Why does this place look like a tropical rainforest? Asian elephant fragments, is it that kind of animal with a long nose, larger than a small car, as described in textbooks? I think I've heard of it. They say these animals have a gentle temperament, but who knows if it's true. What species was that fish? Where's the librarian? At librarian. I don't know, I just found some books on tropical rainforests and I'm reading them now. The place the anchor visited today is indeed a tropical rainforest, which was very dangerous in ancient times. Anchor, be careful. As Su Chen started the live broadcast, the number of viewers increased rapidly, breaking through 100,000 online in an instant. However, the atmosphere in the entire live broadcast room was very harmonious, with everyone quietly following Su Chen's camera to explore this mysterious place in front of them. After all, many people find it difficult to set foot in such rarely visited tropical rainforests in their lifetime. Moo! 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 Suddenly, a miserable roar came from deep within the jungle. Su Chen frowned, glanced towards the distant river, but did not see any traces of a herd of elephants. Friends, the anchor has not found the herd of elephants yet. Let's go into the jungle for now to see if any animals are injured. After greeting the live broadcast room, Su Chen hurried towards the source of the sound. Although it was an Asian elephant fragments mission, if other animals were in danger, Su Chen would still help. Every animal is a precious and living being. Moreover, most of the animals in the tropical rainforest are rare and extremely valuable. Moo. The ground was very damp, with various thick dead trees lying haphazardly in the jungle. Moss grew in patches of green. Wiping off the water droplets falling on his head, Su Chen climbed over a large tree lying on the ground, and in the distance, there was a small pond in a depression. And, by the edge of the pond, there were some scattered white bones. Su Chen paused, quickly lowered his head and hid behind a tree. Just a glance, it seemed that this pond was a hunting ground for some creature. Otherwise, how could there be so many animal bones scattered on the ground? Su Chen even found the bones of several large predators. Could it be crocodiles? It shouldn't be possible, as the river was nearby, and crocodiles wouldn't make sense to lurk here. Moreover, generally speaking, in such a small pond, which was stagnant water, only small animals would come to drink. Moo! Just then, a painful scream came from behind a tree near the pond. This time, Su Chen understood it using the animal language function. Don't! Pain! Stop! Ah! It was a tender voice. This! Taking a deep breath, Su Chen's expression became resolute, slowly pulling out a crossbow arrow from behind and cautiously crawling past the large tree lying on the ground. Just take a look, if the difficulty was too high, he could only give up. Hiss! Suddenly, a green vine burst out from behind the tree, covered in blood. Gurgle! 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 The entire vine seemed to have a life of its own, reaching into the pond, its branches slowly expanding, absorbing all the blood. With a whoosh, the vine retracted again. Is this possible? Oh my god, this is too unlucky. If it's this thing, then. Su Chen pondered for a moment, already vaguely guessing what this thing might be. If it really was this thing, then the crossbow arrow would be of no use. Putting away the crossbow arrow, Su Chen suddenly pulled out his dagger. Bending down, he cautiously approached the tree in front of him. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, what is this? A tree? The little guy on the tree is an elephant, right? But, what's up with this tree? 
Are there trees in the world that eat animals? Oh my, the host needs to save the little elephant quickly. Look at those vines about to pierce the elephant's skin. Don't give orders recklessly. Can't you see how tall this tree is? It's about 8 to 9 meters high. Isn't it suicidal for the host to climb up there? Nature is truly amazing to think there's a tree that eats animals. The bones on the ground are leftovers from this tree. It's too terrifying. In the live broadcast room, everyone looked through the lens at a tree that was a whopping 8 to 9 meters high, as thick as a barrel, and widened their eyes in surprise. They had never seen such a plant before. Although animals have gone extinct on Earth, plants have not. Almost all plants have been discovered. However, a tree that can eat animals, this is truly the first time they have encountered it. This is the Dianbo tree, also known as the snake tree. Su Chen crouched down, lowered his voice, and said, There may only be a few of these trees in the world, so it's normal that no one has seen them before. And, the host never expected to encounter this here. It is said that this tree has long been extinct, but who would have thought? He looked up at the Dianbo tree, which was currently struggling with the entangled elephant. Su Chen tightened the dagger in his hand and cautiously approached. He had been prepared to deal with ivory poachers, not to rescue an elephant from a man-eating tree. It was too difficult to snatch the elephant back from the tree. Looking at the vines entwining the entire body of the elephant, Su Chen swallowed hard. Regardless, he couldn't give up on this task. The vines of the Dianbo tree were difficult to break free from. The reason the elephant was still struggling was that its skin was tougher. If it were Su Chen, just a scratch from these vines would surely draw a lot of blood. However, since the system had guided him here, it must be to save this little elephant. I must attract the attention of the Dianbo tree. Su Chen pondered. The Dianbo tree had no sight or hearing, it could only sense nearby creatures through the vines that constantly moved. This was Su Chen's only chance. While the elephant distracted the tree, he cut off all the vines, pulled the elephant away from the tree's attack range, and only then could they successfully escape. Little one, can you hear me? Su Chen slowly stood up from the ground, waved to the struggling elephant, and whispered. The struggling elephant paused, opened its eyes wide, and looked at the human in front of it. Moo! It let out a painful cry. Shu! Su Chen raised a finger to his lips, and the little one stopped struggling. By now, Su Chen was certain that this was the Asian elephant he was supposed to save. Otherwise, its intelligence wouldn't be so high. Follow me and run faster. Su Chen nervously approached the Dianbo tree, gently avoiding the hanging vines. However, there were too many vines entwined around the elephant's body, and it was impossible to cut them all with just a small dagger. Thinking about this, Su Chen fell into silence. If he were to attack, the vines would go crazy and try to find him. Avoiding countless of these flesh-hooking vines was as difficult as climbing to the sky. At that moment, a soft elephant trunk reached out, constantly rubbing against Su Chen's cheek. A glistening tear fell from the elephant's eye. Sigh. Su Chen sighed, survival is the instinct of any living being, and this little elephant was no exception. He gently patted the elephant's trunk and took a deep breath. Click. With a fierce swing of the dagger, the intertwined vines were directly cut off. Sizzle. A thick green liquid with a hint of blood streaks splattered out. Su Chen dared not linger and hurriedly dodged. Swinging the dagger again, he also cut off several vines above his head with one stroke. Thud. After losing a few of the thickest vines, the young elephant in front of him fell heavily to the ground. Moo. Raising its trunk, it roared. The young elephant, covered in blood, charged forward. Sizzle. Sizzle. Small vines were pulled down from the branches one by one. Good. Su Chen exclaimed excitedly at the sight. The young elephant now only had a few vines wrapped around its legs. As long as these were cut off, they could escape quickly and be safe. However, at this moment, after losing its prey, the Diadar tree, all the vines on the tree began to crazily pour down, like steel whips waving around Su Chen, bringing a gust of wind. Bang! Just as a vine was about to strike from the front, Su Chen lunged forward, narrowly avoiding it. Oh no! In the instant he landed, several harder branches suddenly shot out from the tree roots, crazily entwining and sweeping towards Su Chen. It's over! There was no time to get up from the ground. The people in the live broadcast room watched the scene in front of them, holding their breath, not daring to make a sound. It's over! Seeing Su Chen's situation, it was obvious that it was too late, and countless vines were rapidly shooting from the tree. Moo! At the critical moment, a soft elephant trunk quickly wrapped around Su Chen's waist and pulled him back forcefully. Bang! 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 Watching several branches inserted into the ground, Su Chen wiped the cold sweat from his pale face. It was too thrilling, just a little bit more. Crack! 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 Quickly cutting off the vines on the young elephant's legs, Su Chen patted its backside and ran quickly towards the river in the distance. 
after a long time. Ha ha, Su Chen laughed as he watched the young elephant standing in the water, constantly spraying river water on himself with its trunk. Although there were many minor wounds on his body, the elephant's thick skin would heal these injuries in no time. I never expected it to be a young elephant. Su Chen also walked into the water up to his calves, scooped up some river water, and helped the young elephant wash off the mud on its body. Moo! Suddenly, a neigh came from a distance. The young elephant in front of him suddenly raised its head and joyfully dashed away from Su Chen. Looking up, Su Chen saw a dozen elephants slowly emerging from the distant jungle, with a leading female elephant looking worriedly at the running young elephant. Raising her trunk, she let out a concerned call. Moo! The young elephant affectionately rubbed against the female elephant's body, then turned to look at Su Chen still standing in the river, raised its head and neighed at the female elephant. Then, Su Chen was too far away to hear their communication clearly, but he could see that the group of elephants kept looking up at him. Slowly walking out of the river, Su Chen approached the elephant herd. With the presence of the young elephant, the group of elephants did not show any hostility towards him. Moreover, as the director of the zoo, Su Chen did not emit any threatening aura towards the animals. Some animals are very sensitive, and elephants are one of them. Whether a person has malicious intent can often be discerned by animals through a single glance. Moo! Su Chen approached the elephant herd, and the female elephant patted his head with her trunk to show friendliness. Ah, nice to meet you all. Su Chen waved to all the elephants and said with a smile. However, after he finished speaking, these elephants were all surprised that they could understand what this man was saying. Who? Are you exactly? We are leaving now. The mother elephant turned her head to look at the jungle on the side, and said with some concern, Kong. Just then, a gunshot rang out in the jungle, startling a group of birds. Ah! Ah! The mother elephant directly used her trunk to lift Su Chen up, threw him on her back, and quickly ran to the other side of the river. Poachers? Su Chen pondered for a moment quickly took out a crossbow from his back, and coldly watched the jungle behind him. It could be seen that the group of elephants was very panicked, taking heavy steps and running towards the farthest grassland. And, the little elephant he had just saved was also following beside the mother elephant, clumsily taking steps with its short legs. The largest male elephant stayed behind, occasionally looking back. This should be the leader of the elephant group. However, after running with the mother elephant for a while, Su Chen on her back did not hear any more gunshots from behind nor did he see the poachers chasing after them. The elephant group finally slowed down. Perhaps they are not chasing the elephant group. Su Chen sat on the back of the mother elephant, teasing the constantly stretching trunk and rubbing his own little elephant. The group of elephants that survived the ordeal also seemed much more relaxed at this time. Some had even started rolling up the tender green grass on the ground to eat. Watching the elephants safe, everyone in the live stream room breathed a sigh of relief. Poachers are truly despicable, these people should all be sentenced to death. Thank goodness they are not chasing the elephants, but, these elephants are really interesting, with such a large size, I never expected them to be so gentle. If there were no humans, perhaps these animals would live better. This little elephant is so cute, look at how it keeps pestering the host, the host won't mistake you for its father, right? What nonsense are you talking about upstairs? What kind of looks does the host have? How could the mother elephant be interested in the host? Nonsense. Seeing that the elephant group was no longer in danger, everyone in the room began discussing. Ha ha, Su Chen jumped off the mother elephant's back, patted the little elephant's trunk, and looked back with some concern. Until now, the system had not indicated a successful resurrection of the Asian elephant, there might still be danger. It must be those poachers. Natural enemies of elephants are rare, and Su Chen really couldn't think of any other reason, if not for a natural disaster, the elephant group could have survived well in the tropical rainforest, after all, there is a river with abundant water sources, grasslands, and plenty of food. Moo! Suddenly, a low roar came from a hill in the distance. All the elephants paused in their movements upon hearing it. Boom! A small elephant covered in blood struggled to climb up from behind the hill, stumbling towards them. However, after only a few steps, it collapsed to the ground, emitting a heavy roar. Another elephant group? Su Chen hurriedly ran over. Looking at the appearance of this small elephant, it seemed to have been attacked, but he never expected to encounter two elephant groups in this place. Running over quickly, he took a closer look. Su Chen's anger surged. The small elephant in front of him was covered in horrifying wounds. Its ear, like a fan, was broken in the middle, blood flowing down its neck. And the most fatal were the dense bullet holes in the elephant's abdomen. These were pellets from a shotgun, deeply embedded in the elephant's body. How cruel and insane these people were. This small elephant was probably less than a year old and was about to die. Moo. 
Painful, so painful. Mom, so painful. Mom, the small elephant lying on the ground with serious injuries, blood oozing from its mouth, its weak voice filled with fear. Good, it will stop hurting soon. Suchin squatted down, gently holding the elephant's trunk, caressing it in his arms. Painful. Thump. The pupils of the small elephant began to dilate slowly, gradually losing their luster, then the trunk slipped from Su Chen's hand, fell to the ground, splashing a burst of dry grass crumbs. Creak. Su Chen clenched his teeth tightly, trying hard not to let tears fall. He gently patted the forehead of the baby elephant and closed its eyelids with his hand. Dead. An Asian elephant less than a year old. It hadn't even weaned yet, hadn't even tasted the flavor of plants. The lifespan of each Asian elephant is at least 60 years. Just one year. Not even a year old, and it had already left this world. Moo. The elephants standing nearby, looking at the dead baby elephant in front of them, began to trumpet mournfully. The sound was filled with a sense of desolation. Who? Su Chen took a deep breath, walked past the baby elephant, each step unusually heavy. This baby elephant had run up from the hillside. In other words, its herd was not far away, or the little one's mother was nearby. A baby elephant under a year old would not run out alone. There was simply no possibility of a baby elephant being attacked by humans. There was only one possibility. The entire, entire herd had been attacked. Su Chen dared not look, not even dare to think, if a group of elephant corpses appeared before him. What would he do? What could he do? Crunch, crunch, crunch. The hiking boots stepped on the grass, making a faint sound. Each step Su Chen took was very heavy. It felt like he had walked a long way in just a few dozen steps, until he reached the hillside. Thud. Seeing dozens of elephant carcasses lying not far away, Su Chen sat down dejectedly on the ground. Dead. The entire herd of elephants was dead. A scene of blood and flesh, all the elephants' tusks had been cruelly pulled out, and even the heads of several elephants had been cut off. No, these people must pay the price. Su Chen's eyes swept coldly over the hellish scene before him, gritted his teeth, took out a crossbow from behind, and quickly ran towards the elephant carcasses. Standing in front of a dead mother elephant, Su Chen stood speechless for a long time. The mother elephant's belly was swollen high, clearly pregnant. And, when it died, the mother elephant's body was curled up, tightly protecting its belly. However, it was all in vain. The entire tusks were cut open with sharp saws, and the tusks were forcibly dug out. The gruesome scene made Su Chen's body tremble uncontrollably. Various shotgun shells the size of fingers were scattered on the ground, soaked in pools of blood. The camera zoomed in on each dead elephant. The corners of each elephant's eyes were moist. They must have begged desperately before their deaths. However, driven by greed, these people had lost their humanity and were no longer human. As the camera swept over each elephant carcass, the live broadcast room fell silent. Everyone's hands on the keyboard or phone suddenly stopped. Just moments ago, they were celebrating the successful escape of the herd, never expecting to witness such a horrific scene so quickly. Damn it, I'm so angry, I wish I could rush up and kill all those poachers right now. A bunch of animals, even without natural disasters, animals would probably go extinct sooner or later because of these scum in society. Nature is fair, it's because of these scum that nature punishes humanity. For thousands of years, there have been no animals. I wonder what these people will feel when they find out. I can't take it anymore. The anchor must not act impulsively. The poachers are no longer human, they are animals. Ah, I'm so angry. For just a bit of ivory, so many elephants were slaughtered. How can it be so cruel? After the silence, there was an outburst from all the viewers in the live broadcast room. Everyone looked at the scene before them, feeling a raging fire burning in their hearts. The gentle treatment of animals towards humans, and yet humans had once committed such inhumane acts. For a little profit, cruelly exterminate a group, even including young elephants and pregnant mother elephants. Snap. Huaxia Animal Protection Organization. In the office, everyone stared at the shocking scene on the screen. Shang Guan Yun slammed the table, instantly knocking the teacup on the table to the ground. This. Is this program the live broadcast room organized by Director Su Chen of Lantian Zoo? Yes. Yes. Shang Wan Yun's body was trembling slightly, smiling bitterly at everyone and said, This program is good, animals are gradually coming back to life. Perhaps in decades, or perhaps in hundreds of years, all animals will reappear on Earth. By then, can we guarantee that future generations will not be like those in the live broadcast? For the sake of profit, killing animals again? Even if the punishment is severe, as long as there is enough profit, those capitalists dare to take risks. Bang! He slammed the table heavily, Shang Wan Yun's sharp eyes swept over everyone, and said in a deep voice, Submit the animal protection law again. It's not strict enough. 
We must strangle the tragedies that have occurred before. We absolutely cannot allow animals to become targets of human hunting again in a few years. Also, in the name of the Animal Protection Organization, promote this episode. Let everyone know the ruthless behavior of those executioners in the past. Everyone, this is a wake-up call for us. It has been too long. Initially, humans may cherish the resurrected animals, but what if their numbers increase? Will we tread the old path again? No one knows. This kind of publicity is good. We must make everyone understand that such cruel treatment of animals will eventually incur nature's retaliation. Our thousand-year life without animals is a vivid example, a bloody lesson. Following the tire tracks on the ground, Su Chen walked to a farm not far from the grassland. Lying on the grass, Su Chen looked up coldly at the few people rushing down from the pickup truck. There were a total of five people, carrying thick ivory tusks towards the farm. This should be an organization hunting elephant herds and stealing ivory. Even this farm was just a front. After all, so far, Su Chen had not seen any animals being raised on the farm. Ha ha, this harvest is very rich. Badong carried a tusk about one and a half meters long, grinning and laughing at everyone. When we sell them, we can make a lot of money. Those westerners really like this kind of ivory. The boss is really amazing, discovering this elephant herd. Standing aside, a dark-skinned young man grinned and said, but it's a bit of a pity, that young elephant got hit. If we sell it to those circuses, we can make a good profit too. Snap. Badong put down the ivory and slapped the young man. All right, mudding, it's all because of you. How many times have I told you not to shoot randomly, but, even if we sell it to the zoo, we won't make much money. Badong said with a sneer, those white people are very picky. They prefer African elephants, and the price of Asian elephants won't be too high. Yes, boss. Mudding rubbed his forehead and quickly dragged all the ivory off the pickup truck. Clean the ivory, take photos, and send them to them. See when they will come to pick up the goods. The quality of this batch is very good, so the price should be higher. Badong looked at the ivory pile on the ground, waved to everyone and said, after selling it, everyone will get a share, then reserve some to buy ammunition. From my observation, there should be a small elephant herd on the grassland. After the transaction is successful, everyone will disperse and look for this elephant herd. A group of people kept washing the bloodstains off the ivory with buckets. Su Chen could see that each person had a Buddha pendant made of ivory carved around their necks. Sigh. There are a total of five people. After a moment of contemplation, Su Chen crawled towards the pickup truck. Fortunately, all these people's firearms were in the car and not brought down. Moreover, after observing for a long time, Su Chen noticed that aside from the leader, the rest of the group did not have weapons on them. As long as he could quickly deal with the leader and take over the pickup truck, he would definitely succeed. Watching as everyone cleaned the ivory carefully and carried it into the house, Su Chen waited until there was no one left in the entire farmyard. He then took out a dagger and slowly punctured the tires of the pickup truck. Bending down, he cautiously made his way to the door of the farm building. At this moment, everyone inside was having a meal. Su Chen quietly leaned against the side of the door, breathing heavily. Creak. Suddenly, the wooden door in front of him opened, and the young man carrying a plate walked out. Buzz. The crossbow string made a crisp sound. Su Chen quickly covered the young man's mouth in front of him and dragged him to the side. You. Bang. He fiercely struck the young man's forehead with the back of the crossbow arrow, instantly knocking him unconscious. He then pulled the Buddha pendant off his chest. Humph, it's not you guys, how could a group like you have the nerve to wear ivory Buddha pendants? Su Chen muttered angrily as he swiftly pulled the feathered arrow out of the young man's thigh. He casually wiped off the blood and hooked it back onto the crossbow. Su Chen's movements were swift, and the people inside the house still hadn't noticed anything unusual. Sai, gently calming his pounding heart. Su Chen stood quietly behind the door again, listening to the movements inside. Where's Mutin? Why is he so slow with the food? The leader Badong frowned and asked, waving his hand at a burly man beside him. Go call that kid, he must be up to something else again. Boom! The burly man who had just reached the door was instantly sent flying back. The entire wooden door fell to the ground. Badong coldly eyed the young man standing at the door, slowly reaching into his pocket with his right hand. Bang! An arrow with a whistling sound directly pierced his shoulder, pinning him to the wooden wall behind with flesh and blood. Thud! Suddenly, a burly man rushed from the side and forcefully knocked Su Chen's body out. He's out of arrows, get him! With a shout, the burly man quickly rushed out. Bang! Su Chen got up from the ground, leaped high, and punched the burly man in front of him on the forehead. Since his strength had increased, although his body didn't look very muscular, Su Chen's strength was no less than that of the burly man in front of him. However, several poachers inside had already rushed out. Bang! Gunshots rang out. 
Su Chen's expression changed, and he quickly rolled on the ground, rushing towards the pickup truck not far away. Bang! 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 Badong, clutching his shoulder wound, rapidly fired several shots, but all missed. Damn it, grab a weapon, there are guns in the car, catch this kid. With an angry shout, several burly men quickly crouched down and hurried towards the pickup truck. Sigh. 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 Su Chen hid behind the car, breathing heavily. Looking down on the ground, he saw several footprints approaching from a distance. This won't work, I must quickly find a way to escape. Gritting his teeth, Su Chen turned towards the front of the car. Bang! He's here! Badong rushed to the side of the pickup truck, raised his hand and fired a shot, shouting loudly. It's over, the streamer is surrounded now, what should we do? These poachers have guns. The streamer shouldn't have rushed in just now. Are you stupid? If the streamer hadn't rushed in just now, he would have been done for by now. If he hadn't hit that person's shoulder, with so many shots, the streamer would have been hit by now. I'm so pumped up watching this, come on streamer. Although this is a live stream, it looks so real. Hey, can someone explain what's going on to the newbie? Upstairs, stop sending bullet comments, it's all real, the streamer could die accidentally. Everyone in the live broadcast room saw Su Chen's current situation, sweat dripping from their foreheads. They all stared at the live screen, praying for Su Chen in their hearts. Moo. Suddenly, a loud and piercing roar came from the live screen. Then it seemed like the screen started shaking. Su Chen also felt a chill in his heart. He turned his head to look. Boom. 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 At this moment, it seemed like a thousand troops and horses were galloping on the ground, causing the entire ground to tremble. This. Badon watched the rapidly approaching herd of elephants, forgetting to even raise the handgun in his hand. Bang. Like a tank. The herd of elephants rushed towards the pickup truck without stopping. Moo. Just as Su Chen was about to dodge, a long elephant trunk instantly wrapped around him and threw him directly onto its back. The pickup truck roared and was overturned, while the few poachers hiding on the other side didn't react at all and were crushed under the truck. Ah ah ah, my leg. Screams rang out. However, the herd of elephants did not stop bypassing the pickup truck and quickly chasing after the fleeing Badong. Have mercy. Don't chase me. Don't chase me. Watching the crazed herd of elephants behind him, Badong desperately ran out of the farm. Bang! However, after running just a few steps, he was directly knocked down by a young elephant. The young elephant stepped on Badong's chest, raised its trunk, and let out a cry towards Su Chen sitting on the back of the mother elephant, as if seeking praise. Who? Su Chen jumped down from the mother elephant's back, approached Badong, and kicked him hard in the face, causing blood to spurt out. Crack! Suddenly, the young elephant in front imitated the action, lifting its front legs and stomping fiercely on Badong's chest, the sound of bones shattering. Badong's eyes rolled back, and he passed out immediately. Moo! How was that? The young elephant curled its trunk around Su Chen's neck, constantly entwining it. Hee hee, impressive. Su Chen gave a thumbs up, knowing that Badong's chest had been crushed, he obviously couldn't survive. But, it was all his own fault. Hunting and killing the herd of elephants, he deserved to die. However, Su Chen also felt a headache looking at the herd of elephants in front of him. Would the system give him the entire herd of elephants this time? The zoo couldn't accommodate them all. Ha! Huh? Suddenly, Su Chen's expression changed, and he quickly rushed into the house. As he opened the door, the whole room was filled with a faint smell of blood, with tusks piled up in a mess. What should I do with these things? System? Ding! Asian elephant fragment mission completed. Ding! Successful resurrection of Asian elephant, strength plus two. Returning. Live broadcast interrupted. Suddenly, the system prompt sounded in his mind, and the screen in front of him began to blur. Su Chen felt dizzy for a moment. He shook his head to clear the dizziness and slowly opened his eyes. Moo. Suddenly, a cheerful elephant roar came from behind. Turning around, Su Chen couldn't help but tremble all over, it was actually real. This time he had directly resurrected a herd of elephants. A total of 17 elephants followed him back to the real world. This. He had to quickly contact the Chindu government, they needed to establish the Blue Sky Zoo in Li Mountain. The current zoo area was simply not enough for the herd of elephants to live in. Not even enough grass for food. Roar! Brothers, today the damn director is not here, ha ha ha. The polar bear sat at the entrance of the zoo, looking at the closed gate, turned his head and let out an excited roar. Too good. Not only was that guy Su Chen not here today, but the zoo hadn't even opened yet. Finally, he could have a good day's sleep. Life as a bear is tough. Crack. Holding a bamboo shoot, Big White glanced back at the dying golden python, patted her head and said, Are you very hungry? It's okay, let's swing on the swing, you won't be hungry after passing out. 
The golden python stared with triangular eyes, gave it a fierce look, looked up at the macaque group on the artificial hill in the distance, and then crawled towards the grassland in the distance. I really want to eat. Without meat, this cute girl is really going to starve to death. G-A-G-A. -G -A. Listening to the weak howls of the honey badger lying on the ground, Big White carefully bypassed it. This guy hasn't eaten anything for days, his eyes are starting to turn green just looking at himself. It's really scary. It's better to be a vegetarian, eat as much as you want. Patting his belly, looking at the layer of fat that had grown again, Big White shook his head in pain. Moo! Just as he was about to lie down on the grass, a loud roar came from the entrance of the zoo, and all the animals raised their heads and rushed madly towards the entrance. The zookeeper is back. Especially the honey badger and the golden python, the two of them used all their strength and hurriedly ran towards the entrance. The food is here. GG. Watching Su Chen push open the door, the honey badger took a brisk step and circled around Su Chen, sniffing incessantly. There's an animal scent, he must have brought back food. Thinking of this, his eyes lit up involuntarily. Boom. At this moment, the ground began to rumble, as if the whole ground was vibrating slightly. Looking up, the honey badger, how come it's this guy who's back? Can I eat this? It's too big. I can't even finish it. Seeing a group of creatures hundreds of times larger than himself, the honey badger silently retreated to the side. Oh no. If there's no food brought back, what should I do? Ha, huh? come. Su Chen looked at the honey badger and the golden python, who were on the verge of collapse, and couldn't help but smile. Fortunately, he found some food in the poacher's truck and brought it back, or else, these two guys would really starve to death. However, this time, he can finally exchange for a breedable animal in the mall. He doesn't even need to complete a task. Taking out a clean-washed rooster from his backpack, Su Chen threw it in front of the honey badger. GG. The flat-headed brother looked alert, sniffed deeply. It's that smell, he missed it so much. Holding the rooster in his mouth, he ran quickly towards the grassland in the distance. Hiss. 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 Seeing this, the golden python slithered up Su Chen's leg, raised its head and looked at him with a puzzled look. It seemed to be asking, why does that guy have it, and I don't. There there. Su Chen gently took it down, took out a slightly smaller hen from his bag, and gave it to the golden python. These guys are really pitiful, they must quickly exchange for animals that can be raised in the system mall. But the most urgent task is to set up the new zoo and put it into operation as soon as possible. By exchanging items from the mall this time, he can directly refresh the Australian little rabbit fragments. Plop! Big White watched a group of elephants walking in, his eyes widened, and the bamboo shoot in his hand fell to the ground instantly. And! That honey badger actually has food! Oh no! When this guy regains his strength, won't I be in trouble? Lately, I've been mocking the honey badger a lot. Big White suddenly got up from the ground and ran towards the Asian elephants in the distance. These guys are so big, the honey badger is definitely no match, I need to find a backer for myself. Roar! Among the elephant group, Big White found a slightly smaller one, licked its face and approached it. He gently bumped it with his butt, blinked, and growled softly. Click! However, he didn't expect this creature in front of him to have such a long nose. It directly rolled the bamboo shoot in its arms and stuffed it into its mouth. Moo! The baby elephant looked at the fluffy giant panda in front of it, gently rubbed its nose against it, and excitedly let out a cry. Just arrived here, and already made a new friend. My bamboo shoots! My bamboo shoots! Dubai watched as the little elephant swallowed the bamboo shoot in one gulp, feeling his heartache. This was all hard-earned money. Was it easy to pull the tricycle so far? Ga she. Ga she. Ga she. Chewing sounds came from a distant corner, and Dubai cautiously glanced over, taking a deep breath. For the sake of avoiding a beating, what's a bamboo shoot? It's just a matter of pulling the cart a few more times. After settling the herd of elephants, Su Chen grabbed Dubai, who was among the elephants, and hitched up the tricycle, heading towards the entrance of the zoo. Hey, oh Wu, what are you doing? Dubai looked at the tricycle behind him and instantly got angry. What's the meaning of this? Getting addicted to riding it. Su Chen held out three fingers, smiling at the disgruntled Dubai. Hoof. Dubai turned his head away with a cold snort. Joking, three bamboo shoots were enough. I'm Dubai, a giant panda, you know? Deal. Seeing Dubai extending a paw, Su Chen quickly patted it and hopped onto the tricycle. Let's go, let's go, I'll buy you bamboo shoots when we come back, not just bamboo shoots, big ones. Ayo hey, oh, Wu. Dubai patted his round belly and started running on the street with the windmill tricycle. Much later. Such a vast place. Su Chen looked at the endless grassland in front of him and couldn't help but exclaim. Yes, Director Su Chen, this place has always been part of the Lishan Scenic Park, but... 
The scenic park has never been very prosperous, so it's great that you're building a zoo. A middle-aged man beside him smiled and said, I don't know how many venues you plan to build temporarily, the amount of work should be considerable, do you need to report to the Qin capital government? No need. Su Chen waved his hand and said with a smile, thanks, Uncle Lu, you've been managing this place for so many years, I don't know if that area next to the river can be given to me first. Recently, the Blue Sky Zoo has revived a new water-loving animal, so, ah, uh, this should be possible. After thinking for a while, Lu Xingguan nodded slowly. If you have enough animals, the entire Lishan will be your zoo in the future. You can plan anywhere you want, but, when building, make sure to plan properly, otherwise it will be troublesome to change later. Tear. Before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly felt a chill on his buttocks. Before he could react, he saw a figure rushing forward from behind him. Dubai, give back the pants. Do you still want bamboo shoots? Su Chen's expression froze, his face dark as he chased after. System, with 50 million construction funds, what can be built? Su Chen stood on the grass, watching Dubai playing around, frowning as he communicated with the system. Host, with 50 million funds, it is only enough to build an elephant park, external facilities. Should be insufficient. However, if top-notch equipment is not needed, it can temporarily be built as a regular zoo, using a fence model. Then it's the fence model. Su Chen gritted his teeth. It's a step-by-step -step process now. Although the Blue Sky Zoo has been profitable compared to before, wanting to build a new zoo, especially a top-notch one, requires funds that are astronomical. According to the system's description of the scene, Su Chen felt that even investing several hundred million would probably not be enough to build it. Moreover, it's not just about money, the kind of architectural style the system describes, there's no one in reality to build it. In the Monkey Park, a piece resembling a tropical rainforest would be moved out, with a thick layer of leaves on the ground, countless vines interwoven, allowing all visitors to wander through the jungle with the monkeys. There would even be numerous tree houses built in the air for visitors to rest at night. According to the system's design, there will be countless fireflies flying in the entire zoo at night. This is just the top monkey park. The elephant park includes the entire riverbank, and according to the system's plan, the water in the entire river is crystal clear and can even be directly consumed. There will be numerous mud bath pools planned, where visitors can bathe in mud with elephants. Feeding projects, children raising their trunks high project. Countless entertainment programs. This doesn't seem like a zoo at all, more like a scenic area where humans and animals live together. If it can really be built like this, then, don't worry. Su Chen suddenly realized that if the government is willing to support Blue Sky Zoo, they must have already done their research. His zoo simply cannot afford to build a new area. So, if that's the case, does it mean the government might allocate funds to him? However, if funds are allocated, will it involve changes in the contract? After all, if it is built, even a blind person can see that this zoo will surely become popular worldwide. Countless people will flock to Lishan. Even the surrounding area could be developed into eco-friendly hotels, all resembling nature, for human leisure and vacation. First exchange the animals that can be raised, then negotiate with the government. After a moment of contemplation, Su Chen waved to the giant panda crawling in the distance. Once again on the tricycle, Su Chen started heading towards the city. Boom! 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 A violent explosion rang out, causing residents of the Bailan community in the suburbs to panic and run downstairs. In the garden of the entire community, numerous people gathered, anxiously watching the fire on the third floor. Thick smoke billowed, and fierce flames kept leaping out. Help! Help! Two pairs of tender hands reached out from the window, shouting continuously. Are there still people inside? How could they lock the children at home? The whole corridor is on fire now, there's no way to rush in, what should we do? It's urgent, what kind of irresponsible parents leave two six-year-old children at home in broad daylight, isn't this reckless? Has the fire truck arrived? Why hasn't it come yet? The residents standing below, feeling sorry for the two children clinging to the window, mobilized to try to rush in. Cough. At this moment, several young people wrapped in wet blankets ran out of the corridor in a sorry state. No, their house door can't be opened, and the fire has spread to the living room, the two children are hiding in the bedroom. They probably won't last another five minutes, the fire will reach them. A young man wiped the sweat off his face, looking serious and shouted, Quick, see why the fire truck hasn't come in yet? If it's delayed, the whole building will burn down. Bang. Suddenly, a nearby window made a loud rumble. Shattered glass shards flew everywhere. Ah ah ah. Everyone hiding below panicked and started to retreat. It's over, the kitchen is already on fire, the neighboring house is on fire too. No, let's go in again. Several security guards, seeing the situation, 
gritted their teeth and rushed in again. Boom! Suddenly, the entire building shook violently, and then the house where the glass had just shattered burst into a towering flame. The gas tank exploded, don't go in, come back quickly. The captain of the security guards behind pulled a few young people in front of him, shouting hoarsely, you guys step back, I'll go in and try, bring me a fire axe, I'll try to break open the door. Captain, how can you go in alone? No more nonsense, get out of here. The security captain roared, his eyes scanning everyone with a crimson gaze. You all have families and homes, I'm alone, stop arguing, quickly call the fire department again, why haven't they come yet? I'll go. Thud. Lifted the bucket beside him, poured it directly from the top, wrapped in a damp quilt, the fire captain once again plunged into the corridor. Watching the security captain rushing into the corridor alone, everyone fell silent. Woo 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 woo, this. Even many women standing far away had begun to secretly wipe away tears. Everyone's hearts were tightly clenched as they looked up at the two children stuck to the protective railing, breathing heavily. Little ones, hold on, the security uncle is going up to save you. Lower your head. Lower your head, don't look up, don't breathe in the smoke. Listen. You'll be fine. Everyone shouted loudly, trying to calm the two struggling children. Woo. A long and urgent siren sounded, everyone froze, their faces excitedly shouting, the fire truck is here, everyone quickly make way, let the fire truck in, hurry. Time is running out. A group of people quickly moved away from the building and rushed towards the entrance of the community. However, a full minute passed, and the fire truck did not come in, causing everyone to frown and look. They saw that the roads on both sides of the community were illegally parked with vehicles, blocking the fire truck from entering the community. Whose car is this? What's going on? Quickly move it. It's a matter of life and death. These animals, always parking illegally, now they've blocked the fire truck. Quick, let's push the cars. If we're late, these two children will be in danger. Seeing this, everyone rushed up to try to push down all the cars blocking the road. However, the entire Bilan community, being an old community, only had one wide road and there were hundreds of cars from the burning building to the position of the fire truck. What's going on? Su Chen had just arrived at the entrance of the zoo and saw thick smoke rising from a community in the distance, furrowing his brow, opening the zoo gate and preparing to walk in. Hurry up and help. I heard that two children are trapped in the bedroom on the third floor, the fire truck can't get in, it's really urgent. Let's go, let's help move the cars too. Two people hurriedly ran past him, and Su Chen paused when he heard their voices. Hey, wait a minute. He quickly stopped them and asked, is there a fire over there? Yes, two six-year-old children are trapped in the bedroom. I heard that the gas tank of the neighbor's house exploded. An elderly man angrily scolded. Finally, the fire truck was hoped for, but the vehicles in the community are parked all over the place, blocking the road, making it impossible to get in. Now, everyone is helping to move the cars. I don't know if we can make it in time. It's really a disaster. Hurry, let's go. Another elderly man pulled him, and the two hurriedly ran towards the community. Hiss. Is it on fire? Su Chen pondered for a moment, then quickly rushed into the zoo. The fire truck couldn't get in, if it was on the third floor. Maybe the elephants could help. Frowning, he came to the elephant group and communicated with the leader of the elephant group then hurriedly led the elephants out of the zoo. Two six-year-old children. They must be from a nearby community that Su Chen must know. Ever since real animals appeared in the zoo, children from nearby communities would come during holidays. And. These are two living lives, there is no reason not to save them. Help quickly. How many more cars are there? The fire captain and a group of people pushed a car to the side, wiping sweat and looking up. There's no time, quickly set up the water hose, put out the fire first, see if we can rescue the children, the truck can't get in at all. After seeing the situation on the scene for the first time, the best way was to cut the protective railing with a ladder and rescue the two children first before extinguishing the fire. After all, no one knew what the situation was inside. If they couldn't rush in after opening the door, it would be troublesome. Damn it. Several team members looked at the cars blocking the fire truck's path and couldn't help but curse. They quickly began setting up water columns. Boom. Suddenly, the burning building exploded again. Wow 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 wow. Sister, sister, wake up. Oh no, a child has fainted. Hearing the cries from above, they saw a small hand slipping down from the railing, causing everyone's expression to change. Cough. Cough. At this moment, the security team leader who had just rushed in, covered in blood, ran out of the corridor and shouted loudly, No, the fire is about to reach the kitchen, where there are gas tanks. The living room has collapsed, we can't rush in, the smoke is too thick. Cough. All team members. After hearing this, the fire captain took a deep breath, saluted everyone, and looked solemn. Upstairs. We must rescue the two children. 
Ah, 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 Xiaoming, Xiao. Suddenly, a desperate cry came from a distance, followed by a middle-aged woman stumbling over. Thud. She knelt directly in front of a group of firefighters. Please, save our children. Sob, sob, sob. Please. He's only six years old. You must save our child. The middle-aged woman cried out desperately, clutching the small leg of the fire captain. Xiao Wu. I'm your mother, Xiao Wu. Mom. Sob. Sister, I can't get up, mom. I'm so hot. Ah, 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 mom is here, Xiao Wu. Wait for mom, mom is coming to save you. The middle-aged woman heard that her daughter had collapsed on the ground, and her emotions instantly collapsed. She howled, jumped up from the ground, and rushed towards the stairs. Wait, sister. You can't go in. Someone, pull her back, everyone follow me in. Seeing this, the captain quickly pulled the woman back, waved his hand, and a group of firefighters rushed into the stairwell without looking back. Ah, Xiaorong, you will definitely be able to save the child. Everyone looked at the middle-aged woman lying limp on the ground, like a dead person, and couldn't bear to look. As parents themselves, seeing this scene in front of them, who could bear it? Damn it, in the future, if anyone dares to park their car on the road in the community, I'll smash it. Exactly, it's outrageous, if nothing happened, but if these two children had an accident, the people who parked their cars would be the culprits. It's despicable, if the fire truck could come in, the firefighters wouldn't have to risk their lives. An elderly man slammed his cane on the ground, angrily reprimanding. Yes, if the fire truck could come in, these two children would have been rescued long ago, how could it have turned out like this? If the two children couldn't be saved, and if the firefighters had any accidents, then, no one dared to think further. Bang. On the third floor, a kick opened the already red-hot iron door in front of them. Boom. A tongue of fire rushed in directly. Third brother. The captain exclaimed and quickly pulled the team members at the door back two steps. Someone, quickly carry them down, hurry. Unexpectedly, the fire inside the house had already burned to this extent. If the steel bars inside the walls softened, the entire building would be at risk of collapsing. Quick, put out the fire, prepare the water column. Release. Roaring, the fire captain lifted the hose and extinguished the fire in front of him. It's not working, captain, let me in, this is too slow. By the time the fire is out, the two children might suffocate to death. I know. Hearing the shouts of his teammates beside him, the fire captain gritted his teeth and threw the hose to the side, then turned to look at everyone. He said in a deep voice, as firefighters, saving people is our duty. Put out the fire quickly, I'll go save the two children. After saying that, he plunged into the fire. Captain. The crowd's eyes were slightly red, roaring in anger, holding the water pillar tightly in their arms, step by step extinguishing the fire in front of them. But, the entire neighborhood was filled with old houses, and the entire ceiling was made of wood, with some wires already burnt and sparking blue arcs. Be careful, everyone. Clear a path for the captain first. Watching the captain charge into the corner of the living room, everyone behind raised their water pillars and followed cautiously. Moo. At that moment, a roar of a beast came from outside the building. However, the firefighters, who were fully focused and highly tense, had no time to be distracted by anything else. What's that sound? Upon hearing the noise, everyone couldn't help but turn to look. They saw a young man walking briskly at the front, followed by a group of animals larger than cars. Their long noses kept curling up as they followed the young man towards the fire scene. Isn't that Director Su Chen? These are newly resurrected animals, so big? No, Director Su Chen is here to save people. Look at the height of this creature, its nose can reach the railing on the third floor. With these words, everyone hurried to meet them. Don't rush. Su Chen looked up at the height of the third floor, feeling somewhat worried. The height was a bit too high, even an elephant might not reach it. However, at this moment, there was no time to organize the cars, and there was a firefighter lying unconscious on the ground. It was obviously unrealistic to rush into the building through the stairs. Phew. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen turned to look back, gritting his teeth fiercely. Move aside, I'll go up. He growled softly. Su Chen beckoned to the leader of the elephant group. The sturdy elephant trunk coiled around him and slowly lifted him up. Director Su Chen, this is too dangerous. Yeah, you can't even open the railing. Come down quickly, let's think of another way. Watching Su Chen's trembling hands reaching out, everyone couldn't help but shout excitedly. Thank you. Thank you all, I bow to you. I bow to you, thank you for saving the child. Little Wu, be obedient, uncle will come to save you soon. The middle-aged woman watched as Su Chen approached the railing, unable to stop crying as she knelt on the ground. Little one, don't be afraid. Su Chen smiled at the little one in front of him, gripping the railing firmly with both hands. Uncle Su Chen, I'm not afraid. Unexpectedly, 
This little guy in front of him recognized him. After rescuing the elephant group, Su Chen's strength increased by two points. Now, gripping the hard railing with both hands, he gradually increased his strength. Creak, creak, creak. Wow. It's moving, it's moving. Everyone exclaimed in unison at the sight. They never expected that the somewhat frail Su Chen could unleash such immense strength to move the railing. Once again, he pushed aside the two railings, creating a small gap, and Su Chen nodded to the little one. Come on, hurry out. Uncle Su Chen, my sister. Don't worry, uncle will save your sister. He lifted the little one out and handed her directly to the mother elephant nearby. Moo. With a low roar, the elephant trunk safely placed the little one on the ground. Woo woo woo. Little woo, it's all mom's fault, little woo. My little woo. The woman held her son, collapsed on the ground, crying uncontrollably. Phew. Su Chen took a deep breath, squinted his eyes slightly, and said to the leader of the elephant group, Wait here, I'll go in and bring out the little girl in a moment. After that, Su Chen grabbed the railing with both hands and directly entered the room. Cough. The entire room was filled with thick black smoke above the waist. Su Chen quickly crouched down, feeling around, and soon found the little girl's legs, pulling her to his side. Hold your breath. Turned around and stood up, handing the little girl over the railing. She's out. She's out. Thank God. Thank God. A hero, a true hero. Seeing the hands that handed the little girl out, everyone couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The heavy stone in their hearts finally fell. Moo. The leader of the elephant herd took the little one, gently placed her on the ground, then turned to prepare to take Su Chen next. Boom. However, at that moment, the entire bedroom erupted with a loud noise. The tremendous impact instantly smashed Su Chen against the wall. Boom. A thick blue flame burst out. Without much thought, Su Chen quickly flew to the side. The gas exploded. The entire window area was already filled with blue flames. Bang. The door was suddenly pushed open, and a firefighter rushed in. The moment he entered, the wooden frame door directly collapsed. The fire captain and Su Chen were instantly trapped in the bedroom, and the wall adjacent to the kitchen had already been blown open, and the flames were spreading along the ground. Captain! Captain! A group of firefighters stood outside the bedroom, frantically spraying water in. But, it was too late. The entire room was filled with gas. Liquefied gas is a flammable gas, and although water can extinguish the fire, the effect is minimal. Seeing that the entire room was about to be filled with flames, the firefighters were anxious. Ah 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 ah! Captain! Get out! It's too late! Get out quickly! The bedroom is about to collapse, the kitchen is a load-bearing wall, hurry, follow orders! Su Chen looked at the shouting firefighters in front of him, quickly dragged him to the corner of the wall to hide. Moo! Suddenly, there was a neighing sound outside the window, and then everyone standing downstairs watched as the elephant herd ran frantically, all stunned in place. Bang! The leader of the elephant herd directly pulled out the water hose connected to the fire truck with his trunk. The water gushed out. All the elephants gathered together, sticking their trunks into the water, continuously sucking it up. In just a few tens of seconds, all the elephants ran back again. Moo! They neighed in unison. Then the trunks were raised high, and streams of white water rushed into the bedroom on the third floor through the railing. Ha ha ha, great! Su Chen felt the water rushing in and couldn't help but laugh. Just as he thought, he was carrying the system, and only a few animals had been resurrected, how could he die here? Each elephant can store as much as 8 to 10 liters of water. Dozens of elephants spraying water together. In the blink of an eye, the flames were suppressed. Quick, you go down. Su Chen pulled the firefighter to the window and pushed him to the railing. Take him down. Shouting at the elephant herd, dozens of trunks reached up. You go down first, I'll go last. The fire captain looked at the young man behind him, tightly holding onto his clothes. Let's go. Su Chen exerted force in his hand, pushing him directly from the third floor. Watching him slowly land, Su Chen then jumped onto the windowsill. Moo, come down, we'll catch you. The elephant herd raised their trunks one after another. Su Chen made a sudden leap, spreading his arms. Watching Su Chen being lifted in the air by the trunks, the crowd on the side erupted in excitement. Roar 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 roar. The group of people looked at the elephant herd in front of them, unable to hold back their tears. It's good to have animals. An old man leaning on a cane wiped away tears from the corner of his eyes and couldn't help but mutter. Their generation would never encounter such a good time. It was great for the younger generation to witness the resurrection of animals. All thanks to this young man in front of them. Beep, beep, beep. The sound of sirens came from the entrance of the community, and Chief Lu hurriedly ran over. Looking at the wreckage of the building above his head, he asked anxiously from afar, Is anyone injured? 
How is the fire situation? Moo. Suddenly, the little elephant beside him twisted his butt and bumped him aside. This. It wasn't until now that Director Lu noticed that there were so many elephants at the scene. These creatures are recorded in books, gentle in nature, and are truly good friends of humans. Director Su Chen, are these the newly resurrected animals from your zoo? But, why have they all run to this neighborhood? Looking at Su Chen surrounded by the crowd in front of him, he couldn't help but ask. Director, thanks to Director Su Chen. Yes, if it weren't for Director Su Chen, these two children would have been burned alive. These elephants are truly messengers sent by heaven, it's great, not only did they save two children, but they also helped put out the fire. Animals are much stronger than humans. It was so dangerous just now, did you see the elephants hesitate? A group of people gathered around, talking about what had just happened. All the members of the safety bureau, at this moment, looked at the surrounding herd of elephants, their eyes flashing with admiration. The director had said it. Sooner or later, the Blue Sky Zoo would resurrect creatures like police dogs, and then, they would also have teammates they could completely trust. Thank you. Director Lu shook Su Chen's hands continuously. This was the second time, the last time during the bank robbery, it was the animals from the Blue Sky Zoo that intervened, preventing unforeseen consequences. This time was no different. Two living lives, this achievement was remarkable. On behalf of all the people of Hangcheng, thank you again. Thank you all. Suddenly, Director Lu stood up straight, solemnly raised his hand towards the herd of elephants, and respectfully bowed. Clap, clap, clap. The people around wiped their tears, applauding continuously. Phew. Su Chen took a deep breath, patted the herd of elephants beside him, waved to the crowd, and said, This is nothing. Animals are supposed to be friends of humans, and helping each other is natural between friends. Let's go. With a shout, the leader of the herd wrapped Su Chen on its back, neighed, and slowly walked out of the neighborhood. Everyone behind them followed all the way to the gate, watching the departing herd of elephants, reluctant to leave. Animals are friends of humans. Helping each other is what friends do. The words Su Chen had just said kept ringing in everyone's ears, and they all nodded solemnly. If animals were to truly be resurrected in the future, they would definitely treat them as friends. Back at the zoo, Su Chen settled the herd of elephants properly. He came to the grassland, brought up the system panel. God level zoo system power, 11, strong body, speed, 8, late stage laziness, mental power, 14, developed mind, Shock value, 653212. Current zoo area? Square meters, current animal species, 6 types. Animal fragment mall, mammoth fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Llama fragment, requires 150,000 shock value for exchange. African lion fragment, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Giraffe fragment, requires 100,000 shock value for exchange. Tasmanian Devil Fragment, requires 50,000 shock value for exchange. Young Javelina, 20 heads 30,000 shock value for one. Phew. Taking a deep breath, looking at the young Javelina at the bottom, Su Chen fell into contemplation. He had accumulated a total of 650,000 shock value. He could exchange all the young Javelinas. And Javelinas grow fast, he believed that in no time, there would be hundreds of them. Moreover, these were the best reared Javelinas, the once famous Landris pigs, the most diverse breed of pigs in the ancient world of Huaxia. The reason for their large numbers was because Landris pigs breed rapidly, have a short growth cycle, and a high lean meat ratio. What should I do? Su Chen couldn't make up his mind for a while, because there was only one chance to choose, and he didn't know the gender of these 20 pigs. What if they were all males, that would be a big problem. There would be no way to breed. However, if he used up all the shock values, the next exchange would only be for Australian rabbits, which would require a shocking value of 2 million. If I exchange, I can make a profit with 5 female pigs. Just don't let them all be the same gender. Su Chen pondered. The control system panel directly exchanged all the Landris pigs. Hoof, hoof, hoof. A group of cute little white piglets fell on the grass in front of him, sniffling and snuffling around on the grass. What genders are these? Su Chen frowned picked up a piglet and turned it over. Female. Picking up another one. Still female. 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 After a long time, watching one Landris pig that had already run far away, Suchin's face turned pale as he chased after it. 19 female pigs. What was he going to do? If the last one was also a female, how would they breed? Can other animals breed with them? Giant pandas? He turned to look at the giant panda. The giant panda, who was nibbling on bamboo shoots, suddenly shook, glanced at Suchin, and scurried behind the rockery. Terrifying. What kind of look was that? Quack. 
Suddenly, the honey badger crouching by the wall rushed up rapidly. Stop! Suchin hastily shouted, leaping to grab the last Landris pig. He glared fiercely at Plathead. These are all your food to raise. If you eat them now, you'll have to starve later. Food? Raised food? The honey badger tilted its head, glanced at a group of pigs in the distance, and nodded thoughtfully. You'll be responsible for watching the pigs in the future. If there's a problem, then there won't be anything to eat. Quack! Who dares to steal my pigs? I'm fed up. Plathead shouted with his neck stiff. Let's have a male pig. Suchin muttered, suddenly flipping over the piglet in front of him. Ha ha ha, a male pig. Laughing, Suchin placed the pig on the ground. So far, they had finally solved the problem of raising animals, although it would take some time for these pigs to grow up. But, as long as they took care of the baby's illness, they would definitely be able to introduce other species in the future. Everything would get better soon. Giggle. Big White, are you getting fat? Getting slower and slower. Baby's white long skirt fluttered as she ran, like a spinning butterfly, dancing nonstop. Suchin watched the little ones playing happily with the animals on the grass, smiling contentedly. If only there were no illnesses. He sighed, turned and walked towards the office. The government funding had already been released. A total of 50 million in funding had been allocated, and they even wanted to help Suchin build a new zoo. With a total of 100 million in funding, they could finally start construction. However, the construction of the zoo with the system this time would take some time, requiring a full half month. I must accumulate 2 million shock values in half a month. The Blue Sky Zoo was still too small. With the addition of the elephant herd, it was becoming more crowded. There was already a long line at the entrance. Wow! A group of children followed the elephant, constantly being lifted by its trunk, emitting bursts of cheerful exclamations. After glancing at them, Suchin turned and walked into the office. Roar! The polar bear howled as Suchin entered the office, patting its round belly, swaying its hips as it walked towards the panda enclosure behind the rockery. While no one was around, it decided to eat another bamboo shoot. After arriving behind the rockery, the polar bear looked around vigilantly. There were more and more vegetarians in the zoo recently. Not only those big guys are eyeing its bamboo shoots, even a group of pigs that appeared yesterday dared to have ideas about its bamboo shoots. Too difficult. It seems that I will have to find a more hidden location in the future. These are all the results of my hard work. I pulled the cart all day yesterday and only got five bamboo shoots. Hoof. Snorted twice, waved its paw, and drove away a few mischievous monkeys on the rockery. Carefully opened a large stone in front of it. He he. Rubbed its paws, stretched its paw inside. Ha. Felt around again. Dubai suddenly raised its head, turned around with a gloomy expression. The bamboo shoots were gone. The bamboo shoots that it secretly saved were actually gone. Who? Who dared to steal Dubai's bamboo shoots? Don't want to stay in the blue sky zoo anymore? Roar! Roared, Dubai, with an angry face, rushed out of the panda enclosure. It shouldn't be those monkeys, that group of stupid monkeys don't eat bamboo shoots at all. The elephants are too big to get into the panda enclosure. There is only one possibility left. Those pigs stole its bamboo shoots, how outrageous! Roar! Roared in anger, Dubai pushed the monkey king aside with a paw and walked towards the pigsty surrounded by a fence in the distance. Blood feud must be paid with blood. Twisting its neck, Dubai looked around with a gloomy expression, took a step closer step by step. When the children around saw Dubai coming out, they all wanted to go and touch it. However, seeing Dubai, who is usually gentle, showing a ferocious wild animal appearance at this moment, they quickly withdrew their hands and stood in place looking confused. What's wrong with Dubai? Is it angry? It looks fierce. Let's go tell Sister Bao Bao quickly. Dubai listens to Sister Bao Bao the most. After a discussion, a group of children ran to Bao Bao, who was sitting on the back of a baby elephant. Hoof, hoof, hoof. When it reached the pigsty, Dubai reached out its paw and shook the fence. Huh, it's quite sturdy. Do they think they can stop a fierce giant panda like this? Joking. Bang. Took two steps back, shook its belly, lowered its head and rushed forward. It seemed that if it didn't maim a few today, it would forget that giant pandas are also fierce. Bamboo shoots are its lifeline. Stealing a panda's bamboo shoots is even more unbearable than killing it. Bang. Suddenly, a black shadow sprang out in front of it, and a paw directly slapped Dubai on the head. Roar. Get lost. Quack. Asking for death. The honey badger squinted its eyes, its tail instantly stood up, roared, opened its mouth and bit towards Dubai. Everyone around looked in astonishment at the two fighting individuals. They couldn't understand why the giant panda today seemed to have changed its appearance and even picked a fight with the honey badger. Normally, when encountering a honey badger, Dubai would avoid it. Roar! You wait! 
After a long time, Dubai covered its head, limped away from the honey badger. Turning back and growling, it left a harsh word and saw the honey badger catching up again. It quickly lay flat on the ground, opened its mouth and kept shouting, Killing pandas! Where is the director? If he doesn't come soon, the panda will die. Stop it! Honey badger, stop! At this moment, Bao Bao ran over from the side, watching Dubai lying on the ground wailing, while the honey badger was pressing its head with both hands, patting it continuously. There were already many hairs from Dibai scattered on the ground. Quack! The honey badger saw Bao Bao, jumped down dejectedly, patted once, and then turned and walked towards the pigsty. Tired of it! The pigs inside are its food, how dare they have ideas about the pigs! Woo 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 woo! Dubai lay flat on the ground, holding its head with both paws, constantly making sobbing sounds. It can't stay in this zoo anymore. Everyone is bullying it one by one. Alright, alright, don't cry. The baby smiled and patted Big White on the head, comforting softly, we'll have Uncle Su Chen teach the honey badger a lesson later, and Big White won't cry anymore, okay? Humph. Big White snorted coldly, glancing at the honey badger in the distance and gritting its teeth fiercely. It was time to run away from home for a while. Scare these guys properly. It nudged the baby's skirt with its head and followed towards the herd of elephants. These were a bunch of spineless guys, eating its bamboo shoots and not even helping it. How despicable. Phew. Which task should I complete first? Su Chen sat on the bed, his eyes moving back and forth between two fragments. One was a fragment of a macaw, and the other was an Alaskan Malamute. Having never completed a bird fragment task before, after some contemplation, Su Chen chose the Alaskan Malamute. This type of dog was once a famous large pet dog on earth. Along with the Siberian Husky and the Samoyed, they were known as the three silly sled dogs. Despite their large size, they were just like children who never grew up, and their favorite pastime was destroying things. They had no fighting power at all, and could even be made to cry by a chicken. Ding, Alaskan Malamute Fragment Task Initiated. 10. 9. 8. Live broadcast starting. The scene in front of him changed, and when Su Chin opened his eyes, he couldn't help but shiver all over. Phew. 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 The cold wind howled, and endless white snow stretched out before him. Su Chen, dressed in a thin shirt, stood alone in the snow like a fool. Damn, this is so damn tricky. How did the task location end up here? Trembling and shivering, Su Chen quickly pulled his legs out of the snow. He had thought that the Alaskan Malamute fragment task would also be in human society. After all, Alaskans were now kept as pets and not used as sled dogs. He never expected to be sent directly to the snowy wilderness. TSK TSK. The sound of teeth clashing echoed as Su Chen stretched out his stiff hands, rubbed his cheeks, and began to walk towards the bright light in the distance. He had to save himself quickly. If he didn't find the Alaskan Malamute, he might freeze to death here. He could feel that the temperature here was at least below minus 10 degrees Celsius. As soon as Su Chen's live stream opened, he immediately appeared on the homepage of SharkLive. Countless viewers flooded in. However, when they saw the environment Su Chen was in, they were dumbfounded. A warrior must face the cold bravely, streamer, go for it. Stand tall, what's there to fear? It's not cold at all. Ah ha ha ha, too fierce, this is a real tough guy, just wearing a shirt in the snow, the temperature must be at least minus 20 degrees. Alaskan Malamute Fragment Task? Is this the animal for this live stream? At Museum Librarian, it's your turn, what animal is this? Phew, just turned on the air conditioner, today's weather is really hot. Who called me? Just found the information, Alaskan. Hmm, this is a really cool animal, that's all I can say. There's a house in front of the streamer. There must be people inside, hurry and find some clothes. I heard that in this weather, licking iron can stick your tongue, is that true? Freeze a piece of iron in your fridge and try licking it. The group of people watched Su Chen freezing like a dog, unable to help but burst into laughter. But they also admired Su Chen's courage, even if it was for the sake of the show. Being in a minus 20 degree snowfield with just a shirt was truly dedicated. TSK. TSK. Su Chen's eyebrows had turned white, and his whole body was covered in a thick layer of snow. However, after walking for nearly 10 minutes, he finally arrived in front of the farmhouse. The house is shaped like a half circle, like a Mongolian yurt, covered in snow, making it hard to determine the material it's made of. Ah woo. Woof. Suddenly, a huge dog burst out of the snow nearby. Su Chen couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief when he saw it. It was a bear-sized Alaskan Malamute, and it seemed like this would be his companion for the task. However, he didn't know what kind of difficulties the system had set up for him. Shu, Su Chen gestured towards the Alaskan Malamute in front of him and knocked on the wooden door. Soon, a blonde old lady opened the door, looking at Su Chen with a slight frown but still inviting him in. 
After some conversation, Su Chen discovered that the location of this task was actually right next to the Arctic on the American continent, not Siberia. Su Chen. The old lady held a steaming cup of coffee in front of him and asked in fluent American English, How did an Asian like you end up here? Are you part of the rescue team? Rescue team? Su Chen was puzzled, looking at Ruth in front of him. I'm not part of the rescue team, so, I don't know when the rescue team will be back. Ruth, the blonde old lady, looked worried, occasionally glancing out the window. Old lady, is the reddish-brown Alaskan Malamute at the door your sled dog? Yes, it is, but it's already an old dog. This time, Owen went to the mountains without taking it, but, Ruth smiled bitterly. Harley is the lead dog, without it leading the team. I'm afraid Owen and the others won't come back. Su Chen was even more confused. After some understanding, he realized why Ruth kept looking out the window. It turned out that everyone nearby would go to the mountains to collect a valuable herb before the heavy snowfall, but, they didn't expect the snow to come so quickly. Everyone was trapped in the snow-covered mountains before they could react. Could it be? Is this the task? Su Chen muttered quietly. If the task was indeed this, how would he enter the mountains? There was only a sled dog outside, which couldn't take him very far. Ah woo. Suddenly, a distinctive Alaskan howl came from outside the door. They're back. Ruth quickly opened the wooden door and looked out. In the distance, several figures were running towards them in the heavy snow. How is this possible? Seeing that the reins had been broken, Ruth almost fainted, and Su Chen quickly helped her sit on the sofa. After securing the sled dogs outside, Su Chen walked into the house with a furrowed brow. Owen and the others must be trapped, unable to pass with the sled, so they cut the reins to let them come back for help. But, Ruth looked at Su Chen, excitedly saying, I've already notified the rescue team, but there's been no news so far. What should we do? I, I'll go to the snow mountain. With that, Ruth put on her coat and prepared to go out. Su Chen quickly pulled her back. By now, the task was clear, he had to lead this group of Alaskan Malamutes to rescue Owen. However, he had never ridden a sled before, and with the heavy snow blocking the way, it was uncertain if they could succeed. Rumble. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and white snow mist rose in the distance. No. Gasping for breath, Ruth exclaimed palely, an avalanche? Su Chen looked at the snow mist rising into the sky and widened his eyes. Ruth. Pressing Ruth onto the sofa with both hands, Su Chen took a deep breath and said solemnly, let the Alaskan Malamutes take me, I will bring Owen back. This was his task, and he had to try to complete it, no matter the odds. After all, there are only two fragments in hand now. If this fails, then, it is simply impossible to accumulate two million shock values in a short time. Su Chen, you are a good person, but, the avalanche, it's impossible to go in. Ruth looked at the young man with yellow skin in front of her, worriedly said. He he, I will definitely come back. Su Chen stood at the door, grinned, picked up the coat hanging on the wall beside him, turned around and said, then pushed the door and walked out directly. Hallie. Ruth stroked its fur with both hands, slowly put the reins around its neck, and the metal at the front was shining brightly. You must listen to Su Chen. Bring Owen and the others back. Almighty Lord, bless them to come back alive. Ah woo. Hallie shook its head, its spiritual eyes looked at the young man in the distance, changed its breath, and lay down on the snow. It was already an old lead dog. Its physical strength could not withstand long-distance travel. So it must seize every moment to recover its strength. Child, the Lord will bless you. Ruth stood in front of Su Chen, gently kissed his forehead. Don't worry, I will come back. Su Chen looked at Ruth with tears in his eyes, nodded heavily. Wearing heavy snow boots, stepping on the sled step by step, with gloved hands tightly grasping the handle. After being fully armed, Su Chen nodded slightly to Ruth on the side. Go! He roared with his head up. All the sled dogs lying on the ground in front of him suddenly stood up and roared. Each sled dog's body slightly sank, the whole body tensed. Oh whoa! Hallie roared with its head up, its reddish-brown body shot out like an arrow in an instant. Swish! Su Chen's body shook, his hands tightly gripping the sled, and he flew out as well. I, oh my god, the live broadcast, is so beautiful. Sled, sled pulled by sled dogs. A scene that can only be seen in precious videos in the past, is now live. Broadcaster, I don't know if your live broadcast can take people? Price is not a problem, I am willing to pay a high price, as long as I can experience it. Don't think about it, you see the scene is beautiful, but, didn't you hear just now? The broadcaster is going to rescue people. However, being pulled by a group of sled dogs shuttling through the snow, this scene is simply too shocking. I hope the broadcaster can succeed then Blue Sky Zoo will also have Alaskan sled dogs, then. Will we have the opportunity to experience this activity in the future? Looking forward.
Broadcaster, come on. The live camera zoomed in from afar, capturing a group of sled dogs running rapidly clearly. The long tongue hanging outside the mouth, the fluffy fur all over the body, and Hallie's determined eyes. All of them are shocking to everyone. Animals have been extinct for such a long time, they, except for some people occasionally being able to see the video footage from the past, how could they see such a scene? And it is a live broadcast with a 360 degree angle without dead angles constantly switching cameras. Oh howl. Su Chen felt the speed of rapid travel, couldn't help but roar. It's so cool. Even he, in his previous life, could not have experienced this scene. Ah woo. Hearing Su Chen's excited roar, Halley, who was in the front, seemed to respond to him, also raised its head and roared. Then its body moved sharply to the left, avoiding a rock buried in the snow in front of it. Bang! The sled flew high and landed on the ground again. Along the way, even Su Chen only needed to control himself from falling off, without worrying about the route at all. Even where there were obstacles and dangers on the road. All of this, Halley, as the lead dog, will avoid it all. Speeding all the way. However, the strong wind with snowflakes grew bigger and bigger, and Su Chen's vision in front of him had become very blurry. The cold wind blowing on his face felt like a knife cutting. He involuntarily reached out and wrapped his scarf. Fortunately, Ruth's fur coat at home was windproof, otherwise at such a high speed, Su Chen would have frozen long ago. Squeak! Suddenly, Harley, who was running at the front, began to gradually slow down. Seeing this, Su Chen quickly squeezed the brake on the sled. A harsh sound rang out. The entire sled team came to a stop. Harley, standing at the front, looked back at Su Chen, let out a human-like roar, then turned to look ahead. As the lead dog, although it had the ability to avoid danger, some decisions were not up to it. Just like the frozen river in front of them. This decision could only be made by the owner. Who? Who? Su Chen exhaled heavily, walked to the front of the team, frowned at the ice in front of him. A river hundreds of meters wide, covered with a thick layer of ice. However, bang, bang, he stomped on the ice surface, jumped fiercely twice. It was solid, but there was a problem now. Usually, the ice layer in the center of a frozen river would be thin. And their sled was not light. Once it sank into the water, even all the sled dogs would perish. There was no time to dismantle the reins. For a moment, Su Chen fell into silence. However, the distance of a hundred meters was very close, if the ice layer was thick, with the speed of these sled dogs, they could pass in a matter of seconds. Harley! Shouting, Su Chen squatted down, rubbed its head, and removed the reins. He had to go forward to investigate. This mission was exceptionally important, there was no room for error. Oh whoa! Harley howled at all the sled dogs behind it, and they all lay down on the ground to rest. Looking up at Su Chen, Harley took the lead and walked onto the ice. Su Chen followed closely, stepping carefully on the smooth ice, moving forward cautiously. Very solid. After walking a third of the way, he looked back and couldn't help but smile. They were about to reach the center of the river. So far, there was no sign of weak ice, which meant the ice was thick enough for them to pass through. Wait for me. Patting Harley's head, Su Chen continued forward. In the last dozen steps, as long as it was safe here, they would have no problem crossing the river. Oh whoa! However, Harley suddenly jumped in front of him, lowered its head and stared at him angrily. I will go ahead, the master must not be in danger. Ah! Uh, through the animal language function, Su Chen understood what Harley was saying, and he looked at it deeply. This was a sled dog. In a critical moment, it was willing to sacrifice itself to save its master. Good! Su Chen rubbed its fur and followed it step by step. Click! Just a few steps forward, a slight cracking sound came from under his feet. Su Chen's expression froze, and he quickly stepped back. Crack! 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 Looking down, the ice under his feet began to crack densely. Oh whoa! Run! Harley, who was in the front, heard the sound, turned back and roared. Bang! A sense of weightlessness came, the icy river water rushed into his clothes, Su Chen grabbed the ice surface with both hands, but it was too slippery, and in an instant, he was swept away by the river. Gurgle, gurgle, don't panic, stay calm. Su Chen was completely submerged in the river, sinking continuously. Although he could swim in this sealed icy water, his body instantly became extremely stiff, unable to move. He even looked up and couldn't see the ice cave he was in just now. The river water under the ice was flowing, this. Was he really going to fail? Was he even going to die here? After struggling in vain, Su Chen felt his whole body gradually becoming heavier, and his eyes seemed unable to lift. Everything happened in an instant, and no one in the live broadcast room reacted. It wasn't until Su Chen disappeared under the water that everyone started bombarding the screen like crazy. The entire screen was filled with densely packed barrage comments. 
What's going on? Wasn't the ice layer solid? How could he fall through? It's over, there's flowing ice water below. The host was washed away in an instant. How could he come back up? Quick, report to the authorities. If this continues, the host will be in danger. What's the use? Where is the host now? He's not even in China. And how could there be enough time? You must come up. This live broadcast by the host is real. If something really happens, then. Whoa, whoa, is there anyone? We must save the host. Everyone watched the flowing river on the screen, their minds blank. They dared not imagine what would happen if Su Chen really died, then. What would happen to the entire Blue Sky Zoo? Would his team no longer revive animals? After all, by now they had understood. Through the life threatening live broadcast, Su Chen told the story of the animals to the public, and each animal broadcasted was an animal revived by their team. Whether there was a connection between the two, no one knew. They dared not investigate, after all. The selected water friends were all animal lovers. A feat benefiting all mankind, even if there was some unknown connection, they would choose to forget. After all, the extinction of animals had been too long. As long as the animals could be revived, even if it was considered a miracle, they were willing to believe it. Oh whoa! Just then, the front Hali's muscles tensed, and he charged forward, diving into the icy river. Everyone in the live broadcast room saw this scene in front of them, instantly confused. Is he going to save Su Chen? Gulyolu. Su Chen felt his consciousness starting to blur, the last air in his abdomen expelled. It's over, it's really over. His hands drooped, letting his body sink to the riverbed. Bang. Suddenly, he felt his body sway upwards, Su Chen's expression suddenly startled. Turning his head, he saw Holly biting his coat, struggling to swim upwards. Who? Exhaling his last breath, Su Chen bit his tongue fiercely. Holly actually came down to save him. He had to pull himself together, risking his life to save him. Even though he had only been with Holly for less than half a day, he could risk his life to save him. After all, if Su Chen couldn't go up, then Holly would definitely die in the river. Splash, splash, splash. His hands kept sliding in the river water. Su Chen tried to relieve Holly's pressure. We're here. Just as Su Chen felt that Holly was exhausted, a bright light appeared in front of him, the crack in the ice cave just now. Puff. Su Chen stuck his head out of the water, his face flushed as he spat out a mouthful of river water, then took a deep breath. He had never realized how important air was. Clinging tightly to the ice surface with his hands, Su Chen struggled to climb up. Who? Finally made it up alive. Unable to help but breathe a sigh of relief, lying flat on the ice, Su Chen muttered. This was the Alaskan mistaken for the sled three idiots by people. It turned out that in the ancient past, sled dogs were such beings, not only friendly, independent individuals, but also incredibly intelligent. Holly! Su Chen murmured, suddenly sitting up. When he saw the situation in front of him, his face instantly turned pale. There was no trace of Holly. Glancing back, there was no sign of the elderly Alaskan near the sled. Where was Harley? Could it be? Su Chen suddenly lunged towards the ice cave, roaring with all his might. Harley! The rushing river continued to flow without a hint of response. No. This mission was for Alaska. Could it be that Harley had just tried to save him, only to be swept away by the river? Su Chen's eyes filled with bloodshot anger, quickly turned and rushed towards the sled. There should be a long stick for rescue on the sled. It must be found. It must be. Carrying the stick, he quickly arrived at the ice cave, knelt down, and extended the stick into the river, stirring continuously, trying to touch Harley's body. Puff. 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 The audience in the live broadcast room watched Su Chen's hysterical appearance in silence. Is this a dog? Is this the most faithful friend of humans as described in books? I'm crying. Willing to exchange my own life for my owner's life. Woo woo woo. Why? Why? Bang. A dull sound of table slapping rang out. The Animal Protection Association. After Su Chen started the live broadcast, everyone gathered in the meeting room to watch together. And... All the information about the creature Alaska from this live broadcast was placed on the table. Shang Guan Yun took off his glasses, wiped the tears from the corner of his eyes, tremblingly picked up a drawing of Alaska in front of him. This is the friend of humans. This is the creature called a dog. Loyal, brave, obedient. Although this sled dog may lack a bit of independence, but it possesses all the good qualities. We look. Suddenly, the deputy beside him widened his eyes and exclaimed. Everyone quickly looked up. In the live broadcast, a gasping head emerged from the ice cave, it was Harley who had disappeared just now. And in its mouth was a shiny white ivory amulet. Good. Clap clap clap. Everyone watched Alaska hugging Su Chen together, unable to hold back their tears, stood up with tears in their eyes, clapping vigorously. It was so touching. 
Diving underwater again, it was actually to help Su Chen retrieve the lost item. It has to be said. It's too silly, but. This kind of silliness. Makes people feel heartache. Gat. 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 Su Chen curled up his legs, looking at the fire in front of him, shivering constantly. By now, the sky outside had already turned completely dark. The howling wind continued to make a woo-woo sound. In the end, Su Chen had to choose to take a detour, as the ice in the middle of the river was too thin to bear the weight of the sled. With no other choice, under Harley's guidance, they finally found a cave to dry Su Chen's clothes. At a temperature of minus 20 degrees, Su Chen's clothes had long frozen stiff. It seems that I can only spend the night here tonight. Glancing at the sled dog curled up next to the fire, Su Chen muttered softly, wrapped in a blanket from the sled, but it didn't really help much. Ha! <laughs> Seeing Su Chen shivering, Harley let out a low growl. Instantly, all the sled dogs lying nearby stood up. They gathered around Su Chen, their soft fur pressing against him. He he. With a slight smile, Su Chen put the ivory amulet around Harley's neck, patted its head, and leaned against its body. Much warmer, especially with the long fur on Alaska's body. It wasn't long before Su Chen's body temperature recovered. Outside the cave was pitch black. Cold wind kept pouring in, but a group of sled dogs surrounded him in the center, shielding him from the piercing cold wind. Admiration. I really admire it. When can Blue Sky Zoo come out so we can raise dogs, too? So envious. Even if I have to spend all my fortune, I will buy one to accompany my daughter as she grows up. This is like a guardian deity. Yes, it's so thoughtful. I never expected animals to be so humanized, protecting the streamer from the cold wind. It's really touching. Stop talking, give me a dog, I'm willing to stay with it until old age, no need to find a partner. Ha, huh? the person upstairs, your wife is in the living room with a feather duster, be careful. Definitely, haven't you heard the streamer say? There will be more and more animals in the future, we are really living in a good era. It was already 10 o'clock in the evening, the viewers waiting in the live broadcast room, not a single person left but more and more gathered. Watching Su Chen lying in the center of the huskies, everyone was envious. So human-like. They could even help Su Chen keep warm, this. Even the most intelligent robotic dog couldn't do that. Ah woo. Suddenly, a roar came from outside the cave. Holly, lying on the ground, instantly raised his fur, cautiously stood up from the ground, and walked towards the cave entrance step by step. He, he, constantly growling low in his mouth. Su Chen shook his head, opened his eyes and looked out. He saw a pair of glowing green eyes outside the cave. Hurriedly putting on his clothes, Su Chen grabbed a dagger and followed Holly towards the cave entrance. A wolf pack. When he saw the creatures in front of him, Su Chen's face changed drastically. He actually encountered a pack of snow wolves. Moreover, they were snow wolves. With such a heavy snowstorm outside, this pack of snow wolves wouldn't risk coming out to hunt unless they were extremely hungry. In other words, this pack of snow wolves wouldn't easily give up their prey in front of them. Who? Su Chen took a deep breath, bent his body, and slowly approached Holly. Ah woo. The leader of the snow wolves stood at the forefront, let out a majestic howl, and the whole wolf pack quickly spread out, surrounding the cave entrance. Woof. 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 Roar. He. Inside the cave, all the huskies rushed out, looking like they were facing a formidable enemy, constantly growling. Holly beside him bared his fangs, his eyes dark and fixed on the leader of the snow wolves in front of him. His muscles tensed, using his body to shield Su Chen behind him. Roar. Go inside, it's dangerous. Holly roared at Su Chen, leading many huskies out of the cave to confront the wolf pack. A wuh. With a long haul from the leader of the snow wolves, its back rose high, emitting white snow swords. Bang. With a strong push, the wolf leader pounced like lightning. Woof. All the huskies also looked serious as they charged towards the wolf pack. For a moment, the huskies and the wolf pack fought fiercely. Su Chen stood on the side, holding a dagger in his hand, wanting to help, but there was simply no opportunity. Tear. At that moment, a snow white figure pounced from the side, biting Su Chen's fur coat. Feeling a sharp pain in his arm, Su Chen quickly grabbed the fur on the wolf's neck and kicked its abdomen. Growl. The wolf let out a low growl of pain, released Su Chen's coat, and quickly backed away. Staring with eyes emitting a blue light, it kept observing the human in front of it. Hiss. Su Chen tightened the wound on his arm, luckily the fur coat blocked it, the wolf's teeth only pierced a bit of skin, otherwise, a large piece of flesh would have been torn off. However, the situation in front of him was very dangerous. Ah woo. The snow wolf in front of him howled, raised its head, swept its tail, and its claws left a snow mark on the ground, pouncing again. Bang. However, in the air, a reddish-brown figure shot from the side, instantly pinning the snow wolf underneath. Crack. 
The sound of bones breaking echoed. Hallie bit the neck of the snow wolf tightly, scanning all the snow wolves with cold eyes. Bang! Throwing the snow wolf's body aside, Hallie rushed forward again, entangled with the snow wolf leader. However, at this moment, all the sled dogs were still facing off against the snow wolf pack, not joining the battle. This, Su Chen muttered in disbelief, actually, Hallie was about to determine the outcome with the snow wolf king, but, Hallie was already very old. How could he be a match for the powerful snow wolf leader? Soon, Su Chen could see that Hallie was starting to show signs of fatigue. He was panting heavily, and there were many bloodstains on his body from the claws of the snow wolf leader. In the cold wind, they turned into pieces of ice shining with blood. Ah woo! The snow wolf leader's snow white fur instantly bristled, let out a roar, like a white lightning, instantly knocking Hallie out. Then, like a victorious general, with a proud head held high, it slowly approached Hallie who was struggling to get up. Roar! Hallie roared in anger, struggling to slowly get up from the ground. Unable to hold on, he had no more strength left. Ah woo! Go! Roaring towards Su Chen, Hallie used all his strength, charging towards the snow wolf leader again. Oh woah! The snow wolf leader roared, showing its sharp fangs, fur bristling, eyes flashing with a hint of cunning light. Its whole body leaped high, and its claws fiercely slapped Hallie's head. Instantly, Hallie was pressed down into the snow. Roar! Seeing the gaping jaws coming straight towards his neck. Bang! Just then, a figure suddenly rushed out from the side, arms wrapped around the snow wolf leader's neck, pulling it down to the ground. Seeing this, Hallie quickly got up from the ground and pounced directly on the snow wolf leader. Crack! The sound of a broken windpipe rang out, hot blood splattered Su Chen's face. Huff! 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 After locking eyes with Hallie, Su Chen slowly released the body of the snow wolf leader. Ah woo! Ah woo! Ah woo! Many snow wolves looked at the leader in Hallie's mouth, howling in fear, fur bristling, looking like they were facing a great enemy, surrounding the sled dogs. The leader was dead. Whoever killed this snow wolf in front of them would become the new leader. Although the snow wolves feared Hallie's strength, their crimson eyes kept shooting out hot glares. Let's go. Su Chin dragged the body of the snow wolf leader, leading Hallie slowly back towards the cave. Looking at the situation in front of them, it was clear that this group of snow wolves was not going to give up easily. And, the reason they were able to kill the snow wolf leader just now was all because Su Chen rushed up. Oh woah. Watching a tall snow wolf step out of the queue, its cold eyes fixed on Hallie, pacing back and forth in front of Su Chen, trying to find an opportunity to attack. Boom! Just then, the whole ground trembled slightly. Su Chen was startled, looking up. In the dim sky, a dark shadow was falling straight down. Bang! A snowball instantly hit the center of Su Chen and the wolf pack. Boom! Then a fierce shaking sound erupted. Ah woo! Hallie's pupils widened instantly, quickly roaring at all the sled dogs, then swiftly ran towards the sled on the side. Many sled dogs quickly rushed into the reins, all urgently howling towards Su Chen. An avalanche? Su Chen turned to look at the snow piles continuously falling on the ground, pondered for a moment, a chill ran from his spine to his head. Not daring to stay, he quickly ran towards the sled. Boom! Suddenly, the sky began to emit a violent rumbling sound, a huge snowball fell from above like a meteor, smashing onto the ground, raising a huge cloud of snow. Roar! Quick! Seeing the situation, Hallie raised his head and roared angrily, gritted his teeth fiercely, his waist bulged, and he shot towards the position of the cave like a sharp sword. Clang! 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 The sled slowly started moving, speeding past the entrance of the cave. The live broadcast camera quickly panned up, showcasing the rolling snow coming down from the mountain above in all its glory. It's over, a big snow avalanche. Can the anchor make it in time? How is that possible? The range of the avalanche is not just at the cave entrance, even if they jump on the sled, they probably won't be able to escape. This is just too unlucky, encountering a pack of snow wolves just now, and now facing a snow avalanche. Look, that lead dog is charging up. Anchor, run away quickly, the avalanche is coming. Viewers in the live chat room collectively sweated for Su Chen, as the snow on the entire mountain was about to come crashing down. Once buried, there would be no way out at all. Ha! Su Chen couldn't care about much let out a heart-wrenching roar. His body leaped high. Bang! He tightly gripped the sled handle with both hands, quickly stabilizing his posture. Hallie! Go! Go! Glancing back, he roared hastily. Rumble! Like doomsday, the towering snow covered the sky, like a torrent, smashing down on the ground and sweeping in all directions. Quick! Su Chen urged the sled dogs in front of him non-stop. The avalanche brought a howling gale, enveloping Su Chen in a whirl of snow and mist in an instant. As he watched the rolling snow behind him surging up, Su Chen's body involuntarily broke out in a cold sweat. 
It was about to catch up. This was today's task a bit too difficult. Almost lost his life in the river during the day. Not only encountering a pack of wolves, but now even facing this unbelievable snow avalanche. Ah woo. Halley glanced back, his chest heaving, claws stepping on the snow, abruptly changing direction and rushing towards the left front. Halley. Su Chen was shocked to see the situation. After changing direction, they were essentially parallel to the snow avalanche coming down. In just over 10 seconds, they would probably be engulfed by the snow. Over there. Halley. Ha. Oh damn. Facing the cold wind, Su Chen kept shouting, but he had already lost sight of Halley, then felt the entire sled flying up. Yes, they were flying. He looked down. They were currently leaping off a steep cliff slope. Bang. After landing heavily, Su Chen was instantly thrown out. Ah 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 ah. Landing on the snow, Su Chen rolled down rapidly. Bang. With a dull sound, Su Chen felt aches all over his body, struggling to climb out of the snow pile. Looking back, his pupils dilated instantly. Don't. Ah woo. Halley, leading a group of sled dogs, crashed into Su Chen, directly pushing him into the snow behind. After a long time. Cough. Cough. Su Chen spat out the snow in his mouth, pushed Halley aside, and lay on the ground panting heavily. It was too difficult. Just an Alaskan dog, right? How could the task be this hard? And he hadn't even encountered Owen yet. Sizzle. Just as he was about to get up, all the sled dogs shook off the snow on their bodies, came to Su Chen's side, and licked his cheeks with their tongues. Pa. Don't lick my face. Su Chen quickly got up from the ground, looking coldly at Halley. Ah woo. It looked at him with big eyes, showing a look of grievance. Su Chen couldn't help but feel that this gaze was a bit like toothless. This guy seemed to be quite the drama queen. However, looking up at the sled in the distance, Su Chen couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Thank goodness. The sled is still intact. If the sled breaks, the fun will be even greater. Gather, let's go. Su Chen extended a hand, patted the snow on his body, and shouted. Ah woo. Let's go. Halley called out and jumped towards the sled. Buzz. 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 Inside a hidden metal building, the elevator door slowly opened. A meticulously groomed blonde man in a suit walked out with a confident smile on his face. Mr. Smith. The meeting is ready. All the directors are waiting for you. An assistant with red hair hurried over and respectfully said. Hmm. Smith nodded slowly and walked into the meeting room. Sitting at the silver conference table were several middle-aged men with big bellies. When they saw the young man enter, they all stood up and applauded. All right, everyone, please sit down. Smith extended his hand slightly and smiled at everyone. Today, I have an important announcement to make. Our company, UA, has successfully developed the latest generation of ecological animals, using gene extraction technology from fossils. After such a long time, we have successfully resurrected the world's first animal. Although, Smith's mouth slightly curved, then he continued, this animal still has some cognitive issues, but, experiments have shown that the flesh of this animal is edible, which is definitely a groundbreaking achievement. The legal department of the company has started negotiations with government departments. Once we announce this research result, it will definitely cause a global sensation. By then, we may even participate in the elections. Gentlemen, our opportunity to make a fortune has arrived. After saying this, Smith smiled at the directors below, but the cheers he expected did not come. He even had champagne ready. What's going on? Shouldn't they be celebrating like crazy? This is a real animal that has been developed, even though it's still a work in progress and looks a bit scary. But, even so, it's a groundbreaking achievement. Ahem. Smith. A middle-aged man sitting on the right side rubbed the ring on his ring finger with one hand and nodded slightly to the assistant beside him, saying, Open the latest news from Huasha. Smith, watch this video first, and then we'll discuss the matter of withdrawing our shares. Withdrawing shares? Smith turned to look at the screen, where a dignified-looking yellow-skinned female reporter was standing in front of a dilapidated zoo gate, saying excitedly, This is Huasha People's News, and we are now in front of the Chindu Blue Sky Zoo. Today, the Chindu government officially submitted a proposal to the Animal Protection Department regarding the establishment of a large-scale breeding base for Landris pigs in Chindu. That's right, dear viewers. In the Blue Sky Zoo, 20 Landris pigs have been successfully resurrected, including 19 sows and one boar. After discussions by the expert group from Chindu University's biology department, perhaps in half a year, this group of Landris pigs will multiply to over 150. This. The scene shifted, and Smith looked bewildered at a group of lively little creatures on the screen. How is this possible? We are the company with the most cutting-edge biotechnology, how could Huaxia breed 20 of these animals at once? 
Smith slammed the table, his eyes bloodshot as he roared. Mr. Smith, we have always had complete trust in your team, but your team's repeated failures in research, and now Huaxia has produced the first breed of biologically infinite reproducing organisms, this continuing research is no longer realistic. Therefore, after unanimous discussion among all directors, we have decided to withdraw our shares and reclaim all funds allocated to UA for biotechnology research. The middle-aged man standing beside him with an unpleasant expression stood up, patted his shoulder, and walked out of the meeting room in large strides. Until everyone had left. Bang. Crash. Smith picked up a chair next to him and smashed it fiercely on the screen behind him. Damn it. Our team has the most cutting-edge biotechnology in the world. It must be fake. Fake. Mr. Smith. The female assistant beside him gently pinched his shoulder and whispered, If you want the board to withdraw the order to delist, there is only one way. With that, the female assistant pressed her red lips against Smith's ear and whispered something softly. Ha ha ha, good. Smith's eyes gradually sparkled, and he suddenly pushed the female assistant onto the desk. Baby, really? The government will not interfere with the operation of Blue Sky Zoo, which means, those Changbai pigs are now being raised in Blue Sky Zoo. Aren't they afraid of being destroyed? Watching Smith slowly reaching in, the female assistant licked her lips, squinted her eyes, and said, uh, Strange Huaxia people, Smith. If you want the board to withdraw the order, you can only destroy these Changbai pigs. By then, they will still believe in your team, and haven't you already developed a new species? Stop talking. Come quickly. Ah. Roar. Hallie watched the old man not far away, dragging a sled, and rushed up cheerfully. Hey. Hallie. An old man with white hair hurriedly squatted down, hugged Hallie, and kept rubbing its head, smiling and saying, indeed a good dog. Really found us. Ha ha ha, Suchin slowly jumped off the sled and came to the old man's side, extending his hand and saying, Hello, I'm Su Chen. Aunt Ruth asked me to bring you back. Is everyone okay? Oh, my god. Thank you, young man from the east. Owen hugged Su Chen tightly, excitedly saying, Truly brave easterner, did you encounter an avalanche on the way? We didn't have any casualties, but our lead dog wants to go back. It's probably very difficult. Phew. Su Chen looked at the team in front of him, with numerous sled dogs lying on the ground, but there were many graves piled up on the side. This is, these are several lead dogs that have already died. In order to help us escape the avalanche, all of them. Su Chen looked at the graves and couldn't help but sigh. All the lead dogs had died, no wonder they needed to go back for help. Among the sled dogs, the lead dog knows all the routes, and can even predict dangers in advance. It is difficult to train a lead dog, and a team without a lead dog cannot escape smoothly in the snowy mountains. So, now that Hallie is here, shall we set off? Su Chen rubbed Hallie's head and smiled at everyone. Roar! Hallie rubbed against Su Chen's head, quickly turned around, and stopped the sled in front of him. Owen looked at Su Chen and Hallie's intimate appearance, couldn't help but smile with relief. Su, thank you so much. Sitting in the warm house, Owen raised his glass and looked at the young man in front of him, gratefully saying, if it weren't for you. Without the lead dog, we would probably be buried in the snow mountain forever. Hee hee, it's all thanks to Hallie, I don't even know the way. Su Chen looked at the old man in front of him, scratching his head awkwardly. Ah, uh, don't be modest, Hallie is already old, and Hallie doesn't easily let people approach. If Hallie doesn't approve of you, it wouldn't be possible for Hallie to lead you out of danger. Sled dogs are very spiritual. Owen clinked glasses with Su Chen, smiling and saying, Young man, would you like to take Hallie with you? Ah. Su Chen exclaimed, looking at Owen's sincere gaze with some hesitation. This is the only head dog, if these people enter the snowy mountains again next year, without the head dog, the consequences would be unimaginable if they encounter danger. However, this task can be seen. Hallie must be the Alaskan sled dog that needs to be resurrected. For a moment, Su Chen fell into silence. On the one hand, he really needs to complete this task, on the other hand, he is unwilling to put Owen and the others in danger. Ha, huh, don't hesitate. Owen, slightly drunk, said, I am already old, and, after years of harvesting, the herbs in the mountains are getting scarcer, the old man will not go into the mountains next year, so there is no need for a sled dog. Our neighbors around us may not be doing this job next year. So, Owen said, holding Suchin's hands tightly, with a solemn expression, are you willing to take care of Hallie? Always treat it as your closest companion until it dies. I am willing. Suchin nodded heavily. Although the time spent together was short, but, on the way, Halley saved him twice, where else could he find such a sincere companion? And, after this live broadcast, Suchin's system increased by over 800,000 shock points. 
This is all thanks to Hallie. Although it is old, Suchin is willing to take care of it until the day it dies. Anchor, promise it. Everyone really can't bear to part with Hallie. Yes, I never thought that a dog could be so loyal. In the Blue Sky Zoo, is Hallie about to appear? I don't know, it shouldn't be possible, maybe it will be Hallie's descendants, but, whether it is or not, I have decided, my goal in this life is to raise a dog, all the water friends are witnesses. The water friends in the live broadcast room were even more excited than Suchin when they heard Owen's words. Everyone saw Hallie's performance along the way. Whether it was jumping into the icy river without regard for his own safety to save Suchin's life, or the brave appearance when facing the wolf pack. And when encountering an avalanche, the decisive decision, everything shocked everyone. Where else could you find such a loyal companion? Oh woah! Suchin came to the door, rubbed Hallie's forehead, and hugged it. Slurp! Slurp! It seemed to feel Suchin's warmth, Hallie stuck out its tongue and kept licking his cheek. Ha ha ha! Watching the scene in front of him, Owen wiped his slightly red eyes, nodded to Ruth beside him, as if he had made an important decision. Suchin! These are Hallie's descendants, all entrusted to you. You are someone who loves them, they will live better with you. This, looking at the box, with three little ones curled up inside, Suchin's mind went blank. It turned out that the final task was this. It was these three little ones. And, all the way, Suchin could not have imagined that Hallie actually had such young descendants. Hallie has the purest Alaskan bloodline, I hope you will take good care of them. Suchin solemnly took the box and quickly wrapped it in a coat. Ding! Congratulations to the host for completing the Alaskan Fragment task. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully resurrecting the Alaskan sled dog, Speed Plus 2. Returning. Live broadcast interrupted. The scene in front of him changed. Suchin looked around, his mouth twitched slightly. Where did he come this time? Every time the system returns, it is not in the zoo, it is always in a different place. And... This time, it was all deep mountains and old forests around him, holding three little ones, Hallie was staring with interest at the surroundings. Oh whoa! He barked disdainfully, rubbed Suchin's legs with his forehead. Do! Suddenly, a bus came from a distance and stopped in front of Suchin. Ten Yuan! Young man, are you getting on the bus? This is the last bus today, if you don't get on now, there won't be another one. Where is it going? Suchin frowned as he looked at the middle-aged woman selling tickets in front of him who had dark skin and didn't seem like a local from Chindu. It's going to Nandu. Are you getting on or not? Nandu? Damn. Su Chin was taken aback, realizing that he had been sent out of Chindu. He let out a sigh and slowly boarded the bus with Holly. You're bringing a robot dog, it needs a ticket too. That's 20 in total. Su Chin chose a window seat, letting Holly sit on the inner side while he sat next to the aisle. The bus wasn't crowded, and people were curious about Holly and Su Chen, but no one asked. The old minibus started moving slowly. Su Chin opened the window, letting in a breath of fresh air. Holly sat obediently on the seat, sticking its head out of the window, looking at the lush mountains with excitement in its eyes. It was a sight it had never seen before. In the place where it used to live, there were mostly snowy mountains. Seeing this new place for the first time, Holly was particularly happy. And leaning against the man behind it, Holly felt a sense of security. Although it was a strange place, as long as its owner was there, anywhere was home. Cough. We're approaching the checkpoint ahead, are you all ready? The ticket inspector stood up and shouted to everyone. You don't need to get off for inspection, just stay on the bus, but, open your bags and hand over any prohibited items quickly, don't delay everyone's time. Su Chen saw everyone around him opening their backpacks, indicating that they were familiar with this routine. Click. However, the inspectors were actually a group of armed soldiers and leading them was a female soldier, carrying a long rifle as she slowly walked towards Su Chun from the front of the bus. Hello, please show your ID and open your backpack. Xuanning frowned as she looked at the robot dog next to the young man, softly saying, please, okay. Su Chen glanced and opened his backpack, revealing various survival tools inside. Please get off the bus with us. Xuanning was alert and immediately asked Su Chen to step aside, saying coldly, carrying so many tools, who exactly was this person? Come here. She gestured to her teammates and pulled Su Chen towards the ground. Roar! Holly roared, showing its fangs and glaring fiercely at the people pulling Su Chen, as if it wanted to pounce on them. Holly! Su Chen called out and followed them off the bus. At this point, a total of three people were asked to get off the bus. A plain-looking middle-aged woman said with a slightly frightened expression, We didn't bring anything, he has a knife, why are you pulling us off? Exactly, we're just going to the city to buy things, look. We have nothing on us. Another woman standing nearby echoed. Roar. Holly stood next to Su Chen, 
howling at the two women. Hello, please take out everything from your backpack for routine inspection. Xuaneng looked at the big dog on the ground and couldn't help but feel surprised. It didn't look like a robot dog at all. And their location was remote, but they could conduct thorough inspections because they were close to the border. Many people took risks and carried various prohibited items into the area. However, they had never seen someone like this young man before. Why does this dog look so strange? Yeah, could it be hiding something inside the robot dog? A new way to conceal prohibited items? The soldiers standing nearby whispered to each other, and one of them approached Su Chun with a gun, looking at him coldly. Behave. Su Chun pursed his lips, gently took out the three little guys from his backpack, and placed them on the ground. That's it, just three little guys. Looking at the three little ones with their baby voices, a group of soldiers were instantly confused. How could this be a robotic dog? Xuaneng squatted down gently, stroked one of the little guys, and one of them opened its eyes, licking her finger. Xuaneng was amazed, they have body temperature, is this real? The soldiers were all amazed, staring wide-eyed at the three little guys next to the big dog. This was actually real dogs? I know, you are Su Chen, the director of the Blue Sky Zoo, right? At this moment, a female soldier beside them exclaimed, quickly took out her phone, pulled up today's people's news, enlarged the photo on it, and handed it to Xuaneng, saying, Captain, this is Su Chen. The news today just talked about it, all the animals in his zoo are real. Ah, uh, Xuaneng widened her eyes, compared the figure in the news with the young man in front of her, and indeed it was the same person. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She quickly apologized to Su Chen. This was a person who benefited the entire society, bringing animals back to life. Even the government of Huaxia was trying to win him over, never expected to meet him here. Oh, are these little guys newly resurrected animals? They are so cute. Several women surrounded Harley, constantly exclaiming. It's okay, can I get on the car now? Su Chen smiled slightly, put the three little guys back in his backpack, and walked towards the car again. I'm really sorry. Xuan Ning saluted, feeling embarrassed once again. After all, he was the one who could resurrect animals, how could he be just an ordinary person carrying a DP? Can we get on the car now? Yeah, we've wasted so much time, if we arrive in Nandu any later, it will be dark. Two women complained a few times, then followed Su Chen towards the car. Roar! Suddenly, Harley stood at the door of the minibus, glaring fiercely at the two women, and let out a roar. The fierce look made the two women freeze in place. Harley, come up, be good. Su Chen turned back, smiled apologetically, and waved to Harley. Ah woo! They are suspicious, they have something on them. Harley turned his head and growled. Su Chen couldn't help but size up the two middle-aged women in front of him, seeing a slight flicker in their eyes, but they quickly pretended to be calm and scolded, even if you are real animals, you can't bully us like this. We also paid for the tickets, let us go up. Wait. Harley, guard the door. Su Chen said coldly, then jumped off the minibus again, took Xuaneng to the side, and whispered, these two people are suspicious, they should have what you were looking for on them. Ha! Huh? Xuaneng also lowered her voice, looked at the two women, and said uncertainly, we just checked them all, there was nothing, how can you be so sure? There must be something, I'm sure. Su Chen glanced at Harley, and said confidently, a dog's nose doesn't lie, although he didn't know how Harley sniffed it out, but, since Harley could alert him, these two women must be carrying DP. Kong. Just then, a woman quickly jumped onto the minibus, bent down and quickly pulled out a handgun from under the seat, aimed at the roof, and fired a shot. She no longer had the simple and honest look from before, but a fierce roar, back off. If you don't back off, I'll shoot. Bang. 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 All the soldiers saw this and quickly cocked their guns, aiming them solemnly at the inside of the bus. Don't act rashly, let's talk. Xuaneng's face was solemn as she said, resistance is futile, you. Kong. A spark erupted underfoot, and another woman directly pressed the gun against the driver's forehead, glancing at the soldiers outside the car, shouting fiercely, drive, now or I'll shoot you. Quick, drive. Okay, okay. The driver, in a panic, started the car and quickly sped away. Captain, we quickly inform above, we've encountered armed criminals, request immediate backup. Xuaneng was also a bit flustered at this point, trying to remain calm as she gave orders. Boom. A military off-road vehicle quickly rushed up from the side, the driver urgently shouting, get in, the mountains are ahead, if they get off midway, we won't be able to find them at all. These two are definitely repeat offenders, hurry. Hallie, get in. Su Chen took the lead in opening the car door, quickly getting in with Hallie. The driver looked at the approaching young man, feeling a bit confused. Bro, we're going after drug traffickers, why is an ordinary person like you joining in? Hurry, 
I have a way to catch up to them. They might really get away. Su Chen put his arm around Hallie's neck, shouting at the driver. Ding ling ling. Ding ling ling. Ding ling ling. The urgent phone rang, the operator at the South Capital Province JD Command Center quickly picked up the phone, speaking rapidly, Hello, this is the South Capital JD Command Center, may I ask? This is the Yenching border checkpoint in the South Capital Province, we've encountered two drug traffickers, armed, who have hijacked a minibus and are fleeing towards the South Capital, requesting immediate support from the command center. Repeat, the criminals are two females, likely to abandon the vehicle midway and flee towards the mountains heading to the border requesting rapid support from the command center. Click. The other party quickly hung up, the operator hesitated for a moment, then immediately jumped up and ran towards the duty office next to them. Soon, the entire South Capital JD command center was quickly mobilized. Armored vehicles, tightly guarded, quickly departed. Instruct that these criminals are extremely dangerous, holding dozens of hostages, do not act recklessly, prioritize the safety of the hostages. Li Xing sat in the first armored vehicle, holding a walkie-talkie, giving serious instructions. Drug traffickers are all ruthless criminals, if they are pushed too hard, they might do something desperate. And the hostages in the car could be harmed. However, half of the South Capital's land is close to dense forests, and many of these forests are on the border, with half belonging to Huaxia and the other half to another country. Once the drug traffickers cross the forest and enter another country, they can no longer be pursued, without orders, it's a tricky situation to enter another country with arms. If not handled properly, it could lead to conflict between the two countries. Thinking of this, Li Xing's brow furrowed even more tightly. Damn drug traffickers. He cursed under his breath. The entire JD frontline in the South Capital is stretched thin, dealing with cunning drug traffickers every day, they have a deeper understanding of the brutality of these criminals than ordinary people. The South Capital JD Department has the highest casualty rate in all of Huaxia. There have even been incidents of drug traffickers carrying explosives to attack the JD headquarters. Almost every day, similar incidents occur, and almost every time, there are casualties among comrades. Hopefully, this time they can successfully rescue the hostages. Attention all personnel, repeating once again, these two drug traffickers are exceptionally dangerous, armed, ensure the safety of the hostages, and be sure to prioritize safety. Make sure every single one of you comes back. Li Xing felt uneasy, using the walkie-talkie to remind everyone once again. A total of five armored vehicles, carrying dozens of JD soldiers, raced madly along the winding mountain road. For every minute delayed, the hostages will be in more danger, and the drug traffickers will be closer to the border. It's a race against time, and if the drug traffickers successfully break through the border. According to Li Xing's understanding, these two drug traffickers are likely to kill all the hostages. The drug traffickers are all inhumane criminals. They have no trace of mercy. Boom. The armored vehicle roared like a wild beast, crazily charging forward along the mountain road. You can't follow. The drug traffickers are dangerous. They are inhumane. If something goes wrong, I can't explain to my superiors. Xuanning sat in the car, looking back at the young man behind her, warning in a serious tone. Ah woo. Halley glanced at her, turned disdainfully, leaned against Su Chen's shoulder staring at the beautiful scenery outside the window. I know, I understand the brutality of the drug traffickers, but, can you find the drug traffickers? In such a large jungle, are you just searching randomly like this? To put it bluntly, I'm afraid you haven't finished searching, and the drug traffickers may have already crossed the border with the hostages. Su Chen frowned in response. He understood what the female soldier captain in front of him was saying, but, the drug traffickers are definitely enemies of all humanity. Moreover, those two cunning women just now were completely discovered by Halley. If they let the two drug traffickers escape this time, the DP they carried could harm several families, even dozens of families. DP is that terrifying. That's why Su Chen had to catch up and help. And with Halley's presence, through smell, as long as they didn't encounter a river blocking their way, they could track the two women carrying DP. You. Okay. But, you must stay within our protection, you can't leave our sight. Xuanning stared at Su Chun for a long time, nodded solemnly. It was entirely the credit of that big dog for revealing the identities of the two drug traffickers just now. They had also learned in school that in ancient times, every police force would have different police dogs to assist them, especially their JD police force, which also had police dogs. Just a sniff could reveal who was carrying DP, who was using DP. With such police dogs, their efficiency in tracking these criminals would be greatly improved. However, it was a pity that after the extinction of animals in ancient times, everything changed. The reason why their team suffered such heavy casualties was because of the lack of effective tracking methods. 
This led to the team occasionally falling into ambushes by drug traffickers. Look! Suddenly, the driver sitting in front exclaimed, turning the steering wheel and quickly driving down a dirt road from the mountain road. At the edge of the jungle in the distance, the old minibus that had just stopped was parked under a tree. Get off, watch out for ambushes. Opening the car door, Xuaning pulled the gun bolt, step by step towards the minibus. Is there anyone inside? Resistance is futile, surrender is your only way out. Oh whoa. Halley followed behind Su Chen, wrinkling his nose and sniffing a few times, looking somewhat angry, and roared at the minibus. He rushed forward in a vigorous step. Halley. Su Chen hurriedly followed. After opening the car door, Su Chen looked at the driver who had died tragically in the driver's seat, and couldn't help but freeze in place. A hollow bullet hole was glaringly present in the center of his forehead. Damn! He slapped the seat next to him heavily, cursing under his breath. He never expected that these two middle-aged women would be more ruthless than he imagined. The driver posed no threat to them at all, yet they shot without hesitation. Scum! Turning around and pulling Halley out of the minibus, all the soldiers outside had a look of sorrow and indignation. Halley! You must catch those two, it's up to you. Holding Halley's neck, Su Chen whispered in its ear, then rubbed its head. Ow! Oh, don't worry! Harry howled, sniffed around near the minibus, looked towards the jungle, wagged his tail, and rushed in. Keep up, find your position. Watching Harry rush into the jungle, Su Chen shouted, and quickly followed. Quick! Quick! After leaving two soldiers behind for support, Xuan Ning quickly led the others to follow Su Chen's figure into the jungle. Along the way, the big dog in the distance kept sniffing the ground, passing through hidden thickets one by one. It can be seen that these two drug traffickers have definitely committed crimes before. They are very familiar with the terrain of the entire jungle. They have taken so many hostages, yet their speed is so fast. Moreover, the direction is not a straight line, sometimes turning left, sometimes turning right. If it weren't for this animal's help, they probably wouldn't have been able to find the trail of these two drug traffickers. Thinking of this, Xuan Ning looked at Harry with envy. If they could have such a partner, it would be a nightmare for many drug traffickers. This could indirectly save many broken families. Ha! <laughs> Suddenly, Harry in front stopped, turned his head, and let out a low growl. Su Chen quickly crouched down, gesturing for the soldiers behind him to do the same. There are people ahead, Harry won't smell wrong. Xuan Ning nodded heavily, tightened the gun in her hand, and cautiously moved forward. Suddenly turning around a big tree, Xuan Ning squinted her eyes and waved to everyone behind her. When the group turned around, they saw an elderly white-haired woman sitting at the base of a tree, her eyes wide, her hands weakly hanging down, a sharp long knife inserted in her chest, the dried blood already visible. Obviously, she was already dead. However, what angered everyone the most was the several grim blood words written on the tree trunk. Chase again, everyone will die, next time it will be this old lady's grandson. Creek. Su Chen looked at the arrogant blood words on the tree, clenched his teeth, and tightly clenched his fists. It was too hateful. These two drug traffickers had no conscience to this extent. They didn't even plan to spare the elderly, weak, or children. We can't waste any more time, these two people have no idea if we can catch up to them, they probably won't be long before they do something to that child. Su Chen stared at Xuan Ning, saying in a deep voice, we must not let them get away. Harry. Chase. With a low roar, Su Chen drew his dagger from his waist, ready to chase. However, a pair of hands quickly pulled him down, looking at the gun handed to him, Su Chen nodded solemnly and put it away. Quick! Xuan Ning coldly shouted, leading the way, chasing after Harry. It seemed that Harry sensed Su Chen's anger, running even harder, constantly emitting low growls. Boom! Creak! Chief! Li Xing jumped off the car carrying a gun, took a look at the driver's body inside the minibus, and sighed. Everyone spread out, in groups of three, start searching. The criminals are desperate, if there is a suitable opportunity, ensure the safety of the hostages first, and you can shoot the criminals directly. Let's go! Chief, wait! Captain Shui Ning has already tracked the trail of two drug traffickers and is currently tracking with her team, leaving our special marks along the way. Li Xing was taken aback, pulled a soldier over, and said with a dark expression, in such a large jungle, how could it be so easy to find the trail of drug traffickers? It's true, we met Su, the director of Blue Sky Zoo, he brought a dog, very powerful, the two drug traffickers were found by that dog, and, the trail of the drug traffickers was also found by that little guy. The soldier beside him quickly responded seriously. A dog? Blue Sky Zoo? Sai. Li Xing took a deep breath, he had heard of this person's name before. Recently, the headquarters had started drafting proposals regarding the possibility of using police dogs. This was all because of the Blue Sky Zoo. However, Nonsense. 
Li Xing roared and quickly waved his hand, leading everyone into the jungle. All units, pay attention. We must ensure the safety of Director Su Chun of the Blue Sky Zoo at all costs, and also the safety of that dog. This is our hope for using police dogs in the future. Nothing can go wrong. Their superiors were only discussing the matter, but everyone knew that once police dogs were involved, it would be beneficial for them. However, whether the Blue Sky Zoo would agree to it was uncertain. It was said that the Chindu government was planning to allocate the entire Li Mountain, provide funding for construction, lay down subways, and build roads just to keep the Blue Sky Zoo. All this was for the revival of the animals. Director Su Chen must not have any accidents here. If something were to happen, then, quick! With a roar, Li Xing rushed ahead with a long spear in hand. Chief, there's a body here, and there are words on the tree. After running a distance, the soldier in front looked at the body of an old man leaning against a tree, his eyes bloodshot. Leave someone to take the body back. Li Xing breathed a sigh of relief, looked up at the jungle, and saw that they were not far from the border. However, it seemed that they were on the right track in tracking down the drug traffickers who were running away. But these two drug traffickers were probably more vicious than they had imagined, possibly not just ordinary FD people, maybe even leaders. Not good. Li Xing's expression changed, and he quickly shouted again. Everyone, load your bullets and move. He suddenly thought of a terrible possibility. If these two drug traffickers were indeed leaders, then there was a high probability that there would be accomplices near the border. Xuanning's team was only less than 15 people, and there could be significant casualties. The neighboring country was not as safe as Huaxia, and even the drug traffickers there would have heavy firepower. Phew! Taking a deep breath, Li Xing held his gun with both hands, bent over in a combat stance, and quickly charged forward. Bang bang bang! Suddenly, there was a dense sound of gunfire in the distance, and Li Xing's expression changed drastically. According to the command center, these two drug traffickers did not have large firearms with them, so. The gunfire now. Hopefully, it was from Xuanning's team, otherwise. He would have guessed right, there were accomplices waiting at the border. Speed up! Quick! If the other party provides support, suppress the firepower immediately, replace Xuanning's team, and do not harm the hostages. Everyone must be careful. Li Xing roared, pulled the gun bolt, loaded the bullets, and with a calm expression, led all the team members towards the direction of the gunfire. Halley, come back! Su Chen roared, pounced and knocked Halley to the ground, then rolled behind a big tree. Bang bang bang! The dense bullets poured crazily onto the ground where Halley had just crawled, and grass splattered. Su Chen held Halley, nervously checked it, and saw that it was unharmed, then he breathed a sigh of relief. They were about to catch up with the two robbers, but they never expected that a group of drug traffickers would rush out from the border, crazily starting to shoot, instantly blocking their way. Ah 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 ah, help! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! The ticket seller raised his hands high, crying out desperately. The middle-aged woman behind her pressed the gun against the back of her head, grinning and shouting at the soldiers crawling in the distance, Back off! Or I'll shoot her dead! Back off! With one hand around the ticket seller's neck, she signaled to the others, and a group of people quickly retreated towards the border. Roar! Halley broke free from Su Chen's arms and rushed towards the nearby jungle like lightning, swiftly weaving through it. Halley! Seeing this, Su Chen gritted her teeth, leaned the backpack against a tree, lay on the ground, and crawled after Halley. Liao Jia, just kill them. Let's get out quickly, or their reinforcements will come soon. A young man holding a long gun next to him looked solemnly at the soldiers in the distance and said in a low voice, No! We can't kill so many people unless absolutely necessary. Otherwise, if it triggers a large-scale pursuit, even if we hide overseas, we won't escape. As long as we can safely exit the border, it's fine. The middle-aged woman named Liao Jia narrowed her eyes slightly, her mind working non-stop, and ordered in a deep voice, There are too many hostages, it's inconvenient to take them all. Release a few people, leave two children behind. Humph, the soldiers of Huaxia prioritize the lives of hostages, even at the cost of their own lives. Not to mention they are children. Okay. The young man waved his hand, pulled out a few hostages from the side, and pushed them all out. Move forward, don't look back, dare to look back and you'll be shot dead. He shouted angrily. Woo woo, help, help. Don't shoot, don't shoot. Help. The hostages trembled slightly as they slowly walked towards Xuan Ning and the others. Captain, this won't work. They are holding two children hostage, and, using these people as shields, we can't attack at all. Hiss. Xuanning took a sharp breath, gritted her teeth fiercely, and growled, focus on the hostages, rescue them all first. There was no other way. These people are all innocent. 
Judging by the brutal appearance of these drug traffickers, if they dare to open fire in retaliation, none of the hostages in front of them will survive, they will all be shot dead. Don't move! Suddenly, Li Xing rushed over with a group of soldiers from a distance, looking at the scene in front of them, all the soldiers raised their guns and aimed at the drug traffickers in the distance. Back off! Drop your guns, or we'll shoot! The young man's face turned red as he shouted, carrying a little boy in front of him as he retreated. Liao Jia, their reinforcements are here, let's retreat quickly. If we're late, we won't be able to escape. Shouting, Liao Jia dragged a little girl and quickly retreated as well. Chief! Xuanning saluted, reporting to Li Xing, except for two children, two people have died, and the rest of the hostages have been rescued. But, these drug traffickers are extremely vicious, we, don't worry. Li Xing's face turned serious as he waved his hand, quickly asking, where is Director Su Chen? And that dog? They are behind that tree. Where are they? Xuanning pointed to a tree in the distance, but before she could finish her sentence, she froze in place. At this moment, there was no sign of Su Chen behind the tree. Nonsense! How could you involve an ordinary person in such a dangerous operation? Li Xing took a deep breath, scolded, and immediately ordered, everyone disperse, leave a few people to escort the hostages out. We will continue to pursue the drug traffickers. This time, no matter the cost, we must bring Director Su Chen back. We must not fail, even if we have to escape across the border. Charge! Yes! All the soldiers tightened their grip on their rifles, quickly spread out in the jungle, and began to chase after the fleeing drug traffickers. Shu! Su Chen held Halley's neck, gently covering its mouth, and whispered, Are you sure it's nearby? Halley stared with big eyes and nodded obediently. Let's go around again, there are too many people. We must first rescue the two children, understand? Su Chen crawled on the ground and climbed towards the jungle with Halley. These drug traffickers never expected Su Chen and Halley to chase them from the side. And with the keen sense of smell of the sled dogs, there was no chance of losing track. However, these drug traffickers still had two child hostages and were armed with brutal weapons. Su Chen didn't dare to rush in. But after the task with the Alaskan sled dogs, Su Chen's speed increased by two points. Now running, he was much faster than before. It was using this efficient speed that Su Chen was able to dodge the dense bullets earlier, but luck played a big role, and if he got shot, he didn't want to die here like this. Woo woo woo. Ah 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 ah. In the distance, the cries of two children were heard, extremely mournful. Su Chen clenched his fists tightly and began to move towards the direction of the drug traffickers. At this point, they were already at the border, and Su Chen had even spotted the boundary marker. It seemed that as long as they crossed the nearby river, these drug traffickers could directly escape from China. Ha! Huh? Be careful! Su Chen's body stiffened, quickly lowering his head. In the distance by the river, a group of drug traffickers had stopped, each starting to cross a single log bridge in front of them. And! Su Chen could see that the two middle-aged women drug traffickers were leading the way. Everyone left the two little girls at the back. Phew! Hallie! This is our chance! Su Chen reached out and touched Halley's chin, gently scratching it, and said in a deep voice, You take care of the one on the left, I'll take care of the one on the right. HRR. Okay. Halley narrowed his eyes slightly, nodded, and let out a low growl. The single log bridge was quite long, and as the drug traffickers walked up one by one, it was a rare opportunity. On the bridge, this group of people couldn't launch an attack. There were only two people at the back. As long as they could snatch the two children back before the two women landed, then. These drug traffickers would have nothing to hold over them. Go! Su Chen roared lowly, slowly standing up from the ground and rushing towards the riverbank. Just in time, Su Chen's speed reached its peak as he rushed towards the riverbank. Halley! Roaring, Su Chen leaped off the ground and pounced on a drug trafficker who had spotted them. Oh whoa! Another drug trafficker, seeing his companion knocked down, quickly raised a long gun at Su Chen, ready to pull the trigger. A terrifying beast roar sounded from behind, followed by a sharp pain on his neck. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. A deafening scream rang out as Halley tore off a piece of flesh, then turned around and bit down on the wrist of the drug trafficker. Crack! Blood splattered, and the long gun fell to the ground. Bang! Su Chen raised his fist and fiercely punched the face of the drug trafficker beneath him. The drug trafficker exerted force on his waist, flipping Su Chen over and quickly standing up with the long gun in hand. Bang! A gunshot! Su Chen felt a gust of wind pass by his ear, bringing a burning sensation. Halley! he shouted in fear. At the critical moment, if Halley hadn't pounced up, that bullet just now would have pierced Su Chen's head. Crack! 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 Halley went crazy, tearing at the drug trafficker beneath him. Chunks of flesh were torn off. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. 
the drug trafficker let out a mournful scream. Go! Su Chen roared lowly, lifting the two children with one hand each and quickly running towards the trees in the distance. The drug traffickers on the single log bridge were probably about to land at any moment. When the time comes, just across the river, he and Halley are completely live targets. Roar! Halley bit fiercely and quickly chased after Su Chen. Da 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 da! Da 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 da! Da 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 da! The dense bullet shot over, and Su Chen directly threw the two children in his arms out, then flew over to pounce. Halley! Su Chen looked back and shouted. Quick! Hurry! Roar! Just then, Halley let out a painful howl, a burst of blood mist erupted from his body, and Su Chen's pupils instantly shrank. No! Halley! With eyes slightly red, Su Chen roared, then quickly rushed out, holding Halley lying on the ground, and retreated rapidly. Halley, where are you injured? Where are you injured? Roar! Roar! Turning over Halley's body, Su Chen looked at a bullet hole losing blood continuously on his waist, his mind went blank. How could this happen? Halley had only been following him for the first day, how could this happen? It's all his fault, it's all his fault. Halley, hold on, hold on. Pressing his cheek against Halley's head, Su Chen, with tears in his eyes, comforted softly, it will be fine, the soldiers will come soon, they will definitely save you. Although Su Chen was also proficient in basic veterinary skills, there were no conditions here to operate on Halley. And, if the bullets had ruptured Halley's organs, it would be impossible to save him. Ha! Halley licked Su Chen's palm with his tongue, staring at him with big eyes, wanting to imprint him deeply in his mind. Remembering the scene of galloping together on the snow, Halley's mouth slightly curved, then his eyes rolled back, and he fainted instantly. Halley, is there anyone here? Holding Halley's body, Su Chen shouted loudly towards the distance. Director, over there. Xuanning listened carefully for a moment, then quickly said to Li Xing, in that direction, I think I heard Principal Su Chen's voice. Quick, quick. Li Xing called out and ran over quickly. When everyone arrived at the riverbank, they saw a young man covered in blood holding a big dog, murmuring non-stop. Halley, hold on, they are coming. The ski resort in the zoo has not been built yet, you must not leave. Halley, there are many friends in the zoo that you haven't met yet, everyone is waiting for you. Li Xing looked at the miserable appearance of the two drug dealers lying by the river, then glanced at the dense bullet holes on the shore, and looked at the big dog in Su Chen's arms with deep respect. This. Just with a dog, he actually rescued two children from a group of drug dealers. Everyone looked at Su Chen's appearance, listened to his murmured words, their hearts felt like they were being pricked by needles, and many female soldiers had already started to wipe away tears secretly. Quick! Su Chen stood up with Halley in his arms, ran quickly to Li Xing, and shouted loudly, Is there a way to get to the city quickly? I need an operating room. Halley can't die, is there a way? Looking at the young man with bloodshot eyes in front of him, Li Xing swallowed hard, then immediately saluted and said, Yes, I will contact the higher-ups immediately and dispatch a helicopter. Hold on. Quick, does anyone have hemostatic medicine? Bring it out quickly. Immediately, all the soldiers took out hemostatic medicine from their bags and handed it over. Don't rush, this is our hero, no matter what the cost, we will not let anything happen to him. You can rest assured, I swear in the name of a DJ director. We will definitely bring these drug dealers to justice. Southern Military Hospital. Quick, quick, quick. At this moment, everyone waiting in the emergency room to register looked in surprise at the group of off-road vehicles parked at the hospital entrance. What's going on? I don't know. Has some important person been injured? So many soldiers mobilized, it seems like they have blocked the hospital gates. Quick, see what's going on. Several armed soldiers rushed in and sprinted directly to the second floor. Bang. They pushed open the emergency room door. Smack. Slapping a form on the table, they quickly said, This is the highest order from the superior. Prepare the best operating room immediately. The patient will arrive at the hospital in three minutes. The helicopter will land directly in front of the emergency building. Prepare the best nurses on standby. Now, immediately push out the emergency bed. Prepare to receive the patient. Immediately, right now. A group of doctors sitting at the table looked somewhat puzzled at the soldiers in front of them then looked down at the order on the table. Their eyes widened. This was actually an order issued by the highest commander of the southern military region. Good. Quick, everyone act quickly, hurry. Notify group 3 to wait outside the emergency building, prepare to receive the patient, use the special passage, go directly to the operating room on the second floor. Suddenly, the entire office was filled with a busy scene. All the doctors started moving. They belonged to the military hospital, and encountering a patient brought in by helicopter could only mean two possibilities. One was a high-ranking senior officer, and the other was 
a soldier who had made significant contributions on the battlefield. However, the order just now did not specify the identity of the patient. Everyone involuntarily had the same thought in their minds, who exactly was coming? Rumble. The helicopter's rotating propellers slowly stopped, and the entire hospital emergency building entrance was already crowded with people. They all widened their eyes, wanting to see who was coming down from the helicopter. Where's the patient? Quick! Several nurses swiftly pushed the emergency bed over, waiting for the aircraft door to open. Soon, a young man with tears all over his face jumped down from the helicopter holding a strange creature. Under the puzzled gaze of the nurses, Suchin gently placed Hallie on the emergency bed. Is this the patient? The head nurse looked up in confusion. Quick! Speedily take him to the operating room, hurry! Li Xing jumped down from the helicopter and, seeing several nurses standing still, couldn't help but reprimand them. All right, all right. Seeing Li Xing in military uniform, the nurses quickly pushed the emergency bed towards the second floor of the emergency room. What is this thing? Why are they sending this? With such a big fuss? Exactly. Why do I feel like it looks a bit like a robotic dog? Could it be a drill? How is that possible? Mobilizing such a big operation, could it be a drill? How many people's medical treatment has been delayed? I think the hospital is just fooling around. What is this thing, causing such a commotion? Watching the emergency bed being swiftly pushed in, the onlookers on both sides complained indignantly. As Su Chen's figure followed up to the second floor, Li Xing finally breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that the Huaxia military valued Su Chen more than he had imagined. And, he had already understood the combat power of this creature named Halley today. It was not only fierce, but also very intelligent. Most importantly, it was very loyal, no matter what command Su Chen gave, Halley would carry it out well. If their team also had such a police dog, then, the mortality rate of the southern military region JD police would be reduced to the lowest. Taking a deep breath, Li Xing quickly picked up the phone to report today's situation to the higher-ups. Not only the military, but even the newly established Animal Protection Department had called to inquire if Su Chun was okay, and if the military hospital could treat and revive the large dog. All of this indicated that the entire Huaxia was treating animal revival as a major event. TCH. I thought soldiers were all good people, but, exactly, for a robotic dog, they actually made us wait here for so long. Ah, it's difficult to see a doctor, it's all prepared for privileged people. Hanging up the phone, Li Xing heard the protests from the people on both sides, and he furrowed his brows slightly. Taking a deep breath, he slowly walked towards the crowd. Everyone, please be quiet. He raised his hand slightly and shouted. Then Li Xing saluted in a standard military manner and scanned everyone present. The people on both sides looked at him solemnly and stopped their cursing. I am Li Xing, the director of the JD Bureau in Nandu. I know that you may have opinions about today's events, but, please listen to me. Li Xing paused, with a bitter expression on his face, and his voice was somewhat low. JD police have the highest casualty rate among all police forces. Last year, 675 soldiers from Nandu sacrificed their lives. So far this year, we have lost 320 soldiers. And today, the reason why we use this method to send a dog to the hospital is because, it is the hope of our Nandu JD police. Today, this sled dog named Halley not only tracked down two major drug lords, but also rescued dozens of hostages. In order to save two children, it risked its life, and is now in critical condition. Everyone looked at Li Xing, who appeared somewhat excited, and fell silent. They were all from Nandu and were very familiar with the situation there. Drug trafficking was rampant in Nandu, without a doubt. Countless families in Nandu had been destroyed because of drugs, leading to broken homes and separated families. Therefore, after hearing Li Xing's words, they couldn't help but show respect. Those who dared to confront drug traffickers were all heroes of Nandu. You may have heard about the resurrection of animals, and, today, this sled dog is the first resurrected canine. I can responsibly tell you, if the JD police in Nandu have the addition of these police dogs, our casualty rate will decrease to less than one-tenth of previous years. Everyone, the JD police are also human, we also have families, children. However, in order to protect Nandu from being invaded by drugs, we are willing to go to the front line, face the vicious drug traffickers, and sacrifice ourselves. But, Li Xing's nose felt a bit sour, every year sending off those comrades, every year welcoming new comrades, his heart would be heavy, because he didn't know if his comrades would still be by his side the next year. Alright, Director Li, it's our fault. We didn't expect it to be like this. If it's getting injured dealing with drug traffickers, let alone using a helicopter, we are willing to give way today. Exactly. I was too ignorant, really. My family was destroyed by drugs. 
Directorly, that dog named Halley is great. He is a hero of Nandu. Everyone, think about it. Yes. The JD police are also human, just like us. They also have family members waiting for them to have dinner. Think about it. Please, let nothing happen to this dog. If we can really popularize these police dogs in the future, will those drug traffickers still dare to be so arrogant? The few who had just scolded initially all lowered their heads in unison, feeling ashamed. They never expected that the young man and the animal named Hallie had saved so many people today. They couldn't believe they had doubted them, it was simply inhuman. Oldly, where are you going? Smack! An old man slapped himself hard, his face slightly red as he said, I'm old, but I can't control my mouth. I'll go upstairs quickly and apologize once the little guy's surgery is successful. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep tonight, feeling guilty. For our Nandu, such a precious animal, only one, is now in critical condition. I feel terrible in my heart. With that, the old man hurriedly walked towards the emergency room on the second floor. Phew! Looking at the crowd rushing into the emergency building, Li Xing took a deep breath and felt relieved as he looked at the bright red flag standing in front of the hospital. Little guy, please don't get into trouble. Because of you, we can reduce the number of casualties, and because of you, society as a whole will be healthier and better. Hoof. Dubai pouted, lying in the panda enclosure with narrowed eyes fixed on the pigsty in the distance. He glanced at the honey badger standing like a wooden statue. Dubai snorted. This guy is really dedicated, always guarding the pigsty day and night. Isn't he hungry? No, I have to provoke this guy. With that in mind, Dubai picked up a bamboo shoot from the ground and slowly walked towards the pigsty. If he could make the honey badger kill a pig, he would definitely be severely punished by the park manager. Squeak. Sitting next to the pigsty, Dubai sat on the ground, holding the bamboo shoot, took a bite, and chewed continuously in his mouth. He provocatively glanced at the honey badger. Slurp. He licked his tongue. How can he endure this? Gag gag. The honey badger lay on the ground, staring with its small eyes at the troublemaker in front of him. What a nuisance. Completely forgetting the pain after the wound has healed. Now he's provoking again. If I hadn't been hungry all day, I would have attacked you in the morning. Turning his head away, the honey badger slowly closed his eyes, ignoring the giant panda in front of him. Slurp. 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 Dubai, holding the bamboo shoot, moved a few steps forward, leaned against the pigsty railing, and couldn't help but grin at the honey badger's expression. He licked louder, splattering saliva. Hoomph. I don't believe you're not hungry. Hoof. Hoof. Hoomph. Suddenly, a series of grunts came from inside the fence, and Dubai frowned and turned his head. Ow. Dozens of pig heads quickly emerged. Squeak. 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 In less than a few seconds, a pig quickly devoured the bamboo shoot in Dubai's arms, then wiggled its butt and retreated. Ah. My bamboo shoot. I only took one bite and licked it for so long, and it was eaten by these pigs. Dubai howled and jumped up, trying to climb over the fence. Dubai. Suddenly, a voice came from behind, and Dubai quickly patted the fence, turned around, and sat obediently on the ground, grinning at Su Chen. Roar. This fence is quite sturdy. However, seeing a big dog with bandages all over its body following Su Chen, Dubai wrinkled his brow in confusion. How did he bring back a disabled dog? Is it for the honey badger to have an extra meal? Dubai quickly approached and came to Su Chen's side, rubbing his head against him, then ran to Ha Li's side. He looked up and down. This guy is quite big, almost the same size as himself. Worth befriending, with those fangs, at least much stronger than those elephants without personality. All right, stop running around. Su Chen shouted, then turned and led Holly towards the office. After a thrilling surgery in the operating room, Holly was finally saved, but, although his life was saved, it seems that Holly may not be able to engage in intense physical activities like before. However, Holly is getting older and it's time for him to rest properly. And with three little Alaskans around, they can successfully serve as playmates for children in the zoo. It seems like the zoo hasn't been open recently. Su Chen murmured softly as he looked at the group of animals basking in the sun leisurely. It seems that the baby's condition is developing faster than he imagined, otherwise, they wouldn't have missed coming to the zoo. Only 700,000 more points of shock value to go. Su Chen sighed with relief as he glanced at the system in his mind. There are still fragments of the diamond parrot in hand that have not been completed. I hope to successfully accumulate enough shock value of 700,000. Otherwise, it can only be slowly accumulated through the zoo. Ding, congratulations, the new park has been successfully built, the host can go and receive it. Just then, the system prompt sounded in his mind, Su Chen's expression was startled, then a smile appeared on his face. The new park in Lishan has finally been successfully built. This. Phew. Taking a deep breath, 
Su Chen began to gather all the animals. There is no time to lose, so today all these guys can be taken over. However, the journey is long, and there is also a herd of elephants. It is simply unrealistic to transport them by car, so it seems that we can only walk there now. Honey badger. Waving at the honey badger, Su Chen instructed, take care of the pig herd, don't let them run around on the way, do you understand? Ga ga. Pingtuj is now more concerned about this group of Duroc pigs than anything else, without Su Chen's reminder. After a long time, Su Chen sat on a tricycle, holding a golden python in his arms, with Dubai still pulling the cart in front of him. With a group of animals, they walked out of the Blue Sky Zoo in a grand manner. Do. Just as they walked out of the zoo, all the cars on the road suddenly stopped abruptly, opening their doors one after another, coming out to see this amazing scene in front of them. A group of animals. They were walking down the street so grandly. However, what is Blue Sky Zoo planning to do? Are they going out for a walk? Director Su Chen, where are you planning to go? The owner of the convenience store at the door stuck his head out, looking at the lovely group of animals, smiling and asking. Ha, huh, the new park built by the government is ready, we are moving, today we will first move these guys over. Moving? Then is the zoo here not going to open? The owner of the convenience store's expression changed immediately after hearing this, and he quickly asked. Yes, the new park is large, and there will be more and more animals in the future, this place is too small. Boss, pack up all the lollipops for me, give them to these guys. What's the big deal about a lollipop, give it to these little guys, but. You are moving, I don't know if the new zoo has any storefronts? I, the owner of the convenience store said somewhat awkwardly. They moved here specifically because they saw the Blue Sky Zoo business getting better and better. Now that the zoo is moving again, their convenience store will be forced to close. Yes. The boss can come, the first year is rent-free, these guys are always coming to your place to eat for free, so I'll save you a good spot. Let's go. Su Chin waved happily, patted Dubai's butt, and led a large number of animals to walk towards Lishan along the road. Hiss. What did Director Su Chen just say? Can we also go over and get the first year's rent waived? Several stall owners widened their eyes after hearing this. Great. The owner of the convenience store slapped his thigh, excitedly shouting, What are you hesitating about? Let's move today too. Director Su Chen said there are also spots over there. The sooner we go, the better spot we'll get. There are no animals here. Who will we sell to? Exactly. I'll quickly call my son. Let's move. I can't bear to leave these little guys in the zoo. Hurry up. You little brat is still playing king of glory. Quickly come over and drive. We'll move with the zoo. A group of vendors at the door hurriedly began to pack up their things, preparing to move with Su Chen. What does this mean? I don't know, didn't you see the security bureau's cars on the road? All vehicles are pulling over. Could it be the Blue Sky Zoo? Are they preparing to relocate? The lineup is too big, how long has it been, and so many animals have appeared. Pedestrians along the way stopped to watch the passing group of animals. Both amazed by the giant panda pulling the cart in front and surprised by the larger group of elephants. Everything was so novel to the people of the entire Hang City. Although almost everyone in Hang City knew that there were real animals in the Blue Sky Zoo, for some reason, the zoo had not been operating normally recently. Many people had not seen the animals there. It was unexpected that a new zoo was already under construction. And the efficiency was so fast that it had already been built. Roar! Dubai looked at the colorful long skirts on both sides, feeling a bit restless in his heart. He really wanted to go up and tear them off. Hurry up! Su Chen saw that the guy pulling the tricycle had already left the main road and was heading towards the crowd on the side, so he quickly reprimanded him. In front of so many people, if you tear off someone's skirt again, this, even jumping into the Yellow River won't wash it clean. They walked in a grand procession towards Lee Mountain, followed by numerous people, including many who parked their cars on the side of the road and followed Su Chen and the others, wanting to see what the new zoo looked like. The vendors at the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo had already finished loading their carts and were following behind at a leisurely pace. The owner of the convenience store looked at the endless crowd on both sides and couldn't help but sigh, we must keep up with Director Su Chen. At this rate of development, the shops at the entrance of the Blue Sky Zoo will definitely fetch sky-high prices. There are just too many people. The group turned down countless small roads and could already see several lifelike statues standing at the intersection ahead. There was a giant panda gnawing on bamboo shoots. There was a honey badger glaring at the crowd. A group of monkeys with their legs crossed, covering their foreheads and gazing into the distance. Phew! Su Chen looked at the tall statues and was momentarily stunned. They were so lifelike, just like real animals. The path had already turned into a stone road sparkling with dots of light, lined with various exotic flowers and plants emitting a fragrant scent. Walking in, it felt like being directly immersed in nature, 
with a refreshing feeling enveloping everyone instantly. Roar! The Bai excitedly shouted and quickly pulled the tricycle towards the front. At the main entrance, there was a large gate that could accommodate five cars side by side, with a cloud-like white cloud floating above it. It kept changing shapes, displaying several large characters, Blue Sky Zoo, and on both sides extending far into the distance were small wooden shops that had been fully decorated, exuding a natural atmosphere. Oh my god, is this a zoo? Can a zoo be built like this? Yeah, look, all those shops are natural tree holes, not man-made at all. Look inside, oh my god. It's so exaggerated, it's like a primitive jungle, this. When will it open? I must bring my whole family to see, this place is like a paradise on earth. The crowd following behind arrived at the entrance, and it was as if they had all frozen for a moment, then erupted into a commotion. They had never seen such a unique park before. Even some natural scenic areas couldn't compare to this. Towering jungle trees, uniquely shaped treehouses standing tall, with countless spines hanging down. And inside the entire zoo, it was all covered with a thick layer of grass. There were no pathways, which meant that the zoo hadn't prepared any roads at all. You could walk anywhere inside. It had to be said that this was truly a stunning sight. Phew. Impressive, system. Although Su Chen had heard speculations about the system's construction, he had never imagined that it would look like this when built. It was as if the ideal living environment for every kind of animal had been brought here. Squeak. A blue light screen flashed in front of the main gate, followed by the high-tech gate slowly opening. Welcome to Blue Sky Zoo. Here, you will enjoy the most natural living environment, and you will see any kind of creature you can imagine. A friendly female voice sounded. Su Chen slowly jumped down from the ground, walked step by step to the entrance of the zoo, turned around and waved to everyone, shouting, Hello, everyone. Blue Sky Zoo has been renovated and will officially open starting tomorrow. Three days of trial operation, all free admission. Tomorrow, Blue Sky Zoo welcomes everyone to come and play. Cheers erupted from the crowd. It's starting to operate tomorrow, which is really fast. And it's free for three days. Everyone is not a fool. Looking at the appearance of this Blue Sky Zoo, it will definitely be very popular. It will be hard to get a ticket then, and it's all free for three days. Don't delay director Su Chen's time. He just moved today, there must be a lot of things to arrange, let's not cause trouble, let's go back first. Right, this zoo will be rooted in our Hangchang in the future, this is our pride. Let's go, I'm going back to sleep now, I'll come queue up at 3am tomorrow morning. Wow, I've already planned it. I'll park my car nearby tonight and won't move it. Tomorrow, it will definitely be packed. A group of people reluctantly left from the entrance, leaving behind the stall owners who followed. The convenience store owner touched the shop in front of him in surprise, looked worriedly at the goods in the car. Director Su Chen, we, we are selling ordinary things, placing them in this shop, it's a bit. The words were not finished, but, at this moment, all the stall owners understood that the small items they were selling were not suitable for such a large-scale zoo. Isn't this lowering the standard of the zoo invisibly? Ah, uh, it's okay. Just choose these few shops next to the gate, we'll sign the contract in a few days, and the first year's rent is free. Su Chen waved his hand and said, as long as the kids like it, there is no distinction between expensive and cheap goods, and the pricing of Blue Sky Zoo will not be very high for now. Let's work together. Okay, let's work together. Many stall owners blushed and clenched their fists, shouting. They also understood that director Su Chen must have seen them as old folks and gave them preferential treatment. Come on, we're home. Su Chen clapped his hands at the many animals, smiled, and walked into the new zoo. Late at night, Cambridge Manor Community. Mom. Look how peacefully little Li Hua is sleeping. Not moving at all. Can I hold it while sleeping? I promise not to disturb it. The baby lay on the bed, looking at the peacefully sleeping little Li Hua cat beside him, with big eyes looking at Gao Yu, pouting and saying, Really, I can't move now. I definitely won't press on it. Okay. Gao Yu turned around, tears streaming down like a spring, quickly wiped them away, gently picked up the little Li Hua cat, placed it next to the baby's pillow, and said with a smile, Is this okay? With little Li Hua cat accompanying you at night, mom is also with you. Go to sleep. Hee <laughs> hee, okay. The baby turned his head laboriously to look at the little Li Hua cat, grinned, and then said, Mom, are you crying again? Don't cry. I'm not uncomfortable at all. With little Li Hua cat with me, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. I wonder if Uncle Su Chen has come back. Mom, do you think Dubai misses me? I really want to go see him. Be good, go to sleep. Tomorrow mom will take you to see him, okay? Really? The baby exclaimed, quickly closed his eyes. The little calico cat, don't snore at night, okay? Woo woo. Seeing the little one slowly falling asleep, 
Gao Yu quietly turned off the light at the door and closed the door gently. Squatting at the door, she couldn't help but burst into tears. Things had developed too quickly. She hadn't expected that since her daughter fainted last time, her body had become so weak to the point where it was difficult for her to even get out of bed. Her legs were gradually losing sensation. It was feared that before long, she would become like a vegetable. The thought pierced Gao Yu's heart like a knife. Who? Wiping away her tears, Gao Yu took a deep breath and stood up from the door. She couldn't collapse. Tomorrow, the baby wanted to go see Dubai, and she must fulfill this wish. The days of being able to move around were becoming fewer and fewer. As long as it was something the baby wanted to see or play with, she would do everything to satisfy the baby. Do I need to prepare anything for this task? Su Chen looked at the system panel in front of him and slowly put on his backpack. Ding, activate the diamond parrot fragment task. 10, 9, 8, boom. A sense of weightlessness hit Su Chen, causing his body to tremble, almost falling to the ground. He quickly steadied himself and looked around. Before him was a bustling street. People were passing by, and the surroundings were filled with noise. Furrowing his brow, Su Chen followed the crowd towards the distance. Hey, what is everyone going to see? Don't you know? Lao Li is planning to jump off the building. Two people standing next to Su Chen whispered. What? A middle-aged man adjusted his glasses and said in disbelief, We were drinking together yesterday, how come he's planning to jump off the building today? Yeah, I heard his wife was found with someone at home. Hiss. The two exchanged glances, gasping in shock, and quickly walked towards the residential area ahead. Su Chen looked puzzled, scratching his head. Could this task be related to infidelity and in jumping off a building? But what does that have to do with a diamond parrot? Thinking this, Su Chen hastened his pace and followed suit. The entire residential area was crowded with people, all looking up at Lao Li standing on the seventh floor, trying to persuade him. Lao Li, don't give up, as a man, what's the big deal? If you jump, you'll be giving that guy an advantage. Exactly. Worst case scenario, just get a divorce, what's the big deal? Lolly, listen to me, life is like this, back in the day, I, hmm. Everyone turned to look at him, a middle-aged man with a scruffy beard gritted his teeth and shouted at the rooftop, I'm not afraid to embarrass myself. Back in the day, I was just like you, but, I made it through. Think about your child, what will happen to them if you die? Despite everyone's persuasion, Lolly standing on the rooftop remained unmoved, with a look of despair on his face. Make way. Hurry, make way. At this moment, a group of patrol officers in safety gear rushed from the entrance of the residential area, carrying protective pads and rushing to the bottom of the building. Captain, the person jumping off the building is a resident of this community. Because his wife cheated on him, he couldn't bear it and decided to jump off. What a mess! The safety captain shouted, everyone move aside, don't block the way, and don't make a sound. Do we have a few familiar faces to go up and persuade him? I. Su Chen looked at the figure standing on the rooftop, holding something in his hand, and couldn't help but twitch his mouth, raising his hand to follow the safety captain towards the building. Unexpectedly, the old man Lolly jumping off the building was actually holding a parrot in his hand, with its colorful appearance, what else could it be if not a diamond parrot? This was too unexpected. Ahaha, ah, 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 damn. This plot is intense, let's see how the streamer will save this parrot. Did you see the expression of the anchor just now? Obviously, the anchor didn't know the plot in advance. Quick, add chicken legs to the scriptwriting team for dinner, I really like this plot. How can you guys be like this? At least the man's wife also had an affair, right? But, I want to ask, why did he bring the parrot when he jumped off the building? Exactly, I'm also curious. Could this parrot have some intricate connection with his wife's affair? The viewers in the live stream room looked at Su Chen with a disgusted expression, and after following him upstairs, they couldn't help but burst into laughter. It's really a big pit. If you want to save this parrot, you definitely have to save the green hat king oldly in the live stream. But, persuading someone like that is not an easy task. After all, it's hard for a just official to intervene in family matters. Everyone is not optimistic about Su Chen's task this time, it's really too difficult. And, you have to steal the limelight from the security captain and convince the person to come down. Following the security captain, everyone ran all the way to the rooftop. Don't get excited. Please don't get excited, we can discuss things, okay? As soon as the security captain approached, he quickly spread out his hands and softly said to the middle-aged man standing on the edge, look back, these are all your friends, if you jump, then. Ha to a. Before the middle-aged man in front could speak, everyone heard a sharp voice of disdain. Then they saw the parrot in his hand flapping its body and shouting loudly, oldly. You're not a man, if you have the guts, you jump. Hiss. 
After hearing this, everyone felt a chill down their spine. This parrot can actually talk. And, at this moment, provoking Oldly like this is probably. Ah 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 ah. Sure enough, Oldly turned his crimson eyes and fiercely glared at everyone. Don't come over, or I'll jump. Woo woo woo. I work hard day and night to earn money outside, and my home has become like this. What's the use of earning money? Haven't you spent it? Suddenly, the parrot at the bottom muttered weakly. Put. Su Chen couldn't help but burst into laughter. This parrot seems to be sarcastic. I don't know who it learned from, it's too annoying. The security captain glared at Su Chen fiercely, then quickly stepped forward and whispered, You still have children, you have to think about your children, after all, your children are your own flesh and blood. If you jump like this, as a father, how will your children face it? Children! The oldly in front murmured, as if he remembered something, tears streaming down his face, took a step forward. Yes, he still has children. If he leaves like this, then. That despicable woman is really with her lover, then. How should he treat his children? Impressive, Captain. Seeing that Oldly already showed signs of coming down, everyone silently praised the security captain in their hearts. Come on, come down quickly. The children are still in school, we haven't informed them, everything is as if nothing happened, this afternoon is still. Before the words were finished, the parrot in front spoke again. What if the child is not yours? Ah 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 Critical hit. This is too poisonous, damn, this parrot is really toxic. Heartless, this is pushing this oldly to a dead end. What grudge? It must be that oldly usually doesn't treat this parrot well, otherwise how could it turn against him like this? I also think so, but, I wonder how he usually tolerates it, if I had one, I would probably have a heart attack in two days. Security captain, I'm in a tough spot. The camera followed Su Chen and others to the rooftop, watching oldly standing on the edge, the atmosphere in the live stream room began to become tense, but, just because of the parrot's words, the tense atmosphere was instantly broken. A group of onlookers were amazed and started talking. Who would have thought that such animals really exist in nature? Not only can they speak human language, but their brains are also so intelligent. Oldly was taken aback and said in a daze, Yes, what if the child is not mine? Don't come over. Seeing everyone trying to surround it, it roared again. It quickly retreated, pressing tightly against the edge of the rooftop. What the heck kind of pet is this? The head of the security team couldn't help but curse softly. Let me try. Su Chen took a step forward, came to the front, looked at the excited oldly, and said in a deep voice, pluck the feathers of this parrot. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone looked puzzled at Su Chen in front of them. Even the viewers in the live broadcast room were confused, not understanding why Su Chen didn't first try to persuade the person from jumping off the building, but instead wanted to pluck the parrot's wings. This parrot's mouth is so sharp. If a few feathers are plucked, it might say even more provocative things. That would be really dangerous. GAA. The parrot stared with its small eyes, glanced at Su Chen, and immediately cursed. Where did this brat come from? Get lost. Do you believe I'll hit you? Bang. Suddenly, Oldly plucked a feather from it, muttering to himself, He's right, you can fly. I've raised you for so long, I want to take you with me. If I pluck your feathers, you won't be able to fly. Help. Is there anyone? Help. The parrot was stunned, frantically calling for help, flapping its wings non-stop, trying to break free from Old Lee's grasp. Tear. A bunch of feathers were plucked out, Old Lee lightly blew them, scattering them in the air. The parrot was at a loss, glaring fiercely at the young man in front of it. It's all this guy's fault. Is the parrot's life going to end here? Wait. The parrot took a deep breath, stuck out its tongue, and shouted loudly, Old Lee. To live a decent life, you need to have a bit of green on your head. Moreover, your wife didn't cheat. How is that possible? This morning when I came back, I clearly heard. Those sounds in the house, it couldn't be wrong. Old Lee's face turned red, seemingly reaching the peak of anger, and he threw the parrot out. Damn! Su Chen exclaimed and took a step forward. His whole body leaned over the edge of the rooftop, grabbing the parrot in his hand. Oh, oh. Suddenly, Su Chen slipped, and his whole body fell off the edge. The crowd below gasped in shock, backing away in fear, watching the young man hanging by one hand on the rooftop edge. What's going on? Why did this guy jump down? Are you stupid? He fell down just to catch that parrot. Stop shouting, quickly move the cushion, he's about to fall. The crowd hurried over, moved the cushion under Su Chen, and shouted with concern, young man, hold on, where are the people upstairs? Why aren't they coming to help? What are they waiting for? At the rooftop position. The head of the security team looked at the hand hanging on the edge in horror, took a deep breath, and took a step forward. He gave Old Lee a dark look. Come down quickly, had enough trouble? What are you waiting for? Come and help. The crowd rushed up, 
pulled Old Lee down and threw him aside, reaching out to Su Chen. Bang! Suddenly, the hand tightly hooked onto the cement floor disappeared. Everyone stood still in shock. It's over. He fell. This is the seventh floor, although there's a cushion below, but it's over 20 meters. What if something happens? Ah! Uh, at that moment, screams came from below, and the head of the security team trembled as he looked down. Hiss. He took a sharp breath. He saw that the young man from earlier was actually hanging by one hand on the air conditioner unit outside the seventh floor apartment. And it was just one hand. Hurry, hurry, notify the fire brigade. Let's quickly go to the seventh floor resident's home and see if there's a way. A group of people disappeared quickly from the top floor, Oldly rubbed his cheek, got up from the ground, frowned and muttered to himself, impossible, could it be that there's no deviation? We must find that damn parrot and ask it clearly. With that, he also rushed downstairs. Can you do it, just lift me up? Oh, your hands are sweating, you've made my feathers wet. Can you speak or not? Are you mute? Hello? Blah blah blah. Listening to the voice of the parrot in the other person's hand, Su Chen's mouth twitched. This guy is definitely toxic. If it weren't for reaching the shocking value of 2 million, Su Chen really wanted to give up this mission. Too sharp-tongued. Doesn't he know the timing? Is he about to fall off soon? Crack. Suddenly, the steel frame holding the air conditioner unit above his head shook violently, and a bunch of steel nails fell down, causing it to tilt instantly. Su Chen took a deep breath, pushed against the wall with his feet, and struggled to prevent himself from falling. Bang. Young man, can you hear me? Hang on. We're coming to rescue you now. The safety team leader leaned out the window and saw that there was nothing outside the window where the air conditioner unit was installed that he could grab onto. Boom. Just as he was about to step onto the windowsill, the air conditioner unit in front of him suddenly shook violently and then slid off to one side. Crack. Seeing the steel frame deforming more and more, there were already signs of it breaking. Beads of sweat formed on the safety team leader's forehead, and he took a deep breath. Go, quickly get a few bedsheets and tie them around me. Captain, the fire truck is coming soon, should we wait a bit longer? It's too dangerous to go out without any protective measures. A team member immediately tried to dissuade him. Go now! The safety team leader shouted. The steel frame outside is about to break, we can't wait any longer. If we wait for the fire truck to arrive, he might fall. It's okay, quickly get the bedsheets. The crowd tied the bedsheets around the safety team leader, and he took a firm step onto the windowsill, grabbing the window ledge with both hands, and slowly began to lower himself. Can you grab my hand? Su Chen frowned and looked up, shaking his head slowly. Grab your hand? Grab your ass. The parrot below sarcastically remarked, hurry up and let me go, aw. Don't squeeze me. Okay, hold on a bit longer, I'll go down a bit more. The safety team leader gritted his teeth, let go of the window ledge, and slowly moved down with the bedsheets in hand. He pulled Su Chen into his arms and shouted upwards, quick, pull us up, rip. As soon as the words fell, the bedsheets in front of him made a tearing sound and instantly broke. Damn. Su Chen tightly wrapped his legs around the safety team leader's waist, panting heavily. This was too difficult. One person was heavy enough, and now with an additional person. It's probably. Crack. 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 The sound of the steel frame slowly breaking came to his ears, and Su Chen paused, looking down at the air cushion below. It seemed there was no other way now. He could only jump. But the air cushion below was not very big and now with an extra person, if they didn't land in the right spot. Crack. Hold on tight. With a roar, Su Chen pushed off the wall with his feet, and he and the safety team leader flew out directly. Ah. Uh, scared me, the steel frame broke. There's an air conditioner below, don't fall on it. The crowd standing below the building gasped, watching the two people falling from the sky. Impressive. The parrot looked at the young man in front of him and couldn't help but admire. Shut up. Su Chen grabbed the parrot by the neck with one hand, seized the opportunity, and threw it out. Bang! The two people landed heavily on the air cushion. Su Chen, with stars in his eyes, got up and pulled the safety captain up. Are you okay? Are you okay? They both spoke at the same time, looked at each other, and couldn't help but laugh. Clap! 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 The crowd excitedly applauded. Impressive, the young man is impressive, and the captain is impressive too. Exactly, thanks to you. If it weren't for you, this oldly. Wait, where's oldly? Wasn't he the one jumping off the building? How come you two fell down? Only then did the group of people look up at the rooftop, but oldly was nowhere to be seen. Ah ah ah, help. At this moment, cries for help came from the stairwell. Everyone looked over and saw oldly, bare chested, grabbing the neck of a parrot and lifting it up, sternly shouting, You stay at home every day, what's going on? Explain yourself, if you don't explain today, 
I'll break your neck. Coco. Cough. The parrot stared with its small eyes, flapping its wings towards Su Chen in the distance. Don't be impulsive. Su Chen quickly ran over, grabbed old Li's hand, took the parrot out, and gasped. Don't be impulsive. What can you get out of this stupid bird? What stupid bird? Who are you talking about? The parrot flapped its wings, landed on Su Chen's shoulder, and scolded coldly. Old Li. At this time, a woman with a little girl hurried in, seeing Old Li bare-chested, couldn't help but cry out. What are you doing? Everything was fine, wasn't it? Ha! Huh? What's gotten into you? Jumping off the building, what are we supposed to do, the two of us? You have the nerve to say that. Old Li looked at his wife in front of him, his face turning red as he shouted, If I hadn't heard it, I would have been kept in the dark by you. I didn't expect that, I work hard every day driving, and it turns out you're like this at home. What nonsense are you talking about? The middle-aged woman looked at Old Li's appearance and was momentarily stunned. All right, let's not argue for now. The safety captain quickly pulled them apart, frowning and said, This is your family matter, if you can't resolve it. Why not come to the station and explain it to us? What's going on? The middle-aged woman looked at Old Li's appearance and cried out, I went to the hospital today, the child was sick, I was busy all day and just rushed back. What are you doing? Can we still live like this? You went to the hospital? Old Li looked at her in astonishment, then looked down at his daughter, who had a fever patch on her forehead, her face pale. Of course, the baby had a fever in the middle of the night, before dawn I took her to the hospital. Old Lee's wife hugged the child, wiping away tears and said, I was worried about what you would eat for dinner, so I rushed back to cook, but who knew? What's gotten into you? I, I, I. Old Lee stared blankly at his wife, at a loss for words. I clearly heard that kind of noise at the door. Put. Just then, a man walked out of the crowd followed by a stylishly dressed woman with long flowing hair, sneering, Hey, are you filming a TV drama here? Isn't this old Lee's family? What are they doing here? Honey, I think I heard something this morning too? Don't talk nonsense. The middle-aged man frowned and whispered. Old Lee looked at the neighbor who came out, his face turning red. His eyes bloodshot, he stared at his wife, his hands clenched tightly together. No way, could it be true? Other people also heard it. I don't think so, just look at old Lee's wife. She doesn't seem like that kind of person. Those. The couple next door. The people surrounding them exchanged glances and began whispering. Who are you people? How can you casually slander others? Su Chen glared at the woman with long hair and couldn't help but scold her. Who do you think you are? The woman flicked her hair, looking arrogant, glanced at Su Chen, and coldly laughed. What? Dare to do but not dare to let others speak? The voice was so loud that even our house could hear it. All right, Xiaoying, say less. The man next to her pulled her and smiled apologetically at the two elderly people, preparing to walk upstairs. Bang! Old Lee looked at the two of them, stomped his foot fiercely, snatched the child over, and angrily shouted at his wife, Do you have anything else to say? The neighbors all heard it. I. Sob. I'm so wrong, I. Old Lee covered his face and wept. I didn't do anything. Old Lee's wife's chest heaved continuously, she stepped forward and pulled Xiao Ying over, scolding, Explain clearly, what did you hear? If you don't tell us everything today, we'll go to the security bureau. Well, let's go to the security bureau then, everyone disperse. The security captain saw another family being involved and his forehead veins kept pulsating. He he. Xiaoying smirked, covered her mouth and said with a smile, I felt embarrassed just hearing that voice. What else did you hear? How? Do you want me to imitate it even though I don't want to? Everyone heard it, right? Xiaoying was about to speak with a mischievous look on her face. Suddenly, a seductive female voice sounded, and Xiaoying's mind went blank instantly because the voice sounded exactly like hers. Everyone looked towards Su Chen's shoulder where a parrot was perched, looking puzzled. Whoosh! The crowd erupted. This was just too similar, everyone had a flash of an image in their minds, staring intently at Xiaoying and her husband. I'll kill you! After a moment of daze, Xiaoying swung her handbag and smashed it towards Su Chen. Bang! Every day it's this voice next door, what's going on? The parrot flapped its wings, soared into the air, and hovered above everyone, angrily scolding, if it weren't for your family making this noise every day, could I have learned it? Humph. Brother Wang, you're amazing. Brother Wang, my husband isn't home today, I'll leave the door open for you tonight. Brother Wang, time is running out. How about we wash together? Ah. Xiaoying's face turned red, looking almost crazy. Bang. Suddenly, a pair of large hands behind her grabbed her long hair and pulled her to the ground. Looking at her furious husband, Xiaoying looked terrified and explained, Honey, it's all that bird's nonsense. I, I never go out, you have to believe me. Smack. A hard slap hit her, leaving Xiaoying stunned. All right, you dare hit me. 
After reacting, Xiaoying didn't care about her image, she jumped up from the ground and started fighting with the man in front of her. So what if I cheat? What's the big deal? If you can't satisfy me, you're leaving me to be a widow. If you have the guts, get a divorce. Ah, uh, I can't take it anymore. The onlookers watched the two fighting, starting to whisper among themselves. I get it now, so the noise from old Li's house was learned from this parrot. This parrot can't be kept anymore, it's toxic. But this family next door is something else. Can you guys tell me, who is this old Wang next door? Is there a mister? Wang in this building? Plop. Suddenly, old Li knelt in front of his wife, repeatedly slapping himself in the face. It's all my fault, wife. I actually doubted you. Today, I'll slaughter this bird, never keeping it again. Really? Alright, get up. Extending a hand to help up Oldly, the couple bowed apologetically to the crowd and somewhat awkwardly said, Sorry for the trouble, but this African grey parrot really isn't suitable for keeping at home. It's too clever, and it can trick you into things unexpectedly. Li Gu. Su Chen leaped up, grabbed the African grey parrot from above, and approached Oldly, smiling as he said, How about selling me this African grey parrot? Young man, you've caused trouble for us today, if it weren't for you. It would have been unimaginable today. Oldly patted the young man's shoulder in front of him, took a deep breath, and said, If you want this parrot, take it with you. I won't keep this thing anymore, it's too much trouble. Oldly, you have a heart of stone. The African grey parrot, held in Su Chen's hands, kept flapping and screeching. Did you think I didn't hear you sneaking to watch movies? Shut up. Su Chen, seeing Old Lee's face turning red and white alternately, quickly grabbed the parrot's beak with both hands, smiled apologetically to the crowd, and swiftly stuffed it into his backpack. Thank you, Li Gu. I'll definitely train this guy well when I get back. Old Lee waved his hand quickly and hurriedly led his family upstairs. They couldn't stay any longer, who knows what secrets the darn parrot might spill. Wow, this plot twist was so unexpected, I never thought. That parrot actually learned from the neighbor's house? But those two shouts just now got my blood boiling, Oldly sure knows how to pick movies. Hey, you upstairs, you've been exposed. Who dares to keep this parrot? It's like having a spy at home. Who knows what it might reveal one day. Same here, I'd rather die than keep this thing. Ding, congratulations to the host for completing the African Grey Parrot Fragment task. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully resurrecting the African Grey Parrot. Intelligence plus two. Returning, live broadcast interrupted. Settlement completed. Shock value, 850,000. The scene in front of him changed suddenly. Su Chen sat up abruptly from the ground and quickly surveyed his surroundings. It was a pitch black room. He couldn't see his hand in front of his face. Is anyone there? He shouted, slowly getting up from the ground. He began to feel his way along the edge of the room. Hiss. Suddenly, he touched something furry, which startled Su Chen, causing him to step back. Is anyone there? He shouted again. Woo. MMM. Struggling sounds came from in front of him. Su Chen cautiously squatted down, extending his hands. It turned out to be a person, tied up in a sack. Where on earth had he been brought to? He untied the sack's knot, felt the cloth wad stuffed in the person's mouth, and pulled it out. Cough. A sudden cough sounded, followed by an urgent female voice. Quick, save my child, he's gone mad. He wants to kill my child. Please, please, don't kill my child, my child is innocent. Calm down, calm down, slow down, where are we? Su Chen swatted away the woman's waving hands in front of him, sternly reprimanding. What was this about killing her child? Where had he been brought to? It's my husband, he's sick, he has severe depression, he wants to kill the child. The woman in front of him gasped and spoke, this is an abandoned factory on the outskirts, he wants to drown the child alive, comrade security officer, you must save our child, if you're late, it'll be trouble. Hiss. Su Chen took a sharp breath, about to speak. Rip. The zipper of his backpack behind him was torn open, and a furry bird head poked out, shouting loudly, Don't worry, this is our duty, we will definitely bring justice for you. We are all professionals. Ha! Su Chen's mouth twitched, and he reached out to lift the macaw, firmly holding its beak as he whispered, Where is the door to this house? Let's get out of here quickly. Thank you, thank you so much. The woman cried, It's on the left, but... He must have blocked the door, drowned the child, and will definitely come back to kill me. Comrade security officer, he's gone mad. You must be careful, he has a kitchen knife on him. Got it. Su Chen nodded slowly, feeling the wall and slowly moving to the left. He quickly reached the door handle, pushed hard, and it seemed to be blocked from the outside. Stepping back, taking a deep breath, he kicked hard. Come out. By the moonlight outside, he shouted towards the woman in the distance. A slender figure slowly stood up from the ground, thin and short. 
After coming out of the secret room, Su Chen looked at the woman covered in injuries and was instantly puzzled. There wasn't a single part of her body that wasn't injured. There were bruises everywhere, clearly from being beaten. Do you know where he took the child? Over there. The woman seemed afraid of the light, tremblingly pointing in a direction. Then stay here and don't move, someone will come to pick you up later. After leaving these words, Su Chen took out his phone, quickly ran towards that direction. If this man could be so cruel to his wife, then it was imaginable that the child was in real danger. He called Director Liu, quickly reported the situation, and sent the location using his phone's GPS. Carefully, he rushed towards the riverside. Whoosh! 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 The river was turbulent, and the sound of rushing water was loud. Under the silver moonlight, on a stone bridge in the distance, a figure stood with his back to him. Su Chen dared not linger, whispering to the macaw on his shoulder, Don't make a sound, let's sneak over. If you scream, I'll pluck all your feathers when we get back. I got it, heartless. The macaw rolled its eyes, turned its head, and muttered softly. Step by step, they approached the side of the stone bridge, hearing the man standing on the bridge edge, holding a swaddled baby in his arms. Hee hee, what's the point of living? It's better for the whole family to die together. Die. Don't. Seeing the man in front of him about to jump, Su Chen quickly shouted. The child is innocent, please don't jump. It was nighttime, the river below was turbulent, and if the baby in the swaddle fell into the water, there would be no chance of survival. Su Chen was anxious. He he. The child is also my child, going down can accompany me, and that stupid woman will also come down to be with me. Then we will be a loving family. The man in front turned to look at the young man, a strange smile on his face. He gently shook the baby in his arms. Daughter, do you want to go with daddy? There are many fun things there, no need to take medicine, no need to earn money. No need to bear such pressure. He he, daddy can be with you every day. How about it? Ha! Su Chen took a deep breath, stretched out his hands, and walked step by step towards the bridge. Don't get excited, your illness. Don't come over. Suddenly, the man in front lifted the swaddle, holding it flat against his chest, and shouted at Su Chen. I'm not sick. I'm fine, how could I be sick? It's you guys, it's the whole society. You're all sick. I can be relieved by dying, never having to see you sick people again, you're all sick. I. Su Chen saw his agitated expression and quickly took a few steps back, softly saying, yes, yes, yes. You're not sick. However, can you come down from the bridge first? Look at how cold the river is below, this way of dying is not good to see. Su Chen. Suddenly, a loud shout came from behind, and Director Lu quickly ran over with a group of people. Ah, 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 my child. Give my child back to me. Give it back to me, my child. The thin and weak woman who had just seen the scene in front of her seemed to have gone crazy, crying and shouting as she rushed towards the bridge. Su Chen quickly stopped him with both hands and whispered in a low voice, Don't provoke him, the child is in his hands now. Once he jumps, we won't be able to react in time, and... It's too dark, we might not find them. Hold on, we must not provoke him. Saying this, Su Chen looked up again at the man standing next to the bridge and said softly, Can you come down first? We can discuss anything, or give me the child first. You've been holding the child for so long, you must be tired. The man in front of him was probably not just suffering from depression, but was showing signs of mental breakdown. This kind of person cannot be reasoned with. Su Chen could only try to comfort him with a stiff upper lip. Be careful. Suddenly, many security guards behind them shouted angrily in unison. Su Chen's whole body was covered in goosebumps. Ha ha ha, you are all crazy, child. You go first. Daddy will come to be with you soon. Go. The man in front of them actually threw the child into the air. My child. The thin and weak woman let out a piercing scream and collapsed to the ground. Damn you. Su Chen roared, his speed reaching its peak as he took a big step on the bridge pier, opened his hands, and leaped out. Su Chen. Director Lu exclaimed, and quickly led the others to rush up. Come down. He pulled the madman down, punched him hard, and then looked at Su Chen who was about to fall. It's over. The river below is not shallow, once he falls, not to mention the child, even Su Chen might. In this river in the suburbs, villagers nearby often dig sand here, and there are deep sand wells everywhere. Once fallen, there is no possibility of coming up. For a moment, everyone watched as Su Chen was about to fall, their clenched hands sweating profusely. How could there be such a person? Even if you jump, you can't save the child. Golden Macaw. Su Chen caught the child in midair, and the golden macaw, flapping its wings and flying up, let out an angry cry and threw the swaddling clothes straight up. Oh no. The golden macaw screeched, dived down, and quickly grabbed the swaddling clothes with its claws. However, the weight of a child was too heavy for a golden macaw. Seeing it about to fall crookedly, 
The golden macaw opened its mouth and roared. Its body unexpectedly went out of control, swinging wildly, and directly flung the swaddling clothes out. Ah 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 ah, I'm going to fall. With a shout, Su Chen's whole body fell into the river. Bang. Director Lu widened his eyes, opened his hands, caught the swaddling clothes, and threw them to a nearby team member, then leaned on the bridge and kept searching the river. Splash. The churning river water showed no trace of Su Chen, not even the strange bird that had just fallen into the water. Su Chen. Su Chen. Shouting hoarsely twice, Director Lu couldn't help but collapse on the ground. It's over. Can Director Su Chen come up alive? Quickly notify the diving team, they must arrive here within three minutes, let's quickly go along the direction of the river to find him. We must find Director Su Chen. Shouting at the team members nearby, Director Lu got up from the ground and quickly rushed towards the riverbank. You must stay alive. Ah 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 ah. You deserve to die, why don't you just die? Woo woo woo. I'm sacrificing myself to save the child, why don't you just die, go die. The woman lying limp on the ground watched as the security guard just now jumped without regard for his own safety, throwing the child up, her pupils dilated instantly, and she scrambled up from the ground. She rushed directly to the man's side and began to tear at him. Whoa whoa whoa, how many people have you harmed, your parents are so angry with you, the child might drown, just kill me too. Ah, you think you're so great being sick, not even going to the mental hospital, my child. I'm sacrificing myself to save us. How did you become like this? I, I. At this moment, the man's face was covered in scratches, staring blankly at the woman in front of him, unable to help but ask, how did I get here? And, how did the child get here? Did I have an episode again? What did I do? The man turned to look at a group of security guards rushing towards the riverbank, swallowing nervously. He remembered. He, save people. With a roar, the man crazily rushed down from the bridge and began searching along the riverbank. Gurgle. Su Chin stabilized himself, suddenly stuck his head out of the water, took a deep breath, and then pulled the macaw out of the water. The river was too swift. He couldn't swim to the shore, so he could only float in the center of the river, pushed forward by the current. Cough cough. Yamadi. The macaw grabbed Su Chen's hair, perched on his head, looking like it was on its last breath. I need artificial respiration. Artificial respiration. You need a fart. Su Chen couldn't help but curse. This guy had learned so many strange words from somewhere. However, Su Chen didn't expect that the macaw would actually risk its life to save the child at a critical moment. Just for this, the macaw's quality was definitely not a problem, although it talked too much. Fart. Are you trying to suffocate me? The macaw turned its beak away, its tongue hanging out, muttering softly, where are we drifting to? Don't make a sound, ahead. Gurgle. Damn. A wave came crashing, instantly submerging Su Chen's body. His legs struggled underwater, and Su Chen surfaced again, reaching up to touch the macaw on his head. Where's the person? Plop. Plop. Suddenly, a bird's head emerged from the water, its wings flapping non-stop. Damn, who are you? It's too dangerous to follow you. He pulled it over, placed it on his head again, and kept treading water, slowly moving towards the riverbank. Hurry. Hurry. Any discoveries? Director Lu wiped the sweat off his face, looking solemnly at the diving team in front of him, shouting, Go down again, even if you have to turn the river upside down, you must find Director Su Chen. No mistakes allowed. Yes. A group of divers in wetsuits quickly rushed into the river, starting to search along the center of the river. Ding ling ling. At this time, the phone rang, Director Lu looked down, took a deep breath, and answered the call. A deafening voice came through. What are you doing? Saving people is not your job? How could you let Director Su Chen take the risk? A group of professional security guards didn't react and let him jump to save the child, don't you feel ashamed? No matter what method you use, my phone has been ringing off the hook. If we don't hear from Director Su Chen before dawn, we'll all be in trouble. Click. Before he could say anything, the phone was hung up. Director Lu wiped his cold sweat, turned and ran along the riverbank. I have been searching for hours, and it's almost dawn now, but still no news. Sigh. Director Lu couldn't help but have slightly red eyes as he looked at the surging river. Principal Su Chen, you must stay alive. Hey, why are you here so early today? Zhang Zhang put on his work clothes, checked the equipment, and said to his teammate with a smile, usually, I finish checking before you arrive. Why are you here so early today? Oh, I couldn't sleep well last night, so I woke up early this morning. Come on, let's go check together. After checking the dam, we can go back and get some more sleep. Su Feng furrowed his brow, slowly put on his clothes, grabbed his tools, and followed along. This place is a small dam station. Although there are no floods in Hang City, it's inevitable that the river water rises during rainy days and floods the surrounding land. 
That's why this dam was built. Their job is simple, to measure the water level coming from upstream every few hours. Walking along the dam towards the river. The water flow seems a bit fast today. Zhang Zhang looked down and said with some concern. It rained a few days ago, so it must have risen. It should go down in a couple of days. Su Feng, distracted, glanced to the side. Ha! Rubbing his eyes, Su Feng exclaimed, Do you see someone in the distance? Or is it a tree branch? Why does it look like a person's head to me? Hiss! Is that a corpse? Zhang Zheng squinted and his face changed. They stayed here, and although their workload was light, they inevitably encountered strange things that ordinary people wouldn't. A corpse was one of them. People who jump into the river, if not dragged to the bottom by water plants, would drift here. What bad luck! Zhang Zheng cursed and quickly rushed to the tool room to find salvage tools. Hey hey hey! Oh my god, this is a living person. Zhang Zheng, quickly get the tools. The person drifting towards us is alive. The two hurriedly carried the salvage tools and rushed towards the dam, wanting to rescue the young man drifting towards them. The current is a bit fast now, let's be careful. Su Chen, you jerk. The parrot perched on Su Chen's head kept scolding. Didn't we agree that you would throw me ashore? Why haven't you thrown me yet? Can't you speak? Are you mute? I see you clearly now. So this is the kind of person you are. Is it easy for me as a parrot? Not only did you not throw me ashore, but you also splashed water on my wings. Are you that mean? Okay, stop shouting. Su Chen reached up and took the parrot down, rinsed it in the water, and placed it back on his head. The dam is ahead. We should be saved soon. If you keep talking nonsense, I'll shave you bald when we get back. You. The parrot shook off the water on its feathers and couldn't help but take a deep breath. This man below is definitely a devil. And he runs a zoo. Who would believe it if it were told? Puff. Su Chen grabbed a huge metal pole and climbed out of the water step by step. Lying on the dam, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. This night was really thrilling. If he hadn't completed so many tasks and improved his physical condition, he probably wouldn't have been able to hold on until now. But, why haven't Director Liu and the others arrived yet? Su Chin. Just then, an armored vehicle rushed through the wilderness, followed by a group of soldiers shouting. What's all this commotion? I don't know, it looks like they're looking for someone? Could it be? Zhang Zhang and the others stared at the young man in front of them and then at the armored vehicle that had already stopped in the distance. They quickly took a few steps back. Could this young man be someone important? However, how could a big shot jump into the river? Su Chen. Who? 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 Director Lu rushed over quickly, looking at Su Chen intact on the ground, and instantly collapsed on the ground, gasping for breath. Don't be so impulsive in the future. If something happens to you, then, I really won't be able to live. How much is enough to live? Just then, a colorful strange bird poked its head out from behind Su Chen, staring at Director Lu and sneering. What is this? Last night, the sky was too dark, and Director Lu and the others did not notice what animal was with Su Chen. Now hearing the strange bird in front of them speaking human language, they widened their eyes in disbelief. Fairy. What kind of bird is this? How can it speak? A mechanical bird couldn't look like this. A soldier who hurried over looked at the parrot in amazement. Smack. Su Chen patted its head and said impatiently, speak properly. If you talk nonsense again, I'll really pluck your feathers. Humph. The parrot flapped its wings a few times, then hopped over to Su Chen, and after sizing up Director Lu, it stuck out its tongue and asked, Do you know, Teacher Shen Tian? Teacher Shen Tian? Director Lu looked puzzled at the little creature in front of him. Yes, Teacher Shen Tian. The parrot tilted its head, full of disdain in its eyes. Oh, I see. Steward. Smack. Su Chen quickly pulled the little guy into his arms, tightly holding its beak. Poisonous. Do these people know those ancient movies? But. How many movies has this guy watched? How did he end up like this? Ah, uh, this. Director Lu touched his cheek, slowly stood up from the ground, patted Su Chen's shoulder, and said with a smile, Let's go, I'll just walk you back. It's been a night. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Suddenly, a mournful female voice came from a distance, followed by a dark and thin woman hurrying over, carrying a baby in her arms, with a middle-aged man following behind. Plop. The two knelt directly in front of Su Chen the woman tearfully and excitedly thanking him for saving the child. Thank you so much, thank you so much. If something had happened to the child, we wouldn't be able to live either. Smack. The middle-aged man beside them suddenly slapped himself, his eyes red, saying, it's all my fault, my illness. I might as well die, I almost killed my own daughter. Thank you so much. You saved my daughter. Sob. Seeing that you're okay, we can finally rest assured. If something had happened to you, I... 
Seeing the two of them, Su Chen furrowed his brows slightly and helped them up. It's only natural to help when you meet someone in need. But your illness is quite serious. If you're just treating depression, you're welcome to try Blue Sky Zoo. Alright, hurry and take the child back. After patting the baby's face in the swaddle, Su Chen smiled at the two and turned to walk towards the armored vehicle. The next morning, Uncle Su Chen. Looking at the little girl in Gao Yu's arms, Su Chen furrowed his brows slightly and walked up with a smile. He he, look how well behaved little tabby cat is. Showing the little cat in her arms, the baby grinned and said, What about Big White? Does it miss me? It does. Su Chen pointed to Big White running over in the distance and whispered, The little animals are looking for you every day. Really? The baby pouted, wanting to wave to Big White, but she couldn't lift her hand after trying for a long time. Uncle Su Chen, the baby is sick and may not be able to ride Big White. Can you tell it that the baby really misses it? Ask it not to be angry, okay? Sigh. Su Chen turned his head and took a deep breath. Ah woo. Dubai ran over with a grin, sticking out his tongue as he looked up at the little girl in front of him. Mom, can you put me down? Put her on the grass, it should be fine. Su Chen took the child and walked towards the grass in the distance. By now, there were many visitors in the zoo, but all the animals saw the baby in Su Chen's arms and began to neigh, rushing over one after another. Can she stay in Dubai's arms? Gently placing the baby in Dubai's arms on the ground, Su Chen waved at the golden python, signaling it to encircle the surroundings with its body. Everyone looked in amazement at the little girl in the center. This is baby's sister. All the animals listened to her. It's been a long time since I saw this child. She looks like she's sick. Yes, she looks pale. A group of people gathered on the grass, watching the motionless little one leaning against the panda's chest. Sai, Gao Yu, come here. Su Chen pulled Gao Yu behind him, pointing to a stone bench in the distance, whispering, I have some questions about the child's condition to ask you. The two sat far away from the grass, facing each other. Woo woo, the baby's condition probably won't last much longer, her limbs can no longer move, next is. Swallowing and breathing functions. I, just as they sat down, tears streamed down Gao Yu's cheeks. How long until the respiratory muscles atrophy, as the doctor said. After completing the task with the gorilla parrot, Su Chen had accumulated 2 million shock points and successfully exchanged the fragments of the Australian rabbit. However, completing a task of 100,000 shock points with his current abilities was already very difficult. This time it was a task worth 2 million shock points, and it was designated. The difficulty level was beyond imagination, it would be extremely challenging. However, looking at the baby's condition today, it seemed that they couldn't wait any longer. The doctor. The doctor said that with good control and a relaxed mood, she should be able to hold on for another half a month. Woo woo, Gao Yu cried with her face covered. It's too fast, once she has difficulty swallowing. Then, the atrophy of the respiratory muscles is not far away. Hiss. Su Chen took a sharp breath, gritted his teeth and said in a deep voice, half a month, we should be able to make it. I have a plan, but, this plan will be very difficult, and, I can't guarantee success within half a month. But, I will do my best to develop the animal that will treat the baby. Really? Gao Yu looked up, excitedly saying, As long as you can cure the baby's illness, I am willing to work in the zoo for a lifetime, without asking for a penny, just hoping that you can cure the baby. This child has been following me since her father passed away when she was young. I, don't worry, I will definitely cure the baby. Su Chen said firmly. Woo hoo! Ha ha ha! Laughter came from a distance, Su Chen turned to look and smiled slightly. I will definitely cure you. Even if it's a hell level task, it can definitely be completed. You are like an angel, a friend to all animals, how could you be defeated by illness? Ah woo. Dubai sat on the ground, his two paws embracing the baby, roaring at the few little ones who wanted to come over. It could also see that the baby was probably seriously ill. It couldn't even be touched. This, Dubai's bloodshot eyes startled everyone. Duh, Dubai. Don't be so fierce, let them come and play. The baby's head rested on Dubai's chest, smiling softly and saying, Be good, okay? You have to be like the baby, you can't be mean to people. I want to watch them play. Dubai, if the baby can't be with you in the future, you won't blame the baby, right? The baby's health is not good, but the baby has always liked you the most. Roar. Sob. Dubai rested his forehead against her head, nodding with a sob. He reached out his paw towards the little ones in the distance, waving and smiling. Quack. The honey badger also lay beside Dubai, lifting its head and making faces at the baby, trying to make the little one happy. Don't fight in the future. The baby stuck out her tongue and whispered to the honey badger. Quack. Ping Tu Gu solemnly nodded. 
Moo, the little elephant stood to the side, gently rubbing against her with its trunk. All the animals gathered together, wanting to cheer up the little girl in front of them. Perhaps sometimes, animals are even more emotional than humans. Seeing the pale face and cracked lips of the little one, all the animals in the blue sky zoo felt extremely sorry. The little one had been with them for so long, she was like family to them. Let the baby stay in the zoo for now, she can live in the treehouse. And being closer to the animals will improve her mood. I will come back as soon as possible. I leave the zoo in your hands for now, Su Chen said in a deep voice, then turned and walked towards the exit of the zoo. This mission was no small matter, they had to be fully prepared. A mission with a shock value of 2 million, what kind of difficulty would it pose? Fuck, where are the pigs? At the old site of the Blue Sky Zoo, a blonde woman stood next to the fenced enclosure, her face red with anger as she shouted, we've been here for so long, and the gate has never been opened. I didn't expect they had already moved out. Charlie, how did you find out? I, the men standing on either side scratched their heads in confusion. All right, Smith picked up the silver metal box from the ground and waved to the others. Let's go check again, the zoo must be in this city, with money, we shouldn't have trouble finding out. Let's go. This time bringing these genetic potions over cost a lot of money, besides killing all the pigs, we can't leave any other animals alive. An old castle. Dressed in suits, gentlemen sat around an exquisite dining table. Cutlery was laid out in front of them. A golden candlestick emitted a flickering flame. Ha ha ha. Today, I invited everyone here to taste a new delicacy we recently developed. I have a feeling. This delicacy will surely become popular throughout Australia. Charles picked up a napkin, elegantly wiped his mouth, and said to the others with a smile, Once our guild masters this delicacy, we will transport it nationwide. Friends, there are plenty of gold coins waiting for us. Servants, bring out the cooked delicacies. With that, he glanced at the servant beside him. A group of maids in white and floral dresses entered carrying trays. The trays held golden-colored delicacies on silver plates. They were small in size, similar to rabbits. This is somewhat similar to those kangaroos, but not as big, about the size of a rabbit, but the meat is definitely much more delicious than rabbit meat. Charles looked at the delicacies on the table, licked his lips, and said, We shall name it the Little Rabbit Pika. This will be the first wealth our Charles Guild obtains on the Australian continent. This creature is abundant throughout the continent. Think about it, friends, if we sell each for half a silver coin, we will be rich. Cheers. Raising their glasses of red wine, everyone stood up and drank. Come, everyone, taste it. MMM. Indeed, it's delicious. Yes, they say this thing is very easy to catch, even easier than rabbits. What else is there to say, let's quickly establish a hunting team, each one is worth half a silver coin. After processing, it can even be sold for 10 silver coins. The nobles are willing to spend money. After everyone tasted the grilled small rabbit meat, they all praised it. Not bad, let's immediately establish hunting teams everywhere, including those farmers. As long as they catch a small rabbit, we will buy it for 10 copper coins. Those farmers might even stop planting crops. Ha ha ha. Charles tore off a piece of rabbit meat, chewed it in his mouth, and said, Friends, let's toast to our fortune. To our fortune. To our fortune. Everyone raised their rabbit meat and cheered together. A group of gentlemen, meticulously groomed upper-class individuals, were all enjoying the feast, eating with great pleasure. Ahem. Ahem. Su Chen lay on the grass, watching a group of cute little animals in the distance, not daring to breathe heavily. These were a group of Australian small rabbits. Each one looked somewhat similar to a rabbit, but the main difference was that the hind legs of Australian small rabbits were even more developed than rabbits, resembling kangaroos, with a long tail trailing behind their buttocks. Moreover, these animals lived in groups, always moving together in groups of a dozen or more. Watching a lookout Australian small rabbit, Su Chen took a deep breath, slowly bypassed it on the grass, and approached the group feeding in the distance. These creatures were very united and alert. They would always send a lookout rabbit while feeding. If they encountered danger, the lookout rabbit would cough like a human to alert the group to flee. Even when sleeping at night, they would leave a sentinel to keep watch. However, perhaps due to coughing too violently, when these creatures encountered a very urgent event, they would be so preoccupied with coughing that they would forget to run away. Su Chen recalled the information he had read about these animals and couldn't help but smirk. They were too easy to catch. Breathing heavily on the ground, burying his head in the grass half his height, Su Chen watched the distant small rabbits motionlessly through the gaps in the grass. Squeak! Squeak! Suddenly, two small rabbits feeding began to fight over a tender grass in front of them, raising their heads and squeaking at each other. 
Then they stood upright, waving their front paws like boxers, continuously hitting each other's chests. Punching your chest? It's so cute that it's making me bleed. These creatures called Australian small rabbits are too adorable. If I could raise one, I would love it every day. Who said it's not? Angkor, didn't you say this mission was difficult? It doesn't look that hard now. Are you asking the anchor to step in and mediate? Punching your chest. One punch, one yelping creature. After several live broadcasts by Su Chen, the audience in the live stream room had just broken through the 200,000 mark shortly after the broadcast started. Su Chen also discovered that the way to gain shock value from the system was through task broadcasts. The shock value provided by visitors from the zoo was negligible, but the shock value calculated at the end of each broadcast had started at several tens of thousands recently. It seemed that the system wanted him to make everyone understand through the broadcast how these animals had become extinct, to warn everyone. However, this 2 million shock value task was definitely not going to be that simple. Su Chen glanced at the live broadcast screen, smiled slightly, and whispered, These creatures are gentle by nature and rarely resort to violence. Like the two chest punching in front of us, it's already a sign of their anger. Although it's not harmful, it's all about attitude. Closing the live broadcast screen, Su Chen began to crawl forward in the grass. In any case, he had to catch a small rabbit first to see. So far, Su Chen has only encountered this group of small animals in front of him, with no hint of what the task is. However, Su Chen knows the reason for the extinction of the Australian bilby in his mind. These creatures used to be abundant on the Australian continent, but due to human expansion destroying their habitats, the bilbies had no choice but to start stealing human crops for food. They were then seen as pests by humans and hunted down extensively. The delicious meat of the bilbies further intensified the hunting. Under the relentless hunting by humans, this species was finally extinct in 1980. Since then, there have been no more adorable Australian bilbies in the world. Ahem! 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 Suddenly, the bilby standing guard in the distance stood up and coughed violently. The bilbies eating nearby raised their heads in alert, looking around in fear. Then, a barrage of crossbow arrows shot from afar. Squeak! Bang! Su Chen looked at a bilby lying in front of him, staring with innocent eyes, and couldn't help but freeze. Everything happened too suddenly. From hearing the warning call of the guard bilby to the arrow shooting, it all happened in just a few seconds. The entire group of bilbies hadn't even started to run before they were all hunted down. The few remaining ones stood in place, coughing in panic. They looked in fear at a group of people running towards them from a distance. Bang! Swinging their fists, trying to strike the looming figure in front of them. But, it seemed to have no effect at all on the person in front of them. Ha, huh, these fools, they only know how to cough, not how to run. A burly man in hunter's attire, carrying a crossbow on his back, grabbed a bilby by the ear and lifted it up. Rip! Drawing a dagger from his waist, he sliced the bilby's neck, blood spurting out. The bilby struggled violently for a few moments then drooped its head weakly, looking at the bodies on the ground. There are a total of 21, hurry up and kill these few, today's harvest is good, let's move on to the next place. These idiots are like moving coins. Ha ha ha. The burly man laughed and threw the body to a small transport truck in the distance, clapped his hands at everyone, and looked into the distance again. Creak, creak, creak. Su Chen lay on the ground, slowly dragging a bilby's body towards him, teeth clenched tightly. A total of 21 bilbies were hunted down like this. Although Su Chen also wanted to rush up and teach these people a lesson, the task was clearly not that simple. Scenes of hunting like this were common throughout the Australian continent. While he could stop one, it was impossible to save the entire bilby population. And, everything happened too fast just now, Su Chen had no time to react. Phew. Taking a deep breath, he placed the bilby's body on the ground and watched as the group of people gradually moved away. From the last position, the vehicle transporting bilby bodies was already stacked with countless corpses. Damn. Su Chen clenched his fists tightly and cursed. A task worth 2 million shock points couldn't possibly be just about saving one bilby, it was likely about saving the entire bilby population. But, how could he save the entire bilby population? Su Chen furrowed his brow tightly. No. No matter what the task is, once I've seen it, I can't ignore it. I can't let this hunting team continue to kill. Thinking of this, Su Chen picked up the body of the rabbit monkey on the ground, placed it on his shoulder, picked up the crossbow arrow, and quickly rushed towards the direction of the convoy in the distance. Bang! The Huaxia Animal Protection Organization. Shang Wan Yun and a group of people watched the scene on the live screen and slammed the table heavily. The crazy hunting of animals, just for a few pieces of silver? It's simply insane. I never thought that humans had really gone crazy to this extent. It is also recorded in their literature.
In ancient times, before animals were completely extinct, the Australian continent was the most ruthless place for animal extinction, without a doubt. In just a few decades, dozens of species permanently disappeared from this place on Earth, and they were all the distinctively Australian native animals that were not found elsewhere. Damn it! Shang Guan Yun coldly shouted, pointing at the screen in the live broadcast room and said, although I don't know how director Su Chen's team simulated such a realistic scene in the virtual space, but, it's outrageous! Insane, it's because of these profit-seeking people that nature retaliates against humans. Although we have survived by chance, but, nature has taken back all the animals. Without the existence of animals, it took us thousands of years to recover. With that, Shang Wan Yun turned to his assistant and ordered coldly, make a copy of this video and send it to Australia. Haven't they already negotiated with us to obtain the breeding rights of the Changbai pigs? Let them take a good look, do they deserve it? Not only were all the professors studying animals in the Animal Protection Department furious, the viewers in Su Chen's live broadcast room, watching a group of dead rabbit monkeys, were also angry. So cruel, even the official team participating in the hunting, is this how the government used to act? Damn it! What's the use of a government that can't even protect animals? These people are too despicable, did you see the bodies on the transport truck, at least there are hundreds of rabbit monkey bodies. This is just for today, one team hunts down hundreds of them in a day, it would be strange if the rabbit monkeys didn't go extinct. No, although this is a live broadcast, but, I wish I could rush up and kill all these hunters one by one. Exactly, it's just too cruel. Su Chen has now caught up with the hunting team in front of him. Many blonde and blue-eyed foreigners looked at Su Chen, a black-haired, yellow-skinned man who suddenly appeared behind them, showing a wary expression. However, when they saw the rabbit monkey on Su Chen's shoulder, they couldn't help but smile. Ha ha ha, I didn't expect Easterners to come to the Australian continent to make money. Young man, what's your name? One person only killed a rabbit monkey. At this rate of earning money, you probably can't even afford the return trip fare. The bearded man looked at Su Chen's young appearance and mocked, how about it? Did you see our spoils? This is just the result of a morning. When we sell all these rabbit monkeys, buy another transport truck, by then. Su Chen tightened the crossbow arrow in his hand, constantly reminding himself in his mind not to act impulsively. With his current strength, although he could severely discipline this hunting team in front of him, even kill them all. But, it would be futile. The dead rabbit monkeys cannot be resurrected, what he needs to consider now is, how to make these people give up hunting the rabbit monkeys. Ha, ah, young man, you look young. How about it, join my team, old who's team. You can earn more in a day than you can in a month. Luo Saiho looked at Su Chen, smirked and said, Consider it, we happen to be about to acquire the small rabbits caught by the farmers. How about you become a runner for us? Line up. Ladies first, children in front, men at the back. Hey, fatty, what are you doing? Taking up two spots by yourself, do you want me to spit on you? Hey, beauty, you look a lot like teacher Shintian. Do you know teacher Shintian? Hey hey, no cutting in line. One by one. The macaw stood on the metal railing at the ticket gate of the Blue Sky Zoo, with a large speaker in front of it, earnestly directing the queue in front of it. All the people in line looked in amazement at the colorful macaw in front of them, all wearing expressions of disbelief. In the Blue Sky Zoo, all the animals are real, so is this macaw that can speak human language real? Everyone harbored doubts as they passed by the macaw, and one by one they asked, Can you sing? Of course, what can I do? The macaw sneered, staring at the middle-aged man in front of it, disdainfully saying, What, you want to make an appointment with me? Let me tell you in advance, my performance fee is very high. Put, ah ha ha ha, awesome. After hearing this, the group of people couldn't help but burst into laughter. The middle-aged man hurriedly passed through the gate, this macaw is poisonous, its words are too sharp. Can you sing a song? Following behind, a young woman took off her sunglasses, flirted with the macaw, and asked charmingly, can you sing a song for us? Oh, the macaw looked the woman up and down, shook its head slightly with some regret. A bit too young. What's too young? The young woman was a bit confused, staring at it with big eyes. What's too young, don't you know? The macaw flapped its wings, landed directly on the woman's shoulder, pecked at her with its beak, then flew back. Ah 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 ah. The woman looked in horror at what the macaw had in its beak, blushing and scolding. What are you doing, you stupid bird? TSK. Spitting out the sponge pad from its mouth, the macaw looked at her disdainfully. It's still padded. Is it breathable in this hot weather? Humph. The young woman gritted her teeth, picked up the breast pad from the ground, and quickly rushed into the zoo. Line up one by one. No feeding animals in the zoo, especially the honey badger boss. Be careful it doesn't beat you. 
If you get beaten, don't cry. The macaw shouted hoarsely. Watching everyone enter the zoo in an orderly manner, it stuck out its tongue and licked the mineral water bottle hanging on the railing next to it. So tired. Damn that director, making it maintain order at the entrance. Hey. Wait. Suddenly, several foreigners in suits, sunglasses, and leather shoes appeared in front of it. The macaw quickly spread its wings and stopped them. Hello? Where are you from? Smith looked at the macaw in front of him, a greedy gleam flashing in his eyes, and took off his glasses with a smile. We heard there are real animals here, so we came to see. Oh. The macaw glanced at the group of people, waved its wings, and casually said, then go in. Staring at the boxes carried by the group, the macaw tilted its head and shook its head. On such a hot day, why are these people dressed so heavily and carrying those metal boxes only seen on TV? Could they be bad guys? No, I have to inform the boss. Muttering to itself, the macaw quickly spread its wings and flew into the zoo. Boss Halley. Boss Halley. Landing at the office door, at this moment, Halley was squinting, basking in the sun on the grass. There are a few people who seem suspicious, do you want to take a look? The macaw stood in front of Halley, spread its wings, and patted its head. Ow. Harry frowned and stood up, following the direction pointed by the macaw, only to see several foreigners with blonde hair and blue eyes gathered near the pigsty, gesturing and pointing incessantly. Got it. He growled softly and slowly walked towards the direction of the honey badger. Normally, apart from some children, few adults came to the pigsty. And the smell in the pigsty was not pleasant at all. These people never went to such strange places, so why did they come here first? Something's not right. Definitely not right. Smith. When do we make our move? The female assistant standing beside him, holding his arm, whispered, there are too many people in the zoo during the day. If we act, it will be difficult to escape if something goes wrong. Hmm. I understand. Smith looked at the dozens of lively pigs and gritted his teeth, saying, the technology of this Chinese team is very mature, and the intelligence of these animals is very high. Let's first understand them. Not only do we have to kill all these pigs, but we can't leave a single living creature among the remaining animals. It's very difficult to study a species. It not only requires mature technology, but sometimes, luck is also very important. I don't believe that if we kill all the animals, they can still reproduce the same animals. Roar. Suddenly, a roar came from behind, startling the group. They saw a huge creature behind them, scrutinizing everyone. Hee <laughs> hee, this should be the Alaskan Malamute introduced on the sign at the entrance. Let's go, ignore it. Let's first check the approximate distribution of animals here. Muttering softly, Smith glared at Harry and led the group quickly towards the monkey enclosure. Ha! Harry growled softly, watching the figures of the group, his face dark and terrifying. These people are definitely not normal. I will keep an eye on you to see what you are up to. Nodding, Harry turned and walked towards the honey badger. These pigs are the honey badger's precious babies. Once this guy knows that those foreigners might have their eyes on the pigs, it will be a tragic ending. Bye. In the treehouse in the monkey enclosure, the baby leaned against Bai, watching the appearance of several foreigners below and said with a smile, their hair is so strange, yellow, and look at their blue eyes. Ow. Bai glanced over, disdainfully howling. Just a few foreigners? Aren't they all the same when they take off their clothes? It's so peculiarly built here, with treehouses for resting above. Can we stay here? The female assistant looked at the treehouse, leaning on Smith's shoulder, whispering, I checked just now, there is no security force here. If we stay here, we can kill all the animals at night without anyone knowing. Hoomph. Smith snorted and pulled the assistant into his arms, smiling sinisterly and whispering, in the trees, shall we try at night? Oh, you're so bad. The female assistant scolded him playfully, then looked up at the treehouse, licked her red lips with her tongue. Who? Bai looked at the sleeping baby, then turned and walked towards the outside of the treehouse, slowly making his way towards the monkey enclosure along the hanging wooden bridge. Oh. Suddenly, a loud female voice came from a treehouse in the distance. Bai frowned and glanced over. Whoosh. 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 The tree carrying this treehouse in front of him kept swaying, even shaking off the leaves. Ow. Growling softly, Bai turned and walked towards the base of the tree. Who the hell are these people, not sleeping in the middle of the night? What are they doing in the house? If they wake the baby up, I'll show you how I deal with you later. Quack. Just crawled out of the monkey enclosure, a few figures suddenly sprang out from the side, startling it. I'm sorry, but I can't provide the translation. A slash n, this is a translation of the previous sentence. The translation is, it's a very dangerous situation. I'm going to have to go to the hospital. A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, 160, 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171, 172, 173, 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, 179, 180, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189, 190, 191, 192, 193, 194, 195, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, 217, 218, 
219, 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, 225, 226, 227, 228, 229, 230, 231, 232, 233, 234, 235, 236, 237, 238, 239, 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, 245, 246, 247, 248, 249, 250, 251, 252, 253, 254, 255, 256, 257, 258, 259, 260, 261, 262, 263, 264, 265, 266, 267, 268, 269, 270, 271, 272, 273, 274, 275, 276, 277, 278, 279, 280, 281, 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, 288, 289, 290, 291, 292, 293, 294, 295, 296, 297, 298, 299, 300, 301, 302, 303, 304, 305, 306, 307, 308, 309, 310, 311, 312, 313, 314, 315, 316, 317, 318, 319, 320, 321, 322, 323, 324, 325, 326, 327, 328, 329, 330, 331, 332, 333, 334, 335, 336, 337, 338, 339, 340, 341, 342, 343, 344, 345, 346, 347, 348, 349, 350, 351, 352, 353, 354, 355, 356, 357, 358, 359, 360, 361, 362, 363, 364, 365, 366, 367, 368, 369, 370, 371, 372, 373, 374, 375, 376, 377, 378, 379, 380, 381, 382, 383, 384, 385, 
386, 387, 388, 389, 390, 391, 392, 393, 394, 395, 396, 397, 398, 399, 400, 401, 402, 403, 404, 405, 406, 407, 408, 409, 410, 411, 412, 413, 414, 415, 416, 417, 418, 419, 420, 421, 422, 423, 424, 425, 426, 427, 428, 429, 430, 431, 432, 433, 434, 435, 436, 437, 438, 439, 440, 441, 442, 443, 444, 445, 446, 447, 448, 449, 450, 451, 452, 453, 454, 455, 456, 457, 458, 459, 460, 461, 462, 463, 464, 465, 466, 467, 468, 469, 470, 471, 472, 473, 474, 475, 476, 477, 478, 479, 480, 481, 482, 483, 484, 485, 486, 487, 488, 489, 490, 491, 492, 493, 494, 495, 496, 497, 498, 499, 500, 501, 502, 503, 504, 505, 506, 507, 508, 509, 510, 511, 512, 513, 514, 515, 516, 517, 518, 519, 520, 521, 522, 523, 524, 525, 526, 527, 528, 529, 530, 531, 532, 533, 534, 535, 536, 537, 538, 539, 540, 541, 542, 543, 544, 545, 546, 547, 548, 549, 550, 551, 552, 553, 554, 555, 
556, 557, 558, 559, 560, 561, 562, 563, 564, 565, 566, 567, 568, 569, 570, 571, 572, 573, 574, 575, 576, 577, 578, 579, 580, 581, 582, 583, 584, 585, 586, 587, 588, 589, 590, 591, 592, 593, 594, 595, 596, 597, 598, 599, 600, 601, 602, 603, 604, 605, 606, 607, 608, 609, 610, 611, 612, 613, 614, 615, 616, 617, 618, 619, 620, 621, 622, 623, 624, 625, 626, 627, 628, 629, 630, 631, 632, 633, 634, 635, 636, 637, 638, 639, 640, 641, 642, 643, 644, 645, 646, 647, 648, 649, 650, 651, 652, 653, 654, 655, 656, 657, 658, 659, 660, 661, 662, 663, 664, 665, 666, 667, 668, 669, 670, 671, 672, 673, 674, 675, 676, 677, 678, 679, 680, 681, 682, 683, 684, 685, 686, 687, 688, 689, 690, 691, 692, 693, 694, 695, 696, 697, 698, 699, 700, 701, 702, 703, 704, 705, 706, 707, 708, 709, 710, 711, 712, 713, 714, 715, 716, 717, 718, 719, 720, 721, 722, 723, 
724, 725, 726, 727, 728, 729, 730, 731, 732, 733, 734, 735, 736, 737, 738, 739, 740, 741, 742, 743, 744, 745, 746, 747, 748, 749, 750, 751, 752, 753, 754, 755, 756, 757, 758, 759, 760, 761, 762, 763, 764, 765, 766, 767, 768, 768, 769, 770, 771, 772, 773, 774, 775, 776, 777, 778, 779, 780, 781, 782, 783, 784, 785, 786, 787, 788, 789, 790, 791, 792, 793, 794, 795, 796, 797, 798, 799, 800, 801, 802, 803, 804, 805, 806, 807, 808, 809, 810, 811, 812, 813, 814, 815, 816, 817, 818, 819, 820, 821, 822, 823, 824, 825, 826, 827, 828, 829, 830, 831, 832, 833, 834, 835, 836, 837, 838, 839, 840, 841, 842, 843, 844, 845, 846, 847, 848, 849, 850, 851, 852, 853, 854, 855, 856, 857, 858, 859, 860, 861, 862, 863, 864, 865, 866, 867, 868, 869, 870, 871, 872, 873, 874, 875, 876, 877, 878, 879, 880, 881, 882, 883, 884, 885, 886, 887, 888, 
889, 890, 891, 892, 893, 894, 895, 896, 897, 898, 899, 900, 901, 902, 903, 904, 905, 906, 907, 908, 909, 910, 911, 912, 913, 914, 915, 916, 917, 918, 919, 920, 921, 922, 923, 924, 925, 926, 927, 928, 929, 930, 931, 932, 933, 934, 935, 936, 937, 938, 939, 940, 941, 942, 943, 944, 945, 946, 947, 948, 949, 950, 951, 952, 953, 954, 955, 956, 957, 958, 959, 960, 961, 962, 963, 964, 965, 966, 967, 968, 969, 970, 971, 972, 973, 974, 975, 976, 977, 978, 979, 980, 981, 982, 983, 984, 985, 986, 987, 988, 989, 990, 991, 992, 993, 994, 995, 996, 997, 998, 999, 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010, 1011, 1012, 1013, 1014, 1015, 1016, 1017, 1018, 1019, 1020, 1021, 1022, 1023, 1024, 1025, 1026, 1027, 1028, 1029, 1030, 1031, 1032, 1033, 1034, 1035, 1036, 1037, 1038, 1039, 1040, 1041, 1042, 1043, 1044, 1045, 1046, 1047, 1048, 1049, 1050, 1051, 1052, 1053, 1054, 1055, 1056, 1057, 1058, 1059, 1060, 
1061, 1062, 1063, 1064, 1065, 1066, 1067, 1068, 1069, 1070, 1071, 1072, 1073, 1074, 1075, 1076, 1077, 1078, 1079, 1080, 1081, 1082, 1083, 1084, 1085, 1086, 1087, 1088, 1089, 1090, 1111, 1122, 1133, 1144, 1155, 1166, 1177, 1188, 1199, 1200, 1201, 1202, 1203, 1204, 1205, 1206, 1207, 1208, 1209, 1210, 1211, 1212, 1213, 1214, 1215, 1216, 1217, 1218, 1219, 1220, 1221, 1222, 1223, 1224, 1225, 1226, 1227, 1228, 1229, 1230, 1231, 1232, 1233, 1234, 1235, 1236, 1237, 1238, 1239, 1240, 1241, 1227, 1228, 1229, 1230, 1231, 1232, 1233, 1234, 1235, 1236, 1237, 1238, 1239, 1240, 1241, 1242, 1243, 1244, 1245, 1246, 1247, 1248, 1249, 1250, 1251, 1252, 1253, 1254, 1255, 1256, 1257, 1258, 1259, 1260, 1261, 1262, 1263, 1264, 1265, 1266, 1267, 1268, 1269, 1270, 1271, 1272, 1273, 1274, 1275, 1276, 1277, 1278, 1279, 1280, 
1,281, 1,282, 1,283, 1,284, 1,285, 1,286, 1,287, 1,288, 1,289, 1,290, 1,291, 1,322, 1,323, 1,324, 1,325, 1,326, 1,327, 1,328, 1,329, 1,330, 1,331, 1,332, 1,333, 1,334, 1,335, 1,336, 1,337, 1,338, 1,339, 1,340, 1,341, 1,342, 1,343, 1,344, 1,345, 1,346, 1,347, 1,348, 1,349, 1,350, 1,351, 1,352, 1,353, 1,354, 1,355, 1,356, 1,357, 1,358, 1,359, 1,360, 1,361, 1,362, 136 inch. A dozen or so noisy, hoarse voices came from behind. Smith immediately froze in place, slowly raising his hands, and a dark green potion dropped to the ground with a bang. We are not what you think, we bang, bang, bang. A thick black trunk swept over several people's heads, hitting three people on the head with a round piece of wood, instantly knocking them all unconscious. Ah ha ha, how was that? My performance was good, right? This guy is about to wet himself. The gorilla parrot landed on the elephant's head, looking at the people lying on the ground, laughing and saying, what should we do with them? Should we send them to the security bureau? It's that old man that not even teacher Shintian knows about. After some discussion, the animals decided to drag all four people to the security bureau. With a roar, Halley put on a rope, leading the way with Dubai and a group of animals dragging the four people on the ground, quickly running towards the entrance of the zoo. Come quick! Buying little rabbit monkeys, 10 copper coins for one dead, 20 copper coins for one alive. A burly man with a beard stood at the village gate, shouting. Soon, a group of villagers in tattered clothes ran out, each holding a struggling little rabbit monkey. Standing in front of such as such as Su Chen, they raised their hands high, holding the ears of the little rabbit monkeys and throwing them into a huge metal cage in the car. Squeak! 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 Watching the panicked little rabbit monkeys, Su Chen took a deep breath and walked a few steps forward. He reached out and touched one of the little creatures that was crying nonstop. Who? Taking a deep breath, Su Chen turned to look at the excited crowd, feeling a sense of sadness. Just for 10 copper coins, they were able to harm a species to the point of extinction. No, we can't let these people continue like this. Su Chen pondered for a moment, a plan gradually forming in his mind. Although a bit cunning, it was the only plan available. What's going on? Why have the recent orders decreased? Our stock of little rabbit monkeys is increasing and the daily consumption of food and labor is astronomical. Go find out what's going on. Charles, leaning on a gemstone cane, stood in front of a huge warehouse door, frowning at the little rabbit monkeys being thrown in, scolding the servant beside him. Starting from these two days, not only did orders from other states decrease significantly, even local purchasing power was rapidly declining. Some orders were even returned. They had invested a large amount of money, crazily buying little rabbit monkeys. Charles, something's wrong. At this moment, a middle-aged man with a big belly hurried over, panting, saying, All the little rabbit monkey corpses were returned today. We can't take the dead ones anymore, it's so hot, they can't be stored at all. If we can't sell them, we'll suffer heavy losses. Thud! Charles picked up his cane and fiercely struck the ground, gritting his teeth, Order them to only buy live little rabbit monkeys now, and don't take any dead ones. Tell the hunting team to be careful, don't kill them. The number of little rabbit monkeys has also started to decrease recently, it's not easy to catch them. 
Wait a bit longer, go back and find out what's going on. Why are there so many customers changing their minds? Master. A servant hesitated for a long time, then whispered, Today, I heard a piece of news on the street, I don't know if it's true. What news? Charles glared at him fiercely, asking impatiently. It's like this. Today, many people with skin diseases appeared on the street, they said. It's because they ate little rabbit monkeys that they became like this. This. What? Richard widened his eyes and roared fiercely, nonsense, damn scum, it must be the work of a competitor. Secretly find some people and see who is behind these patients. When necessary. Richard waved his hand in a knife-like gesture. Yes. The servant quickly nodded and retreated. Come, this is for you. Spread the news in the west of the city tomorrow. Su Chen, dressed in a black cloak, took out a coin from his pocket and handed it to a group of people in front of him, then said in a deep voice, go find more people, if there are people with the same illness as you, bring them all. No limit on the number of people. Even if there are people who died from skin diseases, bring them out to the streets for people to see. I will pay a gold coin for each one. Lord, you must be sent by heaven to help us. There are many sick people in our area, I will go back and call people. For the deceased, I should have a way. The group of ragged people in front of him all knelt down and bowed to Su Chen. They were beggars from the city, each with some kind of illness to varying degrees. They never expected that one day, this man in front of them would come to hire them. They didn't even need to work. Just sit in the busiest part of the street and keep crying. Crying was now a hot commodity, as a small animal carrying a serious virus was being sold. All of them got sick from eating that kind of small animal. And the price this man offered was very generous with each person receiving as much as five silver coins per day. This was something they never dared to hope for. Today, he even offered a price of a gold coin. As for whether the small animal really carried the virus, these people didn't care. Sold for ten silver coins each. Only the nobles could afford to eat them, not people like them. Phew. Su Chen sighed deeply as he looked at the group of beggars covered in sores. After spending a day in the city, Su Chen had a rough understanding of the place he was in. This seemed to be in the medieval period. It was a time of rapid development and chaos in the whole of Australia. In the western countries at that time, there were no good methods for treating illnesses, with the most famous being bloodletting therapy. Regardless of the illness, they would just draw blood, claiming it could cure all diseases. The beggars in front of him were all thin as a rail, clearly having been bled many times, but their illnesses did not improve. In the eyes of the nobles, these people had offended God, and the reason they were not cured by bloodletting was because God wanted to punish them. Su Chen's plan was to gather all the sick people in the city and organize a march to persuade people not to eat the small rabbits. Those creatures carried a deadly virus, and they would all be witnesses. By then, the indiscriminate killing by humans would surely decrease. No trade, no harm. This was an eternal truth. Su Chen did not expect to save every small rabbit, as it was simply not realistic. Being part of the food chain in nature, including humans, who were both predators of certain species and prey for others. Everything needed to be in balance for all animals to thrive in the long run. Su Chen had also learned about the guild controlling the purchase of small rabbits, the Charles Guild. After two days of spreading the word, they had stopped buying the bodies of small rabbits, which relieved Su Chen. This would reduce a lot of the killings in the wild. However, if he wanted to successfully rescue all the small rabbits, besides using the power of rapid public opinion dissemination, he would also need to release the thousands of small rabbits that had been captured in a warehouse. After taking a deep breath, Su Chen adjusted his robe and walked towards the dark alley. Stop. Suddenly, several burly men with stubble appeared in front of him, holding thick wooden sticks and glaring at him with dark expressions. It's him, the one who gave money to the beggars spreading rumors. Get him. The boss ordered to kill him on the spot. Seeing the burly men rushing towards him, Su Chen turned and ran. He couldn't possibly match these capitalists in the entire city now. Once exposed, the city's security officers might come to arrest him. Watching Su Chen running away in a hurry, the viewers in the live stream room were all sweating for him. These people are despicable, the streamer finally came up with a good way to save those little animals, and they want to silence him. Exactly, capitalists are terrifying. They don't hesitate to kill for profit. Streamer, keep going, you must not let those guys catch you, or those little animals will be doomed. Oh, I'm so angry, how can these people harm such cute animals? We must not let them catch him. Just hold on for two more days, the streamer's plan will definitely succeed. Go for it. Bang. Su Chen suddenly twisted his body, and the wooden stick whizzed past his ear. Grabbing the stick with one hand, he pulled one of the burly men towards him. Crack. With a strong force, the thick wooden stick in Su Chen's hand was forcibly broken. Get lost. 
Su Chen coldly shouted at the frightened men in front of him. You're asking for death. The servants took a deep breath, roared in anger, and charged at him again. Ah! A punch landed on one of the men's faces, blood spurted out, and with a piercing scream, Su Chen swiftly took down all the servants as if a tiger among sheep. Wow! The streamer is so strong, he broke it so easily. That's amazing. Based on my military experience, I can tell that the streamer is very powerful, probably not inferior to an average boxer. These people are just here to be beaten, they are no match at all. They must be from that guild, these people are really ruthless for money. The viewers in the live stream room watched as Su Chen easily defeated the burly men with just a few punches and kicks, marveling at his strength. Su Chen usually looked thin and weak, but no one could have imagined that he could unleash such power. Each of the burly men looked fierce, but they couldn't even last a minute against Su Chen. Phew! Su Chen stood in the dim alley, his eyes gloomy as he looked at the men lying on the ground wailing. He took a step forward. Bang! He stomped on the chest of one of the men with stubble and said coldly, Go back and tell your guild, those who do evil will bring destruction upon themselves. If you dare to use such despicable means again, you will not have a good ending. Get lost. He kicked the man in front of him, sending him flying, and Su Chen's figure quickly disappeared into the alley. The Charles Guild has actually started resorting to physical attacks, so the speed of spreading public opinion must be accelerated. Otherwise, if these people control all the beggars, then, the whole plan will be ruined. Damn it! Charles sat at the dining table, picked up the wine glass and smashed it on the ground, his face twisted in anger as he roared, Are you all useless? So many people, and you can't even handle one person? What's the use of keeping you people? President. The burly man with stubble, his arm bandaged, his face bruised, spoke in fear, that kid is very powerful, we are no match for him, unless we use firearms, otherwise. Nonsense. Richard picked up the plate and threw it directly at him, roaring fiercely, using firearms, once the government finds out, do you know what our fate will be? How many people are watching this business, do you think those government officials are not envious? Once they catch us, will we have a way out? With that, Richard stood up angrily from his chair, pacing back and forth in the corridor with a gloomy expression. No, we can't go on like this anymore. Since this guy is useless, then, you go find those beggars. Richard suddenly raised his head, his eyes glaring red at the bearded man, his tone sinister, the government officials won't care about the lives of those beggars, they are all blasphemers who should be crucified. Secretly take those beggars out of the city and deal with them all. Do it discreetly. I don't see how that kid can do anything without those beggars. Exhaling deeply, Richard adjusted the bow tie near his collar, his face returning to normal, and elegantly said, I will visit the chief executive, if necessary. We can only allocate a portion of the profits to these damn parasites. Go! Yes! The bearded man's heart skipped a beat, limping away quickly. Countless beggars in the city die every day, and no one cares. However, allocating a portion of the profits makes Richard feel distressed. The entire business of Little Rabbit is completely monopolized by them now, and if it collapses completely, as the president of the Richard Guild, he simply cannot afford to compensate. By then, on this night, the entire city is frantically clearing the beggars from the streets, not even sparing many elderly, weak, women, and children. The capitalists are going crazy, without a shred of mercy. In the magnificent hall shining like a palace, Richard respectfully placed a wooden box on the table, smiling at the elderly man in front of him. Lord Yale, this is a token of appreciation. Please help our Richard Guild tomorrow, issue an official decree to clarify that Little Rabbit has not carried any viruses. Afterwards, the Richard Guild will be greatly thankful. Oh, Yale leaned back on the golden chair, slowly blowing a smoke ring, placing the crystal cigarette holder on the table, silently pushing the box back. With a slight smirk, he said disdainfully, the Richard Guild, Little Rabbit has not been tested, and recently many people in the city have accused you. It might be difficult. This. Richard's expression changed, cursing the old fox in his heart, then grinned and said, Little Rabbit must not have carried any viruses, it's just those beggars spreading rumors. Lord Yale, you must. Stand up for the Richard Guild. We are all children of God, deeply influenced by the teachings of our father God since childhood. How can those who blaspheme the gods be worthy? With that, Richard gritted his teeth, lowered his voice, and leaned in close. The Richard Guild is willing to donate 20% of the profits to the administrative office every year. Ha ha. Yale sat up straight, pointing at Richard in front of him and laughing heartily, Richard, you want to monopolize this business, but without the help of the administrative office, it will be difficult. Other places can easily imitate you and hunt down these little rabbits. However, in recent years, the administrative office has also been struggling. 
The city streets have long been neglected, if your Richard Guild is willing to donate 30% annually, the administrative office will surely help a guild like yours, favored by God, with all its might. Okay. Richard took a deep breath and pushed the coin box in front of him, saying in a deep voice, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, the administrative office will launch the initiative to hunt and kill Little Rabbit Fox's campaign in the city center, and your Charles Guild will be designated as the guild to exterminate the harmful beasts, without exception. As for those beggars, be nimble. Ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord Yale. Richard stood up with a smile, raising his glass. Bang. The two clinked glasses with a laugh, saying in unison, may God be with us. What is the administrative office up to today? Why are they giving a speech so early in the morning? Is there another criminal to be crucified? I heard it's not that. It seems to be about a virus carried by wild animals. I haven't dared to eat recently. I heard it can cause a serious skin disease. I don't want to undergo bloodletting therapy. It's painful. Hey, did you notice today, those people with skin diseases on the street have disappeared? Could it be? Those skin diseases were fake, and there is no virus on the little rabbit foxes? That would be great, my kids love to eat that. Groups of nobles dressed in gorgeous attire walked elegantly on the street, chatting with each other as they headed towards the square in front of the administrative office. The common residents who gathered around were equally curious. Usually, the administrative office only gives speeches when capturing heinous criminals or implementing some decree. There hasn't been any major event in the city recently. If there is one major event, it might be the widely spread little rabbit fox virus. However, for ordinary people, they rarely purchase such small animals, as they are too expensive. And, on the streets, those people with festering wounds, everyone would rather believe it than not. After all, in this society, once afflicted with a skin disease, it is more painful than being sentenced to death. The expensive holy water is not something they can afford, so they can only resort to the simplest bloodletting therapy. However, if the bloodletting therapy doesn't work, they will surely be considered blasphemers and may not even survive in the city. Hello, everyone. Yale wore a neat black suit with a white bow tie at the collar. Leaning on a cane adorned with a green gem, he stood on the podium with a smile, looking at the gathered residents below. Clearing his throat, he loudly said, Today, I have gathered everyone here to announce something. Recently, a group of blasphemers has infiltrated the city. Not only do they not repent, but they also openly challenge the dignity of the gods. They are spreading rumors about a harmful beast outside the city to discredit the Charles Guild. What a despicable act. The Charles Guild hunts and kills little rabbit foxes for all the farmers outside the city. These damned creatures not only destroy the crops painstakingly planted by the farmers but also steal the chickens and ducks raised by the farmers. This is definitely a creature abhorred by God. Now, let's invite the affected farmers to testify. A thin man in tattered clothes tremblingly walked up to the stage, looking at the crowd below, crying out, I want to thank the Charles Guild. If it weren't for them, our crops would have been ruined. The Charles Guild not only helped us hunt and kill the harmful beasts but also purchased the bodies of the beasts for 10 copper coins. They are definitely the people sent by God to save us. I will never allow those damned blasphemers to slander the Charles Guild. In order to hunt the little rabbit foxes, the Charles Guild has invested a lot of manpower and money. Fortunately, these little rabbit foxes can be exchanged for a small amount of gold and silver. We must thank the Charles Guild, they have been losing money to help us hunt and kill the harmful beasts. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone below widened their eyes in disbelief as they looked at the farmers on the stage. So that's how it is. I never thought the Charles Guild would be selling these little rabbit monkeys for the sake of the stability of the entire city outskirts. Yes, I work in the hunting team, and the wages provided by the Charles Guild are fair. They can't make a profit from selling those little rabbit monkeys. Damn blasphemers, using this method to defame the messengers sent by God. They should be put on the cross. Yes. Those blasphemers should all be sentenced to hanging. With a few members of the Charles Guild leading the way among the crowd, the angry emotions of everyone were immediately stirred up. One by one, they shouted indignantly, wishing to execute all those afflicted with skin diseases. Everyone, calm down. Yeru raised his hands, signaling for everyone to be quiet, and said in a solemn tone, we should condemn those who have strayed from God's embrace. But, for leaders like Charles, we should praise them. Therefore, the administrative office has decided to grant the Charles Guild full authority to hunt and kill the entire population of little rabbit monkeys. From now on, only the Charles Guild will be eligible to purchase and sell the little rabbit monkeys. Anyone found selling them privately will be punished by the administrative office. Asterisk clap 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 clap. Asterisk after hearing this, the crowd below raised their hands and applauded. Thank you all. Charles took off his hat, 
bowed respectfully to everyone, looked sincerely at them, and said with deep emotion, Our Charles Guild came here to eradicate this pest, and we have put our heart and soul into it. Not only that. During the hunting of these little rabbit monkeys, our hunting team often gets injured. But, Charles cried with tears in his eyes, I, Charles, have listened to God's teachings since I was young. In order to provide a stable living environment for all the farmers outside the city, and to give our people of God a prosperous life, our Charles Guild will not stop hunting down this pest no matter the cost. Thank you for understanding us. The little rabbit monkeys do not carry any viruses, it's all a rumor. Tell me, is it wrong for us to subsidize the meager wages of the hunting team? Why do those blasphemers want to defame us? Sobbing at this point, Charles took out a white handkerchief from his chest, covered his face, and wept. Damn blasphemers, they must be sent to the gallows. Yes. Sob how little profit can be gained from a little rabbit monkey, how can these people be so heartless? Drive those blasphemers abandoned by God out of the city, we don't welcome them here. Watching the enraged crowd below, Charles and Yeru exchanged a glance and smiled involuntarily. Today's plan was very successful, and it seemed that in the future, these residents below would send those who spread rumors to the gallows without their intervention. Ah 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 ah. Why? Sob 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 suddenly, from far down the street, there came a series of heart-wrenching cries, and everyone looked over to see a young man in a black cloak walking at the forefront. Behind him were countless blasphemers afflicted with skin diseases. And, each of them was holding a bloody and fleshly corpse in their arms, slowly approaching the crowd. What's going on? So many people dead? Yes, these are the blasphemers, how dare they come here? As they watched the group of beggars with grim faces approaching, everyone began to retreat. Each person bore more or less scars, and some even had festering sores emitting a foul stench. Guards! Yeru's face changed, and he angrily shouted at the guards beside him, Capture them for me. A group of blasphemers daring to attack the administrative office, today they will all be sent to the gallows. Pa! Watching the approaching guards, Su Chun instantly accelerated, pulling out a wooden stick from his pocket and fiercely smashing it down. Ah! With a blow to the head, a strong man in front of him was immediately knocked to the ground. Fight them! They don't treat us as human beings at all, killing so many of us recklessly. The beggars behind him dropped the bodies in their hands, crazily howling as they charged forward. Quick! Where are your guild members? Call for help immediately! Yilu looked at the chaotic scene, his face turning ugly as he angrily rebuked Richard. Didn't we agree that everything was already resolved? Why is this happening? If things get out of control, not only will your business be ruined, but you might end up on the gallows. I, I. Richard looked at the scene in front of him, his mind blank. He had already dispatched all his men last night, how could they not have dealt with these helpless beggars? I'll call for help right away. Richard pushed aside a person in front of him and hurriedly jumped off the platform. Bang. However, before he could land, he saw a young man rushing towards him. Su Chin kicked him to the ground, grabbed his hair, and lifted him onto the platform. Yu. Looking at the bloodshot eyes of the young man in front of him, Yi Lu felt a chill run down his spine and collapsed on the ground. This young man was truly enraged. He was definitely going to kill someone. Stop. Su Chen looked at the chaotic scene, shouted angrily, threw Richard to the ground, and stepped on his chest, addressing the beggars below, bring all the people here. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. Stay away from me, you're sick. Don't infect me. Please, spare me. It's all under Richard's orders. Kill me, just kill me, I'm infected. I'm already infected. Suddenly, from the back of the crowd, a group of burly men wearing Richard's Guild clothes were pushed and shoved to the front of the platform. Richard's Guild. For their own benefit, they actually sold infected little rabbits to everyone. They are all witnesses. Open your eyes wide and see if it's true. Su Chen scanned the panicked nobles on the side, his tone cold as he shouted, to cover up the news, Richard actually sent Guild members to kill all of us who were infected. Everyone, open your eyes and see how many people have died. Woo 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 woo. Nonsense, how is that possible, our rabbit meat couldn't possibly be infected. Richard struggled to get up from the ground, but Su Chen reached out and lifted him up, nodding at a beggar below. You said there's no virus, then today, in front of everyone, eat this rabbit meat. Su Chen sneered at him, took the rabbit meat handed to him, and placed it in front of Richard. This. Richard looked at the unfamiliar rabbit meat in front of him, hesitating for a moment. His eyes glanced at the miserable and terrifying appearance of the beggars below and his face instantly turned pale. Although he had eaten this rabbit meat before, he couldn't be completely sure if it carried the virus. And, the festering sores on the beggars below were too frightening. As a noble, once he became like that, he would surely be shunned by everyone. Why are you afraid to eat? Su Chen chuckled. Could it be that this rabbit meat really is infected? 
Hiss, we must never eat this kind of animal in the future. It's despicable, everything was a lie. This Richards Guild has been playing with our bodies all along, it's all fake, these animals are not harmful. A group of people looked at the hesitant Richard on the platform, starting to whisper among themselves. Thump. At that moment, the farmer who had just knelt in front of everyone quickly knelt down again, took out a gold coin from his pocket, threw it on the ground, and cried out towards the Jesus cross standing on the platform in the distance, Lord, forgive me. I was forced, everything was the people of the Charlie Guild forcing me. Please, Lord, you must forgive your believers. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Seeing this, Yellow took a deep breath, let out a roar, got up from the ground, and quickly rushed to Su Chen. He raised the cane in his hand and fiercely smashed it on Charlie's head. Damn it. You deceived me. I trusted you so much, and you deceived me? Damn it, I should kick your guild out of here, get out. You. Charlie covered his head, looked at the furious Yellow in front of him, and was instantly stunned. He actually, actually planned to abandon him in order to preserve his own position. I'll fight you. Charlie grabbed the cane with both hands, forcefully knocked Yalu to the ground, and swung his fist fiercely on his face, roaring, you scoundrel, damn liar, took the money from the Charlie guilt, and now, whoosh. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone below looked on in horror at the two fighting. No one had expected that the highest official of the administration and the Charlie guild would collude and deceive them all. Send them to the gallows. Yes, colluding together, deceiving us. These damn capitalists, for money, they don't see us as human beings at all. That's right, the Lord won't forgive them, hang them. Su Chen watched as the residents swarmed up, and he took a step down from the platform. At this point, the Charlie Guild was finally dealt with. Although it only resolved the crisis of the extinction of the Australian small rabbit monkeys this time, human greed is infinite, and sooner or later, there will be a second Charlie, a third Charlie, a fourth Charlie. This is inevitable. Only when all the animals are extinct will these people truly realize their mistakes. Something's wrong, sir. Suddenly, a small, skinny beggar rushed over, panting heavily, and stood in front of Su Chen, shouting, The shareholders of the Charlie Guild have poured black oil all over the entire warehouse, they intend to destroy the evidence. Damn it! Su Chen shouted angrily, quickly rushing towards the warehouse. There were thousands of small rabbit monkeys inside, once they were all burned to death, this mission would surely fail. Boom boom boom! Boom boom boom. Boom boom boom. Rolling smoke and flames surged towards the sky. Su Chen stood at the entrance of the warehouse, looking despondently at the warehouse that was already engulfed in flames, and instantly collapsed to the ground. It failed. Unexpectedly, it failed in the end. A warehouse full of Australian small rabbit monkeys, each one a lively life. They were going to be burned alive like this. Damn it. I hate myself. Who are these people? The anchor's plan was already very successful. Why do they want to kill these little rabbits? So many, thousands of them. I can't stand it. It's so infuriating. I really want to go and kill all these people from the Charlie Guild. Exactly, these little animals didn't provoke or harm you. They can't be sold anymore. Why not release them? Humans occupied their homes first. Why is there no reflection at all? It's over. This is the Yankers' only failed mission, even though it's a live broadcast. But, it really made me cry. This is a warning to us. The animals have come back to life. All of us must not be like these beasts, they are simply not human, such cute little creatures, sob. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Watching the small rabbit monkeys howling in the sea of fire, everyone in the live broadcast room fell silent. The animals had been missing for such a long time, and they had never witnessed such a bloody scene before. Thousands of small animals were burned alive inside. The live broadcast camera zoomed in, capturing the fallen eyes of each little rabbit, piercing everyone's hearts deeply. Nature belongs to everyone, but just because humans have taken over their habitats, do they have to resort to stealing crops, and then, because of their delicious meat, be reduced to food on the table? Bang! Suddenly, the warehouse door collapsed with a loud crash. Su Chen looked up in astonishment at the small rabbits gathered in the sea of fire. Each surviving small rabbit had a solemn expression. Then a touching scene unfolded. Each adult rabbit picked up a cub from the ground, slowly retreated, and then, with a powerful leap, dashed into the sea of fire at the door. With a violent cough, the cub in its mouth was thrown towards the door. It fell straight down from the air, instantly engulfed by the fire, emitting a series of pitiful cries. I, Su Chen rushed up, picked up the fallen small rabbit, gently held it in his arms, tears in his eyes as he looked at the brave adult rabbit lying in the charred fire. This is an animal, sometimes even braver than humans. Bang, bang, bang. One cub after another was thrown out, each cub that made it out was created by the adult rabbits leaping through the fire at the cost of their lives. Su Chen closed his eyes, took a deep breath, 
picked up all the cubs on the ground, and placed them behind him. Meanwhile, the fire inside grew stronger, and several adult rabbits failed to leap out again, causing the small rabbits to perish in the fire. However, it was clear that none of the rabbits gave up. Each one had a solemn expression, and when it was their turn, there was no hesitation as they picked up a cub and leaped again. Even though the fire was raging now with little hope, for the survival of their offspring, they were willing to sacrifice their lives. How? Could this happen? A miracle, this is definitely a miracle. Damn the Charlie Guild, how could they harm these animals? It must be a warning from God. We were all wrong. All wrong. All the residents who had come to see the scene, knelt down with tears in their eyes. They had never seen such a scene before. This was surely a warning from God to them. Boom. The entire warehouse collapsed, the towering flames turning half the sky red. Su Chen stood quietly in front of the fire. Over a thousand small rabbits had paid with their lives, leaving less than 30 small rabbit cubs in front of him. All the little ones inside had died. There was no way they could rush out again. Squeak. 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 Listening to the cries coming from inside, Su Chen's heart ached. He was a person who cared for animals, unable to bear the pain. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen turned to the people kneeling on the ground and said softly, If you continue like this, you will pay an even more painful price in the future, and the outcome will be even more tragic than theirs. With that, he squatted down and gently stroked the small rabbit cubs. The mission was completed. However, Su Chen felt no joy at all, only a piercing pain in his heart. Ah, 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 I, I'm crying, how could this happen? Why did this happen? So touching, is this what animals are like? This is how animals used to be. Sometimes, humans are really worse than animals. Viewers in the live chat room witnessed the scene just now, sitting in front of their computers in silence. An indescribable feeling filled their hearts. Perhaps there have been many such incidents in the past, and Su Chen has only revealed the tip of the iceberg. However, the warning to everyone is indescribable. Ding, congratulations to the host, the Australian Little Rabbit Fragment mission is completed. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully resurrecting the Australian Little Rabbit, speed plus 5. System returning, live broadcast interrupted. The scene in front of him changed, Su Chen awkwardly raised his head and looked around. At this moment, in the blue sky zoo, the little rabbit that had followed him had already hopped into the bushes. However, there was not a single animal in the entire blue sky zoo at this time, not even a single visitor. Su Chen couldn't help but furrow his brow, picked up a young Australian little rabbit from the ground, and started walking towards the ticket window. Now that he had obtained the little rabbit, the baby's illness could also be cured. But, what exactly happened today? Pushing open the door to the ticket office, there was no one inside, just a piece of white paper on the table. Su Chen walked over, picked it up and glanced at it, his face changing drastically. Baby critically ill. Sorry, the zoo will be closed for a few days. I'm afraid this time, we won't make it through. I, you must wait for me. Su Chen's face flushed as he roared, carrying the little rabbit and quickly rushed out of the zoo. Director Su Chen. Ah, you're back, hurry and go take a look that little girl. I'm afraid. The owner of the small shop at the entrance saw Su Chen rushing out and quickly spoke up. All the animals have come out and followed to the hospital. Roar. With bloodshot eyes, Dubai stared at the ward in front of him, twisting his body frantically, trying to rush in. Dubai. Gao Yu held its body and pulled it back. Tears filled her face as she looked at the baby in the ward, unable to help but collapse on the ground. She never expected that this morning, the baby would faint directly and still hadn't woken up. And. Su Chen still hadn't returned, there was simply no way. Bang. The door to the ward opened. Professor Chu, dressed in a white coat, walked out with a solemn expression, looking at the group of animals squatting outside, shaking his head involuntarily. Professor Chu, how is it? Gao Yu quickly got up from the ground, rushed to him, wiped her tears and asked, has she woken up? The baby. Does she? Ah. Professor Chu looked at the pitifully crying Gao Yu in front of him, sighed lightly. I never expected this disease to progress so rapidly. I just checked, the little one should theoretically have atrophied esophageal muscles by now, but, here, Professor Chu gritted his teeth, his tone heavy, for some reason, her respiratory muscles have already undergone necrosis and atrophy. Now, the only way to control her life is to, that is to cut open her trachea and insert a respirator. Otherwise, it will be difficult to make it through today. It's impossible, Professor Chu, it must be a mistake, right? Hearing this, Gao Yu felt her eyes go black, leaning against the wall and sitting on the ground, tears streaming down her face. Wu, how could this happen? Why is this happening? She's not even six years old. There are still many days ahead, why isn't it me? Why? 
Watching the sobbing Gaoyu, Professor Chu took a deep breath, walked over, and slowly crouched down. Our hospital is also helpless about this outcome. But, ALS, this disease, even in the medical field, the cause cannot be identified. I also like the little one very much, but, wiping the tears from the corner of his eyes, Professor Chu said in a deep voice, you must make a decision as soon as possible, whether to put the little one on a respirator. If you do, it can prolong her life, but, it will be very painful. As a renowned neurologist at Chengdu Hospital, Professor Chu had seen many patients with ALS. To be honest, for this kind of person, every day is a torment to stay alive. Even compared to being in a vegetative state, ALS is even more cruel. Unable to communicate with others every day, unable to move any part of the body except for the eyes, not even able to turn over. Like a walking corpse. This is also the reason why Gao Yu chose it. Because there are too many people willing to choose euthanasia rather than become like that. It is not only torture for oneself, but also torture for family and friends. Who can bear to see their closest person living every day like a corpse? I. What should I do? Gao Yu leaned against the hospital corridor wall with empty eyes, murmuring constantly. Roar! Dubai roared and rushed into the ward. Behind him, the golden python, monkey king, honey badger, and gorilla parrot, except for the elephant which was too big to come in, all rushed in. Woo! Looking at the baby lying motionless on the hospital bed, Dubai sat on the ground, tremblingly reached out his paw, wanting to touch her. Duh! Dubai! Suddenly, the baby in front opened her eyes, staring at Dubai with big eyes, trying hard to raise her hand, but... Roar! Dubai was startled, quickly got up, and put his paws on the bed railing. I... Giggle! Dubai! I may not be able to go see the stars with you anymore. They said the baby is sick. She may have to sleep for a long time, don't... Don't be angry! Baby! Gao Yu wiped her tears, trying to put on a smile, walked in from the door. Can't talk much now. Lie down well, Dubai will stay here with you, be good. Gently stroking the little girl's forehead, Gao Yu clenched her heart. Really? Just now outside, she thought for a long time, trying to convince herself to operate on the little one. But, the moment she came in and saw her current state, Gao Yu couldn't believe how sad it would be for such a lively and lovely little girl to lie on the hospital bed all day, even needing a machine to breathe. Where is director Su Chen? Why hasn't he come back yet? The gorilla parrot stood on the bed railing and couldn't help but ask, didn't director Su Chen say he had a solution? Roar! Dubai suddenly turned his head, his eyes bloodshot, staring at the door. Yes, didn't the director go find a solution? He must be able to cure the baby. After rubbing foreheads with the baby, Dubai quickly turned around and ran out of the room. He was going to find director Su Chen, there must be a way. Who? 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 Su Chen gasped as he climbed up the stairs, holding the little rabbit in his arms, looked up at the floors, only three more to go. Hurry! With a roar, Su Chen took three steps at a time, quickly running up. Roar! Suddenly, a roar came from above. Dubai rushed down excitedly, tearing at Su Chen's clothes as soon as he arrived, emitting low growls. The baby is about to be in trouble. They said. If we don't find a solution soon, I'm afraid. It's okay, it's okay. Patting the panda's head, Su Chen gasped and said, Don't worry, there is already a solution, the little one will be fine, rest assured. With that, he quickly ran upstairs. Arriving in front of the ward, Dubai burst open the door and pounced in. Who? Su Chen stood at the door, looking at the little one on the sickbed with a pale face, staring with big eyes. Couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Finally caught up. Be a good girl, Uncle Su Chen will definitely save you. Su Chen stepped to the bedside, gently touched the baby's forehead, and comforted softly, take a nap, and you'll be able to ride with Dubai when you wake up. Really? Uncle, you're not lying to the baby? No, really, if you don't believe me, let's pinky swear. Holding the baby's little hand, Su Chen hooked his pinky finger and whispered softly, pinky swear, we won't change for a hundred years. Listen, uncle will go find a doctor. No, how is this possible? Professor Chu looked at the young man in front of him, furrowing his brow and reprimanding, do you know that the little girl is now on the brink of death, any slight mistake could be fatal. Moreover, this disease is the number one terminal illness in modern medicine, how could there be a treatment? I disagree, you are being too reckless. The young man in front of him actually claimed he could treat the little one's amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, this was simply nonsense. Countless researchers worldwide have been trying to overcome this disease for hundreds of years, with no progress so far. You, a zoo director, are not a medical professional, how could you have a solution? Huff. Su Chen took a deep breath and said coldly, is there a good treatment method in the hospital? There isn't? 
Are we really going to watch the baby have her trachea cut open, then rely on machines to keep her alive? Isn't that a form of torture for the patient? Professor Chu, I'm not joking, I can definitely cure the baby. You. Professor Chu stared at the excited Su Chen in front of him, momentarily speechless. Indeed. The hospital couldn't offer any treatment methods, they couldn't even prescribe medication. This was a disease of sudden neuronal mutation, for which there was currently no controllable medication. However, Professor Chu, this child is. Roar. Suddenly, the office door was pushed open forcefully, and a giant panda with a fierce expression rushed in, baring its fangs as it looked at the doctor in front of Su Chen. Hey, Dubai, get out. Seeing this, Su Chen coldly ordered. Professor Chu, just prepare the operating room for me, one hour is enough, you've seen it, this little girl is very important to the zoo. Not only is she particularly close to the animals, we hiss. Professor Chu took a sharp breath, nodded slowly, and said in a deep voice, I agree, but, to treat her, we must have the consent of Gao Yu and even the little one, you can't just. Rest assured, Gao Yu and the baby have agreed. Su Chen quickly said. Then he took out a young rabbit from his arms and swiftly walked out of the office, heading towards the operating room. The system's solution was to extract the neural fluid that controlled the movements from the young rabbit's body, a technology that was beyond the current level of science. Su Chen had no choice but to use the operating room to pretend to extract blood from the young rabbit. After all, it would be too shocking if he suddenly produced a vial of medicine. And how exactly the system would extract this neural fluid that controlled nerve movements, Su Chen had no idea. You don't need to come in, I can handle it myself. Su Chen said to the nurse behind him, then walked into the operating room. Good. Gently placing the Australian young rabbit on the operating table, Su Chen touched the little one's forehead. System, you can start. Host, please note that once the neural fluid is extracted from the young rabbit's body, this creature will permanently lose the ability to jump at high speeds, confirm extraction? Extract, Su Chen said in a deep voice. If it could really treat a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, then, this resurrected creature would definitely be a national treasure in every country, although it lost the ability to jump, but, I will take good care of you in the future. Definitely. Su Chen gritted his teeth and murmured, buzz, buzz, buzz. A mist instantly enveloped the young rabbit's body, emitting a faint sound of painful cries. Su Chen couldn't bear to watch and turned away. After a long time, a syringe with transparent liquid lay quietly on the operating table. And, Xiaotuzhua stared at Su Chen with big eyes, quietly watching. Su Chen quickly picked up the little one and rushed to the baby's ward with the syringe in hand. Are you sure there's no problem? Professor Chu looked at the syringe in his hand, then turned to Su Chen for confirmation. Yes. Good. Open all the instruments and monitor the patient's neural movement trajectory at all times. Instructing the assistant behind him, he slowly injected the liquid from the syringe into the baby's body. Professor, look. Soon, a cry of surprise came from behind. Professor Chu quickly turned to look. A line on the screen representing the baby's neural movement was steadily climbing upwards. This indicated that the motor neurons controlling muscle movement in her body were slowly recovering. I, I. Professor Chu widened his eyes, turned abruptly to look at Su Chen behind him. You, a medical miracle. This is simply a miracle. I, I represent the millions of ALS patients in China, thank you, really thank you, this has saved millions of families. With that, Professor Chu bowed deeply to Su Chen. All the doctors and assistants waiting in the ward also clenched their fists in excitement. They had seen too many patients who had to choose euthanasia because there was no treatment available. Each time was a farewell to life, each time filled with helplessness. And now, the director Su Chen in front of them brought a way to treat this terminal illness. However, can the neural movement original fluid in these animals be reused? Or, Professor Chu quickly realized the seriousness of the problem. Reviving these animals was extremely precious. If extracting this original fluid caused fatal damage to the animals, then, treating ALS would not be something an ordinary family could afford. It's difficult. After extracting the neural movement original fluid, Xiaotuzhua will lose the ability to jump at high speed, and, these animals were just developed, breeding takes time, and they cannot be put into use immediately. Su Chen said truthfully, losing the ability to jump? Professor Chu's heart sank. This was also a very fatal injury for a small animal. But fortunately, Xiao Tuzhua now lives in the zoo, so there is no need to worry about anyone wanting to capture it. So, losing the ability to jump, Blue Sky Zoo can bear it, Su Chen said with a serious expression. But, Xiao Tuzhua reproduces quickly, once the number increases, they will inevitably live in the wild in the future, and by then, 
Those Shatujwa who donated the neural original fluid will definitely. I understand. Professor Chu said solemnly, I will report this truthfully to the highest medical management center in China. For the sake of curing this terminal illness, Shatujwa and these creatures have paid such a great price, we will definitely give them a safe and danger-free living environment. They are friends of humanity, benefactors of all ALS patients. Is what you said true? Director Lin, who was already a hundred years old at the Huaxia Medical Center, was now excitedly looking at Professor Chu in front of him. Xiao Chu, this is no joke. Do you know what it means to cure ALS? Do you know how many patients will come rushing to your Qin capital once this news spreads throughout the whole of Huaxia, even the whole world? Teacher, it's true. The patient under our hospital's care, who is not even six years old, after just two days of rest, can now sit on the bed and do simple activities. Professor Chu sat in front of his teacher, respectfully speaking. Phew. Director Lin slowly exhaled, closed his eyes to calm down his excitement. The eyes of the principal were sharp as he looked at the students in front of him, and he said sternly, Director Su Chen, we have some understanding of the animals in the zoo at the highest medical center. After the animals became extinct, we have been helpless for many years due to the lack of medicinal herbs. But, that young man is right, animals are friends of humans. In nature, animals are equal to us. I will make a suggestion to the higher authorities on behalf of the highest medical center. This creature called the little rabbit monkey will be permanently listed as a protected animal of the highest standard in China. Each little rabbit monkey represents another family in need of help. In the future, there will be more animals that can help with treatment. We cannot harm these animals unilaterally for the sake of humans. Nor will we force the Blue Sky Zoo to make decisions against their will. Teacher, Director Su Chen has already expressed his opinion. Professor Chu slowly stood up from his chair and said in a deep voice, Director Su Chen means that the little rabbit monkey is naturally friendly and lively. Losing the ability to jump in the zoo will not have a big impact, but they need time to breed. Animals are friends of humans, and humans are also friends of animals. As long as it does not affect the survival of animals, the entire Blue Sky Zoo is willing to help humans recover from illness. All right, all right. Director Lin was deeply moved for a moment. It is worth noting that the animals in the Blue Sky Zoo are treasures of China. Even a slight injury, even for the sake of saving people, they cannot withstand public opinion. However, Director Su Chun understands the righteousness, we cannot be overly demanding. The extinction of animals in the past is a living example. Everything will be done according to the zoo's wishes, we must not force anything. China, Northeast. Outside the window, there was heavy snow falling like goose feathers. Niao Jia lay on the heated brick bed, staring blankly out the window with her big eyes. The whole cottage was filled with a foul smell. She had been suffering from ALS for three years. Starting from the second year, she had been lying on this bed without moving for two full years. The only scenery she could see every day was outside the window when she opened her eyes. From the budding of leaves to the withering, blown off by the cold wind. Until the heavy snowfall. The outside of the window turned into a white blur, no longer showing any greenery. Just like her life. Living without any meaning, except for dragging down her already impoverished family, she could no longer make any contributions. And pitiful as she was, she couldn't even die. In her mind, memories of her school days flashed by, when she could run freely on the playground, how precious that wish was. Who? 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 The cold wind howled, bringing in snowflakes. A middle-aged man with a slightly stooped figure, wearing tattered cotton clothes, walked in, exhaling hot air. Ja ja, dad came back early today. I'll tidy up the house for you later, is the bed still warm? I'll add more firewood for you. Now Tai looked at his daughter lying on the bed, staring blankly out the window, a hint of heartache flashing in his eyes, and he quickly bent down to tend to the extinguished stove. Dad heard some good news today about your illness. In the capital, I heard that a little girl with the same illness as you has been cured. Dad plans to take you to see her. Listening to Miao Tai's voice beside her, Miao Jia's eyes finally moved and slowly looked at him. It must be another scam. It had been two years, countless hopes had been shattered, and Miao Jia had long since become numb. And this man in front of her, not only sold the house, sold the car, sold everything that could be sold. But, there was simply no cure for her illness. It was all a lie. Gee, ah. Uh, because her respiratory muscles had begun to atrophy, Miao Jia could only make this kind of phlegm-like sound. He he, don't worry, dad borrowed money. Anyway, let's go take a look. With medical science so advanced now, there might really be a way to control your condition. Dad doesn't ask for anything else, as long as you can recover, even if I have to sell something, dad is willing. Miao Tai stoked the stove, then started cleaning up the spinach on the table. How about spinach porridge for us today? This can be fed to you through the feeding tube, 
It's easy to digest. Niaojiao watched his figure, tears involuntarily streaming down her face, day after day, year after year. Since she lay in bed unable to move, her father had to go out to work before dawn every day, come back at noon to feed her through the feeding tube, then rush back to the construction site without even having time to eat. How? Could it have been like this in the past? If she hadn't gotten this illness, how could her father have become like this? After a long time, Niaodai tucked his daughter in, picked up a steamed bun from the table and tucked it into his arms, smiling, I'm leaving, come back early tonight. We shouldn't delay, dad will take you on a trip the day after tomorrow. After saying that, he put on a tattered coat, opened the door, and walked out into the wind and snow. Looking through the window, watching her father walking away with his neck hunched, Nyoja couldn't help but close her eyes in pain. She didn't want to see those so-called folk remedies anymore. They were all scams. If she could speak at the time, she would have chosen euthanasia. Her father wouldn't have suffered so much. At just over 50 years old, his temples were already completely gray. The wrinkles that had accumulated over the past two years were even more than those of a 70-year-old. If she had died directly at that time, her mother wouldn't have passed away early from overwork. Her father wouldn't have become like this now. And she wouldn't have to endure this inhuman torture anymore. She really wished for a quick release. It would be better if she died. She wouldn't harm anyone anymore. Giggling. Dubai, slow down, be careful in front, Holly is catching up. Watching the baby chasing on Dubai's back, Su Chen smiled with relief. After a week of recovery, the little one could finally leave the hospital. And the Blue Sky Zoo returned to calm, with countless visitors coming every day. There were even many out-of-province visitors who came out of curiosity. However, most of them came with their children for a vacation. To this day, the treehouses in the Blue Sky Zoo were in high demand. It was impossible to book a room if you arrived late. Sleeping in the jungle with animals at night was something that no one in this society could experience. And the treatment of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis gradually entered the right track. The document issued by the highest medical center in Huaxia already stated that only when the number of little rabbit monkeys in the Blue Sky Zoo exceeded 500 would they consider extracting the original gene fluid. However, the little rabbit monkeys belonged to the rabbit monkey genus, similar to rabbits, and could breed two litters a year, each with 8 to 10 offspring. It was believed that in a few years, the number of little rabbit monkeys would surely increase rapidly. And, the little rabbit monkey that helped the baby was also growing quickly. In the Blue Sky Zoo, they rarely needed to use their jumping ability. Everything was on the right track. And, Su Chen's current headache was, the latest batch of animal fragments that had been refreshed. This time, who knew what was wrong with the system? They were all birds, with no other options. And, Resurrecting birds would probably be much more difficult than land animals. Animal Fragment Mall, Titan Bird Fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Thunderbird Fragment, requires 1 million shock value for exchange. Golden Eagle Fragment, requires 150,000 shock value for exchange. Vulture Fragments, require 100,000 shock value for exchange. All Fragments, require 50,000 shock value for exchange. Magpie fragments require 50,000 shock value for exchange. Su Chen looked at the system fragment exchange panel, and the corners of his mouth twitched involuntarily. The first two kinds of birds are not creatures that can be kept in the current zoo at all. Titan birds and thunderbirds, both creatures are larger than elephants, and are a kind of fierce bird, although they cannot fly, but their running speed is not inferior to a car traveling at high speed. And after accumulating for these few days, Su Chen only has less than 160,000 shock values. After looking for a long time, Su Chen decided to exchange for a golden eagle. Among these creatures, perhaps the golden eagle's value is higher. And, the golden eagle is also a kind of raptor that can be tamed. However, like the golden eagle, it tests one's will greatly. After exchanging for the golden eagle fragments, a system prompt suddenly sounded in his mind. Ding, raptor pavilion mission released. Please host to obtain more than 10 kinds of raptors within one month. Mission completion reward, raptor pavilion. Mission failure penalty, the raptor pavilion requires the host to independently fund construction, and the system will no longer provide assistance. Hiss. Raptor pavilion? Su Chen couldn't help but take a deep breath. Isn't this asking for trouble? Raptors, as the name suggests, are a general term for birds of prey in the Falconiformes and Strigiformes orders, and these birds are all exceptionally fierce, with significant differences in size. Take the Golden Eagle Su Chen exchange this time, for example. The Golden Eagle is a large raptor, with the largest body exceeding 1 meter, especially when its wings are spread, some have already exceeded 2 meters. 
This flying animal's prey is also large, and it can even hunt large animals like goats or deer. Phew. I'm afraid this mission is a bit difficult. Su Chen muttered, about to walk towards the office. Wait. Suddenly, a middle-aged man in a down jacket ran over in a hurry from a distance. Su Chen looked at him, feeling a bit stunned. In the Blue Sky Zoo, due to the system's reasons, the temperature has been maintained at around 25 degrees, so there is no feeling of cold. Even in the current Qin capital area, people are just starting to wear thin shirts. Where did this person come from? How come he's wearing a down jacket? You are Director Su Chen, right? The man in front of him, with wrinkles all over his face, said respectfully. From the skin on his face and his rough hands, it can be seen that this man is probably a hard-working person in daily life. Yes, I don't know. What can I do for you? Su Chen smiled and said. It's really Director Su Chen, then I've come to the right place. Just wait. Just wait. The man in front of him bowed respectfully, then quickly rushed towards the entrance of the zoo. Then, Su Chen saw him dragging a wooden board with a thin girl lying on it, staring blankly into the air. ALS patient? Su Chen couldn't help but think of this question. In theory, it shouldn't be like this. The highest medical center has issued orders that all patients should not come to the Blue Sky Zoo for help. On the one hand, this is also for the survival of the Pika, and on the other hand, it is also for the sake of the patients. After all, there are only less than 30 Pikas now, each one is extremely precious. And, there is no medical level in the Blue Sky Zoo that can treat these patients. What are you doing? Thump! Miao Tai pulled his daughter in front of Su Chen, directly kneeling on the ground, and said sincerely, Director Su Chen, I have been to the hospital in Qin capital, I know we shouldn't come here, but, it's too difficult for us to come once, we are from the northeast of China, coming here is not only expensive and medical expenses, but even, my daughter can't afford to be tossed around. Um, Su Chen looked at the middle-aged man in front of him, furrowing his brow and shaking his head slowly. The treatment methods are not yet mature, and, the hospital has already told you that treating diseases like ALS causes significant harm to animals, and the current animal population is not enough to support widespread treatment. You. If he agreed to the man in front of him, then next time everyone would bring patients to Blue Sky Zoo, and he wouldn't be able to refuse. But if he didn't agree, judging by the looks of these two people, they must have had a difficult life. I understand this. Director Su Chen. But, we, squeak, squeak, squeak. Just then, a group of young rabbit cubs ran out from the distant grassland, curiously surrounding the motionless girl lying on the wooden board. Squeak. It's because of this disease that the boss can't jump. Really? Can I help treat it? I can do it. I want to be like the boss, holding the baby every day. Don't compete with me. I'll punch you in the chest. If I help her, big white boss will definitely protect me. Listening to the excited discussion of the young rabbit cubs, Su Chen couldn't help but stand still. This scene doesn't seem quite right. You can stay here, and when Nyaja's condition improves, you can help out at the zoo. As for you, can you raise pigs? Um, I guess you can't. I'll teach you later. You all stay here. Su Chen looked at the father and daughter in front of him and said softly, How can this be, Director Su Chen, we, we really can't afford the expensive medical expenses, but, Miao Tai said excitedly, I will work hard, I learn quickly, I will definitely take care of those pigs as well as I take care of my daughter. Thank you so much. Alright, rest early. Su Chen waved his hand and walked out of the room. At the door, he saw a group of young rabbit cubs gathered together, with two little ones in the middle facing off. Squeak. I also helped with the treatment, now I can't jump, I'll be the boss in the future. Squeak. Nonsense, I was the first to help with the treatment, are you asking for a fight? Bang. 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 After a few shouts, the two little ones started to fight with their short forelimbs. The group of young rabbit cubs stood by enviously, watching the two contenders for the leader position. They regretted that if they had helped with the treatment, they could have become the leader too. Life here is so good. Why jump? It's useless. Phew. Watching the young rabbit cubs, Su Chen smiled slightly. He thought that the young rabbit cubs who lost their jumping ability would become very self-conscious, but he never expected that the young rabbit cub who helped treat the baby would become the leader of the entire rabbit cub group after returning. Even because of the baby, all the animals in the zoo showed a friendly attitude towards it. This made the remaining young rabbit cubs extremely envious. In the place where they used to live, when did they ever receive such treatment? When encountering animals larger than them, there was no way other than running away. But here, it's different, they can even command those animals to play with them, something that was impossible before. It seems not bad like this. Su Chen smiled, turned and walked into the office. It was time to prepare for the Golden Eagle Shard mission. 
Although it was just a shard exchange for 150,000 shock points, because of the flying raptor, Su Chen felt that this mission would be very difficult. After all, it's in the air. Picking up the prepared backpack, Su Chen silently put it on his back, took a deep breath. System, activate the Golden Eagle Shard mission. Ding, mission activated. 10, 9, 8, boom. Su Chen fell heavily to the ground, struggling to crawl out of the rock crevice. He looked around. He found himself on a barren cliff with no path in sight. Damn, this is too difficult. Looking down at the bottomless abyss beneath his feet, Su Chen couldn't help but shiver. He had anticipated that the Golden Eagle mission wouldn't be easy, but he never expected to be sent to this place. Could this be the nesting place of the Golden Eagle? Su Chen pondered, pressing against the cliff and slowly moving forward step by step. The viewers in the live broadcast room began to discuss the topic of this live broadcast. After the extinction of animals, especially avian species, human knowledge about them was extremely limited. He he. Su Chen leaned against the cliff and glanced at the barrage in the live broadcast room, saying with a smile, Indeed, it is a flying animal, but, the golden eagle belongs to the large raptor family. During the last sled dog mission, everyone should still remember the snow wolves. These fierce wolves are sometimes the prey of golden eagles. In the ancient past, there were quite a few golden eagles, and many humans used to raise these raptors, especially in western countries. If someone walked down the street with a golden eagle perched on their arm, they would definitely be the most eye-catching person on the street. However, due to the nobility's admiration, more and more hunters turned their attention to the golden eagles, hunting them extensively for high profits. Su Chen gripped the rocks with both hands, leaning to the side, and slowly moved forward step by step. In the ancient past, a golden eagle was worth about 70,000, but it was almost impossible to buy one. Taming these animals is very difficult. It truly tests one's willpower. In the past, the minority ethnic groups who liked these animals collectively referred to the process of taming golden eagles as eagle training, a method that also applied to many flying animals. However, this method was too cruel, depriving the golden eagle of sleep for days and nights until it was tamed. Finally, Su Chen took a deep breath and said solemnly, the golden eagle is not a pet of humans. As the king of the sky, it should not be bound by the falconer's leash. To love it, is to give it freedom. With that, Su Chen directly ended the live broadcast because he had reached a small rocky platform where another huge bird's nest was built with various branches. This should be the golden eagle's nest. Wow. Wow. At this moment, two golden eagle chicks poked their heads out, continuously emitting chirping sounds. It seemed that they sensed that the approaching presence was not their mother's scent. The two little ones flapped their bare wings and struggled to crawl out of the nest. Phew. Su Chen watched the two bear chicks and breathed a sigh of relief, slowly approaching them. It seemed that this mission was related to these two little ones. However, with no feathers growing yet, these two were probably only a few months old. Hey! Su Chen cautiously reached the nest, extending his hand to touch the two little chicks. On the former earth, he had never had close contact with golden eagles, let alone two even rarer chicks. Golden eagles were very protective of their young. Once they detected another creature approaching the nest, they would relentlessly pursue an attack. Sometimes, not even a dozen people can be a match for a golden eagle without powerful weapons. Hiss. Just as Su Chen had just touched the foreheads of the two little guys, a deafening screech came from the sky in the distance. Who? With a wingspan of a full two meters, the golden eagle blocked out the sunlight in the sky. The cold eyes of the golden eagle mother stared fiercely at the human who appeared near the nest. Damn human. They actually found its nest. Fortunately, the discovery was timely. If it had been any later, the two little guys would have been captured by this human. Its partner had already been captured by those damn humans. Now there were only two cubs left, and they must not be allowed to come to harm. Hiss. With an urgent screech, the golden eagle vibrated its wings and swooped down towards Su Chen at a rapid pace. I. Su Chen was taken aback, looking at the fierce gaze of the golden eagle mother, hastily began to search for a hiding place on the rocks. But. There was nowhere on the entire rock where he could hide. Bang. Watching the golden eagle drop a gray wolf from its claws onto the rock, its sharp talons spread out and grabbed towards Su Chen. Quickly lying on the ground, Su Chen felt the strap of his backpack tighten, and then his body slowly began to rise into the air. Damn, this was not scientifically possible. The golden eagle in front of him was actually able to lift over 100 pounds of him. Quickly pulling apart the backpack straps with both hands, Su Chen fell heavily onto the rock. Bang. The entire backpack was torn open by the sharp talons of the golden eagle, and numerous survival items fell straight down the cliff in front of Su Chen. Hiss. 
Seemingly disappointed that it hadn't been able to grab the guy in front of it with one strike, the golden eagle screeched again, did a somersault in the air, and swooped down towards Su Chen at high speed. Stop. It's not what you think. Su Chen quickly used the animal language function to communicate with the enraged golden eagle in front of him. But, the guy in front of him was not listening to his explanation at all, and instead the dive became faster and faster. Taking a deep breath, Su Chen looked at the two eaglets beside him, and then rushed towards them. He hugged the two little guys into his arms, glaring coldly at the approaching golden eagle. Damn, the streamer better hide quickly. It's coming. This golden eagle is too fierce, it can even lift the streamer, and in midair too, it's invincible. Ah ah ah, I can't bear to watch. Its talons are so sharp, hiss. What is the streamer doing? If he doesn't lie down soon, a large piece of flesh will definitely be torn off. It's over, it's over, the streamer is done for this time, truly a raptor, so brutal. All the viewers in the live stream room were on edge, sweating for Su Chen. The ferocious appearance of the golden eagle just now had scared everyone. Not only were its sharp talons and hooked beak intimidating, but once they pecked at a person, it would definitely not end well. Especially in front of everyone, the torn apart grey wolf carcass clearly showed the ferocity of the golden eagle in front of them. I mean no harm. Su Chen tightly held the two little guys in his arms and roared at the golden eagle. Boom. The sound of the wind exploded in his ears, and Su Chen watched as the golden talons brushed past his head, a layer of cold sweat seeping out on his forehead. With a lingering fear, he patted his chest, then turned to look at the golden eagle in the sky again. Hiss. Go away, you're not welcome here. Came a roar from the sky. Su Chen quickly placed the two little guys in the nest and began to run towards the cliff on the side. Hiss. The golden eagle landed near the nest, glanced at the disheveled Su Chen fleeing, and tore off a piece of the wolf carcass in front of it, dragging two pieces over. Rip. Tearing off a piece of flesh, it turned and threw it into the mouths of the two little guys. After a while, the golden eagle lay down in the nest, closing its eyes slightly. Click. Suddenly, there was the sound of rocks shattering from the nearby cliff. The golden eagle alertly raised its head and turned to look. It turned out that the human from earlier had returned. Ah. Uh, Su Chen scratched his head awkwardly, pointed to the path behind him, and said with a wry smile, there's no way down, I, I can't go down at all. TSK. Stay away. The golden eagle snorted disdainfully, then closed its eyes again. The human in front of it showed no signs of hostility, and it even felt a strange urge to get closer. Whom? Su Chen sat down next to the cliff, overlooking the distance. What was the purpose of this mission? He couldn't stay here forever, right? Was he supposed to accompany these two little guys in their growth? Thinking about this, Su Chen couldn't help but feel a bit frustrated. Everything in his backpack was gone, and if the situation didn't change, would he end up starving to death here? Gurgle. Just then, a little creature struggled out of its nest, flapping its chubby wings and clumsily making its way to Su Chen. With a thud, it fell to the ground. He he. Su Chen laughed as he picked up the little creature, wiped its head, and put it back in the nest. The golden eagle glanced strangely at the young man beside it, using its feathers to cover the two little creatures. Su Chen sat down next to it, boredly watching the setting sun. It was about to get dark soon. The mission probably wouldn't appear today. But, this was a cliff, who knew how cold it would get at night. Wow wow. The golden eagle suddenly screeched, as if it remembered something, and got up to drag a dead grey wolf in front of Su Chen, then returned to its nest. What does this mean? Is it offering me food? Su Chen looked at the torn and unrecognizable body of the grey wolf in front of him, feeling helpless. Ha ha, I thought the streamer was in danger, but it turned out to be a twist. Don't you think this golden eagle is so aloof? Ha, just throw it in front of the streamer, let him deal with it himself? Golden eagle, what? You're not eating? Are you forcing me to eat you then? Upstairs, be a human being. The viewers in the live stream room watched Su Chen's helpless expression and started celebrating enthusiastically. After such a long time, they finally saw an animal that even Su Chen couldn't handle. Click. Suddenly, there was a sharp sound from the nearby cliff, and a rope with an iron hook hooked onto a rock. The rope tightened instantly. Su Chen's expression changed, and he quickly went to the edge of the cliff, looking down. Under the cliff, there were several orange pickup trucks surrounded by a group of people dressed in cowboy-like attire, looking up at the cliff. Several people in climbing gear were holding ropes and starting to climb up the cliff. Each of them carried a sawed-off hunting rifle on their back. So this is the mission. Su Chen pondered for a moment, then hurriedly turned towards the golden eagle's nest. Faster. Are you sure the information is correct? Is there really a golden eagle's nest up there? Alan, with his hands on his hips and his big belly protruding, looked at the group in front of him and said, if there are really golden eagle chicks, 
then we'll make a fortune. The nobles in the city really like chicks, and a golden eagle raised from a young age is much more loyal than a tamed one. Boss, there's no mistake. A thin, bespectacled young man smiled and approached, looking up at the cliff and whispering, I've been observing for a long time, every evening, the mother golden eagle will return. This time, we might be able to capture three golden eagles in one go. Boss, can we take the brothers to the Playboy bar later? Looking at Nicole's two melons, I smack. Alan patted his head and joked, what, can't hold it in anymore? If we succeed this time, throw the tickets in Nicole's face. Forget about the two melons, you can even try your luck. All right, go check it out, tell the climbers to speed up. Prepare the tranquilizer, we must catch the mother golden eagle as well. Got it. The bespectacled youth nodded excitedly and quickly ran towards the cliff below. He he, someone's here early? Looking down at some broken tools scattered on the ground, the bespectacled youth sneered, pulled the rope, and made a subtle gesture to the climbers above. Whom? Several people above quickly stabilized themselves, took out modified tranquilizer rifles from behind, held them in front of their chests, and quickly climbed up. Smack! Suchin rushed to the golden eagle, patted its head, pointed to the cliff, and whispered, hurry, someone's coming up. Hiss! The golden eagle slowly opened its eyes, staring blankly at the young man in front of it. Someone's coming up? It turned its head and squinted at the edge of the cliff, then suddenly spread its wings, its eyes turning dark. It recognized those iron hooks. When it was young, many humans used those hooks to climb up to their nests. It was during that time that its mother was captured by humans. In a panic, it hid in the crevices of the rocks and survived. Unexpectedly, now these humans were planning to capture its offspring using the same method. Hiss. With a hiss, the golden eagle swiftly soared into the air, coldly eyeing the humans climbing the cliff. They were about to arrive, and there were three of them, each carrying a rifle. Its two eaglets were too young with no feathers grown, unable to fly at all. And it couldn't escape with the two eaglets either. Hiss. Human, do you have a way? Looking at Suchin standing in front of it, the golden eagle asked, and Suchin took a deep breath, frowned, and shook his head. There was no hiding place on the entire cliff, not to mention. The people below were all armed. Judging by their attire, this was in the medieval period of the West. Even if they were shot dead here, these people would probably not have any trouble at all. Wait. Su Chen nodded to the golden eagle and quickly rushed to the edge of the cliff. At this moment, he could only throw down all the ropes hooked on the cliff, preventing these people from coming up temporarily, and then think of another way to escape. Su Chen stepped to the edge of the cliff, gripped the iron hook with both hands, and pulled it out with all his strength. Ah 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 ah! In the moment it was thrown down, a piercing scream came from below the cliff. Then the sound of a heavy landing followed. Bang! Just as he was about to dismantle the second rope, Clusters of firelight lit up on the cliff wall in front of him. The people below were shooting. I am Alan from Hunt Gold Town. A roar came from below, and Su Chin pressed tightly against the cliff behind him, not moving. And at that moment, a dark and sturdy gun barrel protruded from the cliff below his feet. Damn. With a low growl, Su Chin clung tightly to the cliff, leaped towards the rock where the golden eagle was. Bang. A deafening gunshot rang out behind him. Boom. Then a pair of hands grabbed the rock climbing up with great effort. Ha, huh, let me see which kid is so good, climbing up without a rope. A burly man loaded a bullet, sneering at Su Chin standing next to the golden eagle, slowly raising the gun barrel. The strong man glanced at the two eaglets in the nest, his eyes full of greed as he said, hands up, or else, there's anesthesia inside, TSK. The golden eagle let out a screech, about to fly into the sky, but Su Chin quickly grabbed its feathers and pulled it down, shaking his head as he slowly raised his hands. Boss. Two eaglets. Quick, get someone up here, there's a kid up here, seems like he has already tamed this golden eagle. The strong man sneered, then shouted at Alan below. Bang. Suddenly, a figure flashed before his eyes, and he felt a darkness before the young man mysteriously appeared in front of him. A fierce punch landed on the strong man's face, Su Chin held a hunting rifle with one hand and pulled him over. The speed bonus from the previous rabbit monkey task increased by 5 points, Su Chen's instant burst had already surpassed that of ordinary humans. Crack! Another hard punch knocked the strong man down, Su Chin turned the gun towards him, pressing it firmly against his forehead. Don't! Please, don't kill me! Please don't kill me! Bang! Su Chen knocked the strong man unconscious with the butt of the gun, then slung the hunting rifle behind him and quickly went to the nest. Under the puzzled gaze of the golden eagle, he picked up the two eaglets and held them close to his chest. Turning around, he squatted down and tightly bound his clothes together, shouting at the golden eagle, Come! Grab my shoulder! TSK. The golden eagle hesitated for a long time, 
then slowly flapped its wings and landed on Su Chen's shoulder. Hiss. Su Chen felt the sharp eagle claws pierce into his left shoulder, getting stuck in the bone. His whole body shook violently, taking a sharp breath. It hurt. Go. Seeing a pair of hands climbing up the cliff in the distance, Su Chen roared. Gasping for breath, the golden eagle, firmly hooked onto Su Chen's shoulder, changed direction and slowly flapped its wings, lifting Su Chen off the ground. TSK. With a screech, the golden eagle instantly flew out from the cliff. I. Su Chen looked down at the struggling golden eagle and couldn't help but shout, find a place with no one, hurry. Although the golden eagle could lift him off the ground, it was clear that his size was too big for the eagle. It probably couldn't fly for a long time, and the flying speed was painfully slow, swinging unsteadily, looking like it could fall at any moment. Damn, what did I just see? Flying hooked onto the shoulder? The streamer is going all out, risking his life. This is too dangerous, if the golden eagle can't hold on. Not to mention landing, the streamer might fall to his death. I think the golden eagle is probably the most nervous right now, carrying such a heavy guy, with pursuers below. It's too difficult. The group of eagle catchers are driving up to catch up. The viewers in the live stream room were all dumbfounded as they watched the golden eagle fly Su Chen out of the cliff. From the aerial view of the live broadcast, it was simply unbelievable. And, watching the struggling golden eagle, everyone held their breath. They were really afraid that they would all fall down. Once they fell, from a height of hundreds of meters, how could there be any chance of survival? Sai, can't hold on any longer, about to fall. Suddenly, the golden eagle let out a sharp cry, its wings no longer flapping, gliding instead, swiftly flying towards a bare rock in the distance. Bang! Su Chen grimaced as he climbed up from the ground, quickly wrapping the wound on his shoulder tightly with his clothes. He looked down at the two eaglets in his arms, seeing the two little ones staring at him curiously with wide eyes, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. Boom! 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 Just then, a cloud of dust rose up in the desolate land in the distance. Several orange pickup trucks roared, madly driving towards them. Hurry, let's go! Su Chen looked around, the sun was about to set, as long as they could hold on until sunset, their chances of escaping from these people would be much greater. However, for now, they could only flee frantically. Sigh. At that moment, the golden eagle let out a cry, swiftly soaring to Su Chen's side, staring at the two little ones in his arms for a long time. Su Chen could see a look of determination flash in its eyes. Take care of them, human. It murmured to Su Chen. With a sudden upward thrust, the golden eagle flew directly into the sky, then circled for a while before diving down rapidly. Its target was the speeding pickup trucks. No! Su Chen watched the golden eagle's actions and shouted in alarm. The golden eagle was using itself as bait to draw fire for them. But, those humans were definitely professional falconers, and with the golden eagle in that state, it would surely be captured. Wow wow! Su Chen was about to pull out his hunting rifle and rush forward when the two little ones in his arms kept howling with their heads raised. I. Su Chen took a deep breath, turned to look at the golden eagle circling above the pickup trucks and launching an attack, gritted his teeth fiercely, and started running towards the distance. He couldn't waste the golden eagle's intentions. If he was also captured, those two little ones would probably not survive. Sigh. Listening to the golden eagle's cries in the distance, Su Chen felt his heart being torn apart. Damn falconers. No, the strong man on the cliff just now said they were from Falcon Town, then. We must hurry to Falcon Town. Su Chen pondered for a moment, ran several kilometers, and when he looked back, he couldn't see the pickup trucks catching up. Seeing that it was getting dark, he quickly hid in a nearby dry bush. Boom! Boom! In the distance, several car lights lit up, and Su Chen quickly lay on the ground, trying to hide his figure. Creak! Several pickup trucks stopped not far from Su Chen, and a middle-aged man with a big belly jumped out in a hurry. Damn it! Alan stomped his foot fiercely, looked around in a circle. It's all because of you damn golden eagle. He pulled out the barely alive golden eagle from the pickup truck and roared viciously. If it weren't for you being worth some money, I would roast you and eat you today. Damn it! Two eaglets, if he had caught them, not only could he sell them for a high price, but even the entire falconer team's reputation would have been established. There would be a constant stream of customers coming to buy falcons from them in the future. However, everything was ruined by that black-haired kid today. Spread the word, offer a reward in the nearby town, we must find that kid. Dare to block my path to wealth, I will tear him apart and feed him to the golden eagle. Oomph, didn't I already tame you? Then feed on that kid's flesh and blood. Let's go. With a shout, Alan angrily threw the golden eagle into the pickup truck, started the car, and roared off into the distance. Phew. Su Chen watched the pickup truck drive away, then emerged from the bushes. He had seen the golden eagle's actions clearly just now. 
He even heard clearly what the fat man had said. It seems that this group of people nearby is not weak in strength, but, the main task this time is already very clear, it is not these two guys in my arms, it is very likely that Mother Golden Eagle. Thinking of this, Su Chen followed the direction of the pickup truck and quickly caught up, not only to rescue the Golden Eagle, but also, to give these falconers a painful lesson. The majestic rulers of the sky, actually being treated as pets to show off by them, even tortured all day, erasing their wildness. Although these raptors are still alive, but, what's the difference from being dead? Running along the dusty road for a long time. Finally, a light appeared in the distance. And, Su Chen looked at a bar outside the town, flashing with colorful lights, slowly pulling out the hunting rifle behind him. He stuffed the bullets he snatched from the strong man into his belt. After all preparations were made, he looked at the name of the bar. Playboy Bar. He sneered, his face cold, and slowly pushed open the door of the bar in front of him.